Boston's North End, also known as Little Italy, is home to cobblestone streets, over 80 Italian eateries, including La Galleria 33, a family restaurant opened in 2006 by sisters Rita and Lisa. In 1965, my dad moved here from Italy, worked in a few restaurants, and in 1985, he was able to open his own. It's called Losteria. Hey, bye bye. There was immediate success in Losteria. My sister and I grew up there and worked there. Are we gonna call my mama? Following the success of their parents' restaurant and with their parents' financial help, Lisa and Rita branched out and opened La Galleria 33, just under 100 feet away. When we opened, we expected Galleria 33 would have immediate success because that is what my father found. Let it be a reservation. We figured at some point we would get busy, but it just, it never took off. Everybody's abandoning us. Where are they all going? I don't know. Not only do we look at each other and try to figure out what's wrong with it, I'm not sure I know what to do. We start doing crazy things like, I'll stop blaming it on the weather. Well, it's too hot, they can't eat today. It's snowing. It's raining, they can't park and walk. And... It's the beginning of the month, nobody has money, they have to pay their rent. These aren't our clients, all they got shorts on. There's a game. We've taken the tablecloths off, we put them back on. We lowered the prices. We put the curtains up, we took the curtains down. Put 95 at the end of the prices. My mother's thought of why this place didn't work was because the font, are you ready for this? The font on the menu was too small. My head is killing me, where's that coffee? You want Tylenol? I don't know how to fix it, I don't. Because I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm pretty sure this is what a nervous breakdown feels like. I know what the problem is, it's the owners. They want to get slapped tonight. Huh? Slapped, left and right. Get the fuck out of here. They treat people really bad. Go talk to the customers, go entertain them while they're waiting for the fucking food. We are very unprofessional. Shut up. Pat, don't add to my fucking stress today. Lisa drinks and Rita smokes everywhere. Am I like the only smoker left in America? Everyone makes such a big deal about me smoking. Rosa, go do something. That's my spot. We're like staffed by a bunch of nuts. Rosa, could you not do that? Thanks. She told me to sweep. She's sweeping me. She's Lisa. sweeping it on me, though. Don't sweep it on my sisters in the I hate you. We need help. We really do. I think after so many years of this being unsuccessful, we're slowly not caring. I, I shouldn't say not caring, like we're, we're used to it. These are a lot of bills for real. I'm getting very nervous right now. There's so much invested and if it, if it doesn't at some point start to make money, this could be the cause of my mother and father like losing everything. They built so much, and I don't want to be the, the reason why, you know, God forbid, they would have lost everything. That's why it's very sad. Wow, there's a lot of Italian restaurants. Rita, I gotta throw my gum and I can't swallow. Just spit it away. Peel. Just spit it over there. No way. Hold on. I did it. That was difficult. I'm not swallowing mine. I'm gonna keep my breath minty fresh. Oh, man. Hi. 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 Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Hello, how are you? Very good. Nice to see you. Well, nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. Sarah, good to see you. Good to see you. Are the owners here? Here we are. Here we are. We bring you from behind here. Excuse me. How are you? I thought you were a customer. Lisa, nice to meet you. Lisa, nice to see you. I'm Rita. Rita, nice to see you both. I thought you were customers. I'm so sorry. No, no. Let's go have a little seat. Do you know we sit out there? I didn't know he was coming. He just came like a bat out of hell and went inside. He didn't even. Stop. First of all, I'm happy to be here. But you guys are partners, right? Yes. Uh, give me a little bit of background. Our parents um, opened Losteria in 85. I was four. Oh, your mum and dad have a restaurant? Yep, five doors In up. Boston? Yes, five, five doors. Five doors down? Yes. Correct. Right across the street diagonally. You're kidding me. No. I just walked past it. Yes. You did. So we decided, let's Ranch try off. and open another one. We know what we're doing, we thought. Galleria 33, what does that mean? 33 comes from where? It, Rita, let Rita explain. I was 33 when we opened it means this. nothing to me. No. Well, you're not 33 yet. Wait. 
till the fabulous things start happening when you're 33. The gallery was like art gallery. The art gallery. We wanted the wall to be replicas of like famous artwork, and we hired this painter, if you can call him that. We started to paint naked cherubs, and we had to fire naked. him. Naked cherubs. Oh. They were on the ceiling. They were on the ceiling. They were on the wall. Like naked. There was a woman with her breasts out, like eating dinner. Who eats dinner like that? Who eats dinner in the nude? Are you chewing gum? No. No. What did you chew? I swallowed it. I swallowed it. No. Oh. <laughs> so you've stopped chewing gum? I don't normally ever Not chew healthy. gum. Yeah, but you shouldn't be swallowing it either. I was afraid of what you were going to say if I said yes. <laughs> no, but uh, so you are chewing gum? I was chewing gum. And now you just swallowed it? Yes. I went to Catholic school. So we used to have to take the gum and put it on our nose and spend the whole day like that. So, I mean, I don't know why Chef Ramsay would have told me to put gum on my nose. <laughs> right. May I have a glass of water, please? Sure, yes. Thank you. Okay. So, tell me, how's the business? We're getting by by the skin of our teeth. It's like really... No, right. we're actually not getting by. We're like in debt. Yeah, we wow. lose money every single month. Wow. We're not That's getting awesome. by. Wow. I think you said what? water, oh. Sarah, honey. Oh, shit. What? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Please. No, 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 we're a little bit too early for me. <laughs> uh, Never too early. <laughs> uh, it is. Lisa loves wine. She likes to drink. OK. She likes to drink. She loves wine. She does. Uh, while she's working, have a couple of glasses. She drinks. I smoke and she drinks. I mean, since we're airing my dirty laundry, oh, I'll let her air her own. Cut that out. Don't say that she drinks. Lisa's great. I didn't think Rita needed to tell Chef Ramsay that I drink. I think he would have probably seen that tonight anyway. How's the service? Mm. Not happy with the service? Well, the servers here are very temperamental, and they sit down for hours at that table behind they there. They sit down? They don't bother checking their tables, cleaning anything. The customers would have to get up with their credit card things so they could pay. Are you kidding me? I yeah. swear to God. Wow. They get really nice customers here, and they should yeah. be getting good service. Not... Thank you for the update. Is there anything else I need to know uh, before I get going? Uh... Well, uh, the chef is my ex-husband. Say that again? I was married to him. The chef is your ex-husband. Sounds like a soap opera. Yes. So, the ex-husband. What's it like working together on a daily basis? He's a grudge. He's difficult, doesn't take criticism well. But he also he can cook. He can cook, yes. It's because these are my parents' recipes mm -hmm. that he's cooking. He has no recipes of his own? Oh, no, no, no. My dad trained him. He wasn't a trained chef. You have to understand, this is a total head I know, head we're fight. very I'm sorry. Like, no, 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 no. Sorry. My head's spinning. My head's oh. spinning. After an informative meeting with owners Lisa and Rita, Chef Ramsay is anxious to try the food. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to meet you. Made by head chef Doug, who happens to be Rita's ex-husband. He's so nice. <laughs> I like him. He's, He's so nice. Guy. nice. He's nice. Guy. He's gonna eat now. He's going to eat. Let's see if he's still nice. <laughs> he's gonna be nice. He's a nice guy. You know something? I'm starting to tremble. I don't see you tremble. I'm trembling inside. Oh, inside. How are you? I'm very good. good. I'm Sarah. Go on, please. Sarah, nice to see you, darling. Very nice to meet and you. So, how long have you been here? About two years. Two years. You know, you need to take those heels off because I can't see. They're too big. But don't stand in front of me. No, they don't see me. I arrived, they're set outside. Is that normal? It's very normal here. And Rita mentioned about Lisa drinking on service. Does she drink at the end of the night? Yes, she drinks while customers are still here. Oh, dear. The owners, they don't know how to run the restaurants, and they don't want to improve themselves to improve the restaurant. Don't talk to me. There is no organization at all. Wow. Not here, not in the kitchen, nowhere. Wow, that's not good. They have no responsibility. They have no concern. It feels like this place for them is just, oh, I'm working. You're not really working. Wow, I mean, they're, they're treating like they like, like their bar as opposed to their business. Yeah. Why is she say that? Because she's an imbecile. That's not even true. She's a traitor, Benedict Arnold. Skank. Uh, I've got to go for the homemade gnocchi. Thank you. Homemade gnocchi. Yes, please. And then a chicken marcella, please. Marcella. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll go for the veal paradiso. Okay, sure. What else? I'm really hoping he doesn't get the seafood ravioli. They're not, they're not good. We have seafood ravioli special. Oh my God. I, I, I'll, I'll take it, why not? Okay. Lisa, this bitch is selling the ravioli special. What is wrong with her? You know, I hate her. Please tell me you didn't order the raviolis. They've been complaining about the ravioli special, Sarah, all weekend. Why did you even tell them? Go ahead. It's a good that he will know about it. No, Sarah, it isn't. No. That's actually not the case, Sarah. You're a fucking freak, and that was a crazy thing to do. I'm gonna kill her. What did you order? A lot of food? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Gnocchi, chicken marsala, il paradiso, seafood ravioli. Wow. He must be very hungry. Uh, sir, we got two seconds? I am so afraid right now. Why? Because I know what's coming next. Oh, what's your first name? Pat. Pat. This for me is a new journey in life because I've always been a shoe salesman. Seriously? Not a man's shoe salesman. Uh, oh, sorry. Well, women so you're not a cobbler? Exclusively, no. Oh, I was going to say. Lisa. Right. It's Pat. Yeah, it's Pat. He's... I don't really I don't even want to deal with that. How would you rate the food? Um, the only issue is that I cannot eat Italian food because I'm gluten intolerant. So what are you here? I'm a combination of everything. I'm like manager slash... Oh, so you're the manager here? Everything else. Oh, shit. Slash everything else. I didn't else. know that. So you're the manager of Galleria? Galleria. General manager slash uh, shoe salesman. Are you really uh, I'm also a host. You're a host? And as a bus person, I do it all. Wow. Uh, Rita. Yes. Uh, is Pat serious? General manager? He is the bus boy. You're not the general manager. I just assumed their role. Oh, you assumed the role? On the oh, shit. You just assigned that role to yourself? I just assigned that role oh, to myself. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> ah. I'm but sweating. I'm sweating. You're sweating? Yes. I'm shitting myself. I'm also Who shitting myself. He? He's the he's the bus man, and I fired him. And let me explain to you hold what on, he... Hold on, hold on, hold on. You fired him. I fired him. What did you fire him for? Because he told me that he was more important than me, and that he got me on a bad day, and I got upset, what? and I fired him. Seriously? So you know what he did? He got an umbrella, because it was raining that day, and he yes. got an umbrella. Yes. And he would walk by and look in like a very sad puppy. I'm like, this poor guy. So I, I took him back. I took him back, and now I just let him tell himself he's a manager. For everything that Pat does right, he does five things wrong. Go now, go. Oh Thank my you, God. He's so fucking crazy that it's like, is it really worth even having him here? He's, but it is, I love Pat. Pat's good. He don't feed him because he's gluten free, right? He's so full of shit, he eats well, all. Look, he's like withering away. Well, he's got that great metabolism. I wish I had it, but he, we do feed him. Please don't think we don't feed the staff. No, I'm starving. <laughs> I, I, I... Okay. Okay. Enjoy. I mean, honestly, I haven't even tasted the food yet. Oh, my God. Wow. Why do you do it to me? Please, just out of my sight. Oh. Have the homemade gnocchis. Excellent. And it's all homemade? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Frozen. What? Frozen. No, come on. But they're homemade, that's why. They're homemade and frozen. Grazie mille. You're very well. Thank you. Please, a, a little smile, a little smile, anything at all. Please eat it. Stop ripping it. He shook his head. Fuck my life. Oh, no, we did a... He rubbery, bland and just really, really solid. Almost like a golf ball. Not nice. Rita. Yes. Two seconds, then. Lisa, you can come as well. Start hiding behind the coffee machine. What are you drinking? No, 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 no. No, just ask. No, 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 no. So the meatballs are, uh, like, firm, solid, and just, like, dry, bland. But they're made here. Mm -hmm. Well, we make them and then we freeze them because 
We don't want to run out of meatballs. Yeah, but they last up to two to three days in the fridge, and the difference in having them seared and cooked in the sauce rather than defrosted, the difference is night and day. OK. Uh, okay. yeah. Oh, my God. This is the beginning of the end. About 20 minutes ago, I was wondering what I, you know, what I got myself into. This is not good. I'm scared. I'm scared. With Chef Ramsay beginning to question the food, people with a rubbery fucking golf ball. Sisters Rita and Lisa are looking to Chef Doug for some answers. I'm not going so well. Get myself? The meatballs, the meatballs are frozen. Yeah, we right. make them fresh every two days. Well, yeah, we make them fresh every two days. We freeze them. They're not fresh, okay. they're frozen. I don't know in how many Italian restaurants he's been, but the restaurant that I know, they freeze stuff. What's in that cup? It's coffee, Rita. The veal paradiso. What's inside the veal? Prosciutto, mozzarella. Wow. It's like someone's thrown up on my plate. Please, God, make them like that at least. Really bad. Just gnarly, overcooked, bland. <gasps> Gross. What the hell does that mean? It means he didn't like it in a nutshell. How is it? That is definitely not paradise, let me tell you. Veal, way overcooked, very chewy, salty <laughs> inside. Sauce is a mess. What is it? Tomato and vodka? Vodka. Right. Disgustingly bad. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, let's just pray that he says his pray. nose. You're like the only prayer. I just want somebody to kill me at this point. What is he going to be eating next? Oh, yeah, seafood ravioli. That was the one thing I was hoping he wasn't going to get, like the one thing. They have the seafood ravioli. And when were they? Are these uh, fresh or? <laughs> oh, no. Frozen. Frozen. Do you think customers come to the North End? To come and eat in a restaurant with frozen raviolis? Definitely not. I won't myself. Who the fuck serves fresh ravioli? I mean, nobody serves fresh ravioli anywhere. Homemade ravioli in this neighborhood. These people don't even know how to make homemade ravioli. That's the god honest truth. I bet you if you go to the restaurant across the street and ask her, do you know how to make a homemade ravioli? She'll look at you and make you a matzo ball. She doesn't know. Wow. Disgusting. Just layers of gunk. So this is special. Actually, it's a special that we have 12 months a year. So it's a special of the year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, do I feel special. Thank you. Um, and in two years, has he ever changed it? Oh, shit. So it's a special I think, every two yeah, years. Since we have that, we never really changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse. I want Sarah strangled. You know, she's having a good time because it's not her business on the line. But I got something for her. <laughs> a special every 700 days. I'm so sorry. I don't know what else to say. Oh, man. This is too much. This is too much. I want to go die in a corner somewhere. Wow. Chicken marsala? Yes, and it's fresh. And it's fresh. Excellent. This is the side Excellent. of CT. Ooh, chicken marsala. Looks more like chicken and mushroom soup. <gasps> He's talking, he's whispering, it can't be good. If it's a whisper, it can't be good. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm hoping it tastes better than it looks. <laughs> you know, live it up, girls. There's a Michelin chef in here ripping our food apart, and you guys are giggling away, and I'm about to throw up. <laughs> Shut up, he's chewing. Oh, shit. Salty, salt and everything. Where is he? Way too sweet and just bland. No salt. Is Doug allergic to salt? I Ask don't him. think so. Uh. I don't think so. I didn't realize Chef Ramsay would be so unhappy. He's been kind of mean. You know, I take it back. I said he was nice. <laughs> And what's uh, dessert? We only have tiramisu, and we are even out of it. For real. <laughs> so you run out of desserts? Yes. Do you have tiramisu? 
shot. One dessert and you've run out. Isn't that crazy? We're out of theorem, so I didn't even know. I really didn't. Pat. Two seconds, bud. Quick. I need the manager. The restaurant Austria. Yeah, can you run over there and get me one portion of tiramisu? I am fucking starving. One portion of tiramisu? Quick. Okay. Quick as you can. Where are you going? Get a piece of tiramisu. He's on his way. There he goes. Whose idea was this? No, no this was your not idea. Not my idea. Your fucking idea. Bring him a fork. He doesn't like anything. So he's not going to like that either. Well, hello. Hi. How are you? Good nice to meet you. This is my Lena. mama. Lena, nice to see you. Excellent. I can't wait to taste that. Uh, grazie mille. Right. Excuse me, can I... Can I just quickly say hello to mum again? Come on, mum. Go you're going to get yelled at. I'm yes, so sir. scared. Oh, God. Mama. First, I need to do something. Bellissimo. Oh, my God. Oh, delicious. Oh, my God. He likes no, mom. Thank God. Thank he likes so something. Much. I mean, amazing. Whose recipe is that? Your recipe? Really good. Really good indeed. We got a winner from Losteria. What the hell was that? What happened? God. With Chef Ramsay horrified by the food. What the hell? Lisa and Rita's day is not exactly heading in a positive direction. Oh, the fridge broke. I don't even want to say what else could go wrong because God might answer me. And it's unlikely to get any better as Chef Ramsay meets head chef Doug. How are you? Good way. First name? Douglas. Douglas, let's have a chat with the owners. Just stand next to your uh, wife. Ex. Uh, ex, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, first of all, how long have you been cooking? Mm, since 94. 94. And you're the head chef, if we can call it that. You're leading the kitchen, let's get it that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, okay. So when the they let me anyway. Who's they? Who's they? Yeah, I, but he certainly doesn't mean me, because I don't hold you back to do anything. Who in the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I'd really like to know. I know you're not looking at me. But some things that I want to do my way, you know, is always like... In other words, he wants full yeah, control. I'm going to be in the kitchen, and I want full control. But you do have, but you full, have control. full control. Let's Nobody bothers you. Work. Listen, I want to go back to the food. This man is taking time out of his schedule to be yeah, here. I want to talk about frozen meatballs. Oh, okay. Okay. Who's running the kitchen? I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about lunch, yeah? The food was dated, bland, boring, and way below par in one of the most competitive streets anywhere in this country. When was the last time you went out for dinner in the neighborhood? I don't know. He doesn't eat Italian. I just go to Chinese food sometimes. Chinese food. <sighs> OK. What about the meatball? The meatball? We make it and then... Freeze them. Freeze them, yeah. And the veal paradiso, way overcooked, just drowned in sauce. Doug, customers cook better at home. The food was shocking. And just no seasoning, no care. Honestly, you're not giving your best. The homemade gnocchi. It's not homemade, right? Well, I know how to make it. I used to make it every day. Ravioli. I used to make those too, but you know there's a pain in the neck. I need somebody with extra time to help me. Doug, yeah. I would be willing to help you make pasta. Yeah, please. I like to make pasta. Yeah, whatever. Dude, that's, that's, See, that's the that's attitude. Tough. It's very, he, he doesn't respond to much. What do you mean, doesn't respond? He just, you know. We're running a business. I know. Wow. And what is it between you two? Why is there such animosity there? He's just, that's just him. That's just him. Are you lazy? No, I'm not. What I'm trying to say is you've just gone through the motions. No, I'm not. You are. You're not making anything fresh. You have turned the restaurants into something dysfunctional, just for convenience. You knew I was coming today, right? Yeah, I knew. So why couldn't you cook for me from the heart? 
because if I'm gonna treat you special, then I gotta treat everybody special. So you feel better serving me frozen shit than you cooking your best? I, I just being honest. Let me ask you this. How can a seafood ravioli be special if it's frozen and it's been on the menu as a special for two years? Well, we get it frozen. What's so fucking special about that? You've only got one dessert on, and even that ran out a week ago. We do have. Where is it, then? Um, no. We don't. We don't. don't. Well, you don't know? Do you guys communicate? I mean, help me. No, I know, I know. But there's really not much that, I mean, you can't even get through to him, so how am I supposed to? You're the owner. I know. You think this restaurant has a future serving frozen meatballs? Not only was my lunch bland, disappointing, but whatever little customers you've got now, I'm amazed they're in here. Tonight, I want to see this place function. I want to see how you operate, what you do. I want to see how you run the line. OK. I'll see you later. All right. Bye. Thank you. You're fucking dead. Oh, my god. He's left the building. That was really, really hard. Stop looking at me, Pat, because this is your fault. It would have been easier to have been hung by the roof by my toenails. Oh, God. Well, I don't have any respect. You could make some pasta. No, I can't. And get rid of those seafood ravioli. I want them out of here. OK. I hate you. This was your idea. No, this was definitely your idea. No, this was definitely your idea. It wasn't your idea. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I'm going to go smoke. Crazy, you are fired. Rita, tell him to chill out, because I'm leaving tonight if you fuck with me. I'm really leaving. Ramsey. Now, I'm not calling him chef. I'm calling him Ramsey, and that's what I'm calling him. Mr. Ramsey, at least. Call him Mr. Ramsey. Listen, respect he deserves. He's coming! Fuck my life. He's already shit on the food. Like, I'm waiting for him to see us run the front of the house and yell at us about that. Doug, uh, tiramisu on? No. Can't be bothered? Nope. No, can't be bothered. Wow. Anyway, uh, so take me through the uh, line. Who's running what station? Well, we usually don't work in stations. You don't work on stations either. Holy oh, shit, it's getting worse. Oh, my god. Every Saturday night, Boston's North End is packed. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you, honey? And as a result, it's the one night that La Galleria 33 is filled with customers. My name is Sarah, and I'm going to be your server for tonight. Um, I'm going to be sausage cacciatore. Give me veal francesca. Veal francesca? Sure. Oh, my god, my nerves. Sir, whenever it's ready, we can take table one. Doug, who, uh, who talks to who? Who communicates there? Anybody? <laughs> Doug, who communicates here? Um, I don't. No. I will. I do, but I can't hear anything. Who, yeah. Who's who's? Uh... When things are ready, we just put them over there. And... Oh, so there's no, there's no, there's no timing. When that's ready, we. I said this. Sure. That's ready. Chicken Alfredo, chicken Galleria. Yeah, coming. Well. You just dropped that on the floor. Look at me. You just dropped it on the floor. Yeah. You can't cook it. Yeah. You just dropped it on the floor. I know. Uh, Rita, Lisa, uh, both of you, just two seconds. Sorry, this is sending me crazy. Hello, what? You just dropped the chicken on the floor and put it back in the pan. Mm. This one here. Come on, guys. Serious, Doug? Wait a minute. He dropped it on the floor and cooked it? What, what do you mean? Am I on my own here or what? No, you're not. That's crazy. Could you start that again or not? What? Can you start that again? It's not here. It's there. No, I say this is not. That's the one that dropped on the floor. It's OK. It's good enough to eat it. I'm not here to make you look stupid. But wait, I stop a chef from serving fucking chicken he dropped on the floor. I mean, honestly? You guys look like a bunch of fucking idiots. This is fucking crazy. It's only minutes into a busy Saturday night dinner service, and Chef Ramsay has already observed just how low the standards are at Galleria 33. 
He just dropped the chicken on the floor and put it back in the pan. Honestly, you guys look like a bunch of fucking idiots. Wait a minute. This one here. Why would you cook a fucking piece of chicken that you dropped on the floor? Like, you know, it makes me question his... Not his intelligence, but I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, his intelligence. Fuck you now. Normally, you would never cook something that fell on the floor. Why would you have done that? He's gonna think you're crazy. Throw it out. Yeah, throw okay. it out. I don't think he's serving that. I mean, I don't, I don't know what if he I does. Say, it's disgusting, but it's not What you wiping his ass? I'm not, but I don't want to be betrayed as a restaurant who serves chicken that's been I tried to stop him from doing it. I don't know. He's nuts. It fell on the floor. Yes, he's nuts. He I picked it up and dusted it. Yeah, I get it, but he's not going to serve it. I'm not it. looking for this stuff. I walked right into it. I'm standing by side watching the line work. But he started a new one, as you can see. Oh, fuck me. I would like to know when Douglas has ever picked something off the floor. Never. Like, ever, ever, ever. Like, why would he have done that? Like, did he purposely do that? While Doug continues to work in silence, food still manages to get out to the diners. Chicken pot, chicken pot. And the ravioli was for you. It looks disgusting. But the customers are anything but reserved when expressing how they feel about his dishes. How's the appetizer taste for you? Awful. It's really not very good. It's not fresh. I can try to send one of the owners over this way if you would like. Yes, please. Absolutely. Lisa, they wanted to speak to someone. Who? Uh, the four top over there, the okay. one that's... I don't want to hear a complaint. Okay. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Send Rita. I don't like dealing with angry, irate people. I usually just... For them to read it. Uh, the four top over there, they'd like to speak to one of the owners. Oh, yeah, send Lisa. I'm I tried, busy. she said no. But I'm not going anywhere. Lisa should deal with complaints because I don't handle that well. I would rather just not deal. The owners may have decided not to deal with disgruntled customers. It's all burnt. But that doesn't stop the complaints from coming. How is it? Going? Yeah, not really good. Really? Very charcoaly. People are complaining about the food. Lisa or Rita will not talk to the customers. Then they get so pissed about it. But it's very usual for me. It's not like this is the first time I see it. This is supposed to be oh, medium no. rare. It's well done. Oh, no, 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 no. Looks like a bonfire. Rita, when you see a bone that is thicker than the actual eye of the meat, it's like a dog chew. My food is good. I still think it's good. How are you going to get it to be medium rare? That's the question. I mean, why is it such a defense mechanism? Well, because even the customers complaining, when they're right, I'll take it. What I can't take is the garbage. Wow. How's everything here? This is cold. It's cold. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? Yeah, Come over. Eggplant ravioli. It was a little cold. He was complaining about this. Cold? No, this one's actually hot in the middle. What's wrong? They said it's cold in the middle. I stuck my finger in it. It's hot in the middle. It's, 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 it's not warm. It's still hot. He tells me it's not, but it is. That's cold. No, it's That's not. Cold. The way I am, like, I, I'm going to go over there and tell the lady, like, stick your finger in the ravioli and tell me it's cold now. I'm, like, ready to stab somebody. Whose ravioli was this? It's a table of five, the four top. Hi, who had these ravioli? I'm so sorry. Hello. Were these yours? All of these ravioli? They weren't cold, so I was just wondering... I don't know what the one is. that I bit into was cold. Oh, no, no, this is definitely your plate. I yes. took it right from the waiter. Yeah, I know it's my And plate. I stuck my finger. The one that she handed to me to eat was cold. They're all hot, so I'm just curious they what it was. By that time, they weren't was, hot to know. us. So they were cold when they got here, and they got hot when they came back. Just, I'm just curious. I'm trying to understand why. Uh, it seemed like you're okay. kind of not happy with me. It's not that I'm not happy. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. And, I, and they're all hot, so I'm just wondering. Oh, my God. Rita, to me, I was very, very unprofessional. The customers is always right. So when he complains, I want to give the best to them. Uh, my apologies. You've got every right to complain. I think somebody's forgotten the customers are king, right? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you. This is right. fucking ridiculous. All right, well, let's see how many more complaints we can go on. I think you're overreacting. I mean, as owners, uh, can anything bounce off you and get on with it? Or I'm, I'm still here, so no, no, I'm clearly no, no. Barely, my skin is thicker than barely, that. Barely, barely, barely. I feel like I'm in like a sea of devils. I feel like he brought this upon us. I thought you were gonna come in here and help us, and like, everybody's complaining. What do you want me to do? I mean, you're asking me to stop the complaints? You sound like a petulant teenager. How so? I, fuck, he's just on the defense. 
We love the food here and we think it's good. I'm going to disagree because the food's not good. I don't think my food's bad. Am I in denial? I don't think I am, but I keep saying that my food is good, so that's like a sign of somebody being in denial. Ladies, welcome. How's that, my darling? You're very fishy, especially the muscles. Yeah, it's not very fresh. No. Let me just check. What has happened to the chef? He's in the kitchen. Do you want to see what he's doing? Wow, gets worse. They're all open. Dead, dirty muscles. Douglas, Rita. I'm sorry, what's the same? They're all, they're all open. They're all open. And they're not clean, they're dead. Lisa, muscles are dirty. More importantly, they're all open. What does an open muscle mean? It's dead. It's dead, yeah. But why are they in here, then? We don't use the ones that are open when we don't use them. So where are the dead ones going? In the trash? The garbage. Yeah, I know they're going, but when? Chef Ramsay's really negative and critical. It's pissing me off. I want him to get the fuck out. Let me tell you something. Get rid of the dead muscles before you kill somebody. Oh, my God. It's two hours into dinner service, and Chef Ramsay has now confirmed the main problem here at La Galleria 33. Owners Rita and Lisa are in denial. We love the food here, and we think it's good. The food's not good. And to make matters worse, head chef Doug's practices in the kitchen are completely careless. Dead, dirty muscles will fucking kill somebody. So Chef Ramsay wants to take a closer look at what is lurking below at La Galleria 33. Rotten, gooey as shit. When the fresh onions come in, you think they get rid of the old ones. So he's downstairs? Is he playing around with that one? I have no idea. Rotten. I want to show them more rotten shit. I want to show you something quickly. You always know a chef inside out when you look at his fridge. OK. What's happened over here over the last three months is they've been using onions, peeling them in here and leaving all the bits of shit in there. 90% of them, soft as shit. Oh, pure. Oh, yeah. Hello. Have you any idea how long it takes for an onion to go that rotten? No. About two months. I said to you earlier, I sense that there's a lazy stream running through this restaurant. I'm questioning Doug. I feel like I've trusted too much that he would do the right thing without watching. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So this one's just packed with frozen pasta. What the fuck are they? Those are porcini ravioli. Oh, my God. Porcini, wow. A frozen ravioli is not horrendous. It's not. Like, I've, I've eaten frozen raviolis. It's not, it's not that bad. What are those? Those are cannelloni. Cannelloni? Yes. You are kidding me. And who puts them together? Douglas. And when's it from? I don't know. Cannelloni, flat as a crate. Is this what your father was teaching him? No. Oh, my God. What are they? The frozen meatballs. That you oh, they're the frozen meatballs? Yeah, with the frost. Wow. I don't think you two should be running a restaurant. Why? Because I don't think you give a fuck. No, we do. We totally I swear do. to God, no, no, we do. I, I, honestly, if you're cooking at home tomorrow for your family, I can guarantee you'll be cooking better food at home than you'll be serving your restaurant. And what's shocked me so far since I've been here, no one has any pride in what they're doing, what they're saying, and you should not be running a business. He's trying to point out all our flaws, and he's being ultra critical about everything. We're dead. Don't call me tomorrow, I'm not coming in. I'm sick of hearing it. Get out of here. Oh, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I can't do that. No, I can't. I've had enough. Just over the whole thing. I just want to run away. I'm out. I can't do this. It's humiliating. All right, I'll have him just do the yelling to me. No, it's not that, Rita. Douglas is dropping chicken on the floor. People complaining. It's a bunch of bullshit. I, di I didn't sign up for this. I'm not doing this. I'm just not fucking doing it. It's ridiculous. He's a douchebag. He doesn't want to help us. I don't think we should call Chef Ramsay a douchebag. He doesn't care. His eyes are on us. They His are. eyes are on us? Yes. His eyes are on us. I don't know what you're talking about. Rita's riding this wave of like, yeah, Chef Ramsay's right. I mean, I'm happy that she thinks this was all worth it. I'm out of here. I'll do it by myself. Where's Lisa? She left. She's leaving. Lisa, you go, I'm going. I I'm didn't going. sign I up for this. Well, I, I don't give a fuck when you sign. Let me, let, let me tell you something. You walk this. out, I'm out. Straight up. OK. I've had enough. I want him to get the fuck out of here. I want him to leave. He's in my space. 
none of you give a shit here. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I care. I you care. care? Yeah, I do. What, by wiping the ass of the chef like that, he dropped a chicken on the listen, floor. Listen. He picked it back yep, up and started cooking that. it. I get that. But you're just but making we're excuses not for it. That. No, I don't give a fuck. If about I didn't you. see I don't even it, like him. if I didn't see it, we're fucking serving it. No, he would not have. Are you deluded? No, I'm not deluded. We How do you know serve. you would have served it? I know we would. So why was he cooking it then? What the fuck do I know? He's nuts. Then you turn that off. I'm going as well. You go. I go. Okay. on Kitchen Nightmares. Oh, my head's spinning. Legaleria 33 was the dream of sisters Rita oh my God. and Lisa. She certainly doesn't mean me. The daughters of Italian immigrants. They may have grown up in the restaurant business. Your mom and dad have a restaurant in up. Boston? Yes. yes. Five, Five doors. doors down. Correct. Right across the street diagonally. But right from the very beginning, this Italian eatery was a financial disaster. We lose money every single month. We're not getting money. Rita and Lisa claimed they had no idea why. I don't know how to fix it because I don't know what's wrong with it. But it didn't take Chef Ramsay long to discover you have turned the restaurant into something dysfunctional. That this restaurant was fraught with a number of issues. Whatever little customers you've got now, I'm amazed they're in here. The owners treated the restaurant like their own personal hangout. Where are they all going? Rita, constantly smoking. And Lisa, drinking on the job. Are you drunk? Also, they had lost the respect of their staff. They have no responsibility. They have no concern. As for the food, well, it was pretty horrific. Really bad. It's like someone's thrown up on my plate. Frozen, bland, and made without passion. What the fuck are they? Oh, my god. By head chef Doug, who happens to be Rita's ex-husband. I don't think you two should be running a restaurant. At dinner service, there were a number of customer complaints. It's really not very good. It's not fresh. And Rita decided to challenge the customers. Uh, stick your finger in the ravioli and tell me it's cold now. You seem like you're oh. kind of not happy with me. Instead of trying to please them. Oh, my God. And then the unbelievable happened. Chef Doug, in full view of Chef Ramsay, did the unthinkable. You just dropped it on the floor. No. You can't cook it. Chef Ramsay confronted the owners. No one has any pride. And while Rita listened unhappily, he's going to think you're crazy. Lisa remained in denial. He's a douchebag. He doesn't want to help us. I've had enough. I can't do this. I'm out of here. Leaving Gordon no choice but to give her a firm ultimatum. You walk out, I'm out. And now, the dramatic conclusion of La Galleria 33. You go. I go. Let me tell you. I I'm didn't going, sign I'm up for this. Well, I, I didn't give a Mr. fuck what you signed. Let, let, let me tell you something. I didn't sign up You walk this. out, I'm out. Straight up. OK. I've had enough. I mean, I'll stay here today, but I'm not no, going I, I don't. Tomorrow. You're not going to come back tomorrow. I'm out of here. You know, I mean, get your sister out here. I'm going to tell her now straight. And do you know what's too much? Is none of you give a shit here. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. I care. I you care. care? Yeah, I do. What, by wiping the ass of the chef like that, he dropped a chicken on listen, the floor. Listen. He picked it back yep, up and started cooking that. it. I get that. But you just make excuses for it. But we're not serving that. No, I don't give a fuck if about I didn't him. See I don't even it, like him. If I didn't Look. see it, we'd be fucking serving okay. it. No, he would not have. Are you deluded? No, I'm not deluded. We How do you know serve. you wouldn't have served it? Well, I know we wouldn't. So why was he cooking it then? What the fuck do I know? He's nuts. He's nuts. There's like a lot of people out here. Can we like talk somewhere else? Let's go inside. <laughs> this is ridiculous. In here. I really want to go home. I need a cooler. Like, I, I okay. can't do this. No, no. You go, I'm going. I'm out of it. I'm not going to stay here and pick up the pieces for your business for someone that doesn't give a shit. Let me tell you. I do give a shit, but. So if you give a shit, then you'd stay and actually show some willing. I came to help. Okay, I'm just going to have a glass of wine. Ugh, it's driving me to drink. Unbelievable. What, what's happening here? She's trying. She's not trying. She's making excuses. Let me tell you something. Just I, in I, private. I, no, but just, just in private for two minutes. She's going to get slapped tonight. I'm not here to fight you. I can see the pain. I can feel it. But this is beyond out of control. I don't know what to say. I honestly, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I know, I know. If you know it, you must be. Don't get upset. I'm sorry. This just sucks. It's humiliating. I know it is, darling. I, I, I can see that. I'm embarrassed. This is embarrassing. This was your idea. No, it wasn't. Don't blame me for this shit. It's not embarrassing. This, this is embarrassing. 
I'm bringing it to your attention urgently. I want you to be successful. I want to be successful. Above. I do. Above. I do. I want that. You have to strive for excellence. I That's want the bottom excellence. line. Average restaurants fail. Listen, Lisa, we have to fix this. Can you just leave me alone? Unreal. As dinner service winds down at the Galleria 33... What he's saying is true. Sisters Rita and Lisa have just had a rude awakening from Chef Ramsay. Oh, my God. We have to fix this. Can you just leave me alone? But Lisa still needs a little convincing. What he's saying is true. Sucks. And, and we you think our know, food sucks? I don't think our food sucks. I believe some of the things... I think some of them suck. ...could be better. Could be way better. Frozen lasagna, there's got to be a better way. And a frozen meatball, like, he's Ridiculous, right. Yeah. He's right. I feel angry and embarrassed, and I'm, I just don't want to deal with it. I'm struggling to see your hunger, your I, passion. I, it's there. It's there. I'm just, I'm upset. Why are you upset? It's just, like, so up here that we don't know what to do anymore. Look, it's just, they don't respond to me. They don't Normal respond to me. That's what I'm saying. We've got to straighten that out. That's one big, you're the owners. Yeah, we're what the you owners. say goes. I see two girls in front of me that want this business to work, but you've got to stop tiptoeing over the issues. You can't just say, I give up. I'm sorry. And I haven't given up entirely. Good. I'm glad to hear. OK? Good job. Thank you. <sighs> the final orders are now leaving the kitchen. Find me to put the rack of lamb back on the grill. Where is it? Excuse me? It's, where's it's almost ready. No, no, it's ready. Please, it's already medium rare. But just like everything else this evening, it too is painful for owners Rita and Lisa. You're going to overcook it. And not surprisingly. It's not working. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I will not come back here. Many of the customers leave unhappy. Thank you for your patience. Good night. I'm sorry. Tough day. Let me tell you, I've seen it so many times before. We can fix it. It's not too late. I'm here to help. I know. And at times you think I'm not. I'm here no, to help. No, I know you are. I know but I'm are. not going to put a Band-Aid on it. A Band-Aid's not going to keep this business no. open. No, it won't. No. I want you to make a list of things that bother you the most that you want to change. OK. All those things that you feel that you've been ignored, you've had the sort of crap kicked out of you. OK. Get some rest. All right. And we start again tomorrow. New day. Good night. <sighs> Chef Ramsay knows there is a complete disconnect between the owners and the staff. Peter, should we be doing something so he doesn't come in here and start saying? I don't know what to do. Morning. 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 And so he has asked the sisters to share their list of issues with the staff. Today, it's all about moving forward and changing. So, we're going to host a staff meeting. Uh, Lisa and Rita, I would like you to address the staff. It's open forum. First one. The first one is, um, I would like for the staff to stop treating La Galleria as if it were a competition to see who could do less. What? Everyone comes in, sits, eats, laughs, talks. Nobody checks if the tables have been set properly. Nobody ever does this to the chair to see if there's breadcrumbs from the night before to wipe them off. So why would you come into work to sit down before work? And tell me you're tired. Don't forget that. I disagree, totally disagree. Number one, we sit after everything is done. We stop Sarah, after that's not everything. True. That is not it's true at all. I personally, I'm sitting when there is no customer in here. There's never customers in here till 7 o'clock. Does that okay. give you the right yes. to sit all night? Okay. That's not true. Okay. Sorry, that's You're not right. true. You guys are all in denial. You guys need to own what you do. Rosa, how many days do you come in late? Say, every day? I guess. Maybe five times you came in on time? You're a real sloth. Joe. When I ask you to do something, like wash a window, you know the reason? <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Miguel, you scratch your balls in the dining room. But doesn't make me a bad way to scratch my balls. Come on. It's inappropriate. Listen, don't pick on me. I'm picking on everybody. You hate some people when they didn't do nothing. Don't give me the bullshit. 
If you guys cared the way everybody thinks they care, we would be really successful and he wouldn't be standing here. Like, nobody gives a shit. Is that true? I guess we're lazy, that's all. Why are you lazy? Because what I saw, everybody not doing this, cleaning, this and that. I sit with them, I enjoy the party, and says, I don't care because nobody does. Wow. And honestly, I guess the culture of, of what I've seen has made me lazy as well. I'm not doing anything differently than the rest of these people. I'm not, I'm sorry, I disagree. I'm not lazy, I'm sorry. Can I interject, please, yeah. please? This is what I see when I walk in. You are sitting there, Sarah, chit-chat and drinking coffee and looking miserable. No, that's not true, Lisa. And just waiting for the bus people to come and pick up the dirty tables. I disagree, too. You need to clean as well. You guys never, ever asked us, can you please just finish the work with the bus boy? Because for I me, since day one, that shouldn't that. have to be I asked. Have to ask no, Sarah. you guys don't like that. You have to tell us. Sarah, Sarah. No, sorry, sorry, yes, Lisa. No, no. Lisa? Wait a minute, wait a sorry. minute, let's talk okay. real. Yeah, no, we're oh, talking I, real. Okay. Listen to right. me, okay. listen to me. I'm, yeah. I only mentioned that because well, that's something. Whose fault is that after all? Yours? No, it's yours. You expect everything to be done. This business, number one, is not under my name. It's under both of your names. That's why you need to listen Listen to what I say. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying there are no rules, Rita. So don't blame us for that because there are no rules. There are no rules because nobody respects what I say. Like what? Let me just go down my list and you'll see where I'm going with this. Number two says... Point number two. Nobody sitting here can take criticism. Actually, Rosa can. She does like 5,000 things wrong a night. But when you tell her, she says she's sorry, but doesn't really do anything about it. Doug, why can't you take criticism? I do. You don't. You definitely don't. You don't. You don't take well, the criticism. The way I see, I do. So you think different. How about seeing it the way the owners see it? Doug, when I say this dish sucks, you need to own it. What can I do if I don't agree? I don't care. You make another one. That's your job. You cook as if you don't want to be here. Watching the way you perform, it's a man that's just turning up for the check. I've been working here for, no, for the check. Then why don't you say to me and Lisa, you know what, I want to make a special today. I did it, I did it there for Sealy, the other stuff just don't sell. It don't sell because they suck. Those are not specials. The vibe in here is oozing negativity beyond belief. No one gives a shit. From the chefs to the waiters, no one gives a fuck. I'm sorry, I disagree. Wow. Don't take this like a personal attack. I'm just saying, point people out. Just I'm don't not, say you're everyone. You're taking everything okay, personal. Right. Okay, just one more thing. I don't want to be the target whenever, guys, you mention something. I know you're a good waitress, you're efficient, you're fast. But I've had servers actually tell me they don't want to work with you. What's that supposed to mean? It's supposed, it's to, supposed mean to mean that you are a money grub. And you hog all the tables. I see the people, you guys the ones who see the people. When I tried to rotate them, did you not, were you not the first one to complain? Be honest, let's but just, just be honest. But you are the boss, I wanna rotate, why don't you uh, just rotate? No, actually, without that, that, asking, no, just I'm do sorry. it. I'm sorry, because she's not willing to make less money. Shall I give an example? of? When I hired you, you were told you need to pay him 20% of your tips. I tipped 20, more than 20%. This no. bus boy has never seen 15% from you. And that's He has it. seen it. No, he's no. not. No, ask sorry, sorry. Him. Ask sorry. Him. That's ask not him. true. Ask Pat, him, there he is. Have you seen more than 15% from Sarah? Yes or no? No. no. I'm not gonna tip Pat. I'm not gonna tip Sarah. Sarah, hold on, on a second. Listen to me. Hold on, Sarah, on Sarah, listen to me. Whatever, okay. Nobody's You're talking right. about when you make 15% of the charges. You know what I'm talking about? When you made $400 and you gave him 40. That's no. what I'm talking yes, about. that's right. You, you absolutely did. did. No, you I absolutely didn't. Did. No. When you someone's breaking their someone, balls yes, like this yes. and they Rich leave with $40, here, they got him. fucked right no, up the ass. Yes, they did. I was working my ass that day. So was he. If I'm here, I need to make some money. This is my job. You make me pick and choose, Sarah, and I... No, Lisa. Yes. Lisa. Sarah comes in, gets the best station. Sarah gets sat first, gets sat last. Sarah's making all the money. It has to stop. Like, it's ridiculous. Sorry, I'm going home. Thank God. This is a waste of time. Next time for you to fucking hit the road. 
Sarah comes in, gets the best station. Sarah gets sat first, gets sat last. Sarah's making all the money. It has to stop. Chef Ramsay has forced Lisa and Rita to finally confront their staff. I'm sorry, I'm going home. Thank God. And server Sarah doesn't exactly like what they have to say. This is a waste of time. Praise the Lord. What do we do about Sarah? The problem with Sarah is that you've left yourselves open because of the lack of direction that's been shown to the team. And the fact that she's a good waitress, she's got you over a barrel. She's got the reins. Yeah. You've got to take control. How? You can't be beholden to one member of staff, one chef in the kitchen. The staff are dictating for convenience. And that is so wrong. I'm to blame for that, that this is my fault. No, I'm not single-handedly. We both you are. Blame. You're absolutely right. You I both am. are. I am. How can you expect them to right. take we example? By example? Because yeah. it, 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 it starts from the top. Correct. And a yep. fish rots from the head downwards. As owners, you set the rules. And anyone that doesn't coincide with your rules, yeah. they're out. I feel like this has really set a fire in me. No more drinking for me, no more smoking for you. All right. I want to lead by example and really start working to make this place better. You set the rules, you raise the bar, and you all follow it. OK. OK. I want control back. I'm taking it today. I'm taking control back today. There's only one voice, and that's the voice of the owners. So what they say gets done, period. I, I, I realized I was wrong, and I'm wrong. I'll do my best to not be lazy anymore, because it's wrong. And I want to improve myself on these little things that I wasn't good. doing good. I want to do much better. Time to change. Yes. Got it? Yes. Absolutely. OK, um, I appreciate the meeting. Right. Yeah, well done. Good Thank points. Thank you. Thanks. I love this man. Well, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. That was fucking great. <laughs> I love him. I love him. I hope he stays. God, please make him stay for like. Are you fucking out of your mind? Here Who's he talking? <gasps> the chef. Chef is back. Hello. Okay then. I have a surprise for you. A surprise for me? Yes. Really? That's very yeah. kind. You want to see it? Uh, where is it? Oh, right here. <laughs> okay. Because you're gonna. <laughs> no, Don't I'm a scared. scare no, me. No, you're okay. making me nervous. <laughs> okay. I'm hoping that you like it. I, I figured you got so upset about that tiramisu and nobody cared enough to make it for you. You made a tiramisu? So I did. I made you wow. a tiramisu this morning. Did you make it with Doug? No. No. I made it myself. How long did it take you? Uh, less than an hour. Less than an hour, Doug. It is fresh. I hope you uh, like well, it. Well, the fact that we got it, look at that. Um, nice. Have you made this this morning, seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. Yeah? I'm impressed. Mmm. It's nice. It is really. I like it. Yeah, it's very nice. Mmm. He likes the tiramisu. A winner. Uh, that's delicious. Good job. Uh, right, I need all of you. I've just okay. been. Uh... Uh, guys, come over, please. All of you, please. Let's go. God, no one moves faster, do they? It's like fucking camels getting off the <laughs> desert. Let's go. Now, I've done a lot of research around the city of Boston. And this is a highly competitive area, right? Yes. How do you stand out from that competition? We don't. I don't know. That's obvious. We are like almost like everybody. Not bad and no worse. I think we are good. That's where you're wrong, young man. Last night, throughout service, I snapped off a few photos just to show you what your food looks like. Wow. What is that? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it? No, That's I not do. a good sign. I do, I do. I'm scared. These are from my phone. Oh, my God. Uh, Doug, what is that? Raviolis? It could be eggplant. No, it's seafood ravioli. Ravioli. Actually, it's eggplant ravioli. It's eggplant. The fact that you don't even know what it is instantly scares the shit out of me. Crazy. <laughs> seafood ravioli. Let's put it up there. Yeah? Do you have to hang them? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, it's a gallery, isn't it? Next. What is it? Oh, God. Paradiso? God, paradiso. Does that look like paradise to anyone? It looks like vomit. Vomit. Such inside. a pie hole. You're not the manager anymore. <laughs> or the inside of a colostomy bag. <laughs> what is this? Antipasto. With balsamic vinegar spewed all over it. Do you think they do that in Italy? 
No, it's only supposed to be on the tomato mozzarella. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Well, someone needs to get to fucking Lens Crafter urgently. Next. Oh, please, no more. <laughs> oh, the rack of lamb. <laughs> the rack of lamb. Our rack of lamb looks like a sick animal. I mean, I don't know a lot of sick animals, but like a sick, a sick animal. That is currently leaving your dining room on a daily basis. That's like an abstract. That looks like shit. Everything we serve is this weird orange, pinky color. It doesn't look like food. It's, it wasn't appetizing at all. Oh, my god. It's embarrassing. That's your food, Doug. There, yes? Answer the chef, Doug. Yeah, yep. <sighs> Let me show you some other photos of what Boston's best Italian restaurants are putting out. Tortellini of seafood. Mm. Oh, that's just beautiful. It's nice. Look at this. Oh, that's nice. Shrimp and linguine. It's like a piece of art. That does nice. look good. Lamb served in a local Italian restaurant. Looks nice. A little antipasta. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's nice. For sure. Look at the comparisons. It's just a better version, visually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And taste-wise. Did you stop talking in my ear? What's wrong? I don't know what he's saying. And I'll tell you what he's saying. saying. That's ridiculous. Go on. The food looks better because those were taken as close-ups and these were far away. <laughs> OK, uh, no. No. If I had to pull out that one and show you this one with the bits of crap... Listen. Your food is dated. And there is no comparison. No, there isn't. It doesn't look good. Have a little bit of pride. Doug, are you willing to learn and raise your game? Yeah, I don't like to follow, like, people. I, you know, I like to do things different my way. A world-renowned chef is in here telling you, like, you're fucking up and you have no passion, and he's still resisting. I gotta look for somebody else. Jeff Ramsey has made it clear to the staff the strength of the competition in Boston. The message here is that we want to deliver something better. But the real question is, has the message gotten through to the stubborn head chef? Doug, are you willing to learn and raise your game? Yeah. Think that we can make it look better. We have to make it look better. Yep, <clears throat> yes. I know that the food he shows it looks better. And I want to be like that. I want to know more. So I'm open to any ideas. I am not interested in going backwards. That's not up for compromise. Raise the bar. I'm hopeful for Douglas. I'm hoping he can embrace change. Like, it has to work. It has to work. With more than 80 Italian restaurants in the North End alone, Woo. Chef Ramsay knows that La Galleria 33 needs to not only have a major upgrade in its food, just have a little gather over there, but it needs something extra to help it stand out from the competition. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> Here's the thing as a new added feature to La Galleria 33's menu, we'll be offering small plates of classic Italian cuisine, something different. Something that nobody is doing. It gives you that diversity, giving your customers the option to enjoy many flavors. That is a great idea. It's beautiful. <laughs> Starting off with homemade meatballs. Beautiful. Roasted chicken livers, blended with butter. Nice. Uh, and then truffle and lemon asparagus risotto. Oh, my god. And gavatelli, done with beautiful sun-dried tomatoes. It's awesome. Small plates are great because despite my size, I actually eat very small portions, so now I can have, like, several different things. Dig in. Wow. Mm. Very good. Mm. Very good. Oh, very good. Yeah. Mm. The manager oh. approves. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't imagine I'd be this pleased. I'm really, really very happy. Just good stuff. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like night and day. You can't compare the new dishes to the old dishes. Did you taste that? It's amazing, isn't it? It's like comparing, you know, an apple to a banana. Both fruit, but not the same thing. Done. 
Don't look so nervous. You actually can make that. Absolutely. You can do it. Do it or be killed. Tell them to get something else You know, that's his response to everything. Doug, what I need is your attitude to change, that you want to learn. I do. Last time we said that, you got divorced. <laughs> Very wow. funny. <laughs> Guys, you need to be trained. It's a very good point. That's why I'm asking, because I'm smart. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what you need is a chef in here that can help you. Are you staying? No, but I have found a very talented individual that is going to be with you to help execute these amazing dishes. Here he is. Get him in here. Michael, Success. come on in. Young man, Hi. welcome. Hey. Hi, Hi Michael. Michael Server. He's trained in some of the best Italian restaurants in the country. He's going to be here for the next month, training, working closely on a day-to-day -day basis with Doug. Oh, nice. I'm taking care of the check in order that he spends that time in here and implements that standard. I don't care if I'm here day and night. I just want to <laughs> learn. Good. That's the attitude I want to hear. Excited for the challenge? Yes, definitely. Yeah? Good. I'm so excited that we have a new chef. I just hope we don't scare him off, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> we're really all, we're very dysfunctional. I expect us not just to be another restaurant, but I expect us to be the restaurant in the North End. I'm very excited. <laughs> We're very I'm excited, excited to run this restaurant with a different spirit. I don't think we're a horror show anymore. I think it's a new beginning. It's like new dawn. We're going to be fine. We're going to be good. It's going to be good. I might still be a horror show. I, I don't know. I'm going to Gordon Ramsay's house. I'll be his nanny. I'll watch his kids. No, I don't really like kids, but I will definitely clean his house. I'll be his dog walk. I'll snuggle up on the bottom of his bed and keep his feet warm. With everyone committed to change, Put a little sauce on the bottom just to caramelize it. A yeah. little bit on top, too. Gives it that nice color. Chef Mike goes right to work, teaching Doug how to execute the new menu. Looks great. And later that night, Chef Ramsay and his team turned their attention to transforming the decor of La Galleria 33. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. The next morning, Sarah returned to La Galleria 33 with a new attitude. Today is a absolutely humongous day. And owners Lisa and Rita are happy to have her back, at least for now. Today is where we put La Galleria 33 on the map. We cement the future of this restaurant. I'm excited. I'm excited? I want to get in there. <laughs> right, guys, you ready to see your new restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. OK. You're going to love it. Oh, welcome. my welcome, God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, it is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Right. This is so oh, nice. Clean. Oh, my God. Welcome to your new restaurant. I love it. No more dark red walls. It's very chic, fresh, modern, and clean. The ooze is that romantic feel. Wow. Gone are those hideous plastic oh, clouds yeah. on the wall. We have a new contemporary look. Oh. Quite sexy. That's awesome. Very excited to see those shits on the wall gone. Those were awful. It's so nice to see exposed brick. It looks great. Modern lighting in order to sort of lift. Our oh lighting my God. sucked. We love it. it. And then, of course, the blackboard, this amazing this North End so map, <laughs> highlighting two of the most important restaurants. La Galleria 33, right next to Mum and Dad. Look at this, I didn't see the cool the bread board. board. That's right. <laughs> so so cool. when you come in, we have this huge chopping board with La Galleria 33 that really stamped is on great. there. I love that cutting board. I, I'm going to hit somebody with it. Probably Sarah and Miguel and Doug and Lisa. It's really Abby, lovely. Yes. Yeah. I think it looks amazing. I, I think you have a very contemporary, modern, chic Italian dining room. It's beautiful. I love it. I feel like we have our own identity as a restaurant now. I feel like it's us. I'm excited to work here and be here, and it's beautiful. This is the way it should have been done. So now, instead of sitting down for 10 hours, we're going to keep it clean. It's the biggest night in the history of La Galleria 33. Guys, some words of encouragement before the very busy evening begins. And Rita and Lisa want to make sure that everyone is focused on the job at hand. All right, this is our big relaunch. Time for us to work as a team. Please don't spill anything on the customers. No ball scratching. Rosa, smile. Sarah, do not argue tonight. Don't oh, mention God. the three, though. We're not going to yeah, argue. Yeah, no. Just do your best. Everything will be fine. Who's the boss in here? Rita and Lisa. Mm -hmm.
Run this dining room with conviction. What's the special tonight? The, the brands, you know? Sell that, yeah? Describe the porchetta. The porchetta. What's it served with? <laughs> no, no, you should know. Describe the porchetta. Porchetta is a roasted pork. See, si. served on. Served on. Oh, God. Yeah, no. Yeah. OK. Describe the ozabuco. So, buco is a uh, lamb shank. Lamb shank? You tasted it. I know, it. but I don't remember all the Really? Things. Yes. Veal, you muppet. Can I suggest, just for five minutes, you take the menus yeah. and you talk yeah. to the chefs and you start logging that in there. What's all that about? Lamb. Lamb. What? I need some vodka. While the staff brushes up quickly on the menus, Risotto. the doors open for the relaunch of the Galleria 33. Hello, how are you? Can I have your name? Mendoza. Pat, you're pissing all over the floor. Oh. Good evening, ladies. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good. And uh, I just want to let you know that we have a beautiful fish tonight. It's called Branzino. Psst. Smile. He's, uh, he's uh, very good. And the risotto is unbelievable today. Okay. Explain the small plates. Small plates. Tasty. And, uh, we also have a, like a small plate. Jesus you know, like Christ. To start. I'm going to start off with the small plate of lamb. To order some appetizers to start. Okay. Arancini. So meatball, calamari, oh, yes. arancini. Rita, bring some orders here so they don't come all at once. You okay? People coming in and I don't see orders. How long for the first order, please? I don't know. Oh my God, this thing. We need some orders in here, please, guys, yeah? Rita. What, honey? It's not going in. I don't know why. Oh, my God. This thing is not working. Uh, chef. Yes? This is, doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? It's not going through. It's not going through. Can we use the other one around the corner? The one over here, Sarah. Yeah. Try it over here, honey. Why is that not going through? We had them on this afternoon, didn't we? You OK? This has to be shut down. It's not working. Fuck. This one's not working either. Fuck. It's really stressful. Is it OK? Is it on? Not yet. I think this place is cursed. Fuck you, bitch. Let's just use checks. Yeah. We need to regroup and, you know, and just keep moving. Paper checks, paper checks. Do you have yes. paper checks? Yes. Right. Thank you. That was great from Lisa to step up that moment and bring us the regular checks. Paper checks. It feels really good that we have a boss. OK, Michael, now there's no more computer. The POS system's gone down, and we do handwritten tickets. Oh, uh, chef, order. Let's do it. With Lisa having a quick solution to the ticket problem. Can I give you an order? Yes. Michael, there's one here as well. Thank you. Chef Doug and Chef Mike work together to get the kitchen back into gear. You ready to plate that gnocchi? You got your small plate ready? Whenever you're ready, send it out. That's for you. Yes. We're going on that first ticket. You ready? Take this one. Thank you. And as a result, the much-anticipated small plates... I have the lamb pigs and the meatballs. ...are now heading out to the diners. Wow, that's really good. It's perfectly fried. Very cool. I like it. This is amazing. I need gnocchi and chicken marsala. OK, we need a gnocchi and a marsala. It's working. OK, I need a uh, mancini. OK, let's start off. Salt. No, no, no. Look, come here. Why are you Rosa. doing that? Rosa! I'm sorry. I'm just used to putting them here. I know you're used to... It's simple, but you make it so difficult. Who's expediting tonight? Rita, sorry. The staff, they're just like a bunch of misfits. They don't listen to me. Do you want to go backwards or to go forward? Go no, forward. Right, get used to change, young lady, or go home. I really hope this fucking bitch doesn't mess this up for me. Chef, table two, anytime you can fire. What is it, Ma Miguel? Gnocchi, agnolotti and marsala. Yeah, you got it right now. No marsala, he does not have that. No marsala? I have a marsala, yes, he's here. Yes, make the marsala. I'm talking about marsala. Jesus Christ, Mickey, get out of here. I'll tell you what I need. Marsala and I need agnolotti. Marsala you need to speak agnolotti. to me. It's right over here. I Get you just said no more stuff. I need a more Shut your face. Oh, fuck, man. You know, I can't, I yeah, can't can deal with this up? fucking stupidity. Lisa, can I? I need one. Long time ago, they ordered the lady. Don't yeah. shout at her. Get out of here, Miguel. What is wrong with Medium, you? Medium, fuck you. That's too stinks. Get a grip and start listening and do what I am saying. listening to you, OK? So no, you just leave me alone. I'm working this way. If you're not happy with me, tell me to get the fuck out of here. I will leave you.
Hey, look at me. I don't care what you do. Don't start. I don't care. Don't you start. Okay. Don't you start. Don't care what you In front do. of these customers, don't you start. I'll drag you outside. And what? What are you gonna do? Yeah. I'll, do you know what I'll do? It's relaunch night at La Galleria 33. He no needs massage. a need mask. Shut your face. And where McKaylee's lack of communication with Rita. If you're not happy with me, tell me to get the fuck out and I will leave here. Is putting the service in jeopardy. In front of these customers, don't you start. I'll drag you outside. And what? What are you gonna do? I'll make you respect the fucking owners. Don't start. No, no, don't seriously, start. this is like my big open to McKay. This they is what you do to me. That's two stinks. It's like the lunatics leaving the asylum. You're expediting. Damn. We're just shooting ourselves in the foot there. We're just destroying ourselves. I don't know why we're doing it. Don't take shit from them. No, I'm not going to no, take no shit fucking way. Lift it up now, yeah? Yeah. OK. Now, Lisa, the restaurant's full now. You raise your game and follow the waiters every time. Own it now, yeah? Yeah. Lift it up a little bit. Yes. Here, got to drive them. Regroup them, get them together, and finish strong. What makes this fucked up is the staff. They're not respecting me. They're not understanding it's a new system. I have to beat them into that. Miguel, I need you. I want you to listen to me. This is really important. No, give me that No, no, no. I want you to listen. When you call something, who's the one person you come to? I come to Rita. Me, See, because I get shutting confused. Shutting over Doug. He's in the no. thick of it now. He's me, busy now. Me. OK, I'll call you. This one I didn't find yet. They're still working on the appetite. But do they, do they have these appetites? Yeah, they're eating the appetite. Okay, so I need just to gonna... know because I need to cross. All right, so I will tell you when they're done yes. for the entry. Yes, yes, yes. Just take a deep breath and relax. You're just <clears> nervous. <throat> we can't revert back to, you know, the old way of doing things. Reader and I, we need to take the reins and get back on top of things. Fire two specials, a large gnocchi, and a veal sobuco. We got this. We got this, cash. Well, we do. Hey, listen, you're doing a great job. Rita? Yes. These branzinos go with one large risotto. Sarah, yes. Start to take these. Okay. Start to I'll take start these. Them right now. And uh, we have the lasagna, ladies. Oh my God. Welcome. I really apologize for the weights. It's good. <laughs> and there was your agnolotti and enjoy the one. Right, so Sorry about the delay. That's okay. The customers seem to really love the food. It's nice to see people actually finish a dish. They're not giving them oversized portions of orange shit. It feels good knowing that it's good. We're serving delicious food and that people are enjoying it. You got the rocket in That's gone, right? Yep. So I'm just waiting on this and then all my tables will be eaten. Gnocchi, marsala. Thank you, chefs. Very yes, nice. Thank you. I think that's everything. OK, beautiful. I'm a champ. I am. It just rolls. My head is so busy. Isn't that great? It's wonderful to see teamwork. It really is. I took control of the Galleria 33. Doug, good job. Well done. We did good. It was hard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Wow, what a night. Well done. It wasn't perfect. Yes, there were bumps, but we didn't give up. No. People love the food. And Rita and Lisa, that says a lot about your chef tonight. Doug really stepped up, really delivered, and you maintained your standards from the first dish to the last. So well done. Thanks. Very nice, Doug. Really well done. Very good, Doug. In the end, the most important thing is every member of staff here tonight listened to the owners. And it wasn't the owners listening to the staff. It was reversed. That's the way it's going to be. Get used to it. That's the way it is. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on. Yes. I'd like two minutes with the owners, please. Come over here. Come over. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. I yes. think that once they run this a few more times and that POS system isn't broken, I think that I think it's going to be fabulous. I'll stand here. What, what's the matter? You have two arms. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, here, 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 here's what I saw. Two owners uh, running their restaurants, not the restaurant yeah. running them. Yeah, now, that's important. It is. You've got it. You've got to stay on it, but you never, ever ever become beholden to your staff again. Right. All right. Well done to both of you. Thank you. Okay, look after yourselves. All right. Yeah? I wish okay. you would stay, just... Yeah. I want to keep him. I feel like I'm holding a pistol when he's around. I just feel like so empowered by him. I'll tie him up to a boiler downstairs. Please. He's staying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. I wish you could stay. What a week. <laughs> uh, I wish it was that easy. There are other nightmares out there. Bigger than me, you think? <laughs> Ask me that question 
in six months' time, I'll tell you. All right. Look after yourselves, OK? Right. And good luck. All right. Thank okay. you. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right. Good night. Thank you, Chef. Good night. Thank you. Good night, good night, good night. I'm so sad to see him go. I never thought I would say that. I hated that man two days ago, and he's just, he's great. I really love him. He really lifted us up. Sad. He's leaving. Mm. Well. <sighs> wow. This has been one of the most unusual yet one of the most enjoyable kitchen nightmares I've ever done. And I'm so proud of how far these two sisters have come in only a matter of days. There may be one of eight Italian restaurants in the North End, but to me personally, they're always going to be very special, let me tell you. Wow, Ozabuco, lamb. Are you kidding me? Seafood ravioli Gordon, special. wait, Gordon, Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay, you can't go. I cannot stay. You can stay. I, 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 just like, just I, I, 20 more I, I, minutes. I, I can't stay Just one or so buco more. I, I can't. In the weeks that followed, Rita and Lisa took Chef Ramsay's advice and took charge of their restaurant. I want you to take the old Galleria out of your head. They not only set new rules, but we're diligent in enforcing them. This is definitely going back. This wasn't the way the lasagna looked. There was one casualty, however, and that was Sarah, who preferred her own set of rules. Right here, Chef. I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, just like their parents, Lisa and Rita have a successful restaurant in Boston's North End. I just want to say that I was like a koala bear. Even though Lisa like expressed all her bitchiness, I was ready. I was yeah. a soft, cuddly koala bear, but I had my claws ready to go just in case. But I loved it. You didn't look like you had any claws. You I was ready. Up his ass, no matter where he was. Well, went. I wanted to hear what he had to say, everything. I loved it. I want him back. Where is he? I'm going to go find I him. I love him now, yeah. In Brooklyn, New York, lies the historic neighborhood of Cobble Hill a hip, thriving area, and home to Sal's Pizzeria, run by John Esposito. My parents came here from Italy, and they took over this pizzeria in 1970. And at the age of 14, uh, I left high school to help my mom and dad run the business. This has become my life ever since. Hello, Sal, so how can I help you? We ran the place very successfully. Thank you. By the 90s, we were able to purchase the restaurant next door. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome to Maria's. Thank you. My mom became sick. She got diagnosed with cancer. And we thought the right thing to do was to name the room after my mom. That's why you have Sal's Pizza and Mama Maria's. His father passed away, his mom passed away. He was the only one in charge of everything. And as the years passed, it started to go down. We don't have that kind of volume of sales that we once had. But I can't figure out the reason why it dropped off. Where's the people? I've stayed the same. I haven't changed. They weren't a fan of the eggplant. I don't know what they're doing over there. John, as the owner, is supposed to be in charge of this whole place, including the kitchen. But he's usually up front making pizzas covered in, in flour. It's a nightmare, right? It is a fucking nightmare. The pizzeria and a restaurant are two different animals. That's like the accountant that thought it'd be cool to open a wine bar. Stop paying attention over here for a minute. Get in the kitchen. Really look at what's going on. John treats this place like his second home. He's got four kids that are always here, running around the restaurant. It doesn't really look good for the restaurant. John is an extremely stubborn owner. All right, so this is the way we're going to set up the table. Listen, hold your rolls and tell me get down here. It's my restaurant. In his mind, the system has worked, but it really stopped working like 20 years ago. Cobble Hill used to be a very old school Italian neighborhood, but now we have much, much younger people moving in. Uh, a lot of people like to call them hipsters. Hey, sorry, uh, spaghetti doesn't taste quite right. I don't know what to tell you. It's a fresh tomato sauce. Throw this up. Am I gonna put on plastic glasses, get a funky haircut, put an earring in my ear just to accommodate the new people? I'm not gonna do that. How about things on this side? Uh, bad, horrible. Really? Yeah. John is holding on to the past and to the way things were done when his parents ran the business. We didn't do anything tonight. We didn't even do a quarter of what we used to do. Any businessman would have said, enough's enough, pull the plug. But how do you pull the plug on family history? Pretty tough. Yeah. We got to do something to boost these checks. This place, it's mom and dad. 
losing one is like losing a parent again. They're not prepared to handle that. Mama Maria's. What is that? That is ghastly. Holes everywhere. That is not a good sign. Damn. My goodness me. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? First name is? Fabio. Yeah, good to see you. I'm right. the manager here. That outside looks like an eyesore. Mm -hmm. Whose idea was that? The owner, he actually cut the letters out. Why? I guess because it was tearing and he just completed the whole thing. And the owner is? John. And he is where? Next door. He's responsible for, like, the pizzeria. So, two restaurants? Right. Mama Maria's I'm standing in. Right, and then there's Charles Pizzeria next door. Um, right, I'm gonna go meet the owner. Okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. Wow. So, Sal's Pizzeria. John? There he is there. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Excellent. So, are you filling in today? Someone phoning sick? I pretty Peter much make, make the pizzas. Yeah, I always work the front of the counter. Oh, so you're behind there constant? Yeah. Wow. How long have you been making pizzas? Since I'm um, 10 years old. That's incredible. I got confused with a hideous canopy outside. Was that you who cut holes in the canopy? Uh, actually, the wind did that. The wind did that? Yeah. Anyway, come around. Let's have a, a catch up. OK, first of all, give me a little insight, the history. My mom and dad had a pizzeria, and my father and my mother did all the cooking in the back. Sure. By the 90s, my mom got sick. She came down with cancer. She passed first. I'm sorry, he's no longer with me. Wow. So that's why it has two different right. names. Mom and dad, Sal and Maria. Right. Combined restaurants, what is the number one problem here? We're not busy. You're not busy? Uh, there's more competition in the neighborhood, and uh, we're struggling. We're struggling to keep the doors open. It's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I'd like to meet and find out what's going on here. It's very uncomfortable for me to sit here right now and ask for help. Thank you. I'm not feeling who I am. I feel weak. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? And this is? Lori. Lori, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm a waitress. Excellent. What's wrong with the restaurant? Um, lack of leadership. Uh, John's a little frantic, chaotic, um, usually very busy in the pizzeria. John has been here forever. So you would think John would know how to run this place, but he doesn't want to change anything because this is what his parents knew before they passed away. Homemade pastas. Pasta made daily on the premises. All the pastas made fresh on a daily basis. Yep. OK, um, start off with the tortellini patata. OK. I've got to try the spaghetti meatballs. Spaghetti meatballs. Margarita, please. OK. Thank you. Wow. Mangalea Reganata, second course. You got the tortellini patate. The food is not good here, but it's not my food. I'm serving it the same way we always serve it. Oh, boy. I think the chef Ramsey's going to have a heart attack when he sees what goes on around here. Oh, my god. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very healthy. How are you? Good. I'm Fran. I'm good. Fran, nice to see you, darling. What'd you do? I oh, just showed the desserts to oh, the Oh, OK. Let's, let's have a look. Show sure. me. Wow. So they showcase the desserts. Mm. So this is our desserts. Everything's made here fresh on premise. Right. So, jeez. Uh, what is that? It's butter. It's, oh, it's butter? Yeah, just to display Ooh. as the ice cream. And that, uh, that mold on there, can you show that? No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. And that bit there? Yeah. And Fabio, you're the general manager, right? So you've got no idea this. We're presenting those moldy bits of shit. And it's stuck with butter on top. Now, those are just for display. Hold on, hold on. For... Because they're for display, you've got the right to cake them in mold and serve customers a display that's full of mold. So are we supposed to, like, put a fresh one every day so we can throw it out? Are you kidding me? What do you think? I think that, you know, as long as it's... I mean, it's fresh, it's good. I mean, you... but I wouldn't... But I wouldn't... Are you... I mean, have you lost the plot? No, I haven't. No. It's changed yeah, colours four times, and it absolutely reeks. All I'm saying is that this is for display. We're not serving it. So, do the customers deserve a display that's full of shit? Oh, my God. He's ripping into him. He's ripping into him, man. Look at this mess. Oh, my God. That, it must be two months old. It's probably a few days old. A few days? Uh, 
We don't serve it. It's for presentation. I'm aware you're not serving it. Thank fuck Gold Star. Congratulations on that one. That's, uh, that's a big breakthrough with you. That's why you're here. Excuse me? That's why you're here. I'm here to tell you that that shit, and you no. shouldn't be presenting it. No, you don't know the difference between mold and fresh? It's for presentation only. Give me two seconds. I need to clean my hands. I'm caked in mold. I've got disgusting butter, and I've got fucking hands full of pus. Oh, my God. Oh, Christ almighty. You got Tylenol or codeine? No. <laughs> He's gonna come throw it at us. I'd rather him throw it at us than we serve it to him. The patata? Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know. It's bland. I mean, really bland. And visually, it looks like someone's just eaten that whole dessert tray. And it shot out twice as quick as it went in. Laurie. It's just bland. I mean, really bland. I'll let them know. And is this frozen because there's a grainy potato flavor inside that... I don't think anything's frozen here. Yeah, so the tortellini aren't frozen. I'll double check. Thank you, though. Uh-oh. He said it was very, very bland. He asked if the, um, the tortellini were frozen. I wasn't sure if they were frozen or not. He's right. All our pasta's fresh frozen. That's the most mind-boggling thing in this place. We make everything and then freeze it. Chef, the Twitter leavings are frozen. Oh, they are frozen? They are. So you advertise you're making it daily, but you freeze it daily. Something's wrong big time. Thank you, though. Wow. They said the Twitter leavings is frozen. I, I, I can't... I didn't even know this shit. Me either. I thought everything was, like, fresh. It makes no sense. What, to make it fresh and then freeze it? And then freeze it. It makes no sense. It's like that. Does anyone clean here? Fabio, how often is this place cleaned? I have no idea. You've got no idea when this place was last cleaned? They don't have a cleaning crew. All these? I'm not sure I'll have to ask John. What's that smell in here? <laughs> ah, shit. Fuck. <laughs> That's the smell. Oh, my God. What in the fuck? Fab. It was a little bit of a payback, because he just finished tearing me apart. I thought that was a little bit of karma. Did I get you? Yeah. Where in the fuck did all that come from? You over flooded it. Who watered the plants this morning? John? Yeah. They're full of water. Somebody watered the plants. Someone's doing a great job at watering plants, but not changing desserts. Man! Wow. Now I'll pay for any dry cleaning, right? OK? Fuck me. The spaghetti and meatballs. I would say enjoy, but I know better. Spaghetti and meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs. Um, fresh meatballs or frozen? Frozen. Oh, come on. Everything is frozen? Look at that now inside, how rubbery it looks, even before tasting it. Man, look at that, how dry that is. Dry. Disgusting frozen meatballs. Uh oh. Meatballs are frozen, rubbery, and dry. He's right. Okay. Every product we use in here is frozen. When I first started here, we cut up a leg of veal, and I'm still waiting to use it. And here's your pizza. For a margarita pizza, it's very greasy. Oil slicks in here. Doesn't like the pizza either. It's too greasy. That's just full of grease. Laurie, the pizza's grease is anything. But what concerns me is John's behind the bar, all this shit food's coming out, and I want him to taste what he's sending me, because I'm a little bit miffed to why I'm here if no one's caring. Okay. Please? Sure. Wow. He said the pizza is greasy and that you should be tasting everything that before it gets sent out to him. Bullshit. I've had enough. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I know. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. After being disappointed by bland frozen food and greasy pizza at Brooklyn's Mama Maria's, Joke. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen, looking for an explanation. 
I don't want to talk to this guy when he comes in here. Come on, everybody outside. Uh, introduce me to who's who. This is Joe. Joe. This is Oscar. Joe. How are you? Hi, how are you? Come through. Valentino. Hello, sir. Valentino, how Very are you? Good to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Um, I don't know where to start. I've just had one of the most disgusting lunches I've ever had. I stopped a dessert tray full of mouldy dessert and the tortellini, grainy, bland, and the potato was just dreadful. The meatballs, frozen, dry, solid. Yes, they're disgusting. I don't eat them. But you can't make meatballs every day. You get 20 pounds of chopped meat, you make the meatballs, and you freeze the rest. Do you know how long it takes to make five pounds of meatballs? 10 minutes. It's what we've done all our lifetime. I haven't just started this yesterday. The meatballs are always done. If you should get away with it, 1967. It's 2012, John. Does anyone have standards here? We're not in control of the menu. Whose menu is it? It's my menu. I'm embarrassed to do some of the things that we do here. Are you kidding me? We make pasta fresh and we freeze it. Like, are you crazy? But why are you doing it? I don't have a choice. Who's stopping you? The menu, my menu. Why don't you listen to this man? He's spoken more sense in the last five minutes than anybody has since I've been here. Do you listen to your staff? They're not paying my bills. I'm the guy paying the bills. Oh, because you make the pizza, and so they can't have a voice. You should be nowhere near this business. I don't agree with you. I think we should close the doors. I don't think this man actually gives a shit. Can I, I didn't, I didn't can, call you can, because can I, I want to put the key to the door. I, if I need you to tell me to put the key to the door, sure. I would have done that without you okay. coming here. It worked before. Why can't it work now? But you're running on nostalgia. It stood still. And yet, outside these four walls, the whole neighborhood has overtaken you. You're in love with the memories, John. I don't know what to say. Thank you for your honesty. I need a shower. I fucking stink of plant juice. I'm not going to close the doors just because he said he said so. I don't agree with him. 100% game on, all right? Within a short time of his arrival, Chef Ramsay has discovered that the staff may actually know more than the owner. What are we supposed to do? So we didn't fucking make these recipes. And now he's eager to see how the team functions in a dinner service. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome to Marley's. Second course, Papa Del tomato sauce. Our boxes, pizza boxes, grande before, rapido. What's going on down here? Hello. Business running as normal, John. Yes, this is. Yes. Yeah. If I wasn't here, you'd be doing exactly the same. Exactly the same. No difference. Portobello clam, I need that first. So that's what John would normally do, just all night on the pizzas out there. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't come in here, he just stays out there all night. He's afraid. I think he's afraid of the kitchen. He's afraid of the I kitchen? I think so, sir. He owns the place. I know. It's crazy. Well, I mean, it's insane. As John seems content to pound away at the pizza oven... Margarita sauce, margarita! The kitchen, led by Joe, is pushing out food at a steady pace. Pick it up! Here is your pasta. But that doesn't mean the fast-arriving food is pleasing the customers. How's everything? Um, the shells are, like, frozen. <laughs> it looked like it's freezer burned. All I got was rosemary. All I taste is rosemary. I don't taste any of the sauce. Or I found a bone in my sauce. What's that? A bone. A bone. A bone. I'm a vegetarian. Sorry. The sauce. Joe, two seconds. There's a bone in a rigatini, and she's vegetarian. And the tomato sauce, they put pork bones in it. What the fuck? She's vegetarian. That's how we do it every day. John is responsible for the methods that we use to produce the food. Get me John, urgently. He says, if you don't like it, leave. John, this, this is urgent now. A lady had just found a pork bone in the rigatini. We use to give the sauce over. We always, always add it. Sausage, So sauce. you're serving pork bones in the sauce to a vegetarian. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's how we prepare food for the last 40 years, and I don't see it being a problem. A pork sauce to a fucking vegetarian? It's the way we've always done our business. But you can't serve a vegetarian a pork sauce. Um, what the fuck is going on here? I don't know what, what... That's fucking enough. 
had enough. I had fucking enough. Do you want me to order you a coffee? Will that make it better? Are you okay? Because I can't hear you. Are you waiting for the uh, bathroom, honey? No, um, my friend got sick. Is he vegetarian? No. No. What did he have? The lobster tail. Okay. And the lobster, he said, tasted um, funny. And the next thing I knew, he was sick. John, you know what you said? The gentleman sick in the bathroom. Yeah, he had lobster, I had the mushroom, and then... Would you like a medical assistance? Would you like for me to call 911? Joe, pass me a lobster tail, please. I need one lobster tail. It's tough, right? Why are you guys throwing up? He's in the bathroom and he's sick. Please show me exactly what you served that customer. Yeah? Please. Thank you. Fucking okay, hell. You all right? Okay. Go. Chef, your lobster's ready. Sure. John, come here, you. You smell it. Seriously. It's fishy. I can smell the ammonia. Yeah, you smell that? And that's what that man has just eaten. That's so... ammonia. That's what releases. When the body starts to decompose, yeah. it's been pulled apart. And then decompose. That's what makes it bad. Joe, just clarify something for me. We could possibly kill them. Kill someone. And whilst we're discussing this, and there's a man vomiting in the toilet now. I can't believe this is happening right now. Feels like shit to know that you got somebody sick. And it's the first time you've got your head out the dough. But it's John's responsibility no matter what, because John buys all the product that we use. Yeah, please. Should we call an ambulance? Yeah. It's just not look well. Call an ambulance. Hi, this is Sal's Pizzeria. I need an ambulance. The customer's not feeling well. Your face is really flushed. Oh, my god. My worst fear is for anybody to get sick in my restaurant. Where's a shot of something? I need a shot. I need a shot of something. I got a guy vomiting. Give me, give me something. Give me quick. Vodka, vodka, vodka. If somebody came to your house and you cooked them a dinner, how would you feel he started puking all over the place? The guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sit down. Oh, my God. So we just saw an ambulance come out? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Need to kill the cameras. Kill the cameras. It's dinner service at Mama Maria's. You all right? OK. Go. One of the diners is feeling ill after eating a questionable lobster. Smart. Seriously. Fishy. And that's what that man has just eaten. And the paramedics have just arrived on the scene. A guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman's sitting down. It's terrible for anybody to get sick on anything that you serve. You, you, I want to stop everything. Just close the fucking plate down now. OK, so whatever's been served has been served. I do not Shut want to serve. I do not want to serve anything else. Joe, Shut it down. Come, come. Talk to fucking vegetarians. Now this. I've had it. Just stop. Everybody stop, OK? Nothing else leaves this kitchen unless it's going in a garbage bag. OK, so. When I shut it down, they'll just kick just everybody apologize, out. Just apologize, no check, deeply sorry, and we have a, an issue that I have to deal with. My apologies. OK. We need to close, go to the tables, tell everybody they need to go. No checks, just go. OK, close down. Okay. So sorry, but we're going to close the restaurant down, too. So should we not eat this? Yes, don't eat it, just, yeah, don't, don't eat it, just. It. We're shutting okay. down. We are shutting down, I'm sorry. Am I going to get sick from the appetizer? Is no, that, no, is it that no. Kind of thing? Just they're not going to serve anything else. It's embarrassing to have paramedics walk into your restaurant and to have to shut down your restaurant because of that. Should we take his contact information or any kind of information like that? John, can I have a word? Yeah. Outside. <clears throat> John, tonight was beyond a disaster. Oh, I never expected this. Never my wildest dreams. Total humiliation. But it's not just bad food, John. It's bad practices that mean you're so detached from your business. You don't look like an owner. You don't sound like an owner. You're like a member of staff back there. Uh, you, you're right. But why? I don't know why. I don't know why. I just because I think I've been beat up too much. There's got to be some fight inside. There's got to be some. Listen, I am a fighter. I've been a fighter my entire life. I was thrown into this place because they needed to, they needed a, a, a horse, a donkey to run the place because they couldn't afford to hire people. They sacrificed my education and throw me in here. But you've given up. Come on. 
You're destroying yourself. Listen. Help me change. I will help you, but you have to understand. You cannot be a member of staff pounding dough. That's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. I do it because I love my family. And I want to provide for them. The best way I know how. Do you think they get enjoyment watching you kill yourself in there? John, come on. You have to take a big, long step back and stop running this place from a fucking pizza oven. No. <clears throat> I, I can't. I'm in no... Emotionally, I can't. Why? I need to take a break. Listen, you're an owner. Hey, I can see the pain. I feel it. Let me tell you. I've got four kids of my own, and I know how hard it is. But I'm here for you. And I want you to win. Understand that. Man to man. I'm telling you. I want you to win. But you've got to listen. OK? We can do this, right? You I do want not. to do it. Good. Have fun with start. Have fun with my okay. kids. Let's do it for them. OK? See you in the morning. Chef Ramsay may have pledged his help to John, but he needs to get a handle on everything before he can implement changes. So early this morning, he does a little research. What is this? Bloody hell. Time to see how much frozen food there really is. Oh, God. This. Bloody hell, fettuccine. Penne. They said they had frozen food, but I certainly wasn't aware there was this much. Oh, my God. It just goes on. It's endless. How much pasta's in here? Look at the colours. It's frozen badly. No date, no name. Look at it. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Sausage skin. I mean, honestly, look at this. Buckets of them. What's that? That's just out of two freezers. And look, there's more freezers down there. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Chicken, freezer burnt. Oh, man, look at this. This must be five years old, this stuff. It's ruined. You can't cook that. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. This is a joke. Look at that. Oh, come on. Meatballs. This is ridiculous. They're frozen moulded. What's that? Oh, God. There's no labels. Another freezer. Frozen vegetables, frozen pasta. My God. I don't even know what it is. An ice cream container. Some are filled with pasta shells. Look at this stuff. Freezing tiramisu. You are kidding me. Oh, that's eggplant. How many portions of fruit is here? Well, it's just endless. Horrified by the amount of frozen food. Wow. Chef Ramsay is determined to give John and his staff... Unbelievable. ...a much-needed wake-up call. How are you today? Good. Shit day yesterday. Yeah. I've just spoken to Charles, the diner from last night. He got checked out this morning at the hospital. Totally fine, OK? Big breath of fresh air there, let me tell you. Yeah, I was yeah. really no, nervous. No, we okay? all were. We all were. Today, we start fresh. Fortunately, we are still a little frozen in the past. Come with me. Oh, boy. Let's go. Let me show you something. Come in. Wow. What the fuck is this? That's our menu. What do you think it is? This is our store. John. I've never, ever encountered anything like this in my entire cooking career. Ever. Never. If we had to not touch anything else in this kitchen and cook what we've got, you'd be open for the next 12 months and still not run out. Oh, my God. Wow. Come on. 
we have 40 stacks. That's like 400 pounds of chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken probably doesn't have that much chicken on hand. John, do you have any idea that this is going on? Yes. It is. It's, it's amazing when you look at it. But I knew it was going on. Look at the meatballs. Freaking turn color. Hey, don't throw it at me. Come on, guys. There's more, Joe. I know. There's more downstairs. There's more. It, it pains me. You're right. There's no, there's no way around it. This is my, this is my fault. It's a sad truth. It is. It lies with me. This is my fault. I let this get out of, out of my grasp. Past glory, we used to do 10 cases of chicken in two weeks. I'm still buying like we were busy at that, at that level, and we're not. The restaurant is struggling as it is, but you're losing money twice as fast. Try to change something that's no. Is that true? He's trying to change, you're saying no? Yes. There's resistance to change. Yes. So that's another my big problem. Yes. Like I told you. I mean, you. look at this. How long do you think those have been special? When's this from? I, 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 I listen. I'm just it's asking. Not as, how, how long has that been yeah. here? Since my parents died. I don't want to take it down. No, I, I don't push the specials. It's just something, a memory so to then, me. The, but that's the really important issue, and you mustn't take this personally. You're still treating this business as if mom and dad are here. We have to let go. Throw it out. It's holding me onto the pants. But throw it out. No, I'm not asking to throw that out. No. Take it home. Take it home. No, John, I don't want to get upset, but you've got to understand. You've got to let go of the past. Okay? Yep. Guys, get the shit out of here. John, okay. let's go. I am here to help you. But I can just see the pressure. I can feel no, it's not the me. frustration. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. Not that I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this position no more. It's just sad. Just being here every day, working seven days a week. I don't know if I told you. I wasn't educated. My mom and dad threw me in here. I would come home from school, not to eat lunch, to serve lunch. How old? I was a kid, eight, 10. And this has been my life ever since. It's just sad to sit here every day, knowing what we used to do, and not be able to do what I used to do anymore. It's just, you're holding on to the wrong things. And I think deep down inside, you're just running scared. I don't want to be scared of no I want to fight with my wife. I sent my kids to camp. They were so happy that you were coming. My third child said to me, Daddy, Ramsey's going to fix everything. Can we get to spend more time together? Hey, you will. But you have got to let go of the past. It's your turn now. I am here to help you, do you understand? But there's on one condition, you step away from that pizza day. I want a commitment that you're will, not going to jump will. behind there on the safety net. It's going to be hard. I just want a commitment from you that you're going to get your head out the dough. Yes, I will, yes. Yeah? I yes. want to start making it, not pounding it. All right, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can you hear what's going on out there? I hear it. I That's hear for it. a reason. I hope they're listening. It's going to be extremely hard not to fall back into your old habits, but I'm ready to, to, from today on, change my ways and move forward and not let that ever happen again. Chef Ramsay clearly feels for this owner and is now ready to reveal the first important change. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Where are you? We hear you, but I don't see you. Don't worry about that. We are relaunching Mama Maria's. Excited? Yay. Good. Remove your blindfolds. Oh, my god. Wow. wow. Oh, that awning's gone. That's yeah, right. Totally the awning gone. has gone. Let me welcome you to the new sign. Mama Maria's. When I first arrived here, I saw a disgusting awning 
Letters cut out. Just hideous. This now is your first statement. It says a lot. First impressions, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I like it. it looks modern. I've made some minor changes inside. Minor. Trust me, when you walk through those doors, I think you're going to crap yourself. Let's go in. Come in. Please. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh, my God, oh this is totally God. different. First of all, welcome to the new, bright, vibrant Mama Maria's. And my goodness, does it scream Brooklyn. Oh, wow, totally different. Oh. When I first came in here, it was resembling a restaurant that hadn't been touched in years. It was dark, it was grimy, and it had no life. We've got stunning turquoise walls that gives that nice, vibrant pop. The custom artwork done by a very talented artist painting the beautiful, historic Brooklyn Bridge above your fireplace. I like that. I think this is what Brooklyn wants and needs. We got rid of all the clutter that John just is holding on to. We have on the wall your parents in full-blown, stunning photographs, which is an amazing memory to hold on to. Oh, have a look at the uh, paper. It's your mom. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. No. <laughs> That's me serving the dog. I didn't notice the pictures. Never forget this day moving forward. A new beginning in the history of the stunning family-run Mama Maria's, let me tell you. This is my family. This is me. It was here from my eyes. I didn't see it. It's amazing. It's changing from old to new. What I let go of the past, the past is still here with us. And I got a new lease on life. Chef Ramsay's remodel of the restaurant is only part of his master plan. Come through, please. The overhaul of the menu is the real key to turning this Brooklyn eatery around. First of all, just take a look at the vibrancy. Looks great. Fresh. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to, that's what I need. Right, menu. Starting off with a delicious bruschetta. It's done with a really nice chopped up mozzarella served with marinated tomatoes. Earthy, rustic and charming. Brilliant and fresh. The mussels are just incredible. A great little appetizer to get the palate, the juices flowing. The specialities of the house, the pizzas, margarita. Stunning, simple, delicious. You hit it on the head. Next to that, you've got the ozabuco, served in its cooking juices over mashed potato, gremolata, and a really nice, rich demi glace. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. That's a great side. <laughs> Boss, John, what do you think? I'm excited. I'm You're excited? Right. Yeah. Here's the scenario. We have some very, very influential journalists and bloggers coming in. Everybody on their game. Yes, sir. Yes. One more thing, these little sprucing up. Got this for you especially. A nice, hey. beautiful <laughs> shirt. After 40 years, I gotta take my colors off. That's right, because you're no longer a pizza boy. You are the owner. If I catch your head inside that pizza oven, I'll put it in permanently. <laughs> <laughs> and as I look at you now, right over your shoulder, I see your father looking down. Look at him. Look, that's right. And you are gonna run this business just like they did when they brought you into this world. You got it. It's relaunch night. We've got some big hitters in tonight, yeah. And Chef Ramsay is determined to let everyone know that Mama Maria's is the new cool place to dine in Brooklyn. First off, Eat in Brooklyn, blogging website, dynamic. Blackboard Eats, blog. Great. Awesome. Right. We're going to impress them. Eat to blog are also joining us, followed by the New York Observer. Big one. Absolutely big one. Getting nervous. You have got a powerhouse full of critics. Look how smart you are. Wow. Turn around, give us a spin. Whee! Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Let's go. Welcome to Mama Maria's. This is our brand new menu. Welcome to Mama Maria's, our relaunch, and I'm very proud of what we're doing now. Can we um, have the chubby that two tops come here, just recognize them. New York Observer, the guy with the notepad. Oh, okay. He's the man. 2.4 million readers. Don't tell me who they are, because I'll get nervous. No, I've just told you. You yeah. need to know who they are. Let's go, you can do it. It's tough taking on this new role. You know, it, it's not my makeup. I'll grab them. Okay. Two? Yeah. Right. I need to step away from that pizza counter and be more hands-on to make sure everybody's doing their job and doing it correctly. Table four, New York Observer. Yes. Okay. Okay, listen up. First course, minestrone and a Caesar. Got it. I need this risotto cavatelli, please. 30 seconds in the window. Good. While John may be in the unfamiliar role of leading his staff... How we doing over here? Is the pizza's all done? There's another one coming. Mama Maria is off to a good start. Pick up lasagna, gnocchi, spaghetti meatballs. And customers are thoroughly enjoying the food. The gnocchi's delicious. I think the sauce is spot on delicious. But while Chef Joe continues to push dishes out in a timely manner... Mussels in the 
the window. Bruschetta in the window. Let's go. It was a typical southern Italian red sauce joint. Yeah. John seems to have forgotten that he is still needed in his new role as leader. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I'm really hungry. It's a vlogger's table, guys. Let's go, rapido. It's very frustrating when I see dishes not leaving the window. There's no time for mistakes. I ain't got time for this. Where is John? Let's go. Give me John. Let me get him. Are you serious right now? Son of a bitch. Yes. There's a guy walking around here with a white jacket, blonde hair. Oh, for fuck's sake. John. Yes, sir. So you can't just favor two guys at the bar. You've got to be everywhere. Right, right. In and out. We're yeah. in the middle of service. I'm not letting you sink the dining room. No. This place no. is full of some of the most influential, I, 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 influential bloggers. I hear you. Step up. Period. That's right, End of story. That's right. We have to encourage. Don't stop. You cannot stop. We're going to communicate with our team. Still got VIP tables out there. OK, the stuff is right I'll over take here. It out, I'll take it out, OK, them. beautiful. Let's not drop our heads. Let's bounce back, OK? Here you go, guys. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Sorry about the service. We're trying our best. We're trying to keep up, and we're trying to do whatever we can. This is the first time John was acting like the owner he is tonight. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right. Keep it up. And that's exactly what Mama Maria needs. This looks awesome. It smells yum. This is delicious. Let me know when that margarita is ready, please. I need that margarita. So, guys, how did everything go? The spaghetti and meatballs were They're delicious. Awesome. Absolutely totally spectacular. Awesome. Thank you. Well, cheers to pizza. We'll definitely be coming here again. Great job. Well done. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night, guys. John. Listen, you are one hard-working, honest guy. Thank you. I feel I was living in a shell. I'm coming out of that shell. Kiss. That shell is broken. Kiss. And I've got to be honest with you. You hit it, man. You hit it right on the head. Here's my memories. Mom and Dad are here. Yeah, they're here. They're still and here. so they are looking down. And they, right now, are proud. You no, have got proud. the door open. Thank Grab you. it. Just go forward. Don't I go will. backwards. No, no, no. I'm not going backwards. I refuse to go backwards. Kiss. One thing I remember my father was his leadership, and that's what I'm going to continue doing. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. I know what I need to do. And there's more to come of Mama Maria's in the future. For the last 55 years, this restaurant has belonged to John's parents. And even after they sadly passed away, he remained a pizza maker. But tonight, he was an owner. This restaurant now belongs to John and John only. And I'm truly, and I mean truly rooting for this Brooklyn underdog. How much water? Can be put in one plant pot. Ah, shit. God bless pizzas. After Chef Ramsay left, welcome to Mama Maria. John has kept his promise of running his business away from the pizza counter. I need a bowl of grated cheese, please. A bowl of grated cheese. Mama Maria's has already generated a ton of positive buzz from bloggers and websites. It's really good. Thank you. I hope from Chef Ramsay, we've come a long way. And this 55-year-old restaurant is on its way back to being a fixture in Brooklyn once again. Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, located right outside Pittsburgh, is home to Miss Jean's Southern Cuisine, opened by Jean Gould, a retired special education teacher. I love to cook. And then when I started doing it at my church, everybody wanted me to make food. Miss Jean, you have to cook this, you have to cook that. Cheese sauce is ready. They're the ones that really encouraged me to open up a restaurant. You'll love her food, trust me. <laughs> that Mac should be ready to come out. Very good. She's the type of person that will always help you if you're in a band or if you need help. Are you sure you feel better? Because we don't want you working sick. But, oh wow, how can I explain this? She has an attitude problem. If I catch you on your phone, it's considered your 15-minute break. No exception. Unless you fell on the floor, and there's nobody in here, and you can't get up. <laughs> Ms. Jean's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hag. Who cut the steam tables on? Y'all got to pay attention. Somebody write these orders like kindergarten students. Tell me, because a lot of my staff is lazy. I don't think it. I know it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, sister. Where are you coming from? You can't be standing back here in the kitchen on your phone. Let me call you back where I have to kill I mean, that's not right. You just can't do that. I have to go and tell them four or five times, you need to do this, you need to check this, you need to check that. All right. There's a problem with the mac and cheese. They said it's overcooked and they want some more. I don't want to hear it. 
when she's dealing with a customer complaint, she could be known to get a little bit nasty. She said this is like eating a potato chip. That lady lying. Sometime I find myself in the kitchen cooking, and I have to stop. And I go to the door just to make sure no one is out there. Wow. Um, I don't know what happens. The customers are gone. Oh, man. There were several times I came in in the morning, and she's crying. <laughs> She's just crying. And then I'm getting a frog. <laughs> she, um, she'd be like, she owes so much, she's scared. I'm really in need of help to the point I don't. Excuse me. I don't know what I would do. I don't even know where else I would go to seek help. All I know if I put my whole life a whole life savings. You know, to see it go right down the drain. I don't know what I'll do. How are you, sir? You well? Just waiting for my car. Chef Ramsey, Chef Ramsey. Hi, I'm Jean. You're coming to my restaurant. Can I speak uh, to you a minute, uh, please? I'm supposed to be coming to see you. Please. Okay. I brought you a peach cobbler. I need to see you a few minutes before you get to my restaurant. OK, uh, let's get through that. OK. Jeez. All my whole life, all I've ever did was help someone else. Let's take a seat over here. And now I'm really, really in need of help. First of all, how long have you had the restaurant? I had the restaurant about 12 years. And before you ran the business, what were you doing? Oh, I taught uh, disabled kids and adults. And I did that for about 25 years. Tough job. It is. So coming out of that kind of role, mm -hmm. talk to me about your restaurant. What is it? The food. How do you rate that on a scale of 1 to 10? I'm saying 8. 8? Yes. OK. The biggest problem is my staff. Because they're trying to cook with one hand and be on a cell phone with another hand, or taking more breaks and gossiping and talking and being late, or just don't show. And it's just not helping me keep my restaurant where it needs to be. I am in big, big debt because I can't keep enough clientele in right. the restaurant. I mean, I am going through so much right now. I really don't know if I'm going to make it out through the month. I just don't have the money. So every day, I do everything. I waitress, I'm the manager, mm -hmm. I cook. Which is crazy. Because that's how bad it is right now. I just really need your help. I'm on the edge. I really, okay. really need help. I can't do mm -hmm. it. I can't. Uh, no. I, I appreciate you coming here to see me. Thank you for the update. Don't get upset. I can't help. It's been so hard. I just don't know what to do. Listen, I'm here to help, Miss Jean. OK? OK. I totally get it. OK, thank you. OK. I'm going to jump in my car, get back there, and I'll have a meeting with the staff. Come on. OK, thank you. OK. Well, it may be rainy in Pittsburgh, but there's one thing that can pick me up. There's some good soul food. Wow. Oh, oh my god. Oh, my goodness me. Anyone in? Hello. Here you come. Oh, my goodness. You drop of evidence. I'm scared to go out there. I can't handle it. We're about to pass out. Oh. oh, my God. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. You too. I'm Marissa. I'll Marissa. Be Good to Marissa. see you. Marissa. My goodness me. Was there a, uh, a robbery last night? There's nothing in there. That's our dessert display over wow. there. That is grim. The restaurant looks like a prison cafeteria. It's just embarrassing. I mean, Chef Ramsey's coming in asking, when was the robbery? Oh, dear. Ouch. Hello. Nice to see you. And first name I'm is? Joni. Joni. Right. Glad you came. Good to see you. I'd like to have a quick get-together with the staff. OK. Can you go to the kitchen yes, and call I'll... everybody out? Yes, I will. Uh, without Miss Jean? Yes, sir. Everyone to the front. We have a meeting. Come over, come over. Everybody, come through. Great. And first name is? Chef Mike. Chef Mike. Mm -hmm. How are you, my darling? Hello. And this is? Chanel. Chanel. Come over here so we all stick together. Now that Chef Ramsay is here, I'm ready to talk about everything that's wrong. Believe you me. <laughs> 
um, first of all, Miss Jeannie came to see me this morning. The biggest problem, from her point of view, was the staff. Oh, my. Why would she blame the staff for the problems in the restaurant? To get all the blame off of her. Yes. Yes. Why would she pass the blame on to you? She has sort of an attitude problem. She's just mean. Mean. Mrs. Jean, pillar yes. of the community for the last 20 years, she's mean? Yes. She's mean to the customers sometimes. Mean to the customers? And employees, too. Yes. I don't believe it. Sometimes I thought she has split personality. Wow. You got the nitpicking, Miss Jean, where you just want to throw your hands up and be like, I'm leaving. Then you got nice Miss Jean. I mean, I'm really confused. Miss Jean blamed you guys as the issue. And what you're telling me is completely different. So let me go and get her. Miss Jean. Yes. You got two seconds? Oh, wow. Um, so I'm, I'm a little confused. Miss Jean, you told me the big issue here was the staff. That's not the case from their point of view. They're saying that you have a mean streak. Are you mean? I don't think it's a mean streak. I'm a very serious person. They're saying that you're heavy-handed with the customers in terms of the way they've been treated. There's a young man that comes in here, and he's like me and Jean's um, grandson. Right. It's not like my grandson. Well, I'm just saying, Jean, he's a regular. And um, he ordered pepper steak and rice one time. And he just told Miss Jean was a little salty. And she said, don't eat it. Wow. He's one of the guys that come in here, and his pants is hanging to here. We try to catch those guys when they come in and ask them to please pull their pants up, especially on a Sunday with all the church folks and the older ladies and stuff. OK, I appreciate that, having the pants pulled up on Sundays <laughs> in front of the church <laughs> congress. But whether he's got these pants around his ankles, he has a right yeah, to complain about salty food. Let's get that clear. Yeah. yeah? Who's right? Who's wrong? Well, Please. they're wrong because they think I'm mean when I don't allow them to do something that they shouldn't do. Yes, I do yell sometimes because after I ask you to do something five or six times and it's not getting done, I think I'm too soft. I need to put my foot down if you do something and you should be terminated. Wow. But no, soft-hearted me, I give everybody another chance. There's always something. When I go back there, they're on their phone. I mean, all gathered. I've been back there when there was five people on their phones at one time, especially you. No, it's not right. OK, you saying that never happens? No. Every time your phone vibrates, you go to the bathroom 15 and times really a day. I really go to the bathroom. I follow her to the bathroom. And you heard me talking yeah. one time, one Several time. Several times, no. you never know when no. I'm following you. I drink, like, over two gallons of water a day. The only way you drink two gallons of water unless you had hot pipes. Uh-uh. It's from the hot kitchen. <laughs> when you're out drinking or whatever, that gives you hot pipes. No, uh-uh. I can't deal with everybody's personal problems. And it's like, I'm Dr. Phil. Now I feel like I'm uh, Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious. It's not funny to me. They don't understand. I am one person, and I have to deal with all of you. And I'm like really getting fed up behind it. This is crazy. And everybody always late. Everybody, especially Mike. Every single day. <sighs> I'm very disappointed because I don't feel like they respect me enough. And all these years I put into what I'm doing, this is like frustrating to me. And if I don't get Chef Ramsay's help, I am gonna lose what I have within a month's time. I really need his help. Having already witnessed the major rift between Miss Jean and her staff, Chef Ramsay is ready to try some good old fashioned soul food. Okay. Hello. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. Right. I'd like to order a few of the key elements of any good soul food restaurant. Okay. First off, I'll go for the chicken dinner. Um, we don't have that available right now. No? No. No chitlins, what a shame. Uh, some fried corn, please. We don't have that. Okay, I'll have the red beans. We don't have the red beans. There's a black eyed piece. We don't have that either. White. No. Veggie platter. No. Sweet potato pie. No. Mashed potato. Not right now, no. I don't even think we have gravy. Seriously, why have a menu if two thirds of it's off? 
Oh dear. Uh, you got pork chops? Yes. Bingo. Let's go for the ribs. Okay. And the mac and cheese. Okay. Let's start off with that. As the food's ready, just uh, bring it. Thank you. Then. Okay. Okay, ribs, mac and cheese. <laughs> Michael, please. What? No playing around. Mm. Ah. Wow, I mean, that is just like sugar syrup. Dana, can I change that, please? It's so sweet. How much sugar goes in there? I'm not sure. It's probably just poured in there till it's sweet enough. Yeah, that's sweet enough, right? I'll just go straight to uh, water, please. Water, Thank sure. You. Lee said the sweet tea is too sweet. That's like southern tea, and they call it sweet tea. It's supposed to be sweet. That's why they call it sweet tea. So depressing. What's that there? Two seconds. What is that bike? What's the bike there for? This Mercedes exercise bike. It's a gym here? Just no, just for bike. But it, what's it for? For her when she feels the exercise. I've never seen anything like that. Wow. How's yeah. that done? Jesus. Did somebody sit on that? <laughs> what happened? It came out like that. It came out like that? Yes, yes. came out like that. Did, did somebody sit on that? No, sir. Can the lady not have a decent bun? Yes, she can. She can. Crazy. Wow. Uh, Miss Jean, what is this? Please tell me that the bun didn't go out looking like I that. I just put on some good. I really didn't look. I, I cannot believe that. Look at this shit. And then y'all be talking about it's me. Who wow. sent something out there looking like this? Look at that. I mean, come on. I mean, how did they get smashed up the first time? I don't know. How can somebody mishandle bread? What's going on in that kitchen? Whoever threw them up, they, they don't give a shit. They just smash shit up, put it on the shelf. This is what I'm dealing with, but it's not staff problem. They don't care how it looks. I don't understand why nobody don't get it. I mean, come on. Wow. Chanel. No, oh, God damn. I just put the three together that he should get, and you went and grabbed something First else. First of all, you told me to get this stuff ready. No, you, you got it looking like a slop plate. You see me wiping it off, Miss Jane. Don't get frustrated and take it out on me. But you have to learn. You don't plate food up and hand it to somebody any kind of way. Shoot. Oh, my gosh, I am so underpaid. Is that for me? Yeah. Wow. All right, we Thank have you. the ribs, and the rest is the coming ribs. out. OK, great. Mm -hmm. How is it? They have a weird saltiness to them, almost like they've been in a brine. Would you find out and just ask them? Sure. You think of ribs and the excitement, the stickiness, the deliciousness of it, but they're very salty. Yeah, very... He said they're salty. It was almost like they were in a brine, and nothing was that impressive to them. Do they taste salty to you? No. This is soul food, and I really don't think Chef Ramsay know how to cook soul food. Just like I wouldn't know how to make food that British eat. Here's the mac. It's nice and hot. Sizzle. Right. OK. So, Chanel, are you going to start the pork chops? Just one pork chop. Yeah, one pork chop. I'm scared to cook it. Here's the mac and cheese. Where's that been? It's bubbling away. Can you hear that? I... Has that been in the microwave? Yes. For, for three days? Can you hear it crackling? Yes, I do. It sounded like the little Rice Krispie Treats with the little elves and didn't look that good. Thank you. OK. Depressing. One thing that should always stand out is a bloody good mac and cheese, and that's just bland, overcooked, and just dreadful, and really bad. Don't cook it too, too fast. When you cook pork chops, you got to stand right there and keep turning and keep turning it. Miss Jean nitpicks. You just want to tell her, get the hell out the kitchen. Why is it so much smoke? I don't know. Might be from the grease. Damn. Some flew in my eye. Then I'll finish with that, thank you. How is it? Mac and cheese, well, ooh, ouch. It's bland, there's no seasoning, and it's just cooked to hell. OK. He said to macaroni and cheese, it's bland. It's what? It's bland. That's good. Taste it. That's real good. Yeah. I'm not going to say the macaroni is not good when it is good. Is that my pork chop? You need wow. another set of silk. No, no, it's fine. Thank you, sweet. 
How sad does that look? Honestly, come on. How fucking depressing is that? Are you serious? Could y'all please come book at the pork chop? Please. He got it sitting up. <laughs> I mean, it's like the map of America. It's on the East Coast. There's California where that little dark spot is. From the Central, Midwest. And we have Seattle. We're here. Pittsburgh. God bless America. Fuck off, fly. <laughs> Chanel, did you taste it? If you gotta stand up, that means it's too hard. I'm not the cook. Okay, so I see you had a chance to taste the pork chop. Uh huh. And uh, what did you think? Yeah, dry. Like um, a mouthful of sand. Okay. It's drier than the Sahara Desert. All right. Even the flies. No longer interested. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted me to get for you, or a wheel for that bike out there? That way I can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he said that this was dry like a mouthful of sand. He said even the flies no longer take interest in it. Is it dry? Mm -hmm. I still stand by my food because I put all I have into it and I work hard. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. My lunch was a joke. And anything connected to soul, passion, heart, you've all fallen out of love. I mean, how can a soul food restaurant miss the staples? No red beans, no black eyed peas, no mashed potatoes. The ribs, salty. I mean, a real weird saltiness because it's like. Season them up. You season them up. So they're salty, and then they're sweet as anything with that barbecue sauce on there. And then the pork chop. I mean, I was holding out for the pork chop. It was dry. The mac and cheese. I mean, it was just disappointing. I think it was good. I think the mac and cheese is fucking disgusting. Well, I don't, chef. Come on. You know, the macaroni and cheese, we haven't had any complaints about it yet. No, because you have no customers, my darling. That's why. We don't, we don't have any customers. That's why. And you want my help? Get a grip. I'm not going to take too much criticism about my food. All right. Go on now. I told Chef Ramsay I do wear a lot of hats. And I feel like if he don't like my fried chicken and he don't like my macaroni and cheese, then you know what Chef Ramsay can do? He could wear one of my hats. And that's one of them. That's how I feel. It didn't take long for Chef Ramsay to see that Miss Jean is in denial about her food. I'm telling y'all, I'm not gonna sit him be embarrassed tonight. Y'all might as well get it right. Now it's time to see how this restaurant functions in a dinner service. Welcome to Jean Southern Cuisine, oh, Chef hello. Ramsey. How are you? Oh, doing? brother, how are you? This is Amelia. I'm Amelia. I'm the host. Amelia. You see me today. Excellent. Um, and that looks like it's the waiting room of a doctor's clinic. OK, Chef Ramsey. No? <laughs> Don't you think? Does it look inviting? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I feel like I'm about to get my tooth pulled. Oh, customer's quick. Jeez. I'm sorry. Excuse me. How are you both? Now, are we looking at a uh, root canal issue? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I mean, come on. They, they're waiting. OK. Will you come with me, please? Yes. Thank Good luck. You. Uh, Good luck. Oh, my god. It is a mess. <laughs> the doctor will see you now. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. All right, and how are you folks doing today? Good. Summer, I saw be your server. I'll do the ribs. We're going to have the fried pork chops. OK. All right, Mike, how are you? OK, Chef. So orders come in. Where do the orders go? The slips, when the orders come, they put them on the magnet. On there? Oh, I've been in that refrigerator, Chef. So you just, you, just, you just stick them on there. That's it? Yes, Chef. Wow, this is just insane. All right, because Chanel, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get these orders out of here, OK? Follow my lead, OK? No, we're all doing our own tickets. 
because we get confused when we share the same ticket. I'll do a ticket, you do a ticket. I'll do a ticket, you do We can't do the same ticket. Calm down, we gotta, calm get, down. we gotta get the orders out. No calm down. Orders need to go out. I've worked in quite a few restaurants. I've never seen a restaurant run like this in my entire life. The kitchen staff doesn't know how to run a kitchen, and I don't think that Miss Jean fully knows how to run a restaurant. So the end result is just complete and utter chaos. Catfish is up. Oh, Lord. Somehow, this disorganized kitchen has managed to get the food out. Yeah, it'll work, Chuck. Thank you. Unfortunately, the customers are finding little to cheer about. Is everything OK? The pork chops feel like they've been cooked for like five hours. OK. Thanks. What's wrong? Um, he said the pork chops were overdone. I mean, that's just, uh, man, soul food. I want you to serve that on fucking death row. Food is not coming out right. We need the food to get out of here. Let's go. No more bullshit. Let's go. Wow. Oh, this is so depressing. <coughs> Damn. I said, Jay, you really do need a job. I mean, like, I'm broke as it. So you're Gotta on go. your cell phone? Yeah. You're working? But I'm... Exactly. No, yes, sir, I am. You're on the phone. I'm on the phone. That's exactly that. I am. Um, you're right. Uh, any reason why? Not interested? Uh... Well, because there was no customers out here. Yeah, no just ask him. Yeah, she's right. Staff don't give a fuck, and they're always on the phone. I walk out, and you're on your phone. Oh, she's talking about the people in the kitchen. Oh, the no, I'm talking about you you're on talking the about phone. Me? Yes, I'm guilty. Yeah, there you go. Guilty. I want to get straight to the point. OK. Um, so why do you think it's necessary to be on your phone in the middle of service? I'm working. I can see out the window. Somebody comes, I can see them. Right, Amelia? Uh, we see somebody, you go over there and get them. Wow. I can see out the window, chef. I can see out the window. <laughs> Yes, Chef. Did you hear the chef come out here and fuss at me? Did you hear it? He came out and he said, I'm doing your cell phone. He said, you just don't give a shit. I said, yes, I do. I said, there's nobody else. Uh -oh. Second time on your phone. Chef. No, 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 no. Right now, this lady has got the world on her shoulders. And the first thing she told me this morning was the fact that her staff are on the phone whilst the dining room is full. And you've been on there twice now. It's so unfair for you to go back on your phone. I'm a volunteer. Let's make that very clear. Even if you volunteer, you have to follow the rules. I mean, I'm, I can't be up here to see what you guys are doing. What are we supposed do? I told you, Jean, if forth. you needed help in the dining room, I'd be happy you to come do back. that. There's two people up here. You told come me back. to leave my house. Come back That's my act. job. All this time you I asked you that. not to leave the front, it's when she wasn't here. That is not true. And that's bullshit. That is bullshit. Going home? Yes. Bye. Bye. Miss Jean, somebody need to be rung out. Yeah, she can she can do it. She can do it all. I'm done. I'm painting with chicken wings. Please. Just a minute. Let me get somebody to ring you up. Bye. That's what I'm saying, Chef. I can't be everywhere. They know not to do that, and they do it anyway. They don't care. They know better. They know I tell them that all the time. Can I get you guys some more sweet tea? Chicken with some It's a little dry. Okay. Do you want me to take it back? Yeah. I'll get you guys some new ones, okay? Okay, guys. Oh, no. What's wrong? The chicken was dried. Oh, my God. Chef Mike, how old is that? Is that left over from lunch? Yeah. That's not cool tonight. That's, that's old, Chef. How does chicken get that dry? Guess from being under that light, Chef. Have a little taste. It's dry. It's dry, it's dry, Chef. It is. But you're just fucking yourselves. You don't need me to tell you that you're completely upside down. You're serving lunchtime chicken, and it's dry. Who's paying for this, Mike? And do you have extra money to do this? No, I do not. Not at all, Chef. And I mean, it has to stop. It really has to stop. You all really have to learn to follow instructions. It's just that simple. You got to have that passion for the food. You cannot continue to send food out like this, because it's my ass on the line. My ass on the line. Nobody else. The restaurant is falling apart. I can't afford it. This is my whole life. This is all I have. And it's going to hell. I mean, it's, it's pain. It's killing me. It's tearing me apart to know this is happening. I can't continue to do it no more.
It's very embarrassing. I can't be everywhere. I can't be at the front desk watching people on the telephone. And I come back here, my food is not going out right. I can't do it by myself. After a dinner service that is fraught with problems with the staff. You going home? Yes. Bye. Bye. And the kitchen. You're serving lunchtime's chicken, and it's dry. Miss Jean has reached her breaking point. I can't continue to do it no more. Keep it strong, Lord. Keep it strong. Come on now. You know you got it. You know I got your back. God loves you, and so do I. He come here to help us, and we, it's like we almost can't even be helped. Sit down. Tough day. Yes, Jeff. Jean, I totally get it. I feel for you, but the system is horrendous. It is. Yet no one seems to care. I do okay. care. I care. I do. That's I why I'm here. I swear I do. But we have to work together. And I need your help. And I'm willing to. Like I said, I'm willing to do whatever. But sometimes it becomes hard when I really say, I need you to do something, and it doesn't get done. But the system they're working against is yours. And the system is bad. Let me tell you. Tomorrow, I want to see a bit of an effort, OK? The three of you together. OK. Good night. My way, Chef. Good night. Nice night. Nice. I'll see you tomorrow. OK. In the community of Wilkinsburg, Miss Jean's reputation has been tarnished. Good morning. Please, take a seat. And before Chef Ramsay can move forward with any changes to the restaurant, he needs Jean to fully understand this issue. OK, Miss Jean. There's a lot of love for you in your community. Yes. Unfortunately, that positivity is not shared by everybody. So it is time for the world premiere of the other side of Miss Jean. Roll it, guys. We just had a really bad experience. She's not really customer oriented. She doesn't care. She needs to work on her attitude. She's me. I told her I'll never come in here. And I won't send none of my customers in here to you ever again. Because I don't deserve to, to be treated like that. Miss Jean, remember this. It takes years to get a customer. It takes a second to lose one. And you've lost one to me. Wow. Jean, how do you explain this? You have a tendency to talk to your customers the same way as you talk to your staff. And as soon as anyone in the business stops respecting their customers, it's time to close the doors. And if you don't, they will close your restaurant for you. There needs to be an attitude adjustment, but not just by Miss Jean, by everybody. My big question to you, are you prepared to change? Are you committed? Yes. Yes, Chef. Miss Jean. Yes, Chef. Good. I am anxious to make some substantial changes. OK? See you shortly. OK, Chef. Are you OK, Miss Jean? I feel hurt. I had no knowledge that these people felt that I had been mean to them. I want to make it right, and I will fight to make it right. With Miss Jean now realizing the damage she has done, Chef Ramsay moves on to repairing her reputation. He has gathered former diners, and now it's up to Miss Jean to do the rest. I appreciate all of you being here, and I want to apologize for anyone that have been in my restaurant and haven't been treated nice by me, because I really appreciate you from my heart. 
and I can't do it without you. I really, really need you. And I'm gonna guarantee you will not be served without a smile. You're looking at the new Miss Jean. I was given another chance to make it right with my customers. And I'm just, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. Thank I you love you guys. Love you too. Oh. With Miss Jean's reputation already on the mend in the community, Chef Ramsey moves forward with one of his biggest makeovers ever. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. Ladies, are you ready to see? Oh my gosh. The new Miss Jean Southern Cuisine. Let's go. Oh my Here gosh. Come in, please. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's a miracle. That's right. <laughs> come here, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, oh, come on. Oh, this is oh. the soul right here. Now, this place is gorgeous. Yeah. It is gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Gone are those green, cold walls. Now we have that nice, attractive, warm gray. It's bigger, warmer. It's just beautiful, inviting. With stunning murals etched onto the walls, it gives the restaurant a warm personality. It doesn't look like a robbery anymore. Look at the handcrafted tables made out of reclaimed wood from a local barn. And that very picture there, that's the barn with these new tables. You've now gone from a 45-seater restaurant to a 75-seater restaurant. Wow. More importantly, this restaurant has soul. Yes. yes. It's a miracle. Yes. It is so wonderful. This is like a dream come true. I mean, it's a real dream come true. Come true. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. How beautiful is this? Oh, my God. My goodness me. Staff, look what we have. Look what we yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. And you also have new Miss G. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. To go along with the dramatic change to the look of the restaurant. Take a menu, please. OK, sir. Thank you. Ladies, come in, please. Chef Ramsay has come up with an equally dramatic change to the food. Take a look at that. Presentation is beautiful. You think of soul food and the message it sends out, comfort and a bit of fun. Yes, it does. And the good news is everything on the menu tonight is available right. in stock. All right. Amazing. Let's start off at the top here, the appetizers. Catfish, po' boy. Oh, my God. Dressed in a French roll. Mm. Next to that, you've got the barbecue pulled pork sliders with fresh coleslaw. Following on, the entrees. Slow braised oxtail, absolutely delicious. Next to that, it wouldn't be soul food unless we have catfish, blackened or fried. Yes. Yeah. One more little thing. We have stunning new china, courtesy of Niagara China. Beautiful. Wonderful, great. great. Dig in, have a little taste. I don't even know where to start. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. mm. I didn't feel like Chef Ramsay could cook this soul food, but Chef Ramsay has proved me wrong about cooking. It just shows I could be wrong sometimes. I don't know what to eat next. I know. <laughs> wow. I think the new food is very good. <laughs> I'll make some more. These are good. Mmm. -hmm. Delicious. Mmm. -hmm. These are good. Mmm. -hmm. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. What a mercy. Oh, my goodness. Who would have ever thought to put watermelon with red onions? Miss mm. Jean's now looks and feels like a new restaurant, and there is a buzz in the town. Everybody wants to check out the relaunch, including the town's mayor. Okay, this is our table? Yes, this is your table. It's a lot different, isn't it? I love the tables. For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has reorganized the kitchen and has put Miss Jean at the helm as the expediter. When I yell at you, yell back, so I know you got yeah, it. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Let's see what you got, Money Mike. Okay, first order. I need dip chili, fried green tomatoes, let's go. Fried the ma'am. Perfect. Step up. All right, how long on the fried green tomatoes? Fried tomatoes be up in about two minutes. Table two, I need two sliders. Fried tomatoes, dip poppies. This kitchen that never had a system before is adapting well. Looking good, looking good. Sliders up. And appetizers are making their way quickly out to the dining room. Dip. That's a nice presentation. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sounds good. Really good. Mm. Meatloaf, one jambalaya, 
Oh my gosh, I need these orders out. Marissa, table 12's ready. Marissa, table three. Come on guys, food's getting cold. While the kitchen seems to be pushing out food, there's a lack of coordination between Miss Jean and the front of house. Marissa, table two. Marissa. Like, this is frustrating. You know, all your orders was ready right there. It's just hard to breathe whenever you, you just hear your name being called. It's like, I'm getting ready to leave. I can't take this. We were the first to sit down. I mean, we just got a slow waitress. I'm ready to go. Mayor's getting impatient, guys, yeah? Let's not screw up now. Marissa, I can't take this. I really just can't. I'm so stressed out and I keep getting yelled at. I'm so busy. Do you want to leave? I don't no, no, want to do this listen. anymore. Marissa, Marissa. This is a disaster. Don't even put that camera in my face. I want to leave. Stop. Everybody stop. Everybody. I'm so stressed out and I keep getting yelled at. It's relaunch night. I no, no, you can't do this anymore. Marissa! And server Marissa is having a difficult time. This is a disaster. And her tables are beginning to suffer. Don't even put that camera in my face. Stop. Everybody stop. Everybody. Marissa, calm down a minute. It's new to all of us. We have to work together. And this is the way that we have to communicate in order to get everything out. You're going to be fine, OK? You know, imagine a chef wasn't here helping us do this. I know, I know. Just be, you, oh, you're gonna be okay. My name was getting called and like, it's okay, I know it's was a good dying. thing. We just gotta work together. It's cool, you're busy. Be fine. Let's go, it's come on, big deep breath. Let's go, you'll be fine. For the first time tonight, I saw Miss Gina as a leader. She's doing her job to help her employees get through it the best that she can. Fried chicken yes. and the oxtail. I'll be right back with oh. you. <laughs> Duh. I'll be right back with your side. All right. I got food. Jambalaya. Yes, ma'am. This is superb. Very good. Welcome to the new Miss G's. Enjoy everything because you know what? I'm loving it. <laughs> I am feeling terrific. I am feeling so wonderful. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Come on, guys. We're almost there. We're rolling. We rolling. We rolling. I'm real proud of Miss Jane. I'm surprised at Miss Jane. She used to make you not want to do it, but tonight she's calm. She got a smile on her face. <laughs> Woo! That's not the Miss Jane I know. Let me tell you something. Tonight we made a major transformation in this restaurant. And you, Miss Jean, you handled the pressure and turned it into something positive. Thank you, Chef. Miss Mean has left the building. Yes, Chef. Let me tell you. <laughs> yes, Chef. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. The wonderful things that yes. Chef Ramsey said, yes. I can't even explain the feeling that I have right now. Come here, you. Let's say goodbye. He made me just feel like just going on, and I could just conquer anything now. I am going to miss you. I mean, you. I wouldn't give this up for nothing in the world. You are an amazing lady. You're a very special person. I'm rooting for you. Thank you, okay? Chef. I am so, thank you, Chef. I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. Thank you so much. I'm not going to let you down. Look after yourself. I'm not going to let you down. Thank okay. you, Chef. And take care. Thank you. Oh, the greatest. Let me tell you. Rarely in my life have I met an individual with a bigger heart as Miss Jean. Yes, she lost her way, but I strongly believe right now she's on the right track. My only wish is that her staff are there to support her. Wow, Miss Jean, no more mean. In the days that followed, the mayor of Wilkinsburg honored Miss Jean for her years of service to the community. It is my honor to proclaim this Miss Jean Day, June 3rd, and for this day forward. I am very grateful, and I thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you. The soul is back into Miss Jean's new restaurant. And Chef Ramsey, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hull, Massachusetts, a quaint beachside town located just 10 miles from the southern tip of Boston. This is where you'll find Barefoot Bob's, opened in 2004 by husband and wife team, Mark and Lisa Caradonna. Lisa and I have always been in this industry, and you know we decided if this is what we want to do, then we have to go out and buy our own restaurant. Welcome to Barefoot Bob's. We opened the doors to a great crowd. Hi, guys. 
I think we have a table left. And we thought, wow, it's just always gonna be like this. This is gonna be great. And then winter hit Hull. Where is everybody? Our summer business is not enough to carry the other seven months. Once October hits, it drops off to almost 10% of your summer business. So just we're behind, constantly behind. We don't have any money. No, no. With business rapidly dwindling, Mark figured he would save some money by getting rid of the chef and taking over the kitchen. All right, you got a popcorn shrimp by itself. Leaving Lisa the responsibility of supervising the front of house. You OK, you and Jess are outside. No, I'm in. Me and Jess are in the outside. <laughs> Biggest problem in the restaurant right now would definitely have to be Lisa. What's Lisa doing? I'm going to go get a martini. What? Gotcha. <laughs> Mark's in the restaurant at least 10 or 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Mark, let me know if you need anything, and I will avoid you. Most of the time, Lisa is on the beach down the Cape somewhere, or when she is here, she kind of leaves a big tornado behind her and goes out the door, and next thing you know, she's gone again for the weekend. All right, I got to leave for a few minutes, so don't look good. And it's sad, because this is his life. He's so stressed out. We all fear that he's going to have a heart attack. That sucks. The poor man is so tired. You can just see it. You can see the stress in his face. I feel horrible for Mark, because he wants to make this restaurant work. And since it's sinking, their marriage is sinking. Mark and I's relationship has been better. I know I love you. Let's just say there's an indent on the couch from where he sleeps. If this restaurant were to close, I don't know if my marriage to my wife would survive. In order to hear both sides of the story as to what the restaurant's problems really are. Hi, Lisa. Hey. Jeff Ramsey has decided to meet with owners Lisa and Mark separately. How are you, big man? This is awful. Everything has just been awful. It's been brutal. Let's go back to the beginning. When we got married, it was, it was marrying my best friend. It was kind of our dream to always do this. So we found this place, had potential. It was you know, kind of we wanted to give it our vibe and take a shot at our dream. What was it like when you opened? It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Both did front of the house, and we flocked in. What happened next? We didn't know how Where to judge are. the winters. We didn't know what it was going to be like. The first, you know, October came around when Oh my God, where is everybody? The business has been crippled, and now we don't have any money. So I had to basically go into the, into the kitchen, and I've always been front of the house. While I was focusing on that, the front of the house really took a beating. Where was Lisa at this point? She was backing off. She hasn't been too active in the front of the house right. for a while. And that's, that's, therein lies the problem. Help me understand your role in a nutshell. How would you describe it? I come in, and I do the books, the receipts, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, hands on. She believes that she's doing a lot. She comes in in the morning, a couple days a week. That's really it. She's in two days a week. You're in uh, seven. Seven days a week. Yeah, it's it's this place requires me to be here. I have to work twice as hard because she doesn't. And I'll say something. I'm like, you know, th this is just really fucking awful. And she's like, well, I know. I was angry when I went to the gym. I see myself struggling, and I don't know why she's not jumping in to help. And you talk to Mark? No. No. You can't talk. Rather than voicing it, mm -hmm. we'll just, just be pissed off about it instead. Have you fallen out of love with her? No. Has she fallen out of love with you? I don't know. What would happen if the restaurant closed? That would be, that'd be catastrophic. I don't know if our marriage would, how, how that would be. You know, that scares me. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm Jessica. Jessica. Nice to Thought meet you. My wife's good to see you too. Chef Ramsay's going to have a lot to say about Lisa. I think that she thinks she's a major asset to the restaurant, when a lot of times she's one of the major downfalls to the restaurant. Please, okay, if thanks. you would. Of course. Um, what is the big underlying problem with this restaurant? It's Lisa. Mm -hmm. It is. She has it in financial ruins. And why is she put it in financial ruins first? I feel like Lisa takes a lot of um, vacations. Vacations? A lot of vacations. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't come in and confront Lisa, the restaurant's going to go under. Can I start you with something to drink? 
Um, what the fuck's this? That's the menu. Seriously? Mm, yes. It's massive. It is. Wow. These things are dirty. Um, is there any chance I could have a clean menu? Absolutely. Thank you, Diane. Mm. Guys, I need a clean menu like 10 minutes ago because you won't even look at this menu. What? Are you kidding me? You feel it. There's not a thing it on is. it. It's filthy. Where? She's not here consistently enough to see how stuff runs anymore. There you go. And I think she's in for a rude awakening. This is not even fun. Thanks, Danny. Oh, that's been wiped. Yes. OK, let's start with, uh, is this a typo? Buffalo chicken skins? No. It's fried chicken with buffalo sauce on top. I oh, know, I get that, skins. but then you've got buffalo chicken skins again. Oh, yes, that is a typo. <laughs> uh, did you know that was on there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Lisa didn't notice right after they were printed and just never fixed. I suppose for, obviously, locals that are slightly double vision. <laughs> OK, um, let's go for the uh, Bob's Big Boy platter. OK. Um, anything you'd recommend, Danny? Um, the lobster roll. I'll taste it, yeah. OK. I've got to go for the chowder. OK, perfect. Thanks, Danny. You're welcome. There you go, Mark. Chef, ordering in. OK, hi. All right. I didn't have the formal training, but I like to think that I can hold my own. Whoa, too much. <laughs> These plates are filthy dirty. I mean, literally caked in dust. Jessica? Yes. Darling, when was the last time these plates were taken down and cleaned? Um, when did we open? Eight years ago. Yes. You've never taken them down since you've been here. I don't believe so. Wow. My God. Lisa, he's up against the window pulling all the knickknacks down that were all, like, nasty and dusty. He's wiping them all, like, with his hands right now. Inchy's thick. Inchy's thick. Damn, he's observant. <laughs> yes. What is up? Thank you. This is the big buoy. Wow. And it comes with fries and onion rings. Bloody hell. It just cascades off the plate. What's that? A scallop, a small one. That's a scallop? Yes. How rubbery that is. I know. Honestly. They were sent back earlier the same because they were I too mean... chewy and tough. Wow. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. It's just dumped on here. Do they season anything? No. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'll bypass that, darling. OK. Otherwise, I'll need a bypass. OK. That was a big boy disappointment, let me tell you. Mark, the fries are soggy, and he said he will bypass, because if not, he's going to need a bypass. Close. Well, let's keep in mind, he comes from a place where they think scones are delicious. <laughs> I don't think Lisa is taking things as serious as I am. And that's the problem. Oh, all right. Let's do this again. Good luck. All right. This is the lobster OK, Grace. So. Thank you. Yes. How did you eat this? Where'd you get? Where'd you get? How much lobster is in there? Let's see if I can put the lobster back together. There's the claws. No wonder this place is losing money. Jessica, have you seen how much lobster is in this roll? Mm hmm Look at mm -hmm. all that. I know. It's a whole lobster. There's more. Lobsters don't have six claws. Bloody hell. Does every sandwich have that in there? Yes, it's typically a, a pound, a little over a, a pound. A pound? Yes. That should be the whole weight of the lobster, not the actual weight of the meat. The portion sizes of everything are huge. That's part of the problem. Mm hmm Nothing toasted, soggy. Disgusting. Uh, Danny, I'm done. You just show uh, Mark that I will. roll. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. I'm holding on to my chowder. <laughs> Why? What's the matter with that? This is larger than a regular lobster. What? This. He said that the total weight of a lobster should be a pound, not the meat in itself. He said this is where you lose your money. I think Lisa not being around has drained Mark and it makes a difference on the food. What else sucks? All lobster all sucks. What? Yeah, it's too much lobster. I've never heard anyone complain about too much lobster. Well, it's like having too much money. <laughs> Mind blown. Here's your chowder. OK. Nice. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Wow. Ay, ay, ay. 
flowery, bland. No clams to be seen anywhere. I mean, this is New England. That's what hurts. Jessica. You don't look impressed. Just have a little taste in there for me, please. Oh, it's very thick. It's flowery. It is. I wouldn't even paste my fucking wallpaper with that. Um, God, that's dreadful. Yep. There's just bland... I love Mac tasting. ...gloopy fucking glue. Yeah, it's not good at all. Mark, come taste this, please. He said it tastes like wallpaper. He wouldn't paste his walls with it. That's my spoon. It's thick. It's thick. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, it's thick. The scary part is... I thought all our food was good. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? After being disappointed by Barefoot Bob's classic New England dishes. Where is everybody dying? In the kitchen. Could you um, just get them out, please? Chef Ramsay is ready to share his view with the kitchen staff. Chris, Mac. And the owners. Come over, and uh, are you the chef? I'm the sous chef. First name? Chris. Chris, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh. I don't know where to start. I mean, I'm seriously embarrassed. I mean, guys, the lobster roll. But even I don't put one third of that lobster in my lobster roll. I mean, everybody loves, I mean, I... So this is surprising for you. No. It's just, it was just a mess. Clam chowder. Who puts that together? That's guys. on me, but I don't know what you're talking about. You consider that bowl of shit to be a representation of your restaurant I couldn't even find a clam in mine. And that's just a bowl of soup. Problem with the recipe, where's it gone? It's in my head. Oh, it's in your head. One of those fucked up recipes. Apparently. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's what you said. You can stand there with the arrogance and all the bravado in the world. OK. But when something shit, chef, then we'll fix that it. it's shit, then we'll fix it. Line. I don't think you care about it. No one told it. me it was shit. And I'm going to stand there and kiss your ass. I didn't ask you to. Well, I'm upset. But you seem to be content to get paid to serve shit. Does anyone have any standards in here? I do. Lisa, were you serving food like this eight years ago? I don't feel qualified to comment on what's coming out of the kitchen. That would be Mark. Right now, this restaurant is a waste of an ocean view. But you can solve this, you know that. Close the shop. I'm lost for words. With Chef Ramsay exposing a lot of our problems, it's overwhelming. With little time to get over the brutal criticism from Chef Ramsay. That was awful. Lisa and Mark prepare for dinner service. Stay ahead of the game, boys. And with it being summertime, How are you Barefoot Bob's is filling up quickly. Would you guys like to start with an appetizer? Popcorn chip. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lisa. No, you just host this. Uh, okay, just... Kind of just overseeing. Overseeing. Okay, overseen. good. And um, who's that gentleman with a cap on behind the bar? That's Robbie. Robbie. That's my brother. Oh. Holy crap. Jessica. Yes. Is that a crystal ball on the table? Yeah, she's a psychic reader. Oh. It's kind of like a promotion to bring people in. And um, does she charge? Yeah, she gets paid through the restaurant. Oh, wow. It's a little odd, I have to admit, that there's a psychic in a tiki restaurant reading your palm. Wow. Yeah. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. And I've never seen a hurt psychic oh. before. Amazing. And where did you train? Um, I've always wanted to do it, and then I just started reading, and I learned that things were coming right. true that I was thinking. What was the first fortune you predicted? <laughs> um, my girlfriend was trying to get pregnant, and, okay. um, and I told her I saw a girl, and she got pregnant with a girl. I mean, the girl boy, 50-50, so it's not that impressive. However, I've got some questions about this restaurant. Can you help me? Okay. Can this restaurant survive in the next six months? You're asking me my psychic opinion on that? Opinion like or prediction? Because you're confusing me now. All right, I'm going to look at the cards then. Oh, my gosh. Well, this says that it's a kink in the system that's not working. Uh, See, there's like a breakup, like a break, like a literal like uh, shatter. Something needs to split up. Something okay. needs to be let go of. Like the owners? <sighs> Possibly. Oh, boy. This is literally a divorce card. Wow. And is this imminent? Are we talking in the next six months, three months, three days? Honestly, it feels like it's a process. There's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen, but it feels like it is possible. So a happy ending. But if they can do the work that they right. need to do, right? 
Here we go, bar food. Oh, come on, yeah. Four sliders. Send it, send it, send it. Bye-bye. All right, fried scallops. Santa Fe egg rolls. Full of chowder. Yeah, um, does food normally get thrown out of the kitchen that fast? Yeah. Yeah, it normally? It normally comes out at a good pace. Right. And um, is Lisa normally working like this? Um, Lisa's not really here most of the time. Really? Ever? Very rarely. Wow. But everyone seems to be tiptoeing over this situation because I don't think everyone actually understands how much shit's on his shoulders. Oh, yeah. It gets very frustrating that Lisa's not here while Mark is here every day busting his butt. Everything's dependent on him, and it's just so much stress on him that's unnecessary. It should be balanced out between the two of them. The rest is beating him into a pole. Oh, yeah. He's had heat strokes. He's had... Really? Yeah. Lisa can't help out a bit more. It's very sad. There's just no words to describe how bad I feel for him because he's killing himself here. Thank you, Dami. No problem. How is everything? Is there something wrong? Yeah, I am overcooked. Overcooked, a little too well done. This is like all dough and no filling. I can send it back. While well, Mark quickly pushes food out to the dining room. I don't like it. It tastes terrible. Customers are returning the favor and pushing it right back into the kitchen. Mark, these just got sent back because they're cold on the inside. What? No. Yeah, it's cold. OK. They want a new order. Yeah, it's coming right now. Mark. Oh, no. Can I have an order of chicken tenders? They don't like their chicken parm, please. All right. Yeah, I know. Two minutes. Uh, the month's profit. Turkey tips tied chili. Whoa, come on. Okay. Now that Chef Ramsay has observed the pattern of fast food followed by fast returns. This pizza just got sent back. He decides to do an examination of the food storage. This fridge is dreadful. Wow. Chicken breast. Oh, my God. Just dumped in there. Not even taken out of the bag. That's how lazy they've become. And the whole fridge is not even chilled. It's warm. There's not a decent temperature on the floor here. What is that? Unbelievable. Pork belly in a carrier bag on the floor. Next to the pork belly, you've got cooked chicken. It's actually hot inside. Just festered in there. That's sat next to the pork belly. You've got cooked chicken. Cooked chicken, raw pork. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that? Some form of chili. Ay, ay, ay. And I'm salmon. That was the last one. Excuse me. Hello. You and you, come here. Look. That oh, is a pork. Oh, what? That's, That's pork, pork fat. fat. Just hold that two seconds. That's next to this. Fucking wings. And the top is soaking wet because it's fucking full of condensation. And this, who grabs that out there and doesn't think about changing the fold? Who could be that dirty? Chili? Chili. Shit round the outside. Look at the mess of this place. It's fucking ridiculous. Someone fucking run up. Young man, you are running a business. Hot wings next to fucking raw pork. You'll kill everybody. After seeing food constantly come back. All right, this pizza just got sent back. Chef Ramsay headed to the walk-in, and what he found was simply disgusting. Hot wings next to raw pork. You'll kill everybody. Are these fridges out here behind the line the same way? After a service, they're probably dirty. Show me. I didn't realize it was this bad. And that's a pretty awful feeling. What the fuck? What is that? It's a it was a pizza. It was a pizza. Old. What is that one? How old is that one, then? This one, that one's got to go. Will you seriously cook that for a customer? Can't. And this one? I mean, look at it. Count how many pizzas are here, please. Hey, and for me, this is money now. 25. 25. What are you expecting? A cruise ship with 2,000 people coming in. And then you leave that set in there, look. You leave that set in there. You can't take that out. What's that? Oh, no. What is that, please? That's a hider. Is that tuna? That's a what? Yeah, fuck. A fucking tuna? That is a what? Oh, fuck me. And when was this last cleaned? That. Don't, 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 don't you dare try to tell me that was done from last night. Oh, no. God, no, God, no, 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 no. That, I missed. Wow, what a mess. If there's one thing you're gonna have to learn, get cleaning, Mark. 
you've got no idea on the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you've pissed through your hands. I'm absolutely speechless. The whole setup is dysfunctional. The walk-in. A walk-in packed full of shit. We're not talking hundreds of dollars. We're talking about thousands of dollars. Do you have any idea what the real costs are? What's the total purchasing? What's your labor cost? What's our break even a week? You don't know. No idea. Oh, come on. Don't you do the books? Does anybody know what the break even is? We should know. We don't. You don't know. Not one of you, eight years down the line, know what you need to take to survive. I'm fucked. No wonder you run out of money. All right, I'm gonna clean. No, Just don't ask. This is gonna be a, a few hours job, yeah. All right. I'm floored. There's a lot of things that we thought we knew and we don't know. That's dangerous. That's when you fail, when you don't know what you should know. Jeff Ramsey knows that Barefoot Bob's is in need of a major turnaround. <laughs> Please go and take a seat there. He also realizes that this is going to only happen if Mark and Lisa are united. Yesterday was a real tough day. I want to talk about your relationship because that's paramount, because you're not partners in terms of investors. Mm -hmm. You're husband and wife. Okay. And it's easy to forget. Lisa, go back to the beginning. The first time you met, you know, a lot in common. Mm -hmm. Just had a lot of laughs together. We had the same personality. He kind of got me. Great. But here's the ironic scenario. You've gone off in different directions. This business needs both of you. And unless both of you get on the same page, that's it. It's game over. Yeah. Lisa, the balance isn't equal. I want to do I want to turn around. You sure? Positive. 100%. 100%. You know, think we just need to work more as a team. I need to focus on getting that back of the house properly run. I want you to do the front of the house, and we need to talk about it. You know, you're, you're my partner, who I want to be with forever, you know? Let's just really work together on this, and let's make it happen. We can do it. I'm excited to turn around. Right, now I've got a smile, good. That's right, yeah, <laughs> that, 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 bang. Done. I feel optimistic. I know I can commit myself a little bit more to coming back here. <laughs> now Mark and I just need to work it out rather than just walking in separate directions. This has been, if anything, has made me realize how much I love you. Yeah, me too. Getting this off my chest about the problems that Lisa and I were having is just, it's relieving. We're both on board. And just to hear it from her, that's comforting. So the one thing that stood in my mind that shocked me is when I asked you, what was your break even? And your response was? I don't know. But there's one thing I've got to emphasize is that this business needs to be run like a business. And you don't need a general manager. That's not gonna make this place work. You don't need a new chef. 
What you need, right now, urgently, is an accountant. And here he is. Please say good morning to Tim McLennan. Hi. Are you well? Yes. Please, yeah, good you. to see you. Hello, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Hello, Mark. And this is Lisa. Hi, Mark. nice Lisa. to meet you. And this man knows how to run a business. I've arranged for him to be with you as your consultant. He'll put a business plan together and he'll come up with a budget in place. That's what we've always needed. <laughs> a lot of times people are good at what they do, but running the business itself, you yes. have to bring in some help. Yeah. Lisa, I've never seen you look so happy. I'm giddy. <laughs> good. Probably the most excited person to ever see an accountant. The business was just so mind-boggling that I didn't think I'd ever be able to get a handle on it myself. Use this time, guys. This man's key. Moving forward. Thank you. With Lisa and Mark seemingly on the same page, Mark and Chris, let's go. Chef Ramsay turns his attention to fixing the food, beginning with two New England classics. An amazing clam chowder, followed by a stunning fish and chips. Okay. okay, let's get the chowder going first. Hot oil first, just a little touch. Bacon in. Yeah. Really fry that off. Fish and chips into the bowl. I've got my vodka, a touch of honey. I've never had this kind of guidance from a Michelin-rated chef ever. And just the chance to learn from Chef Ramsay. In? It's a very special deal. Very good. You can really taste the clams. What you haven't got is a taste of flour. Let's take them out and give the girls a taste. I believe I lost focus, and I believe that my food started to show it. Delicious fish and chips done with a little bit of nostalgia. A delicious clam chowder, would you believe? Ooh. Have a taste. Having Lisa back in the front of the house is going to let me focus on, on our food and what needs to be done to operate a proper kitchen. It's going to be nice to have my partner back. Oh, my God, this is so good. Awesome. This is amazing. Clearly, one of the biggest problems at this beachside eatery is the dramatic drop-off in the winter months. OK, come and stand over here, please. But Chef Ramsay has a plan to turn that around. Now, here's the thing. We think that the summer is the only time we can survive, and the winter, well, we just got to accept it. No, when you consider all these little towns surrounding you, collectively, you've got 100,000 locals. So tomorrow, we're relaunching this place with a much smaller menu. But today, we're going to do a little marketing. We're going to go and reach out to the locals. So we've got some hip T-shirts that are going to get that message out there, loud and clear. Get these on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What a gorgeous little town. Beautiful. I'm thinking of moving here. You should. I'm Lisa, I'm the owner, and I'm very proud of it. That's <laughs> very good. Isn't it good? I never eat clam chowder. No, and you like it? I love it. Oh, that's great. It's good. Look at this. She's killing it. You want some chowder down here? I would love some. Spare for Bob's. We've got Gordon Ramsay helping us out, redoing our menu. It is great that Lisa's out getting her hands dirty, getting to promote her own restaurant. Best fish and chips around. I don't think I've ever seen her this involved and this excited. You guys should come down and visit us. Oh, we definitely will. It's absolutely oh, it's just amazing. Thank you. I'll come back and get All right, you thank you. Okay. We'll see you at uh, Barefoot Box. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Well, yesterday was a day in which the word was spreading about the new Barefoot Bobs. Overnight, Chef Ramsay's team was miraculously creating it. Welcome. Oh, my Oh, my, oh my goodness. Oh, my God. Why? Oh my wow. God. Awesome. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I love it. We have created a true beachside eatery. Wow. Oh, my God. Man, it's beautiful. Gone is that hideous tiki bar theme and that ridiculous wall covering. You've got the walls painted blue and white, resembling the water. Gorgeous, with a strong identity, that strong so nautical wow. feel. From tiki to cheeky, let me tell you. It's beautiful. This is by far the coolest, hippest, greatest place to be in Hull now. Wow. This what is amazing. Plus, this is what we dreamed this place was going to be. This is it. Is it, Mark? This is what we envisioned when really? we bought it. I couldn't be happier about being an owner of Barefoot Bob's right now, it, this was our dream, but even my dream didn't look this good. <laughs> now, one more thing. I would like to introduce you to a state-of-the-art POS system from POS Lavo and Zephyr Hardware. Oh, 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 oh. Our old POS system was like a dinosaur. It was horrid. Now it is unreal. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be operated by wireless remotes. Oh, Lisa, here's the good news. This baby here will give you an hour-by-hour hour record of your infantry. 
you're purchasing. Every ounce of data can be fed straight back to Tim McLennan. <laughs> Everything's amazing, and this is just over the top. <laughs> nice. nice. Thank, Thank you. you. So happy you're happy. It's just nice to see her happy. This is going to help her want to be a part of what we're doing here. I think this is going to give Lisa and I a fresh start. Thank, Thank you very you much. Good? Yeah, this yeah. is awesome. To go along with the revamped dining room, take a menu and pass one along, please. Chef Ramsay has overhauled the menu with a focus and a finesse of the dishes that New England is famous for. The menu's been condensed, and all the hits have been put on to one menu, but refined. Ooh. OK, Whoa. what do you think? Thanks. Beautiful. Let's start off the top of the menu. Raw, oysters, half on the shell, mignonette pepper, cucumber. Next day, you've got a crab cake. How can you be on the beach with no stunning crab cake? Old bay, onion, celery, and mayo. It's simple, delicious. Next, you've got lobster roll. Poached lobster with a mayonnaise, a semi-brioche roll, so with a nice tarragon. We're here to make money, not lose it, right, Lisa? Right. If you've got the quality, then less is more, let me tell you. Good. Dig in, guys. This is delicious. Oh, my god, it's amazing. Happy? This is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, these are mine. Don't touch me. <laughs> I will stab you with my fork. <laughs> Customers will be down the street, around the corner, trying to get in here to get this food. Get away from my corn. Are you guarding that? <laughs> <laughs> With the grand reopening just minutes away, the staff is anxious to open the doors. It's just going to be a gigantic change, you know, and everybody here knows it. But Lisa's brother, Robbie, this isn't going to work, has his doubts. We just lost all of our customer base. Gone. I'm pretty upset about the whole situation. I think the look is a terrible change. <laughs> no one's going to come in and watch a fucking game here. When I look around at the restaurant, I don't see barefoot bars. Now you walk in, you think you're at some hoity-toity little yacht club. It's the complete opposite of who we are. Truthfully, I think it sucks. I don't know where the blender went. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you are going to be getting all the frozen drinks. I don't think we should do frozen drinks anymore. We're not that kind of restaurant anymore. This bar has no chance of running smoothly tonight. That's it. I'm done. I quit. I'm sorry. But it's not like the guy lives here. The guy was here for three days. Doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Robbie! Find yourself a new bar manager. Minutes before Barefoot Bob's is ready to open for relaunch. This isn't going to work. Lisa's brother, Robbie, is not exactly pleased with Chef Ramsay's changes. Find yourself a new bar manager. Where is he going now? We get people drunk and we feed people. We're not a five-star restaurant. Is Ramsay going to be here tonight? Because <laughs> Really good words for him. Hey, thanks for fucking up our restaurant. Oh, how are you doing? You all set? I think so. Yeah? Good. Lise, ready? Ready. Good, good, good. Bobby, happy? Hope this works, man. Oh, dear. Hey, what do you mean, hope? Hey. I hope. Talk to me. Come here. What's wrong? Uh, why are you so negative? You've got a face on you like you've just given up. I'm not giving up, man. You haven't given up. What's the matter? Just very skeptical. I just don't skeptical know. Skeptical about what? Just the surroundings. Well, I'm worried about our uh, our old customers coming back. Really? Yeah. They're a meat and potatoes guy. They're, Have you been drinking? A... No. I mean, how arrogant are you? I'm not arrogant at all. Should I give you a little insight if it doesn't work? The restaurant closes, your sister divorces, and then you pick up the pieces. Where the fuck are you going to work? Who's going to employ you? I don't know if you know what side your bread is buttered on. But what I'm asking is a fucking commitment of 100%, especially in front of your team. Exactly. All right, buddy. Come on. I don't even want to shake hands. All right. You've upset me. A fucking joke. Fuck him. Mark, two seconds. What the fuck's going on out there? He says things aren't going to work. Does he have any idea where we are financially? Yes. If anything, he should be sleeping here to make sure this exactly. thing works. Exactly. He has to be on board. Let me talk to him. I don't understand how he's not on board. That's really upsetting. What keeps us alive, we, we lost. No, we didn't. What we had didn't work. Change has to happen. We got to fucking do it. Do you understand? I'm not going to let this opportunity go. This is what we got to do. I'm not running that restaurant the way it was. I'm not going to sit and watch this restaurant continue to go into the ground. All of us have to be on the same page. We can't have that attitude going forward. I have a short tempo. Change doesn't just sit well with me. But at the end of the day, if Mark and Lisa believes in it, then they're my family and I'm behind them 100%. Three weeks from now and we're still packed and it's working? You know, I know. You, you're wrong. I'm in, 110%, let's do this. Let's make it work. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. 
Welcome to the new and improved Barefoot Pops. With Mark in charge of the kitchen. Let's go. Right this way, folks. <laughs> and Lisa controlling the front of house. Go, enjoy, folks. Tonight's relaunch will be the couple's first big test. So it's three chowders to start. Can you start with the clean strips? OK. How easy is that, though? Amazing. I love the new POS system. It's just going to make every single part of the restaurant run together. And I'm sending more all in. All right, here all we right. go. I got a crab cake. Crab cake, curd chef. I want to fire a big boy. I want to fire a fish and chips, please. He's got the chowder. And that's working. That's working. Just fish and chips. Good. With the first orders leaving the kitchen. To come bearing gifts. What did you enjoy? Barefoot Bob's is off to a solid start, and everything seems to be going according to plan. I can eat probably two of these. Mm. This is delicious. But an hour into service, there's a flood of tickets coming into the kitchen. Two scallops, I want to fire up a fish and chips, I want to fire up a big boy. And Mark and the cooks are completely backed up. Another crab cake fired. I'm waiting for a big buoy. It's coming right now. You got your lobster roll coming up? Urgently, please. Did you put it up? You, you don't have it? You don't have that at all? What happened with that calamari and clam steak that I threw in 45 minutes ago? Listen, that one's coming. No, because you're not getting the first calamari because my table's about to leave. OK, so it's everyone in my fucking bar. Fuck me. With everyone on edge in the kitchen. What time are we seeing? I don't know, but we got oysters. You don't have to cook them, do you? The diners are getting restless, and the relaunch is at a crisis point. Do you want to go? Give them a couple more minutes. You can see the temperatures rising from the diners. Um, I have to jump in and just kind of stop things for a few. Stop taking food orders right now. Stop taking food orders. I need the calamari, I need the clam. I called it. All right, nobody's going to order food for a while. Lisa made an executive decision to tell everyone to stop taking tables and just slow everything down. Can I help you at all? Yes, please, run this to The chicken's working, right? Chicken's all set. Chicken, done. Fish and chips, done. Oh, no. Looking good, guys. Samantha's coming up right now. There's the slip. Oh, there you go. Uh, you just saved the day. 72, I got this. Looks good, right? Nice. With Lisa taking the initiative and control of the dining room. This is good. We're OK. Beautiful. That's going to get us back on track. Mark and the kitchen staff now have time to regroup and get orders out. We can order food? Yes. There we go, folks. Sorry for the hold up. Those are really different. Those are good. Everyone likes everything out there, guys. Looks good. Having Lisa's support gives me a lot of room. I can grow back here. I can get better. Let's fire off a fish and chips, and we're done. I look forward to having her back in the restaurant. Bye-bye. Tonight, clearly, we had our growing pains, but we didn't give up. The spirit was here, and we fought all night. Think of where we've come. I think we got through it. Cheers. Robbie, you were against it, but change is for the better. Let me tell you, you've got to give it your all. I will. Stay close to Mark and Lisa. They need that support, let me tell you. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes with Mark and Lisa on my own. Um, a big thank you to you all. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, well done. Yeah, Mr. Skeptical. Chef Ramsay, thank you. That was wrong. I am very, very proud of you both because you pulled it off and you stuck in there. Mark, you don't know how strong you are. You are a real leader, and when the chips are down, you hang on in there, and you didn't buckle. Well done. Thank you. Don't turn back. That's right. Stick together. Yeah, and it will work. Good luck. Thank you very Good much. Night. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm looking forward to the future. I know I'm in love with my wife. I know she's in love with me. Good luck. It's wonderful. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. We took a shack on the beach and transformed it into a restaurant that can become a destination for tourists and locals. And Mark and Lisa may not have known their bottom line, but the true bottom line is they need each other to succeed. Get me the hell out of here. Wow. What a beach. In the days that followed, it quickly became clear that Chef Ramsay's many changes had the restaurant heading in the right direction. We were out of the oysters, so I gave him a scallop It's fine. It's fine. All right. No problem. I love you. You're the best. <laughs> And with accountant Tim McClellan helping with the finances. We're going to save some money for the winter, and we'll do the hard work we need to to get it done. It's going to help Lisa a lot, too. She's really looking forward to working with you. The future is definitely looking brighter. Right, this is good. We're OK. How you doing, folks? Mark finally got what he always wanted, his wife Lisa working alongside him once again. Thank you so much. 
Hanson, Massachusetts, a tightly knit community just 25 miles outside of Boston. In 2005, restaurateur Tom Caceres bought one of the fixtures of the town, a beloved restaurant called the Old Hitching Post. My first restaurants, they were very successful. And then I wanted to own another one to pass it over to my oldest daughter. She wanted to become a restaurant owner like her father. Good afternoon, Old Hitching Post. Running and owning my own restaurant has always been my dream. So I was extremely excited when we came to the Old Hitching Post. Right this way, please. But even though my dad bought this place for me, my father does have the final say. What did you do? I've been working in the kitchen. What no, did you do? No, what did I told you? You gotta make sure water comes Janice in. is in the front. But I want you to be there too. Well, why don't you go? Because, no, you. My daughter, as good as she is, she doesn't know what it takes to run a big restaurant like this. Let's say I will leave tomorrow. My daughter, it will last three months. And that's the very truth. Tom will say Andrea doesn't know how to pay the bills. Andrea doesn't know what she needs for cash flow. Key point missing. Tom doesn't allow her to be a part of that. He thinks he's the only one that could run the restaurant and not anyone else. Andrea, if you don't know what I tell you, make sure your customer. Dad. Check. Relax. Right now. Relax. Tom runs his business like it's a small country he owns. The beef tips, people don't love them. Don't tell me that. My father makes people crazy. You do that all the time behind my back without me knowing? To him, the right decision is his decision. Don't never do that. Oh. Go back to your work, all of you. He tells us I'm the best at this. I'm, I know what I'm doing. Who are you? You're stupid. That was the most stupid thing I ever see in these kids in the longest I've been here. Look, my way is the only way. Why? Because my way is the right way. Because of Tom, there are a lot of things that aren't done the right way. The way we handle food, the, what comes in through those doors, it's not always the best product. A lot of it's not good at all. Dan, they don't like it. It's kind of hard when we have all this unquality product. I don't really know why we don't do any business. Since the day I bought the old Hitchin Post, I just keep her money out of my pocket just to stay open. My God. Who we'll barely make it. Now what are you gonna do? Pay the bills and get it over with it. I would have never signed up for this had I known that almost seven years into it, he would still be in charge. But we can't walk away because we've invested so much in it, so much time, so much money. But I don't know what we're gonna be left with. Tom is anxious to meet up with Chef Ramsay. Chef Ramsay, I'm right here. So he has volunteered to pick him up and give him an early morning briefing on the old hitching post. Where else are you from? Corfu. Wow. The restaurant. It's Greek, right? No, no. Oh. It's an American. American, American food, but I have some Greek dishes. OK. Yeah. This is my third restaurant. Right. I've been very successful my other two. Well done. How long did you buy it? Six years. OK. I bought it for my daughter. As a, as a gift? Uh... Well, I bought it for her future, for, for her, her future. family. So she's running the restaurant now? But she's not running by herself. I'm right next to her. OK. I, I need to educate her a lot. She needs so much to learn about this business. I have a problem. She doesn't realize how much it takes to run a restaurant. Right. How many hours you got to put into the restaurant. She's not hungry for it. No, she's not. Wow. She's not. I give her a lot of authority. But she's not a hardworking person. Is she spoiled? She's not spoiled, but stop it. How's the restaurant doing now? Awful. Awful. I mean, awful, awful. I try to buy quality food. Good. That's very good. We try to give generous portion and reasonable prices, but wow. it doesn't seem to go nowhere. Jesus. And this is the honest truth. How much money are you losing a week? <sighs> are you ready? Please. Seven to $8,000. A week? A week. 30000 a month? Yes. Exactly. Jesus. Exactly. It's a disaster. This is your third restaurant. The previous two were successful. The third Very one, you bring your daughter in, and it's starting to go down. Correct. Well, that's that's the honest truth. This is it. Look at the size of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, thanks for the update. And be upfront and be honest with me so I can get to the problem straight away. What you see is what you get. Look at this place. Chef Ramsay. How are you, my darling? Very well indeed. And first name is? Janice. I'm the manager. You're the manager? I am indeed. 
Right. Um, Tom picked me up at the uh, train station. Oh, my. Don't believe everything you're told. Oh, really? Sure. Oh, damn. Because he, he was vocal. Always. Tom is a person who feels that he knows what's best. OK, um, let me sit down. Please, right this way. I don't think Tom has it within him to be open to change. Will he listen to Chef Ramsay? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Hello. How are you? Good. Me, Andrea, nice to meet Andrea, you. likewise. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Let's catch up. Uh, okay. Obviously, um, I was grateful for Dad to come pick me up. Yeah. So he is um, instrumental in setting this up for you. Yes, I always wanted to do this. I love wow. people. Uh, your role, personally, what is that? Um, I come in here. I manage the front of the house, um, uh, functions that we do. I deal with the public. He said he runs the restaurant. Yes. But I mean, even after 60 years, you'd think that you've got up to speed in terms of trying to run this place. I can handle it and try to make it more successful, but my father's not ready to pass the buck over. Really? I can't do um, much of anything. On most parts, my hands are tied. It's just he's having a hard time backing down. Ooh, wow. Because he let it slip that you weren't that passionate about running this. Oh, I think he's extremely wrong about that. Why would he I tell me I have no that? idea why he would say something like that. Because he sees, you know, I work really hard in here to make it more successful. I've got my husband to help me, and I think that hey, we're... Husband? My husband works in here also. OK, where does he work? He works all in the kitchen on the line. Um, Dad also mentioned that you're stubborn. What are you stubborn about? It's his way or no way. That's why he says I'm stubborn, because I have different ideas and I have different views. But he has taken away a lot of my desire to do things and the the willingness and the drive that I had when we first came in here because um, I am held back. You know, I'm stuck. That's frustrating. Right. But there seems to be a, a butting of heads that we're not making headway. Is Tom nearby? Is he in Let the kitchen? Let me get him for you. Something that doesn't quite stack up. When we first came in here, this was my baby. But little by little, he's slowly draining some of the drive that I had for it. Um, sit down, please. Thank you. You said I wasn't passionate? I didn't, uh, I didn't mean that like that at all. What I wanted to say is you're not ready to take over. Why aren't I ready to take over? First of all, you don't realize how much it takes a restaurant, the hours, and the money. Dad, you've got to be kidding. I don't know how many hours and stuff. I don't see everything. I've Honey, been by your side for all these years. The experience is not there yet, Andrea. So how many years did you think that I needed an experience <clears throat> for the restaurant that you bought me? What do you think is going to happen in this business that hasn't happened in the previous seven years? Who's the stubborn one in this relationship? Andrea. And she gets it from? Tom. From her father, Bud. First of all, none of you or your husband are ready to face a restaurant with a very lot of business we do. First of all, you don't even know. That's our fault that we do very little business. We need to fix things, Dad. OK. Why don't you fix it then for seven years? You were here. Yeah. How can I fix what you're not allowing me to fix? What do you mean I don't allow you, Andrea? What do you allow me to do? I gave every right. For what in here? I, I have you... to ask you to get ink. You don't even know when you write a check how much money is in a, in a safe there. Because you take all the money. Right. I have but no what control I'm over is... anything else. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, do you ever sit down and do your numbers? How can you expect me to know what needs to be done when you were doing all of that? No, no, no. This is a big issue right now. And you're really upsetting me a lot. Uh, no, you're upsetting I'm me. I'm working for a money tonight for you. <sighs> if you were ready enough to say to me, Dad, sit home this week. I Take do... three months off. What? I want to work and I want to control the rest. Really? How about come you? We've yeah. said that to you. Step down. You don't need to come in so much. I can do this. Dad, we've already had this conversation like two years ago. We never did. We, we never did. But what I'm saying to you, Andrea, you're not ready to take over. That's not true. Thank you. Chef Ramsay has just discovered that Tom and Andrea are clearly not on the same page about Andrea's capabilities. My father told me that I wasn't passionate. How can we be when he sucks the fucking life out of you? And while it's way too early to know who's right, the time has come to pass judgment on the food. Hi there. Hello. First name is? Carla. Carla, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm from Hanson. Grew up okay, right, right here. 
been here uh, 26 years now. Wow. I've been with the first owners, and now That's Andrea and Tom. Are those two always passing heads? They are, Jeff. They are. Yeah. So, but anyways. OK, let's start off. What would you recommend? Cranberry haddock, chef, because we are in cranberry world down here. Uh, cranberry haddock? Yes. I'll go for that. OK. You've got to try the meatloaf. Yes. And then lobster ravioli, made on site? Yes, chef. It's made on site. It's fresh ravioli. Fresh like ravioli. Oh, wow. Let's try one of them as well. OK. Thank, Thank you, you, chef. Tom makes us say that, yes, everything is fresh here. Let's prepare everything we need to do. It's not true. All right, Danny. Peter, double check the salt. Chef Ramsey would love everything on my menu. It's excellent food. That's good. You got the lobster ravioli coming? It's yes, coming, we do. Yeah. Minute away. Good. I know we're in the uh, area of cranberry, but my God, from napkins to the walls, it's cranberry OD. Wow, that was quick. This is our lobster ravioli. This is the homemade ravioli. Listen, OK, I apologize for that. The lobster is not fresh. The lobster's not fresh. You told me it was. It's frozen. It's frozen. It's frozen. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not even uh, hot in the middle. Mm. Oh, there. Oh. I can't do that to my tummy. It's dreadful. Obviously, store bought. Yes, Jeff. They're nasty. That didn't even get swallowed. Sorry about that. Thank you, Carla. Why would you come to a restaurant to order store bought product? I, I, I don't get it. Oh, Chef Dan? Yes. He spit it out. Listen, the longest I owned the place, I never heard one complaint. Never once. Next, cranberry haddock. Cranberry. Lemon on this one, honey. That looks good, Carla. Right, what is this? We have the cranberry haddock. Oh, cranberry haddock. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Carla, come on. It looks like some bear shot in the woods. Really? And what's the water coming up? I mean, look at it. Mm -hmm. OK, wow. I can't believe I'm eating this. Oof. Watery and bland. It is absolutely disgusting. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. Raw. God, they're dreadful. Look at that. Bland, undercooked. And as for that mess, mm. soggy, wet, and just depressing. Ugh, disaster. What a mess. OK, uh, we'll yeah. check on your next scores for you. Thank you, Carla. God, that was gnarly. He doesn't like the cranberry haddock. What is wrong with our cranberry haddock? The cranberry was not good. He doesn't like it, no. I eat it once a week. People love it. People taking them home. They eat today, and they take it two, three orders home. The chef runs, he didn't like it. This is the meatloaf. Oh, meatloaf. Thank you. When, when was this one made? This was made today, meatloaf? Today. Yes. OK. Enjoy. Disgusting. One ounce of seasoning, dry, horrible texture. It doesn't feel like a meatloaf was made today, let me tell you. Was the meatloaf made today? No, a meatloaf was made God only knows how long and then frozen. Don't even tell me that. Are you sure that was made today, darling? It was not, chef. It's frozen. It's yes. frozen. Frozen. Carla, why are you doing this to me? Sorry about that. It's bland. It's bland. just okay. yuck. Yuck. OK. It doesn't really freeze that well, meatloaf. Who makes that? Chef Dan. And the Chef Dan had his tongue removed? Well, thanks, darling. OK. And here we go. What's wrong with this? This is actually Chef Danny said it was dry and overcooked. We do freeze it. And you think you should lost your taste buds? Give me a break. Chef Ramsey destroy every dish I offer him. He insulted me. I don't care who you are. 
Ramsey or no Ramsey? Danny, where's the kitchen? When you insult me, better be ready to explain yourself. Hi, guys. Come around. And this is? I'm Dan. Dan. Gordon, good to see you. Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin. Kevin. I'm Spiros. Spiros? Nice so, oh, the Andrew's husband? Yep. Excellent. Come over, guys, please. I am absolutely disgusted. The food is outdated and bland. The lobster ravioli, disgusting. I don't understand the mentality of serving frozen shit that you buy in. Damn. Help me understand the madness. I can't even answer you on that right. one right now. It's a setup for disaster. Had it with cranberries. That cranberry glaze, watery spinach, disgusting. Raw sweet potatoes, the grilled meatloaf. When was that cooked? Every two weeks, we end up making a batch or so. It gets portioned and then frozen. How sad. I mean, how sad. Yep. When you freeze cooked meat, what happens to it as it defrosts? It dries out. Then you grill it. What happens to that again? Dries it out even dries a again. little bit more. It's gross. It's almost impossible to make a, a loaf of meatloaf every day or every other day. You cannot do it. So we make it in batches of two weeks. We freeze it. We dry it out. We thaw it. And then we grill it. It makes sense. Come on. I thought you were going to love my midlock, regardless if it was frozen. You thought I'd like that. Well, I really did. I mean, um, you want me to but be how's it possible, Tom? It's something different. Grill it. It's an insult to America. In this area, that's what they love. Really? Yep. You're not going to convince me on that one. Now, this is very, very good dish and a very famous dish. They come in people from far away. Dan, have you actually ever sat down and tasted that dish from start to finish? Yes. Yeah. Do you like it? No. So now I've got a chef that doesn't like what he serves. Do you have any idea how stupid that sounds? Yes. But you seem happy with it. No, not happy with it. Then stop it, Dan. I try. I try. You know, I do. <laughs> wow. How do you rate the food? I don't think it's all that much to talk about. I think we're outdated. I think it's just OK at best. But out of 10? Three or four. And you're saying, Ramsey, you need to respect my food. I did. Get out of your bubble, Tom. Get in the real world. I wish I could say thank you. How come? How come you don't ever tell your brother that the food you cook in here and you serve with him is shit? We talk all the time that the food's not that good. Did you tell him to change? You don't let him change things. I never allowed him. I off. never allowed him not he to change anything. When did I tell off? you not to change? I've tried to take things Come off. on, don't, Dan. Why don't you change the menu? It's not his the, fault, not my fault. The way you spoke earlier, you say four to five. That's what I've given to this food. Our food is good. How can you say a friend of the Chef Ramsey is not good? We got another issue there. Piece of shit. When I think I'm right, oh, I'm going to keep fighting. You know what I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep fighting and fighting when I get that. With Tom being adamant that there is nothing wrong with the food. I'm sure you've done this, folks. Chef Ramsey gets his first opportunity to see how the locals feel about the menu at the old hitching post. All right, boys. Pasta pignoli meatloaf. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, chef. Put that in the oven to reheat, please. This is the one we want to use. That's the oldest. Wow. What is that? Tom. What is that? Frozen calamari. Did you buy them in like that? That's how it comes. Is that how you grew up watching calamari in Greece? I try it fresh with the skin on like a European. And nobody even ordered them. Nobody ordered fresh? Oh, fucking here we go. One more meatloaf coming up. Is that the meatloaf? Yeah. The crew. Tom, you got upset with me earlier. You got obsessive. I want you to love my meatloaf. Yeah. You hear the little maracas that yep. they have in Greece? Yep. I mean, honestly, do you want me to kiss your ass no. and tell you that I love your meatloaf? So I dare you, go out in your dining room and tell your customers that you're serving that. No, I'm not going to do that. 
You got no balls, have you? I got a lot of balls. Mine is bigger and stronger. Yours is bigger and stronger. I got a more fucking balls, more than him, and a, a lot of a half a dozen like him. You're not proud of what you serve. Because if you're proud of what you serve, you'd have no problems taking it into the dining room. I'm proud of my product, regardless if it's been on the freezer. Take it out there, then. I don't want to do that because it's too humiliating to me to go with a yeah. hazard of rock, two so pieces of middle. It's not that humiliating for you to take the money, then. Oh, put it in your pockets. That's not humiliating, is it? Why don't you just admit that it's wrong? It's not wrong. The wrong is you if I go over here and like them. blockhead. And you think you're going to be successful serving that shit. Wrong, Thomas. You shouldn't be anywhere near this kitchen. What a disaster. Yes. I'm cooking it and I'm prison. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm struggling, Andrea, I'm struggling with who pushing the standards here. Who cares? Look at that. Does that represent you? No. The second generation running your father's restaurant? No. And if someday he lets you take over, you have to do something about this. Don't. No, I realize it. It doesn't stop you having standards. When you see it like in a big picture like this, when it's one thing after another that's getting pointed out, it's, you know, it's, it's one big mess. Carla, as you take their orders, yeah. I think it'd be nice for you to explain whether it's fresh, whether it's frozen, defrosted. OK. I want you to know what you're ordering. All right, um, the dill salmon. Salmon okay. is frozen, yes. The shrimp scampi? Frozen. Frozen, yes. How about the crab cakes? Frozen. <laughs> All right, my order is going to be Caesar salad, mm -hmm. which is fresh, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. My apologies. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. As some diners rethink their orders, others regret theirs. Chicken doesn't taste fresh. How was that uh, meatloaf? It tastes like the uh, TV dinner that I give my three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's being polite. It wasn't very good. No. Um, I don't think they were fresh. You don't think they were fresh? No. With Chef Ramsay hearing enough of the customer complaints, he decides he needs to further investigate the practices of the kitchen. Dan. I didn't, I didn't. Yes, sir. Do you buy them like that in milk? No, we don't buy them like that. Why they like this? It's the water. Because unfortunately, those are frozen ones. I know. Sorry. Tom, I mean, honestly, why are you doing this to yourself? Those go what they were. Why are you doing this? Just smell inside there. Come on. Just smell inside there. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. It smells beautiful, ocean fresh. Kevin, can you get me Andrea, please? Andrea. Out oh, back, please. Are you kidding me right now? So, Andrea, come around, please. You got two seconds? The scallops were serving. They're frozen ones. He's in denial. I have to talk. Relax, no, 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 no. I need to talk. Just talk. There's nothing wrong. I eat myself. If you pick up this bag, I pick them up myself this morning. If you take this bag, they've been in the freezer for one day or 24 hours, and pick up this one, you're going to find the same seafood product. Disagree. Go ahead and smell this one and smell that one. Tell me what the, what, what's the difference. You are trying to convince me that serving frozen food is better than fresh. It's not a frozen. They were in the fucking freezer. You buy them in the bulk fresh, you put them in the bags, you weigh them out, yes. and you freeze them. Yes, I do. And in the morning, you take out 10 bags, you get them defrost, they sit in their piss like that, and then you cook them. Yes, I do that. Right. But Sorry. you will criticize me the milk and the smell. There's no smell in any difference. That's so, one from this one. And I say they smell like ocean fresh, and they do. So they smell the same once they've been frozen. Depends if you got to go one year on a freezer one oh. day. All right. Oh. You have not a clue what you're talking about. Oh. They smell fresher once they're defrosted. Shit. You're fucking loopy. They smell fresher after being frozen. Oh, come on. Anybody's in a restaurant business. What? No matter who he is. Rule number one when studying to be a chef, fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better. Once it's frozen, shellfish is something you never freeze. And now here you are lecturing me that that fucking thing is fresh. Dad. 
while Chef Ramsay continues to explain to Tom how his pre-cooking is having a negative impact on the food. Fresh food doesn't smell, taste fucking better once it's frozen. Tom remains in denial. No. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. It doesn't matter if it's frozen or not. No. He's trying to convince me that this idiotic setup is acceptable. Do you honestly think that your customers will be happy to pay for frozen shit being defrosted rapidly? They are under the impression in your fucking dining room that what you're cooking them is fresh. So you're not going to convince me that this is better than serving it fresh. What I've just said, does that make any sense? It does. It does. Thank God you're not as stubborn as your dad. If you don't like my food, don't even talk to me. I don't want you. Oh, my God. I'm extremely embarrassed. My heart is like breaking because um, this is something that I'm really proud of. And tonight just showed that I really shouldn't be proud of this. Thank you. Uh, really disgusting. My dad, his mindset is not allowing us to go up from here. I need a drink. Andre, this can't continue. Your father's in denial. He's trying to win an argument that doesn't make sense. Welcome to my life. He's got to stop trying to convince me of these ridiculous practices. And every time. He doesn't see that they're wrong. I want this business, but I want it, I want it to function correctly. And my fear is that by the time it comes to me, what am I going to do with it? There's nothing to have. It's gone. That's my fear. I need your help to convince him that we are stopping dead. Frozen shit. I can't do it without you. OK. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Good night. With Tom claiming the community is in love with the food. Hello. Nice to, mwah, Great to see, you. see you. Have a seat. Chef Ramsay gets up early. You willing to take some callers while we're here? Absolutely. To get more feedback from the locals. I've attempted to have a butternut squash for aviolas and felt digestive issues. Ooh. The fish and my vegetables were total mush. It's dated, it's lackluster, it's in need of help. Now armed with more evidence of what he suspected, Chef Ramsay heads back to the old hitching post for a showdown with Tom and his staff. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hello. Hello Chef Ramsay. First of all, the one thing that I learned since I've been here is that there are a lot of bad practices taking place. Yesterday was very upsetting. Right. This morning, I went live to a local radio station. All of a sudden, the phone lines start going crazy. Lines are jammed. These complaints started coming in. Let me tell you something really important. The reason why we're in this situation, Tom, is because this whole business is run on your system. Why are you so controlling, Tom? It wasn't controlling type of thing. It was just a routine. Not as far as I'm concerned. Tom runs a business his way, and he's not open to alternative ideas. So Tom makes a decision. Everyone's got to go with it. And now a percentage of decisions, how many of them are right? I think it's 50-50 on some wow. of the items. Wow. Tom, let me tell you, you do not want to pass a liability to your daughter. Exactly. So you have a duty now to step up and do something you haven't done in seven years, and that's change. Sometimes you're stuck mentally, physically, economically, and there's no way out, and you just hope for a better day. But I'm always a believer for a better day, better business, to do changes at any time. OK. I'm hoping that my father is ready to listen because we need a big change. We have to change immediately. And I trust you. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Let's get together. Yeah. I can't do it without you. You got my support 100%. I want to be right next to you. While Tom appears ready to finally give in and change. Wow. I mean, it looks better than last night, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chef Ramsay, with the help of a couple of locals, look at that beauty, has another major point he wants to make. Take care. Now for something fresh. Just wanted to show you something. Two meatloafs. The one on the left-hand side is a turkey meatloaf. Next to that, you've got a classic meatloaf, both made fresh. Visually, what does that look like? Beautiful. Really, really nice. Gorgeous looking, both of yeah. them. 
Right. Take a fork, please. Things need to look good, granted, but proof is in the tasting. Yeah. Chef, I swear, in my life, I never taste any better. Mm. Yeah. Right. I have a confession to make. Uh-oh. This was actually made by two of your customers. Wow. What you've got to understand is, to keep your business alive, you have to deliver something better than they can cook themselves at home. That is it. I do realize right now, we need to change immediately for much better. You know what? I was blind all this time. And I'm ready for the changes because I trust his judgment and his experience. You've got to want to do it. Absolutely. With Tom now fully understanding the errors of the past, Chef Ramsay and his team jump into high gear to give the old hitching post an exciting new identity. Right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Tom, when you bought this restaurant, you didn't make any changes. Very little. Take off your blindfolds. <gasps> wow! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> Are we in the Oz? Beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy? Yeah. So, gone are the cranberry walls that match the cranberry napkins. We now have a stunning modern bluish grey, contemporary. Gone are those disgusting banqueting chairs. We now have some rustic, charming, authentic wooden chairs. This is amazing. Gorgeous. Have a quick look at the reception area. Oh. oh. The whole entire area has been cleaned up. Beautiful. We did an art installation of reclaimed oh. shutters. Yeah. Oh, How cool is yeah. this? It welcomes you to the restaurant. That's incredible. Ready to see the next part? Yes! Ready? Let's go down. All the way in. Oh, my god. All the booths no. are gone. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, my god. <laughs> Those booths give you that claustrophobic feel. We've lightened up the dining room. We've got a proper space in here now. This is gorgeous. On the wall, we have these stunning plates. Now, I know you're Greek, and you have your traditions, but these plates are not for breaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is just amazing. Totally, I feel like I'm in a new building. I'm at the new hitching post. You happy? More than happy. <laughs> the changes, the, the chandeliers, the colors, the photos, beautiful, all around. Everything in one night. <laughs> This is the most incredible thing I ever see. I feel on the top of the world. Only in America. To go along with the dramatic makeover... Come through, please. Wow. ...is a total revamp of the food and the practices on how to prepare it. We'll be cooking fresh. Running out of things is normal. Get used to it, OK? I fully agree okay. with you. Let's start off at the top. Mm. A delicious homemade clam chowder. Yeah. Oranges. Oh, wow. Next to that, a New England lobster roll. Yeah. A pan seared salmon. Oh, wow. Then with the herb butter, asparagus, and roasted potatoes. Meatloaf. Look at that. Bacon wrapped. Yummy. Creamy mashed potatoes, green beans, with a really nice glazed ketchup sauce. I love it. Look how good the food looks. Just beautiful. beautiful. Mm. Exactly. It's amazing. Jump in. All right, I'm digging in. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. Incredible. I feel like I'm tasting at, at a new place, like somewhere else. Excellent meatloaf. Mm. <laughs> when you order any of our dishes from the new menu, you will be satisfaction guaranteed. I thought I, my char was very good, but this is excellent. I have never tasted anything better, and that's the honest truth. Okay. You like it, Dan? I love it. Mm. Oh, so nice. It's relaunch night, and everything feels different about this restaurant. The only thing you're gonna find in the freezer? Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> new decor, new menu, and a new boss in control. So much to do here. Okay. Controlling the standards, being assertive with the team. Okay. Pressure. I need to step up and be a leader and have a smooth show tonight. This is huge that we get it right. It's do or die. Let's have a great service. Good evening, how are you? Please, come right in. Yeah. Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. If anything we can do for you, please let us know. Okay? Thank you. Let's get ready, boys. Firing apps, 
Table 23, two clam chowders, Caesar and a wedge salad. Two chowders, Caesar and a wedge, ma'am. Coming up. Perfect. Coming your way. Thank you. Ladies, pick up. App's going down for 23. What's next, please, Andre? Keep it going, yeah? I need two salmon for 25. Right here. Ladies, pick up. Thank you. Come and here, now please. I need a stroganoff, a scampi, a meatloaf, and a medium rare rib. Oh, come on. So look, that's raw. Oh, yeah. oh, my Put your, God. Finger, put yes, your finger on that. You are the last line of defense, and they're just throwing food out. Stop! Stop, stop, stop. All of you. Yes, listen. The salmon, raw in the middle. I need one piece of fish on the fly. Now, look at me. We haven't worked this hard to start throwing food out. This lady, she's the last line of defense. Do not serve her raw salmon. Come on, bring it together, yeah. please. One mistake like that just throws everybody. I was worried because I want to make sure that foodie was right. Andrea, do something. Reorganize yourself. How long am I waiting for that salmon? Complete the table. Come on. There you go, Andrea. Ladies, pick up. Take those now. Thank you. Looks lovely. Good. I'm looking for 30 and 26 right now. Seconds away. Thank you. Andrea, you're doing beautiful, honey. I need a pickup. Pick it up, baby. Thank you. You know you can do it. 26. Oh, that looks beautiful, honey. Doesn't it? Delicious. Really fresh. Beyond good. It is definitely a lot better. <laughs> All right, guys, last three slips on the board. Finish strong, guys, Dan. Yeah, keep it going, yes? Yes, sir. Keep it going, Andrea. Well done. Up. Got it. Carlo, pick up 29. Andrea, show them what you can do, honey. I couldn't have beaten any happier. Now, I'm going to cook everything fresh every day. Chef Ramsey proves to me it's the only way to go. Nice job, everyone. Nice, nice teamwork. That was, that was awesome. Awesome. That was good, right, Dad? Very good. I don't think my dad was 100% sure that I could do it, but I'm pretty sure I proved to him that I could do it. Um, I'm really happy. Andrea, can I see you for a couple of minutes? Sit down. Andrea, today's a big day for me. I want to present something very exciting, something very good. I'm passing over because of something you want. I'm leaving. Okay. I want you to take care of it. I want you to be successful. And you know I'm going to always be next to you whatever you need. I know. So, go out there, girl. And get him. Okay. All right? I love you, Dad. I love you too, honey. Thank you. Give me a minute. Go ahead. It was very difficult for me, but that's my wishes. That's exactly what I want to do. She's a leader, she's a worker, she's going to be very successful. You just made her very, very happy. It's been a long time coming, and I understand the nervousness, but honestly, she can do it. I know she can do it. Okay. She can do it. She had two best teachers. She can do this. Thank you. Okay. Let me tell you something. What an amazing relaunch. Come on. How did it feel? <laughs> oh, great. You guys did a fantastic job. Everybody. Thank you, Chef. I feel better than ever. Andrea deserves it, and it's all hers. Mm -hmm. From the bottom of my heart. Just reaching this point, today and, yeah. you know, getting the okay from my dad to step up and be in charge, it's amazing. Thanks, Dad. Yep. Thank you. Well done. To you all. Thanks Brilliant. to you. Thank Thank you. Keep on your work. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> I am the most grateful person to thank Chef for what he done from me. Chef Ramsey proves to me I can hand over the restaurant to my daughter. And right now, I could not be any happier. I never thought I was going to be able to get through to Tom. Wow, what a stubborn man. But once he realized I was doing all this for his daughter, he was a changed man. In fact, he was a pleasure to work with. And I strongly believe in Andrea. And now, finally, after seven years, so does her father. Wow. Frozen meatloaf, cranberry and haddock. It's all Greek to me.
After Chef Ramsay left, Tom kept his promise to give Andrea full control of the restaurant. Gentlemen, firing an app for table four. Caesar and chili. The old hitching post is on its way to becoming not just a successful restaurant. Excellent. Perfect, really perfect. Good, Thank you for joining us. But it also fulfilled the dream that a father had for his daughter. We're so happy for you. We are. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. I've never seen anything like this. Chef Ramsay travels to Monrovia, California, and within minutes, he is caught in the crossfire. Take Cook your food right, and then you Shut can your serve mouth. It. Shut up. The fighting is constant. You guys can't do your job right. Get out. Nobody's yeah, talking to you. Get out. Shut the hell up. They fight about everything. I'm not the one eating it. Oh, so you want to give it I'm to them? Cool. We'll find somebody to do what you can. Hey. Including the food. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? Why don't you take over? And they are not bothered about doing it in front of the customers. Be quiet. The customers are listening to you guys. Stop screaming. At the helm of the madness is a father who forces his children to work at the restaurant against their will. What's your problem? Stupid. And while all this family fighting is going on... Some son, you are wanting to help. There is a restaurant that is falling apart at the seams. Damn, that's horrible. There seems to be no standards at all. What's he trying to do, kill me? Chef Ramsay faces a true nightmare with a family so volatile... Bring in your head. ...and so out of control... You're Wait, more than garbage! Get out of my you face! look like trash! He may be unable to save this family from themselves. We kill each other here. What is that? You're serving rotten fruit. You can possibly kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <laughs> Shut the place down! Get out of here! That is amazing! Thank you, Chef. Monrovia, California is located 30 minutes northeast of downtown Los Angeles. And right in the heart of Old Town is the local eatery, Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room, owned and operated by Sam Najjar and his family. 1982, I started working as a busboy and dishwasher, and my dream was just to open a family restaurant with my wife and my kids. And then my dream became true. I buy the restaurant in 1997. Business was good when he first opened, but after a major slowdown in the last couple of years, the only employees that remain are Sam's wife and children. Let's go, Imad. Let's go, Imad. Me and my siblings, Kat, really kind of put our adult lives on hold just to see my dad's dreams come true. But, you know, I kind of want to start my life, but I'm not able to because, you know, I have to stick here with my dad. Nobody care about business. Nobody care. I feel like no one really wants to be here. The place looks a little depressing. The decor, it's a little old. Sitting down, really? We don't really give much effort anymore. My brother just slack on a lot of things. I and mean, just, here, 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 here. Bad, like how bad? Like bad, like I spit it out, I can't eat it. Half of the meat you served me as well. The beef, go, the go lamb, outside, and go the outside, chicken. Go outside, go outside. 
Most of the time, a restaurant is empty, and we tend to have nothing to do, so we start arguing with each other. I put all the numbers on my check, and that's how you know how many times you guys have taken the food the without the salad? No. And how is the chicken cold if we take it right off the grill? It wasn't cold. She came and told me the chicken was cold. I didn't say the chicken was cold. Really excited, man. And we do argue in front of the customer sometimes. How does that look? There's only this limited space. Whatever I need. Every day, my kids, they're fighting all the time together. I don't understand why. Dude, Jamal, go outside. This is not where you belong. Get out. Get out, get out man. Why, why always you guys are doing Everybody's standing around not doing anything. The stress this restaurant puts on us, you know, it's really kind of tearing down our family. Business is very bad. We don't make money here. What the heck is that? Four hundred dollars. This is the only income my family depend on it. If the restaurant closed, we're gonna be on the street. Before Chef Ramsay can make the short drive to the restaurant from his hotel, he is besieged by Sam's children. So you're Sam's kids? Yes. yes. Uh, right. First name? Imad. Imad. Yes. And Rhonda? Lena. Lena. We Sam. We Sam. Yes, sir. And Jamal. Jamal. Yes. Let's catch up inside. I was just on the way to see you, Dad. OK, no problem. When we tell Chef Ramsay what's wrong with the restaurant, he's going to be like, wow. So in a nutshell, what is wrong with the restaurant? Um, he's honestly, like, I really follow my dad's He's just scared to like, let like, you. He's like, really, he like, so I used to be cool going he's to the so restaurant. You know, it, was, it was always a fun thing to go to the restaurant. It's like he's almost nervous. Like we're this. anxious. Jeez, one at a time, please. So I can hear you all clearly. What's wrong with the restaurant? My dad. Your dad. Basically, a lot of arguing. You don't do this for the restaurant. You don't do that. Or the restaurant's your fault. The restaurant's our fault. Headbutts, headbutts, headbutts like that. Everything. Hold on a minute. How many hours a week do you work? I'm working every day from 10 to 10. So you're full time? Yes. Seven days yeah. a week. Seven days a week. We're all like that. We're all there inside and out seven days a week. Why would you all need to be there seven days a week? Because we're the only staff. Is this true? Yes, yes. it is. My dad, he doesn't want to put anyone else in the restaurant, like um, like his staff wise. He it's, says it's a family business. We all have to put in work. He always tells us that he did not have seven kids for us to go and do what we want. He always wanted us to like stay together, stay together in the Are restaurant. You? We all have dreams like and goals besides the restaurant. Right. We all have stuff to do, and we, when we want to do it, it's like we can't because we're at the restaurant. But now, as we get older, we're forced to be there because there's no that, other yeah. employees. Right now, who really wants to be there? At this point, no one. Wow. We need help. We need someone to just right. to, to show my dad like um, he needs to change. He's, he's just scared to let go. I appreciate all the information. I respect your honesty, and I'm going to go into Sam's now. I'm going to see him. Um, he doesn't know about this, right? Did you tell no, him to come here? No. no. Let's keep it between us, OK? Is there anything else I need to know before I get in there? Um, just be prepared. The restaurant just needs a lot of work. I'm dying to get in there now. Yeah? See you back in the restaurant. All right, All right. OK? Right, there he is. Hello. How you doing? And first Sam. name? Sam. Sam, OK, the owner? Yes. Excellent. And how long have you been open? From 97. And you run it with you and your? And my kids. Oh, your kids? I have seven kids. So it's a family-run restaurant? Yeah, they run the restaurant. That's a lot of salaries to pay out. Oh, I don't pay them any salary. You don't pay your children no. to work here? I can't afford to pay them. Where, where do they live? They live with me in the house. That's why I'm not charging anybody. You're not charging that. anyone. What, to live at your house? I don't charge that's anybody. A, that's a nice dad. <laughs> Let me shortlist you now from yeah. Dad of the Year. But they like to be here, right? Yeah. They enjoy it here. Sure. Yeah, right. Right. And in your mind, what's wrong with the restaurant? The restaurant is very slow. I've been behind almost $70,000. Wow. My kids, they're fighting all the time. The children are fighting? Yeah, always they're fighting. Oh, oh, nice, making the plates. You um, hear that? They fight? Yeah. In the restaurants? Yeah, all the time. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Not me. I did it for the other order. I told you I was working on the other order. Dumbass. Wow. And how would you rate your food out of 10? Uh, probably nine. Nine? Wow, I like that. 
Welcome. Oh, shit. What happened there? Oh, my God. No, don't worry, I'll change it. Don't worry, I can change that over. Um, what would you recommend? Well, we have the lamb shank. It's very good. Mm, I love lamb shank. Where's the lamb from? Lamb is uh, from New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Thank you. You're good to welcome. meet you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? All right, pretty good. Nice to see you. All right. Um, meet. Hold on. As in meeting place, it's M-E-E-T. How do you spell meet? M-E-A-T. Wow. I don't know if he wants to look through the whole menu, but there's more misspellings than that. There's quite a few. OK. I'm going to see as much as I can so I can get my head around there's it. There's a combination place if you want to do okay. a little bit of both. I'll start off with a vegetarian combo. Thank you. Uh, your dad said the lamb shank is from New Zealand, so he recommended okay. that. Uh, gyro. OK. Uh, do you know what? I want to see the top sirloin, steak and shrimp. Medium rare, please, darling. Okay. And I think we're fine, then. OK. Wow. Thank you, though. The decor is dreadful. Wow, that is depressing. Gabby, ready? Coming up. Okay. Veggie combo first. Me fourth place. What the heck are you doing here? You don't put me to the vegetable. Don't worry, man. Go outside. I got it. I'll take care of it. You need to change it. Wow. Everybody doesn't want to cook food back here. Get out. Nobody's yeah, talking to you. Get out. Well, I'm just telling you guys, because you guys can't do your job, right? You you're, you're over here thinking that you guys are putting the word for everything. Get out. Lots of fighting in the kitchen. Every customer can hear it. What do you say to that? Get out. Nothing? Get out. Stop you're not helping. Get out. What the hell are you Stop. Be quiet. The just people are that. looking over God, here. Man. Wow. Is that done? Veggie combo's ready. This is a veggie combo. Thank you, Dan. Um, is that eggplant fresh? Is it, is it fresh? I'll check for you. Please. Right Thank you. You mind? Is the eggplant fresh or is it frozen? Canned. Oh. Um, it's from the can. Canned eggplant? Mm -hmm. No. That's gnarly. That's just dreadful. You think of Mediterranean food, you don't think of canned eggplant. Yeah. And the falafel? Um, the falafel, my dad does that. He marinates that. They're bland. It probably has no salt in it. Jeez. So yeah, I'm I mean... I'm gonna get you your next place. Um, OK. Dreadful. I'll, I'll let them know. OK, this is uh, Ramsey's plate. He wants to know if you season anything, because there's, like, no flavor to anything. What is it, what is it tasting, like a towel? What's he eating? He just said it's bland. There's, like, no flavor. Give him the gyros. Give him the gyros. Here. Here you go. Take that down. All right. Jar. This is the gyro plate. Yeah. Thank you. Um, will you ask him when it was made, please? When it was made? OK. Um, we want to know when it was made. Tell him we get it from a company. It comes frozen, and we heat it up, and we put it on the rotisserie. It's lamb and beef. Hey. It's not how it's made. Is it, is it fresh? That's what she's asking. Is it fresh? It's not fresh. It's frozen. That's what I told her. It's frozen yeah. because we get it from a company. Yes, you tell her frozen. Not That's fresh. what I told her. I fresh that frozen. You make it. I told her oh, frozen. Yeah. I you talking frozen. to the head chef and the wall. You I told her it was you frozen. Can, you cannot lie. I didn't lie. You heard me tell her it was frozen. You, might, you need to stop screaming. The people are listening to you. <laughs> My dad, you know, he just gets mad and he yells at me, which is stupid. If he doesn't know what he's talking about, it doesn't help anything. Strive. It's actually, um, they, it comes from my company, and then it's frozen, and then they heat it up on the rotisserie, so. I would love to be in a position to, to sit here and enjoy my meat, M-E-E-T, but yeah. it doesn't even taste. No taste? Well, it shouldn't, though. OK, enjoy. we need to do the lamb shake. You guys didn't cook the gyro right, whoever it was. Shut the fuck up. You're stupid. What have you made right today, though? Just tell me. You're Simple stupid. question. So why don't you come back here and cook? I should come back here and cook. All right. Round two. Sounds like a fight started. I need the lamb shank. It's coming. Lamb shank? Yes. Um, wow. Thank you. Mm. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the fuck up. Hey, 
What? I don't want to hear bad Tell language here in the up. kitchen. Tell your son to shut up. Yeah, you do. It looks anemic. The color's dreadful. And it just tastes like bland, boiled lamb. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? You're taking... Why don't you take over? I should. Then do out. it. If you don't want it to get out. Do it. If you don't want it to get out. You're stupid. Do me a favor. Send that back to fucking New Zealand. OK. What's going on there? Are you arguing it because he's telling him that he doesn't know how to cook? So. Nobody's forcing you here. Idiot, dude. Yeah. Just go back Horrible. to the front. Horrible. Horrible. Who well, cares about his opinion? He says that the, the lamb, it just tastes like it was boiled in water. And it's, he said, send this back to New Zealand. He tried, he said, there is no flavor on it. But I believe myself, I make the best lamb shank here in California. They really don't know what to do. Bring in your head, let me hit you one on your head and finish it. Wait, what are you doing again? Oh yeah, cook your food wrong. Nobody's talking to you. Stay back there. Yo, yo, Wow. Yeah. Stay out of the I mean, me and my kid coming back here. The customers are listening to you guys. Tell, tell him, this is not his job. Thank you. Goodbye. All you do is cut. You know, you two tables just got up and left because all of you guys are yelling or screaming. Hey! Hey, my cook down! While the family continue to battle loudly in the kitchen. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? Why don't you take over? Chef Ramsay has been forced to endure disappointing dish after dish. Do me a favor. Send that back to New Zealand. OK. And there's another one on its way. It's a steak, and then they're working on this scampi for you. It's coming out. Thank you. OK. Medium rare is not medium well. On the verge of well done. Oh, God, it's so annoying. This is scampi. Um, How was it? Geez, steak? yeah, it's well yeah, done. Yeah, there's no red, there's nothing. It's a medium rare if possible, but it's yeah. solid and dry. And, geez, how much butter did you put in there? Um, I like some scampi with my butter. What's he trying to do, kill me? No, but that's how he adds flavor, I guess. That adds that's flavor? His, that's his season. Scampi, rubbery, overcooked. The scampi's overcooked too? Yeah, rubbery, really hard and just, just solid. Anywhere in the med, food doesn't look like this, you know that? Yeah. Bloody hell, can you get me the uh, chef's out, please? Chef Ramsay wants to see everybody outside. Before I start talking about the dishes, what was the fighting going on there? He just likes to come back and argue about pretty much nothing. Actually, when we get a complaint, I like to tell them what's going on, and they can't take criticism. No, that's not it. Let you like to make it seem like talk. you're better at everything so why are you still than talking anybody if I'm else. Talking? If I come back there and let them know, hey, this is dry, or hey, the hummus is messed no, up. No, we, we accept that, but the fact that you come back there, oh, you guys can't cook, you guys are shit, it's you guys not, are that. Okay. I don't say it the first time. No. I say it after the 13th table. Right. You like to say that we don't do after nothing After the 13th right. table, you do table that better. complains. OK, OK. That's what I have every day. Can I start talking about my lunch? The combo plate, eggplant out of a can, hummus, bland, falafel, bland. Sam, you recommended lamb shank, but the bones were disintegrating. When the bones start disintegrating, that's three hours overcooked. I don't know what to tell you. Have you given up? Not yet. Top sirloin, it was miles away from medium rare. Mm. What are you oohing about? Shut up. Okay. No, no, I it's heard not, something earlier. nothing to do with you. Okay. What's wrong? He's making it seem like it's all my fault. He said, mm, mm, like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, they so know they've been messing up all day before you even walked in. So when you know he's here, can't you just like step up? You should have stepped up. I'm telling you guys what's okay, going on. He wasn't in up. that position today. Stop putting the blame on him. You guys were he's cooking. The Who cooked? He's food. the one criticizing us. Okay. Even if he was criticizing, you guys, you guys cooked food. the food. That's what happened, right? That's what happened. You can try it. Tell me what you think. I, I've never seen anything like this. Have you given up? Kind of. Kind of. Do you care? Not really. It shows you don't care. Shrimp, they came swimming in a bowl of butter, overcooked. Didn't you guys see it? It's because we were busy arguing. I could hear it. So could your diners. Yeah, they just get up and leave because of that. Wow. I'm going to get some fresh air. 
this is my dad's restaurant. I do as much as I can to help him, but being forced to be here every day, you know, it's kind of like making me feel like I don't want to care. So you're not too happy, huh? Not really. And you? What's your problem? I just graduated high school. So who yeah. want to run this business? You blame your brother. Yeah, raw food and, and overcooked meat. Is it my fault? No, you do everything perfect. Since you're Mr. Yeah. Perfect, I can make better food. Why don't you serve dinner tonight? Yeah, I should actually. Yeah, and yeah. I'll work outside. <laughs> That's what I thought. Don't step up to the plate. Your job is to put food on the grill. Why don't you make it put your job? Put food on the grill and sit there and watch it cook. Why don't you make it your job? Make it your job. You don't know you where to do it off better? Show, you me you better. Right? Show me you can do better. Can you take it? Show me you can do better. Can right? Show me you can do better. I'm in the front cleaning tables and cleaning everything up. The kitchen is not my problem. Go ahead. That's your role. That's what I thought. Bad. You cannot step up to Some the plate. Some cook you are, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Some son you are wanting to help. Shut the hell up. Nobody happy here. I don't know what the heck to do. I really don't know. OK, OK. Cook my food right, and you'll be fine. No, we won't be fine. After getting criticized by Chef Ramsay at lunch, Go do something about it. Do what? The family gets ready for dinner service. Oh, so you want to get into that cold? And they have not taken a break from the fight. My job is to get from there to the table. Max, hey, go find something to do with the table. Hey, stop! That's enough. Chef Ramsay. Hi. Hello. You have another sister? My mom. My mom. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to and meet you. And first name is? I'm Ahlan. Let's catch up, shall we? Let's have a little seat and sit down. Man, I have headache. I have headache, really. First of all, um, I must tell you, it looks like the, uh, the kids are trapped in here. Is this what you wanted? No, not really. No? I feel sorry for the kids because they miss out so much for their life. They need yeah. to grow, go somewhere. But at the same time, he needs them. How do you manage? Bad. Very bad. I haven't been sleeping lately. But it's not healthy for your daughters and your sons to be in this environment seven days a week. They can't be chained to the restaurant. They need some space, right? Yeah, they do. I think if we don't stop it, you're going to lose them. OK. Tonight, I'm going to watch service. I'm going to see how this place operates. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Kebab Room. I need two regular salads. OK, we need a Greek salad, a waffle plate, and a chicken and lula. What are you just standing there for, man? Do something. OK, so who does what on the grill? We pretty much all split it up even. So there's not one person on the grill? No, no. Sam? No. No, we kind of just switch it off. You just switch it on off? Yeah. yeah. Their foods aren't hot. Just leave it, just leave it. Take yeah. it out, yeah. Take it out. We really don't care how the food is cooked. I'm doing all this work from day to night, every day, and I don't even get paid. Table 14. This is beef and chicken. For 14. Falafel plate. Steak, medium. For me. I asked for medium. <laughs> this is like bloody. He wants this medium. You guys cooked it rare. Who cooked it? I did. It's definitely right. OK, I'll make a new one. Iman! What? It's a steak. It's well done. She wanted medium rare. Hey, look done. What do you want me to do? Shut up. Don't tell me look done. It's burned. How many steak we throw today, man? Every day I have to throw like 15, 20 like this. Every day. Sam. No. Yeah? They're, 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 they're rotten. They're rotten. See that. Look at this one here. Where's your walk-in? It's right here, right inside. What's in here? Like a bathtub of parsley. Buckets of parsley. Chopped. That's a fresh. That's what we gathered today. Yeah, I know, but you're not using it today. No. When you chop fresh parsley, all the flavor's gone. Yeah. You've got to use it immediately. What are they? They're celery leaves? Whoa. It's a brand new case. That says a statement that nobody cares in here. What is this? Look at that. What? This is two days ago. What do you mean two days ago? Two days ago. This is Tuesday. Sam, today's Saturday. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Five days. Five days. Lamb shanks. Lamb shanks. It's just like a dumping ground. Look at this. Salad. It's rotten. And this one? It's tahini. Tahini. You don't think they'd empty that now? Put it in a smaller container? What a mess. Yeah. There's a mess. Oh, man. He gave me a full plate. He didn't eat it. What's wrong with it? It was still raw. Give him another one. He doesn't want another one. Man, I'm getting heart attack here. Rhonda, run this out. What are they? Chicken strips, the one we buy, the frozen ones. You can't serve that. We got two seconds, please. Sam. Come here, all of you. Look at that. Just touch that. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. What did they tell you? I didn't tell you don't serve it. And I didn't know why we're doing it. Sam, you're in charge, and you're serving raw chicken. I'm amazed that you're still open. Why are you serving? The outside is cooked. So I'm figuring the inside is cooked. Yes, you're chained to the business. Yes, you don't want to be here. But you cannot serve that shit and expect to get away with it. Those kids drive me crazy, man. All what you want, finish the order and sit down. That's not where I can't even have time to sit down. What are you talking about? Oh, it's my kid's fault they do this. It's my kid's fault because of that. He don't listen. He doesn't care. When really it's his decision to keep us all here, he brought that upon himself. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Here. That's it. This is the last place. This is cruel all night long. Thank you, guys. Yeah, stay seated and tell him thank you. That was stupid. Oh, stay seated. Look who's talking. You're sitting right there. Right there what, what? on your phone. What That's else are you stupid. doing? Get up. That's what I thought. Are you paying me? Are you my boss? You're stupid. Then don't tell me what to do. You're stupid. This is fucking annoying, I swear. There's no damn brick out of head. Oh, here comes the stars of the night. It's my dad's restaurant. I don't have to do nothing. I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Oh, stop. Stop. Enough. You're stupid. You have a big mouth. Yeah, keep talking. Shut your mouth. Saying? Shut up. Fucking idiot. Dumbass. Yeah. Oh, Some fucking good. waitress. Garbage. Look who's talking. Yeah. I'm, I'm garbage. You're Please, more than you garbage. Doing as much as I can I take another dumpster yourself. right now. It looks clearer than your face. Yeah, Shut enough, up. Huh? Do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. You can't have the damn customer right. You can't take it, or you can't bring back drinks right. Let alone help the yeah, customers. Yeah. Okay, when get you inside, do it, get inside. You're useless. You You're useless. I tell them, get out shut of my up. face. We can even run the food out and check the tables better than you, you guys can. Right. At the same time, cook your food right, and then you can serve it. No. Shut up. Shut up. Get out of my face. While Chef Ramsay continues to inspect the state of the restaurant, the family went out for fresh air. And what they got was a major brawl between Rhonda. You do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. And oldest son, Jamal. You're not even Thank here. You. She's not here either. No, never. Get your ass out of here. You guys are full of shit. shit. Fucking you stupid. You guys are full of shit. Baba, who's here every day? Not you. Who's here every day? What, when you're open, busy? Shut up. Hey, guys, guys, all of you. Stupid. Relax. Honestly, I mean, this does not feel like a family. And the way we've just behaved in the last five minutes is the way we've just conducted service over the last two hours. Disorganized, chaotic, and so fragmented. And the people suffering are the customers. Yeah? Jeez. Oh, boy. Those kids are dumbass. It's not good. What am I supposed to do? Tell me. Is that fair for me to stand there and get yelled at by every single one of them? For what I did was wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. That's not fair. Just calm down. Since his arrival, you guys take a seat. Chef Ramsay has witnessed constant bickering and fighting. OK. He realizes that much of it can be attributed to the feeling of being trapped in their father's restaurant. You've never done this. But what I want you to do now is to be honest with your father and explain 
that your lives and your careers are going elsewhere. I want you to be open. Tell them what you're feeling, your frustrations, why you don't want to be here. Tell my dad. Yes. It's like gonna hurt him. This is gonna be tough, but you each have to stand up to him. You do not have to be here seven days a week. It's stopping now. You've got to stay focused on what you want to do now. Here he is. OK. I'm freaking out right now because I know my dad's going to get hurt. I know he thinks that we love being here, but we really don't. So there's something they would like to talk to you about. OK, I'm ready. Lena, why don't you go first? Let's go, darling. Step up. Hey. Come on. Um, so even though we're here to help, we appreciate everything the restaurant has done for us. I need to focus on going in a different direction, becoming independent. We all just need a little bit of schedule thing where we're not here seven days a week, every single uh, one of you, us. You know, you're still too young right now. You're still a child for me. You're only 19 years old. There is a rule here. This is a family rule. It's not like what you want to do. You have to hear first from your dad and your mom, and then you can do it on your own. I don't think this is going to go as well as Chef Henry thinks it's going to go. My dad is not an open-minded person, like, at all. I am here to help you at the moment, and I've been here full time every single day, nonstop. But as the time comes, I kind of want to go my own way and do my own thing. Now I'm going to let you go on your own, and you're still shy. Sam, what you have got to stop doing is making them feel guilty. And because the restaurant's not making money, they're having to wear that jacket of burden. And it's not your daughter's fault that this is not working. I want them to understand that every day someone has to be here. But it's driving them apart. You have to understand when the time comes, we all have to do our own thing. What can I say? Let's see. Let's get me. Yes, here. Um, I'm here to help you. But if I'm going to college, it can't be. I promise you, they're all here for you. And as well as this is tough, it's really important for them. <laughs> and I'm here for you as well. And yes, you've got every pressure, every bill, every demand on your shoulders, but we can't continue like this, buddy. OK? OK. Come on. <sighs> Seeing my father cry, hell is really hard for all of us but how to do it, how to tell them the truth straight up. I know I've been here every day for the past um, four, five years. I don't always make it seem like I hate this place, but I do. <laughs> but we're going to change this. We're going to turn this place around. I'm not going anywhere for the short term. I'm going to be by your side. Let's get it, boy. We argue, we fight, we kill each other here. All because, all because. <sighs> Nobody cares enough to try to try and do something about it. It 
tough. They're always going to be your children. They're always going to be here for you. But they have other aspirations and other dreams. And there comes a time when we all have to let go. And today is the beginning of that. Of course, makes sense. I can't stop them. I can't stop them. Come on. I want to get some fresh air. I'll see you in five minutes, OK? I love you guys. I love you too, Dad. <laughs> I love every one of you. <laughs> I want everybody to know that I'm here for everybody, anytime. <laughs> We're all here for you, too. We're all going to make an effort to make this better. It's going to help it pick up. I hope so. In order to make it work. <laughs> Stand up. I love you guys. With Sam and his children coming to an understanding, right, let's go. Chef Ramsay can now begin to work on one of the other major problems of Sam's kebab room. Fresh, every time. The food. I'm gonna make delicious shrimp and chicken kebabs done with freshness. When we're cooking kebabs, why don't we cook them on the skewer? It's so much more juicier, yeah? More flavor. Because when you're squeezing hell out of the food and you're pushing down, what do you think that's doing to the food? Getting all the juice out of it. Taking yes. all the juice out of there, exactly that. Cooking on the skewer gives us so much more control, much easier. And then, watching you all last night, have you any idea how many times you cross over each other? A lot. We're going to have one person manning the grill, not four of you. Who's the best grill chef in here? Me. OK, you're going to be at the helm as it cooks, and I want you going over there and glazing that. Chef Ramsey opened my eyes to cook the right way. I was very happy to watch him because I want to learn more what I know. Your grill should be like a chessboard where you're manipulating all the time up and down. They come off, glaze them again. Cooking next to Chef Ramsey in one afternoon, I've learned more than I've ever had. How does it look? Amazing. It look beautiful. beautiful. Very good. Now, we're not at an art gallery. Jump in and start tasting. Come on. Sam, dive in. <laughs> this looks like Malaysian food. Chicken tastes very really good. Yeah. That shrimp was warm. <laughs> Everybody was happy, and the food tastes delicious. Really, it tastes good. Oh, by the way, I haven't seen this for a long time, so I'm going to grab it now while I can. Quick smile, please. <laughs> Everybody look at me. <laughs> smile. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Believe it or not, I'm ready right now to move forward. No more fighting, no more arguing. <laughs> While Chef Ramsay's plan to fix the food is now in motion, his team gets started on a massive overhaul of the restaurant. First of all, good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> okay. good morning. Good morning, Chef. How does it smell in here? Amazing. 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 Wait until you see it. Come on, let us see. O-M-G. <laughs> <laughs> OK, take off those blindfolds. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Welcome to the new Sam's. Look at this gorgeous room. <laughs> Oh my God, this is the place. This is the place, unbelievable. Let me tell you something really important. This has been one of the biggest and most expensive transformations we've ever made, ever. Wow. This. It looks like it. Wow. We got rid of that dark, dingy hole and transformed it into a casual, modern kebab house. Beautiful. Something to be proud of. Oh my God. That's a color restaurant. Beautiful. Wow. The restaurant feels more open. Wow. A brand new carpet throughout. The salmon colored dirty walls have gone, and we've got this charcoal color set with these amazing art blocks. It brightens up the restaurant dramatically and gives it that nice modern touch. It's beautiful. When I first stepped in this door, sitting down in the chair, I noticed a huge hole. Then when I looked around, there was holes in every chair. They've gone. 
Look at those babies. Brand new chairs. I see you got the chills, yeah. man. I know, me too. I see you got the chills. Sam, talk to me. I love it, man. You I love it? love it. It looks so gorgeous. They make me feel like I am in the heaven. Wait, Sam, how do you feel? Um, I'm in speechless. You're this speechless? Amazing. Unbelievable. Chef <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey. I don't know how I'm going to thank you. I appreciate that from the heart. Thank you, Sam. I know you mean that. I never thought my dad would ever be open to change. I'd see a new man. Let me give you a hug before a hug? you go. Let's go. Well, I'm not going anywhere. We've got a lot of work to do tonight. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, my dad. He doesn't hug anyone. And he doesn't even hug my mom. I like to see that smile on your face. I love huh? you, man. I love I'm you. I want to put the blindfold back on. I don't believe it's real. I don't believe it's real. Now that the much-needed makeover to Sam's kebab room has taken place... Let's go, Sam. Oh, my God. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil a contemporary Mediterranean menu. Visually, what do you see? It's really beautiful. Awesome. It looks delicious. Nice. That is sure to have the town of Monrovia buzzing. Dig in. Come on. Jump in, man. This is good. Amazing. Classically done. Absolutely delicious. I love the falafel. This is the kind of food we should have been serving here. I don't think I've ever been this excited or happy to come to work. This is how you make lentil soup. We do that in the house all the time. The food is amazing. I never thought in my life I'm going to have a restaurant like this today. Believe it or not, better than in Lebanon. Oh, yeah. Better than the whole Middle East. With the restaurant and family ready to face a new chapter. Make sure it doesn't get too thick. Chef Ramsay is happy to spend the day training and working in the kitchen. Okay. What I want you to do is work with two hands, not with one. Twice as quick. I'll okay. you try over there. Plate, plate. Nice. See what happens when you're organized? OK. Again, you are now in control. Table 12, fire. Keep it going, yes? Here's another chicken. The customers are raving about the transformations made to the decor and food. Oh, my god, it's not brown anymore. This is good. That's really good. But the biggest transformation might just be the family themselves. Let's go, Abdul. We got this. Let's go. Perfect. 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 One, two, three, four. Table 10. They're working together, united, as a team in support of their father, Sam. Here's the plate. You got two behind you. Slide it up behind you. Put two pictures on there. Everybody's just more calm. It's just more of a family now. This is your table Thank 15. You. Thank you. Can I have a ketchup, please? Good. Teamwork. I'm very happy working in a restaurant like this. You know, before, I didn't want to be here. But now I'm going to keep going strong until we can actually hire somebody to take my place for the long run. And not surprisingly, there's someone else besides the family who has a smile on his face. I am so proud of you all. Well done. You've got everything you need to make this restaurant a success. And when you come together, it's harmony. Big group hug. Let's put mom and dad in the middle. I never see my family happy like now. Before Chef Ramsey come in here, they're fighting all the time together. But everything has changed right now, and I hope it stay like that for the future. It's my dad. Open it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the moment I knew we had turned things around. Every time you think of falling out, go to that picture and remind yourselves the importance of sticking together. Yes. OK? Thank you. Thank you, bud. Look after you yourself, go. yes? Yeah. OK? I wish I'd see you again. Uh, you'll definitely see me again. Good night, guys. Thank you. OK. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Take care, guys. Come <laughs> please. <laughs> when I first arrived, there was so much tension in the air, we were bound to have an explosion. As a matter of fact, we had a few. But once the air cleared, the family finally came together, and we had a good, and I mean good, relaunch. Only hope now that Sam stays in complete control of his restaurant, but not his children. Wow. You say kebab, and I say kebab. After several successful months... Table five, fired. Paul Lina. You like it? Yeah? Thank you. Wow. Delicious. Sam is now able to give his children some time off. And for the first time in years, Sam's kebab room is hiring. Monrovia, California is located 30 minutes northeast of downtown Los Angeles. And right in the heart of Old Town is the local eatery, Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room. 
owned and operated by Sam Najjar and his family. 1982, I started working as a bus boy and dishwasher, and my dream was just to open a family restaurant with my wife and my kids. And then my dream became true. I buy the restaurant in 1997. Business was good when he first opened, but after a major slowdown in the last couple of years, the only employees that remain are Sam's wife and children. Let's go, Imad. Let's go, Imad. Me and my siblings can't really kind of put our adult lives on hold just to see my dad's dreams come true. But, you know, I kind of want to start my life, but I'm not able to because, you know, I have to stick here with my dad. Nobody cares about business. Nobody cares. I feel like no one really wants to be here. The place looks a little depressing. The decor, it's a little old. Sitting down, really? We don't really give much effort anymore. My brother just slack on a lot of things. I and mean, just, here, 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 here. Bad, like how bad? Like bad, like I spit it out, I can't eat it. Half of the meat you serve me as well. The beef, go, the go lamb, outside, and go the outside, chicken. Go outside. Most of the time, a restaurant is empty, and we tend to have nothing to do, so we start arguing with each other. I put all the numbers on my check. That's how you know it's how many times you guys have taken the food the without the salad? No. And how is the chicken cold if we take it right off the grill? It wasn't cold. She came and told me the chicken was cold. I didn't say the chicken was cold. Really it was cold. And we do argue in front of the customer sometimes. How does that look? There's only this limited space? Whatever I need. And then we make a hummus. And Every day, my kids, they're fighting all the time together. I don't understand why. Dude, Jamal, go outside. This is not where you belong. Get out. Get out, man. Why, why always you guys are Everybody's standing there, not doing anything. The stress this restaurant puts on us, you know, it's really kind of tearing down our family. <sighs> Business is very bad. We don't make money here. What the heck is that? $400? This is the only income. My family depend on it. If the restaurant closed, we're going to be on the street. Before Chef Ramsay can make the short drive to the restaurant from his hotel, he is besieged by Sam's children. So you're Sam's kids? Yes. yes. Right. First name? Imad. Imad. Yes. And Rhonda? Lena. Lena. We Sam. We Sam. Yes, sir. And Jamal. Jamal. Yes. Let's catch up inside. I was just on the way to see your dad. OK, no problem. When we tell Chef Ramsay what's wrong with the restaurant, he's going to be like, wow. So in a nutshell, what is wrong with the restaurant? Um, he's honestly, like, I really don't know. He's, he's just scared to like, let you. He's like, really, he like, so I used to be cool going he's to the so restaurant. You know, it, was, it was always a fun thing to go to the restaurant. It's like he's almost nervous like or this. anxious. Jeez, one at a time, please. So I can hear you all clearly. What's wrong with the restaurant? My dad. Your dad. Basically, a lot of arguing. You don't do this for the restaurant. You don't do that. Or the restaurant's your fault. The restaurant's our fault. Headbutts, headbutts, headbutts like that. Everything. Hold on a minute. How many hours a week do you work? I'm working every day from 10 to 10. So you're full time? Yes. Seven days yeah. a week. Seven days a week. We're all like that. We're all there inside and out seven days a week. Why would you all need to be there seven days a week? Because we're the only staff. Is this true? Yes, yes. it is. My dad, he doesn't want to put anyone else in the restaurant, like um, like his staff wise. He it's, says it's a family business. We all have to put in work. He always tells us that he did not have seven kids for us to go and do what we want. He always wanted us to like stay together, stay together in the I mean, restaurant. We all have dreams like and goals besides the restaurant. Right. We all have stuff to do, and we when we want to do it, it's like we can't because we're at the restaurant. But now, as we get older, we're forced to be there because there's no that, other yeah. employees. Right now, who really wants to be there? At this point, no one. Wow. We need help. We need someone to just right. to, to show my dad, like, um, he needs to change. He's, he's just scared to let go. I appreciate all the information. I respect your honesty, and I'm going to go into Sam's now. I'm going to go see him. Um, he doesn't know about this, right? Did you tell no, him to come here? No. Let's keep it between us, OK? Is there anything else I need to know before I get in there? Um, just be prepared. The restaurant just needs a lot of work. I'm dying to get in there now. Yeah? See you back in the restaurant. All right. All right. Okay. There he is. Hello. How you doing? What's first Sam. name? Sam. Sam, OK, the owner. Yes. Excellent. And how long have you been open? From 97. And you run it with you and your... And my kids. Oh, your kids? I have seven kids. So it's a family-run restaurant? Yeah, they run the restaurant. That's a lot of salaries to pay out. 
Oh, I don't pay them any salary. You don't pay your children no. to work here? I can't afford to pay them. Where, where do they live? They live with me in the house. That's why I'm not charging anybody. You're not charging that. anyone. What, to live at your house? I don't charge that's anybody. A, that's a me. nice dad. <laughs> Let me shortlist you now from Dad of the Year. Well, they like to be here, right? Yeah. They enjoy it here. Sure. Yeah, right. Right. And in your mind, what's wrong with the restaurant? The restaurant is very slow. I've been behind almost $70,000. Wow. My kids, they're fighting all the time. The children are fighting? Yeah, always they're fighting. Oh, oh, nice, making the plates. You um, hear that? They fight? Yeah. In the restaurants? Yeah, all the time. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Not me. I did it for the other order. I told you I was working on the other order. Dumbass. Wow. And how would you rate your food out of 10? Uh, probably nine. Nine? Wow. I like that. Welcome. Oh, shit. What happened there? Oh, my God. No, don't worry, I'll change it. Don't worry. I can change that over. Um, what would you recommend? Well, we have the lamb shank. It's very good. Oh, I love lamb shank. Where's the lamb from? Lamb is uh, from New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Thank you. You're good to welcome. meet you. welcome. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? All right, pretty good. Nice to see you. All right. Um, meat. Hold on. As in meeting place, it's M-E-E-T. How do you spell meat? M-E-A-T. Wow. I don't know if he wants to look through the whole menu, but there's more misspellings than that. There's quite a few. OK. I'm going to see as much as I can so I can get my head around there's it. There's combination place if you want to do okay. a little bit of both. I'll start off with a vegetarian combo. Thank you. Uh, your dad said the lamb shank is from New Zealand, so he recommended okay. that. Uh, gyro. OK. Uh, do you know what? I want to see the top. Sirloin, steak and shrimp. Medium rare, please, darling. Okay. And I think we're fine then. Okay. Wow. Thank you, though. Look at this place. The decor is dreadful. Wow. God, it's depressing. Gabby, ready? Coming up. Okay. Veggie combo first. Give me four plates. What the heck are you doing here? You don't put me with the vegetable. Don't worry, man. Go outside. I got it. I'll take care of it. You change it. Wow. Okay. Everybody doesn't want to cook food back here. Get out. Nobody's yeah, talking to you. Get out. Well, I'm just telling you guys, you guys can't do your job, right? You, you, you over here thinking that you guys put in the work for everything. Get out. Lots of fighting in the kitchen. Every customer can hear it. Get out. Nothing? Get out. Stop. You're not helping. Him all Get the out. Time. Stop. Be quiet. The just people are that. looking over God, here. Man. Wow. Is that done? Veggie combo's ready. This is the veggie combo. Thank you, Dan. Um, is that eggplant fresh? Is it, is it fresh? I'll check for you. Please. Right Thank you. You mind? Is the eggplant fresh or is it frozen? Canned. Oh. Uh, it's from the can. Canned eggplant? Mm -hmm. No. That's gnarly. That's just dreadful. You think of Mediterranean food, you don't think of canned eggplant. Yeah. And the falafel? Um, the falafel, my dad does that. He marinates that. They're bland. It probably has no salt in it. Jeez. So yeah, I'm I mean. I'm gonna get you your next place. Um, okay. Dreadful. I'll, I'll let them know. OK, this is uh, Ramsey's plate. He wants to know if you season anything, because there's, like, no flavor to anything. What is it, what is it tasting, like a towel? What's he eating? He just said it's bland. There's, like, no flavor. Give him the gyros. Give him the gyros. Here. Here you go. Take that down. All right. Jar. This is the gyro plate. Yeah. Thank you. Um, will you ask him when it was made, please? When it was made? OK. Um. He wants to know when it was made. Tell him we get it from a company. It comes frozen, and we heat it up, and we put it on the rotisserie. It's lamb and beef. Hey, it's not how it's made. Is it, is it fresh? That's what she's asking. Is it fresh? It's not fresh. It's frozen. That's what I told her. It's frozen yeah. because we get it from a company. Yes, you tell her frozen, not That's fresh. what I told her. I said fresh, frozen. you make it. I told her frozen. Yeah. 
You talk it to the head chef and the wall. I told her it was you frozen. Can, you cannot lie. I didn't lie. You heard me tell her it was frozen. You, might, you need to stop screaming. The people are listening to you. My dad, you know, he just gets mad and he yells at me, which is stupid. If he doesn't know what he's talking about, it doesn't help anything. Strive. It's actually, um, they, it comes from my company, and then it's frozen, and then they heat it up on the rotisserie, so. I would love to be in a position to, to sit here and enjoy my meat, M-E-E-T, but yeah. it doesn't even taste. No taste? Well, it shouldn't, though. Okay, enjoy. let me do the lamb shake. You guys didn't cook the gyro right, whoever it was. Shut the fuck up, you're stupid. What have you made right today, though? Just tell me. You're Simple stupid. question. So why don't you come back here and cook? I should come back here and cook. All right. Round two. Sounds like a fight started. I need the lamb shake. It's coming. Lamb shake? Yes. Um, wow. Thank you. Mm. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the fuck up. Hey. What? I don't want to hear bad Tell language here in the up. kitchen. Tell your son to shut up. Yeah, you do. It looks anemic. The color's dreadful. And it just tastes like bland, boiled lamb. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? You're taking... Why don't you take over? I should. Then get do out. it. If you don't want it, to get out. Do it. If you don't want it, to get out. You're stupid. Do me a favor. Send that back to fucking New Zealand. OK. What's going on there? Are you doing because he's telling him that he doesn't know? How to cook, so. <laughs> Nobody's forcing you here. Idiot, dude. Yeah. Just go back Horrible. to the front. Horrible. Horrible. Who well, cares about his opinion? He says that the the lamb, it just tastes like it was boiled in water. And it's, he said, send this back to New Zealand. He tried it. He said, there is no flavor on it. But I believe myself, I make the best lamb shank here in California. I really don't know what to do. Bring it your head, let me hit you one on your head and finish it. Wait, what are you doing again? Oh, yeah, cooking food wrong. Nobody's talking to you. Stay back there. Yo, yo, you're Wow. You're stay out of the kitchen. I mean, me coming back here, coming back here. The customers are listening to you guys. Tell, tell him, this is not his job. Thank you. Goodbye. All you do is cut, you, you know, two tables just got up and left all because all of you guys were yelling or screaming. Hey! Hey, my cook down! While the family continue to battle loudly in the kitchen. You guys are giving out garbage food. Are you serious? Why don't you take over? Chef Ramsay has been forced to endure disappointing dish after dish. Do me a favor. Send that back to New Zealand. Okay. And there's another one on its way. It's a steak, and then they're working on this scampi for you. It's coming out. Thank you. OK. Medium rare is not medium well. On the verge of well done. Oh, god. It's so annoying. And this is a scampi. Um, How is the steak? Geez. Yeah, it's well yeah, done. Yeah, there's no red. There's nothing. It's a medium rare, if possible. Yeah. Solid and dry. And jeez, how much butter did you put in there? Um, I like some scampi with my butter. What's he trying to do, kill me? No, but that's how he adds flavor, I guess. That adds that's flavor. His, that's his season. Scampi, rubbery, overcooked. The scampi's overcooked too? Yeah, rubbery, really hard and just, just solid. Anywhere in the med, food doesn't look like this, you know that? Yeah. Bloody hell, can you get me the uh, chef's out, please? Chef Ramsey wants to see everybody outside. Before I start talking about the dishes, what was the fighting going on there? He just likes to come back and argue about pretty much nothing. Actually, when we get a complaint, I like to tell them what's going on, and they can't take criticism. No, that's not it. Let you like to make it seem like talk. you're better at everything so why are you still than anybody if else. Talking? If I come back there and let them know, hey, this is dry, Oh, hey, the hummus is messed no, up. No, we, we can accept that, but the fact that you come back there, oh, you guys can't cook, you guys are shit, it's you guys not, are that. Okay. I don't say it the first time. No, I say it after the 13th table. table. Right. You like, to, the say, 13th you like table. to say that we don't do after nothing right. After the 13th table that better. complains. OK, OK. That's what I have every day. Can I start talking about my lunch? The combo plate, eggplant out of a can, hummus, bland, falafel, bland. Sam, you recommended lamb shank, but the bones were disintegrating. When the bones start disintegrating, that's three hours overcooked. 
I don't know what to tell you. Have you given up? Not yet. Top sirloin, it was miles away from medium rare. Mm. What are you oohing about? Shut up. Okay. No, no, it's I heard not, something earlier. nothing to do with you. Okay. What's wrong? He's making it seem like it's all my fault. He said, mm, mm, like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, they so know they've said. been messing up all day before you even walked in. So when you know he was here, can't you just like step up? You should have stepped up. I'm telling you guys what's okay, going well, on. He wasn't in up. that position today. Stop putting the blame on him. You guys were he's cooking. The oh, cook, brother, he's food. the one criticizing us. Okay. Even if he was criticizing, you guys, you guys cooked food. the food. That's what happened, right? That's what happened. You can try it. Tell me what you think. I, I've never seen anything like this. Have you given up? Kind of. Kind of. Do you care? Not really. It shows you don't care. Shrimp, they came swimming in a bowl of butter, overcooked. Didn't you guys see it? It's because we were busy arguing. I could hear it. So could your diners. Yeah, they just get up and leave because of that. Wow. I'm going to get some fresh air. <sighs> this is my dad's restaurant. I do as much as I can to help him. But being forced to be here every day, you know, it's kind of like making me feel like I don't want to care. So you're not too happy, huh? No, really. And you? What's your problem? I just graduated high school. So, who want to run this business? You blame your brother. Yeah, raw food and, and overcooked meat. Is it my fault? No, you do everything perfect. Since you're Mr. Yeah. Perfect, I can make better food. Why don't you serve dinner tonight? Yeah, I should, actually. Yeah, and yeah. I'll work outside. <laughs> That's what I thought. Don't step up to the plate. Your job is to put food on the grill. Why don't you make it put your job? Put food on the grill Why and sit there and watch it cook. Why don't you make it your job? Make it your job. Make it your job. You don't know where you to take it off better? Show you me don't you can do better. Right. Can you take it? Show me you can do you better. Can't take it off right. Show me you can do yeah. better. I'm in the front cleaning tables and cleaning everything up. The kitchen is not my problem. Go ahead. That's your role. That's what I thought. Bad. You cannot step up to Some the plate. Some cook you are, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Some son you are wanting to help. Shut the hell up. Nobody happy here. I don't know what the heck to do. I really don't know. OK, OK, cook my food right, and you'll be fine. No, we won't be fine. After getting criticized by Chef Ramsay at lunch. Go do something about it. Do what? The family gets ready for dinner service. Oh, so you want to give it I'm to them cold. Yeah. And they have not taken a break from the fight. My job is to get from there to the table. Max, hey, go find something to do with the table. Hey! Stop, that's enough. Chef Ramsey. Hi. Hello. You have another sister? My mom. My mom. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And first name is? I'm Ahlan. Let's catch up, shall we? Let's have a little seat and sit down. Man, I have headache. I have headache, really. First of all, um, I must tell you, it looks like the, uh, the kids are trapped in here. Is this what you wanted? No, not really. No? I feel sorry for the kids because they miss out so much for their life. They need yeah. to grow, go somewhere. But at the same time, he needs them. How do you manage? Bad. Very bad. I haven't been sleeping lately. But it's not healthy for your daughters and your sons to be in this environment seven days a week. They can't be chained to the restaurant. They need some space, right? Yeah, they do. I think if we don't stop it, you're going to lose them. OK. Tonight, I'm going to watch service. I'm going to see how this place operates. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Kebab Room. I need two regular salads. OK, we need a Greek salad, a waffle plate, and a chicken and lula. What are you just standing there for, man? Do something. OK. So who does what on the grill? We pretty much all split it up even. So there's not one person on the grill? No, no. Sam? No. No, we kind of just switch it off. You just switch it on off? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, food's not hot. Just leave it. Just leave it. Take yeah. it out. Yeah. Send it out. We really don't care how the food is cooked. I'm doing all this work from day to night, every day, and I don't even get paid. Table 14. This is beef and chicken. For 14? Falafel plate, steak medium. For I asked for medium. This is like bloody. He wants this medium. You guys cooked it rare. Who cooked it? I did. It's definitely rare. Okay, I'll make a new one. Iman. What? 
good. It's a steak. It's well done. She want it medium rare. Hey, look done. What do you want me to do? Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell me look done. It's good. How many steaks we throw today, man? Every day I have to throw like 15, 20 like this. Every day. Sam. No. Yeah. They're, 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 they're rotten. 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 Hey, that's celery leaves? Whoa, that's a brand new case. That says a statement that nobody cares in here. What is this? Look at that. This what? This is two days ago. What do you mean two days ago? Two days ago. This is Tuesday. Sam, today's Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Five days. Five days. Lamb shanks. Lamb shanks. It's just like a dumping ground. Look at this. Salad. It's rotten. And this one? It's tahini. Tahini. You don't think they'd empty that now? Put it in a smaller container? What a mess. Yeah. It is a mess. Oh, man. He gave me a full plate. He didn't eat it. What's wrong with it? It was still raw. Give him another one. He doesn't want another one. Man, I'm getting heart attack here. Rhonda, run this out. What are they? Chicken strips, the one we buy, the frozen ones. You can't serve that. You got two seconds, please. Sam. Come here, all of you. Look at that. Just touch that. I wouldn't serve that to my dog. What did they tell you? I didn't tell you don't serve it. And I didn't know why we're doing it. Sam. You're in charge, and you're serving raw chicken. I'm amazed that you're still open. Why are you serving? The outside is cooked, so I'm figuring the inside is cooked. Yes, you're chained to the business. Yes, you don't want to be here, but you cannot serve that shit and expect to get away with it. Those kids drive me crazy, man. All what you want, finish the order and sit down. That's not where I can't even have time to sit down. What are you talking about? Oh, it's my kid's fault they do this. It's my kid's fault because of that. He don't listen. He doesn't care. When really it's his decision to keep us all here, he brought that upon himself. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Here. That's it. This is the last place. This is cruel all night long. Thank you, guys. Yeah, stay seated and tell him thank you. That was stupid. Stay seated. Look who's talking. You're standing you right there. What, what? On your phone. what else are you stupid. doing? Get up. That's what I thought. Are you paying me? Are you my boss? You're stupid. Just don't tell me what to do. You're stupid. This is fucking annoying, I swear. No damn brick out of his head. Oh, here comes the stars of the night. It's my dad's restaurant. I don't have to do nothing. I can do whatever I want whenever I want. Oh, <laughs> stop. Stop. Enough. You're stupid. You have a big mouth. Yeah, keep talking. Shut you your mouth. Saying? Shut up. Fucking idiot. Dumbass. Yeah. So oh, fucking good. waitress. Garbage. Look who's talking. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm garbage. You're Please, more than you garbage. Please, would you stop doing as much as I, I can do? I can take right now. It looks clearer than your face. Good Shut enough, up. Huh? Do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. You can't have the damn customer right. You can't take it. Or you can't bring back drinks right, let alone help the yeah, customers. Yeah. Okay, when get you inside, do get inside. Get inside. You're useless. You're useless. I still dare. Get out of my up. face. We can even run the food out and check the tables better than you, you guys can right. at the same time. Cook your food right, and then you can serve it. No. Shut up. Shut up. Get out of my face. While Chef Ramsay continues to inspect the state of the restaurant, the family went out for fresh air. And what they got was a major brawl between Rhonda. You do nothing around here now. All of a sudden, you act like you own the place. And oldest son, Jamal. You're not even Thank here. You. She's not here either. No, never. Get your ass out of here. Shut up. You guys are full of shit. Fucking stupid. You guys stupid. are full of shit. Baba, who's here every day? Not you. Who's here every day? What, when you're open, busy? Shut up. Hey, guys, guys, all of you. Stupid. Relax. Honestly, I mean, this does not feel like a family. 
And the way we've just behaved in the last five minutes is the way we've just conducted service over the last two hours. Disorganised, chaotic and so fragmented. And the people suffering are the customers. Yeah? Jeez. Oh, boy. This kid's a dumbass. It's not good. What am I supposed to do? Tell me. Is that fair for me to stand there and get yelled at by every single one of them? For what I did was wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. That's not fair. Just calm down. Since his arrival, you guys take a seat. Chef Ramsay has witnessed constant bickering and fighting. Okay. He realizes that much of it can be attributed to the feeling of being trapped in their father's restaurant. You've never done this. But what I want you to do now is to be honest with your father and explain that your lives and your careers are going elsewhere. I want you to be open. Tell them what you're feeling your frustrations, why you don't want to be here. Tell my dad. Yes. It's like gonna hurt him. This is gonna be tough, but you each have to stand up to him. You do not have to be here seven days a week. It's stopping now. You've gotta stay focused on what you wanna do now. Here he is, okay? I'm freaking out right now because I know my dad's gonna get hurt. I know he thinks that we love being here, but we really don't. So, there's something they would like to talk to you about. OK, I'm ready. Lena, why don't you go first? Let's go, darling. Step up. Hey. Come on. Um, so, even though we're here to help, we appreciate everything the restaurant has done for us. I need to focus on going in a different direction, becoming independent. We all just need a little bit of schedule thing where we're not here seven days a week, every single but one of you, us. You know, you're still too young right now. You're still a child for me. You're only 19 years old. There is a rule here. This is a family rule. It's not like what you want to do. You have to hear first from your dad and your mom, and then you can do it on your own. I don't think this is gonna go as well as Chef Ramsay thinks it's gonna go. My dad is not an open-minded person, like, at all. I am here to help you at the moment, and I've been here full-time, every single day, non-stop, but as the time comes, I kinda wanna go my own way and do my own thing. How oh, I'm gonna let you go on your own and you're still shy? Sam, what you have got to stop doing is making them feel guilty. And because the restaurant's not making money, they're having to wear that jacket of burden. And it's not your daughter's fault that this is not working. I want them to understand that every day someone has to be here. But it's driving them apart. You have to understand when the time comes, we all have to do our own thing. What can I say? Let's get me. Yes, him. Um, I'm here to help you, but if I'm going to college, it can't be. I promise you, they're all here for you. And as well as this is tough, it's really important for them. And I'm here for you as well. And yes, you've got every pressure, every bill, every demand on your shoulders, but we can't continue like this, buddy. Okay? Okay. Come on. Okay. 
seeing my father cry, it was really hard for all of us. But how to do it, how to tell him the truth straight up. I know I've been here every day for the past um, four, five years. I don't always make it seem like I hate this place, but I do. <laughs> but we're gonna change this. We're gonna turn this place around. I'm not going anywhere for the short term. I'm gonna be by your side. Let's get away. We argue, we fight, we kill each other here. All because, all because, Nobody cares enough to try to try to do something about it. <laughs> it was tough. They're always gonna be your children. <coughs> They're always gonna be here for you, but they have other aspirations and other dreams. And there comes a time when we all have to let go. And today is the beginning of that. Of course, makes sense. I can't stop them. Can't stop them. <laughs> Come on. I want to get some fresh air. I'll see you in five minutes, OK? I love you guys. I love you too, Dad. <laughs> I love every one of you. I want everybody to know that I'm here for everybody, anytime. We're all here for you too. We're all going to make an effort to make this better. It's going to help it pick up. I hope so. In order to make it work. With Sam and his children coming to an understanding, right, let's go. Chef Ramsay can now begin to work on one of the other major problems of Sam's kebab room. Fresh, every time. The food. I'm gonna make delicious shrimp and chicken kebabs done with freshness. When we're cooking kebabs, why don't we cook them on the skewer? It's so much more juicier, yeah? More flavor. Because when you're squeezing hell out of the food and you're pushing down, what do you think that's doing to the food? Getting all the juice out of it. Taking yes. all the juice out of there, exactly that. Cooking on the skewer gives us so much more control. Much easier. And then, watching you all last night, have you any idea how many times you cross over each other? Right. We're going to have one person manning the grill, not four of you. Who's the best grill chef in here? Me. OK. You're going to be at the helm as it cooks. And I want you going over there and glazing that. Chef Ramsay opened my eyes to cook the right way. I was very happy to watch him because I want to learn more what I know. Your grill should be like a chessboard where you're manipulating all the time up and down. They come off, glaze them again. Cooking next to Chef Ramsay in one afternoon, I've learned more than I've ever had. How does it look? Amazing. It looks beautiful. beautiful. Very good. Now, we're not at an art gallery. Jump in and start tasting. Come on. Sam, dive in. <laughs> this looks like Malaysian food. Chicken tastes really good. Yeah. That shrimp was, that shrimp was bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Quick smile, please. <laughs> Everybody look at me. <laughs> smile. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Believe it or not, I'm ready right now to move forward. No more fighting, no more arguing. <laughs> While Chef Ramsay's plan to fix the food is now in motion, his team gets started on a massive overhaul of the restaurant. First of all, good morning. Oh, good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chef. How does it smell in here? Amazing. 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 Wait 
until you see it. Come on, let us see. O M G. <laughs> okay, take off those blindfolds. Welcome to the new Sam's. Look at this gorgeous room. Oh, oh my God. That's just the place. That's just the place. Unbelievable. Let me tell you something really important. This has been one of the biggest and most expensive transformations we've ever made. Ever. Wow. This. It looks like it. Wow. We got rid of that dark, dingy hole and transformed it into a casual, modern kebab house. Beautiful. Something to be proud of. Oh, my God. That's a color restaurant. Beautiful. Wow. The restaurant feels more open. Wow. A brand new carpet throughout. The salmon colored dirty walls have gone, and we've got this charcoal color set with these amazing art blocks. It brightens up the restaurant dramatically and gives it that nice modern touch. It's beautiful. Tell. When I first stepped in this door, sitting down in the chair, I noticed a huge hole. Then when I looked around, there was holes in every chair. They've gone. Look at those babies. Brand new chairs. I see you got the chills, yeah. man. I know, me too. I see you got the chills. Sam, talk to me. I love it, man. You love I it? love it. It looks so gorgeous. They make me feel like I am in the heaven. Wait, Sam, how do you feel? Um, I'm in speechless. You're this speechless? Amazing. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> Chef Ramsey, I don't know how I'm going to thank you. I appreciate that from the heart. Thank you, Sam. I know you mean that. I never thought my dad would ever be open to change. I'd see a new man. Let me give you a hug before you go. Let's go. Well, I'm not going anywhere. We've got a lot of work to do tonight. Oh, dad. Oh, my dad. He doesn't hug anyone. And he doesn't even hug my mom. I like to see that smile on your face. I love you, man. I love I'm you. I want to put the blindfold back on. I don't believe it's real. I don't believe it's real. Now that the much-needed makeover to Sam's kebab room has taken place... Let's go, Sam. Oh, my God. Chef Ramsay is ready to unveil a contemporary Mediterranean menu. Visually, what would you see? It's beautiful. It looks it? delicious. Nice. That is sure to have the town of Monrovia buzzing. Dig in. Come on. Yeah, man. This is good. Amazing. Classically done. Absolutely delicious. I love the falafel. This is the kind of food we should have been serving here. I don't think I've ever been this excited or happy to come to work. This is how you make lentil soup. We do that in the house all the time. The food is amazing. I never thought in my life I'm going to have a restaurant like this today. Believe it or not, better than in Lebanon. Oh, yeah. Better than the whole Middle East. With the restaurant and family ready to face a new chapter. I sure it doesn't get too thick. Chef Ramsay is happy to spend the day training and working in the kitchen. Okay. What I want you to do is work with two hands, not with one. Twice as quick. Okay. Bring your tray over there. Plate, plate. Nice. See what happens when you're organized? OK. Again, you are now in control. Table 12, fire. Keep it going, yes? Here's another chicken. The customers are raving about the transformations made to the decor and food. Oh, my god, it's not brown anymore. This is good. That's really good. But the biggest transformation might just be the family themselves. Let's go, Abdul. We got this. Let's go. Perfect. 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 One, two, three, four. Table ten. They're working together, united, as a team in support of their father, Sam. Here's the plate. You got two behind you. Slide it up behind you. Put two pictures on there. Everybody's just more calm. It's just more of a family now. This is your table thank 15. You, thank you. Can I have a ketchup, please? Good. Teamwork. I'm very happy working in a restaurant like this. You know, before, I didn't want to be here. But now I'm going to keep going strong until we can actually hire somebody to take my place for the long run. And not surprisingly, there's someone else besides the family who has a smile on his face. I am so proud of you all. Well done. You've got everything you need to make this restaurant a success. And when you come together, it's harmony. Big group hug. Let's put mom and dad in the middle. I never see my family happy like now, before Chef Ramsey come in here. They're fighting all the time together. But everything has changed right now, and I hope it stay like that for the future. It's my dad. Open it. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the moment I knew we had turned things around. Every time you think of falling out, go to that picture and remind yourselves the importance of sticking together. Yes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, bud. Look after yourself, yes?
Yeah. OK? I wish I'd see you again. Uh, you'll definitely see me again. Good night, guys. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care, guys. Come back, <laughs> <please>. <laughs> when I first arrived, there was so much tension in the air, we were bound to have an explosion. As a matter of fact, we had a few. But once the air cleared, the family finally came together, and we had a good, and I mean good, relaunch. Only hope now that Sam stays in complete control of his restaurant, but not his children. Wow. You say kebab, and I say kebab. After several successful months... Table five, fired. Paul Lina. You like it? Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Delicious. Sam is now able to give his children some time off. And for the first time in years, Sam's kebab room is hiring. Long Beach, California, an oceanside community located 20 miles south of Los Angeles. Nestled in the heart of this vibrant city is Nino's, a family-run restaurant opened in 1958 by immigrants Inga and Vincenzo. When we got to America, Vincenzo wanted to open a restaurant. And that was his dream. How are you doing tonight? Very well, yourself? Welcome to Nino's. I ran the outside, he ran the kitchen. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun, too. We had a great time. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. My dad ran a restaurant with an iron fist, and we were the best that you could be. <laughs> it's hard now because he's 88. He's on the onset of dementia, and uh, in the last several years has separated himself from the restaurant. Who's taking table 11? I have no idea. Do you have table 11? Ever since my dad retired, my brother Nino is supposed to be a restaurant manager. All I can say is, he's the worst employee here. He loves to run up the tables and go, hi, I'm Nino. Thinks he owns this place, and he's because his name Nino's. However, my dad has told him, Jack in the Box, the owner no be named Jack. Pick up table six, please. I'm really quite tired. I didn't sleep last night. Terrific, thank you. Nino works here, we pay him, but basically he does very little. He sits in the office and watches TV. If he wouldn't be our son, he wouldn't be working here. How's table 11 coming along? They're almost ready. Because my brother sits around a lot and doesn't do anything, my sister Karina and I have helped throughout the years substantially. We found a hand in our food. And you bust a put it there. No, I have bread, dude. I don't have any hair. You know, you're making it worse. They're liars. No, they're not. My brother's 60 years old, and he acts like he's 12. That was inappropriate, what you just did. This is my parents' legacy, and he's going to run this restaurant into the ground. You're a lying sack of shit! I got a brother and sister that they think they got better ideas. My brother and sister asked Chef Ramsay to come without consulting me, and I have an ill feeling about it. We are we so leaving. Bill. Forever. And you need to see that detached from reality, that he doesn't see how much mom is suffering. They're freaking liars. This is a woman who always pays her bills on time, and she's having to take money out of the retirement to pay for this restaurant to keep it going. I made a promise to my husband, Vincenzo, that I would keep this restaurant going, but some night you have 10, 12 people coming. That doesn't do it. The last thing I want to do is close the doors. We put a lot of love. We put a lot of love in this place. I'm at Nino's Italian restaurant, which is owned by one family for 54 years. And in the restaurant business, that is unbelievable. Sadly, things have gone horribly wrong over the last couple of years. I'm about to find out why. Oh my God. Wow, I feel like I'm back in 1958. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well. Nice to see you. My name is Inge. Inge. I'm not very Italian. No, I'm from Germany. From Germany. My husband is the Italian. I see. Your husband's Nino. Nino is actually the son. So there's you and your son, all running the business. 
and uh, Karina and Mike, they're also my kids and they're here many times. And how about your husband? He's kind of retired. It'd be nice to meet the family. Can we get everybody together oh, and sure. have a chat? Everybody for a catch -up? is in the bag. There's Mike. This is the baby, right? No, no Karina is the baby. Oh, you're the baby. Hi, yeah. I'm Karina. Nice to meet you. Likewise. And this is I'm Nino. Nino, good Pleasure to see you. to meet you. Likewise. So you're the oldest. Yes, I am. I'm the one that's going to be 60 pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to catch up with all of you now. Let's okay. go somewhere a bit quieter. Sorry. My brother Nino tells everybody how hard he works and that he runs this restaurant. I I'm sorry, Nino. He's not going to swallow your BS for one second. So how good is the food? How would you rate it out of 10, Nino? 10. A 10? Wow. Yes. Karina? I would have to rate it as a seven. So, Michael, what would you give the food? I would give it an eight. So the food's good, that's great. And what's your role? I really don't work here all the time. I have my own career, Right. as my sister does. Uh, I help out whenever my mom calls. I'm Johnny on the spot. Nino, the restaurant's named after you. What's your role? The, the person that's always been in charge was my dad. And then when, when he developed his Alzheimer's, I stepped up in this business. Wow. What do you mean? I, I get here early. I, I do uh, the remedial things as janitorial, Good. vacuuming, cleaning of all these plates, and cleaning the restrooms, scrubbing the toilets, washing the patio. That's just from 8 until about 4, maybe. Weekends, usually, I'll come in for uh, extensive cleaning. Sounds like you do a lot of cleaning. Cleaning? What are you talking about? The restaurant is a mess. <laughs> Take away the cleaning. What else do you do? Karina, um, help me out. There's no key person. There's no one really directing the kitchen on how the portion should be, how the quality needs to be consistent. You know, you need to be working in the kitchen. When I worked here I, and Mike worked here, we jumped in the kitchen. They don't want me in there. Who? The chefs. The chefs? They're very adamant about uh, uh, keeping that kitchen to themselves. It sounds like you put over a barrel now. It's like everybody's kind of running the restaurant. I thought Nino was running it. <laughs> not really, no. That's not true. But Nino's here. But Nino isn't here. He's here at lunch. So he doesn't run dinner. Are you here for dinner? Yes. <laughs> I don't understand why you're not here. Lunch and dinner. It's something my mom and I are constantly frustrated with. Nino's doing everything half-assed. And so Mike and I have to come in, help the family. Wow, I mean, it <laughs> doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Irritates the crap out of me. He spends a lot of time sitting down with customers. I mean, not just visiting, promoting the business, sitting down and talking for long periods of time in the middle of lunch. And he's the only restaurant manager I think you'll find anywhere that has lunch at lunchtime. He spends a lot of time in the office watching TV. This is not even true. He's not it's here. Not at, he's not here at 8 in the morning when I get it. Why would I come here at 8 That's in the morning? That's a fantasy. I watch TV. The television here is 40 years old, and I have uh, high def at home with all the all the channels I need. Why wouldn't I just stay there? I so get you here. Tell people eight. you're working because nobody's here, so you can say whatever you're doing, right? Stretching the truth. It is not. <laughs> My brother never tells the truth. <laughs> so Coming a... from a pathological liar, I take I... that as a compliment. <laughs> he thinks I'm I'm some kind of nut because I, I I'm in a recovery program. It has nothing but to do I'm with not. that. It has nothing I... to do with that. You're just he, a liar. He, he thinks we're you're all a, you're... living in a fantasy world, according I never to him. No. I think you're in a nice world by the way you act here. My honest feeling is that he doesn't do crap here. He does a lot of sick. I'm talking. He makes everybody believe he does crap. Just like last night, he ran up to every table and said, Hello, my name's Nino. That's not true. Nino, please. Do you let me talk? Mr. O was talking. I see that all the time. And that's why I kind of stay back from here, because I love this damn restaurant. And to see it just being Run down drives me freaking crazy. To my opinion, he doesn't do crap. My mom will admit it. My dad will admit it. My sister will admit it. But I will come out and say it passionately. Doesn't do crap. While the family and Nino are in complete disagreement over his effectiveness as a manager. Thank you. Thank you. They were all in agreement that the food at Nino's is good. How are you? Hi, good, how are you? Yeah, nice to see you. Are those brothers always butting heads like that? Are they always arguing? Yes, they are. Wow. Um, is that a spelling mistake on there? Egg, plant, as in two separate words? Yeah. It is. Shouldn't they be sort of joined? Yes. 
And I noticed this one as well down here. One meat ball. <laughs> do they not know they're going to be like, it's one word, meat ball? <laughs> Honestly. And do you know what? I'll go for one meat ball, okay. uh, one eggplant, and okay. chicken counter. OK. Thank you. Got it. Excellent. Michael, um, listen. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate your honesty. And I know it's hard, but well, I feel like someone's <laughs> blown smoke on my ass. My brother's full of shit. I'd be surprised if he worked two hours a day. And that, I, that's pushing it. Would you not feel guilty of your mum working twice as hard as you? Yeah, she's been day and night. That's what I'm saying. Why is he not here helping her? He doesn't have another job. He complains about not having money, not taking a vacation. Either come here at night or get another job. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, Gordon. You sure? I just ask before you make any judgments. I'm not making any judgments on you at all. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm listening. Nobody's here at 8 in the morning when I'm here. And, and, and there, is, there is a job that's in Devon. I mean, all the way, you know, and I, I get back behind here, you know, I get underneath there, I get the plates, I get up there. And, and um, it doesn't take that long. It, it takes about an just, hour or so. My knees and then I, I start doing stuck. the prep work. It, it's just a. What is that? It's just stuck to my jeans. Oh, oh my gosh. So have a look at that under there. Oh, my gosh. How many bits of gum are there? There is uh, four pieces of gum. So you do all this cleaning. I haven't looked down there. I don't think you should do that during the business hours in front what of time, customers. What time would you like me to do it? Uh, come here at 8 in the morning with me. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't you be there with you at tomorrow morning? And I wouldn't do that in your restaurant either. Oh, you wouldn't find gum under my tables. <laughs> Nino is a ball of excuses. He's just wacko. God, this full of cobwebs. Bloody hell. Didn't get to that one. Bloody hell. Definitely didn't get to that one. Everybody else was done, right? Yeah. Right. Have you seen the size of that cobweb there? Have you seen that? That's dust. That, no, that's the cobweb. Didn't see it without the lighting. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. How often do you clean? Every day? I, you know, this is something that, that takes a lot of consideration. I, I, you know, you can be on this here for months. I start at one end and then finish at the other end and then I come back. On this and... one? Oh, God. This is the eight in the morning effect. Five days a week for years. Bloody hell. Is there a bathroom nearby? Can we wash my hands? Yes, sir. He should have shut up about yes, cleaning. Sir. I don't know what he's cleaning, but I wouldn't hire him at my house. I promise you that. Oh, what are the pictures of? These are me cleaning and pulling down all the all the bottles, every single bottle. I, I've never seen pictures of cleaning. That's a first for me. Well, that's because my brother's always questioning yeah. that I do it. I don't know in the first place why he took pictures. If it's clean, you don't have to prove it with pictures. You see it, right? <laughs> this is a chicken piccata. It's a lemon with capers and mushrooms. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. How do you like this one? Dreadful. No? Chicken's all floury, slimy. OK. Come over, Nina. So I just had to Megan. That's just, if you just, just touch, touch that, it's all I, I, I'm not going to touch it with my finger. No, I it's all, what I'm trying to say is all soggy and floury, so it's... Well, I mean, I'll do something like that in the kitchen, but not in the dining area. That wouldn't be appropriate. Well, I wouldn't touch food. Listen, listen. You sit me on a table full of gum. I've got cobwebs coming out of my earlobes, and now I'm asking you to touch something floury. And you say, I wouldn't do this in the dining room. All of a sudden, you've got this level of concern. Yes, I do, because that's food right there, Ed, and you want me to touch it. This is food that you've given 10 what out am of I 10. Supposed to, what am I supposed to I want you to be honest with yourself and start fucking around. I'm not fucking around. Ready to get real. The chicken is slimy and furry. It's got raw flour on the outside. You refuse to accept it because you're in the land of nod. <laughs> Chef Ramsay's sounding like an ass. Too much flour and it has no flavor and it's a very delicate chicken and it's delicious. He said the piccata was disgusting. This guy is disgusting. Oh, and that's my one meatball. This is your one meatball. I says, thank you. That tastes 54 years old. Mush, disgusting and just dreadful. Nino, come on. You rated the food on a 10. So far, what I've tasted, I'm embarrassed. That's too bad. 
the meatball, soggy, bland, and just hideous with the salty marinara sauce. It's a matter of taste. Say that again? It's a matter of taste. That's not a matter of taste. When was that made? Two days ago. Really? I saw him make it. Right. Can you have a word with the chef? I know you're scared of them, but ask I'm him. I'm not scared of them, and I'm not scared of you. What's that supposed to mean? You threatening me? I'm not, a, I'm not a person that's scared, so don't use that word, please. I ask you to step up, take some form of responsibility, and go in there and ask him. So, are you going to let me continue eat, or do you want to? What do you want to fight? You want a confrontation? If we're talking about something physical, can you, no. Can you leave me alone? Let me finish my lunch. Yes, I will. And if you find the balls to go and ask your chef when he made the meatballs, it'd be greatly appreciative. By the way, there's dirty bottles above the fish tank. Wow. Valentina, when did you make those meatballs? That's how you eat. That's unbelievable. Friday. I find that hard to believe. Because today is Tuesday. That couldn't be. That couldn't possibly be. <sighs> thank you. And this is the... Uh... This is the eggplant? Wow. Thank you very much. You're good. He made them this weekend on Friday. He made them on Friday? Yes, he did. And today's Tuesday? Yes, it is. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Unbelievable. We've been selling this sauce for 54 years. Yeah. And, and we couldn't possibly have this restaurant and have all the success if we didn't make a good sauce and a good meatball. You are in denial. No. <laughs> I'm not. Bullshitting me and blowing smoke up my ass, telling me working here eight hours a day cleaning. Telling me that food is great, people love it. I am shitting myself. But the then chef, you need to wear diapers. The, you shouldn't be shitting on yourself. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You're just trying to act like a fucking idiot to make no, yourself I'm not. sound I'm better. I'm not a fucking idiot. Well, then stop sounding like you one. You sound like a it's... fucking idiot yourself. I sound like an idiot. You used the word fucking, yeah, so I brought I it did. back to you. Okay. I think that's right. that's kind we of gross. We need to calm hey. down. Unbelievable. Now I know the problem in this restaurant. Yeah. I'm staring at uh, it, and I'm, I'm staring at it as well. To be honest, I really don't know what's in Nino's head. Are we done? It's almost like he's completely mentally unstable. I'd like to have a quick catch up with you, Mum, Karina, and your brother. Okay. Let's uh, let's go next door. Um, I'm lost for words. Honestly, I'm depressed. Dish after dish was a disappointment. And then you rate the food. Ten out of ten, perfect. It's the best of times we've ever had. I have a lot of friends that come here and eat. Your circle of friends isn't keeping the business afloat. Let's get that right. And let me tell you something. The chicken piccati. Chicken was furry and slimy. The meatball we discovered was made five freaking days ago. But for some bizarre reason, you're convincing yourself that everything's fine. <laughs> What you have proven to me is that you are not in a position to take responsibility for anything except cleaning. For the first 40 minutes of meeting you, all you told me about was the cleaning. You're in denial. You're refusing to listen to the negative feedback regarding the food. And yet you've got pictures of yourself cleaning the place. Hello? I didn't take those pictures. You were happy to show them to me. Well, you, you, you were indicating that I don't do anything. Cleaning is basic, like drinking water and breathing air. And that is not management. Nina, there's the lady there that's got all the weight on her shoulders. And I don't know when you're thinking of getting responsible, but let me give you some piece of advice. Hurry up, will you? <laughs> um, I'm just saddened, I think, really, because it doesn't even feel like it's family run. Um, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm sorry. I really got the sense that he came in here and I'm his target. He's 100% right. You're the biggest problem here, and if mom could initiate your early retirement, it would be the best thing. Okay. You are being entirely unfair and dishonest about this. I can't stand seeing this place run like crap. Know. This fighting has to stop. Okay, well, then I can't come because I can't stand watching it. It's not Maybe just... you're taking nerve pills or okay. something. I don't know. I can't take it. I don't it. take nerve pills. Okay, but I Never. can't take it. Why are you yelling at your mother? Yelling because you're saying the fighting like, like I come in here just to fight. No. I come in here, you two fighting. You need to talk. You yes. need to talk. Some 
maybe we stop saying the you word fighting. You call it communicating. Dogs. We, That's what it sounds like to me. Chef Ramsey, he said, this is not a family. And I know it's not a family. OK. Ciao, arrivederci. Chef Ramsey has quickly identified the two biggest problems of the restaurant, Nino and the food. But he's about to learn a whole lot more as he watches how this kitchen functions during a dinner service. What, uh, what is that? Lasagna. That's lasagna. Well, if that's a lasagna, then I'm the Pope. Jesus. When was it made? Last Friday, no? Last Friday. Wow. It's really weird. Very weird indeed. Oh, man. What is that? Is this chicken? I thought it was lard. It's not, it's chicken. Wow, it's all dry. Bloody hell. Can you get me Nina, please? <sighs> Nina. That's a chicken. Yeah, have a little taste. All right, all right, all right, right. It's dry, bland, and it's just been reheated now for your pasta dishes. Yeah, sure. I like the taste. That is not the way to cook. Right. I believe Chef Ramsey may have exaggerated. It almost sounded like it was unsalvageable. Throw that away, please, yeah? I don't even want that save for a dog. OK. You have the cauliflower pancakes? This is yours. As the dishes leave the kitchen reasonably quick, <laughs> complaints from customers are almost immediate. Look at this, though. Like, this is supposed to be the breading, I think. This is no good. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna send this back. Sure, let me take it. I'm oh, sorry for that. Let's, let me take it. Way too much grease. Oh no, what's wrong with that? That has too oh, much. Oh Jesus Christ. Butter. You are kidding me. What is that? Come on, guys. This is an example of Nino not knowing how to manage this restaurant. He should be in the kitchen making sure that our food quality is consistent. Where's Nino? Helping the yeah. kitchen. That's what you need to do. I haven't eaten anything all day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he was eating dinner with my mom and dad out front. We should be working, but... Yeah. If he had the initiative, the assertiveness to take over, we wouldn't be in this situation. So Nino just continually stands there, and that's the frustrating thing right now, because I look and he's like in my right peripheral at all times. And you've got your poor 78-year-old mother standing out the front, yes, clinging on. Got a mess in here. Oh, mushrooms and my god. Are they the meatballs? Yeah. Where are they from? Uh Friday. Friday. These are from Friday as well? Uh-huh. Look at it. How old is that to go that colour? You know, I have a feeling if I ask somebody, they'd say, no doubt, from Friday. When was it made? How old is that? It's uh, from Friday. Friday again. Busy day, Friday. Have you seen inside your refrigeration? Yes, absolutely. We actually do a full, full thorough cleaning every night. Have you got two minutes? Yes, sir. Just look down there, the back there. Yeah, there's some product on the ground. Uh, so what on the ground? Mushrooms. Yeah, there is. And have you any idea? No, this is this is here. This is just left there. My God, what's that? It's pepper. You've been serving this all night. It's not even scaled. You're the man that gave me 10 out of 10. Come on, then. Right. I don't know what to say. While Nino says he takes great pride in the cleanliness of the restaurant. What's this? Chef Ramsay discovers another horror story in the walk-in. That is rancid. How long does a red pepper take before it goes that rotten? Just smell that. It can go fast. It can what? It can go faster than you expect. How would you feel if your customers saw that? That's what I'm trying to say to you. All right. 
that would, I mean, I'm sorry it's there, but we wouldn't take that and, and serve it to somebody. No, but what it, I'm trying to say is that signifies how this whole business is run. I'll give them on that refrigerator. I'm horribly disappointed about it, but uh, it's impossible to do everything properly. You're not doing your I job don't. to the best of the ability that's necessary to run this business. If you want to say that, that's, I'm, I'm sure that's your prerogative. It's not my prerogative. I'm watching it. I'm watching you doing it by the minutes. I, I don't have the authority to assert myself. And you when I ask do, somebody, Nino. You know. You do. You just okay. never have. Your mum wants you to step up. I'm so confused. She wants you to do it. Uh, You're nearly 60. Is that true, what you just told me? He has no power, because you won't let him. That's not true. That's not the way it is, Nino. Why do you tell stories like that? How many times have I gone in there and tried to, to, to when assert is myself? It, when is it two or three years ago? I had to go to the hospital. You were completely out drunk. I, I had a yeah. relapse and ended up in the hospital. What I saw was so disgusting. I had to hold him down in the emergency room. You know, they had to put him in, in, in restraints. And I made a bad decision. She still has a resentment about it, and I don't know what I can do about it. Do me a favor. Yeah. I need to spend two minutes with your mother now. All right. Yeah. I feel for you. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Mm-hmm. He almost died. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you holding it against him? Or is it down to the actual work and commitment? I it's think it's the work and commitment. Is he lazy? What is it? Yeah. I am here to help you. You must understand that. Yeah, yeah. Can we meet first thing tomorrow morning? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. As Chef Ramsay has made a commitment to Inga to help save the restaurant. Good morning, my darling. Good morning. He knows his next step is to make sure that Nino is committed to changing his ways. So this morning, he fills Inga in on his plan. Right now, Nino thinks every day that this restaurant's not going to close because you're going to continue funding it. Mm -hmm. If he starts to understand that you've had enough, that may wake this guy up. Mm -hmm. So here's the plan. I'm going to board up the whole front of this restaurant. So it looks like the business is closed. I'll be hiding around the corner, I'll be around there, and I want to hear what he has to say to his mother when you say, I'm shutting it down. It's about him showing you hunger. What he can do, that what he, he can, can do. do it. Exactly that. You with me? Yeah. Perfect. this morning and I decided to close that business. I cannot do it anymore. It doesn't work. Is that what you think? Yeah. All right. Fine. Jesus Christ. Is that all you have to say? Well, Mom, it's your restaurant. You're the one that has a decision on this. But I think we should stay, keep it open. That's my personal opinion. I, I, I don't want to give up. I know we can hold out and do it. I cannot put any more money in this place. I'm willing to fight to keep this restaurant open. Do you have some suggestion how we can do that? We have an expert in the restaurant business. We can ask him. You really want to do it? Yes, absolutely. Hi. Chef Ramsey, hi, how you doing? So, 
54 years in the making. Mm -hmm. And the business is on the brink of closure. You're part of that failure. Yeah. Do you understand what that means? Yes, I do, Chef. It's got to come from you, Nino. I'm willing to commit. Take control, Nino. I shall. No more excuses. Just be on top of everything. I'm willing, Mom. The business is going to have to become a new priority. Number one. Number one. At this point, I believe Nino really wants to turn his life around, and he wants to do what's best for the restaurant and the family. While Nino says he's committed to change, How are you doing? Chef Ramsay feels it's important that he shares this news with his brother and his sister. OK. The lack of commitment with Nino has been going on for far too long. And your mother stepped up and told him, I've had enough. And Nino, to his credit, turned around and said, Mum, I want to do this. I'm committed. Yes. I don't believe that. Nino, you've been in denial for a long time what your responsibilities have been. You yeah. made so many promises to all of us over your life. And this time, sure. you need to be what? in charge. He's committed That's to that all. this morning. And this is the new Nino. Maybe for three, four weeks, but then he'll revert back to the old Nino. I, I'm asking, let's get out of the past. What is it we can do from this point to move forward and treat each other with decency and walk away sh shaking each other's hands? OK, no more excuses, no more denial. I need you to be the big brother that you're supposed to be to this family. I'm going to be much more focused on doing things that make the business more successful, and, and that's the truth. Michael? Let's go for it. Thank you. I am willing to give Nino another chance. For God's sake, he's my brother. I believe he can change, but I'm not going to make any bets on it. Now that Nino is willing to take the reins and the family is ready to move forward, Chef Ramsay gives this restaurant its first facelift in over half a century. Good morning. Good morning. Good Chef morning. Ramsay. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. Very. A lot, a lot. Right. Take off your blindfolds. Oh, my god. Oh, oh my, my god. god. This is so wow. incredible. It's unbelievable. Are we in Nino's? I know there's a sign that says Nino's. <laughs> Welcome to the new Nino's. I love the light. I love it. 50 oh my God. years in the making. <laughs> we got rid of the drab brown color, and we lighted the walls up. Yes? Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Gone are the Chianti bottles cluttering the ceiling and gathering dust. Now, we have brand new light fixtures made from old apple baskets. That's awesome. <laughs> I think it's hot. <laughs> I'm speechless seeing all of this. It's very crisp and clean looking. Welcome. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. This is amazing. Yes. Oh my god. I love this. First of all, we have decluttered this room. Yay! <laughs> painted it fresh. And these beauties here are handmade family tables. Oh, oh they're wow. beautiful. Inga, what do you think? This is the greatest thing because this reminds me of Germany. The people, they all sit on tables together and they have a wonderful time. I think it looks great. <laughs> we had the old Ninos for 54 years. It was time to freshen it up. I think with this change, we can be here for many more years. Oh, you kept our old picture up. Of course I did. <laughs> you like it, darling? I do. Oh, no, don't get upset. Come on. I'm so grateful. I don't know how to say thank you. I want to be happy. I'm so happy. I'm so thankful to you. Please. This is like a dream come true. I, I don't know how to thank you. Fall back in love with this amazing <laughs> restaurant. Definitely. I'm speechless. <laughs> and I'm really, really great. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. To match the new contemporary design of the restaurant, Take one menu and pass them along, please. Chef Ramsay has created a rustic menu to complement it. It looks delicious. It looks like it should be in a painting. Very authentic. Oh, everything's in perfect. Now, enjoy the food. It's so Dig incredible. In. OK. Delicious. Oh, my god. Wow. Mm. Tastes good, Chin Parmesan. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you.
it's relaunch night, and Chef Ramsay has a new important job for Nino, running the kitchen. You ready? Yes, sir. You're going to be expediting? Absolutely. Uh, and stay on top of it. We are not going to argue in front of the team. Yeah? Yes. This is it. Hi. Welcome on a rainy summer night. <laughs> it's so much brighter. So much ambient, so much uh -huh. everything. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, too. I'll try the ricotta cavatellian. Oh, sounds good. Fire up number 15. 15. At this point, it's time to step up and finally convince Chef Ramsay, that, that I can do this job, that I can expedite. OK, deal's up, Chef. We're Thank ready. Linguini's coming Let's up go. right behind us. With Nino managing the kitchen. All right, here we go. Bam, pasta. Food is coming out at a steady pace. We have a bio. Yes. The sauce is excellent. Yeah. But as more orders come in. Here you go, Nino. OK, we need to slow it up back out there. Nino is starting to get overwhelmed. Nino. Is that another one? Yeah. Nino, is that right? Somebody's having a minestrone for an entree. Yes, it is. You sure? Yes. Then how can there be five entrees? All I want to do is make sure we check in, well, so we don't screw the kitchen. Well, I can, I can uh, check back. He's at table 12. He'll be right back. Let's go. Nino's started getting backed up and overwhelmed, so I would do everything I could to stop it. This deck just disappeared. Uh, OK, so we've got issues. OK, I, I got it. I got okay. it. Oh, well, they, 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 want all the, they want all this at the same time. Just okay? checking. That's what we're just yeah, checking. I found out. I, I actually, Mike, I got this under control. Yeah. If well, both this, of us this are is, this here, is, we no, this... I need a margarita pizza, Valentino, and a cheese tortellini. Hold on one second. Mike just kind of asserted himself into the line, and, and I can see that's going to be very combative. I feel like there's, you know, a war brewing at the pickup window. Or really falling behind. Okay, excuse me, you know, I can't see over your stomach. What, what right. table is this? Lasagna? You know, please don't sleep on the counter. Stand not, up like this. Mike, I can't see the checks. Just relax. Like, you know, please. Just stop being angry. I'm everyone. not being angry. Just, just please stand up. Posture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, have okay. to be calm. Yeah, yeah, right. I need a calamari appetizers and a veal. You got to give me table numbers, man. Sorry, you really do. You got to help me out. You're clearly not. Table 12. I can't even take this, man. Pick up table 5, cavatelli spaghetti meatball. I need a calamari pickup appetizer and a minestrone. Shut up. Don't talk to me like that, or we'll come back there and have a nice talk. You got it? Fuck me. He talks to me like again. He's going out the door. It's relaunch night at Nino's. I need a calamari pickup appetizer. We need fucking 20 people talking. And Michael has pushed Nino out of the way and is trying to lead the kitchen. Mike, I got this under control. Yes. But unfortunately, he's putting the relaunch in jeopardy. Shut up. Don't talk to me like that, or we'll come back there and have a nice talk. You got it? Fuck me. Mike. Mike, come here, come here, come here. Don't blow it up. There's no point in blowing no, the whole. I don't blow up. I was coming up to try to clear the mess. Let's, let, let's keep it calm. OK, very okay. good. I'm calm as a cucumber right now. Sure. Why don't you go outside and get some fresh air? You got it. Nina, table's fired. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Right now, Anthony needs you here on the whole place. Exactly. Yeah, head chef, expediter. Right. you got to stay like that. Exactly. Okay. I need a calamari for five. I need a calamari for eight. Excellent. Let's go. Order up. Michael. Yeah. Can I have a word, please? Don't let this spoil tonight. Just take a big, deep breath. I can't turn off my emotions like that. I'm, I'm not, not asking It's not you to, a light but switch. But you're just letting that just spoil the whole fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not here and your brother pisses you off, you've got to show some form of control. That's all. Control. Don't let it spoil the night. Yeah, OK. I appreciate it. I'm waiting for table two whenever ready. Here we go. Fire the lasagna. Okay, I'm going to take this to table 12. You got it. Thank you. Here's your calamari you needed. Thank you. Right. Delicious. Good calamari. Everything's going well right now. You're doing good. And the steak. It's really good. It's very good. This is everything I'd ever wanted for our restaurant and hoped for. I'm so overjoyed. It's, it's surreal right now. Did you already get that, number seven? Spaghetti meatball. They all finished. Finish. I can't remember the last time Nina worked that hard. I hope we're going to be here many more years, including me. <laughs> Just with a little less work. That's the last ticket out. Good. Well done. Thank yeah. you. Cheers, guys. Love the food. Cheers. Cheers. Let me tell you, that wasn't a perfect evening, but thinking that nothing's been changed for 54 years, it was never going to be perfect, let's be honest. Yeah. Nina, you didn't disappear. You stood there and took it. Well done. Thank you.
I think you did a remarkable thing for us, and uh, I want this to work 100% with all my fiber. You stick with it. And Michael, how would you sum up tonight? It was just very confusing. You know, it's a new look, new menu. You know, we'll see what our, what our regular customers think too. But I can't speak for them. Sure. Do you want it to work? Yes, I do. Yeah? I'm unconvinced you actually want to change, let me tell you. Well? I gotta go. Tragic. Uh, this has been the best day of our family's life, and um, Mike is being a complete asshole. It's really disappointing to see him walking out and being so ungrateful. I hope my family could get behind all this change and really support it. I'm hoping too. Look after yourselves, will you please? And look after each other. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Thank Bye. you. Good night. When this restaurant started, there's no internet. Man had not landed on the moon, and there was no such thing as a color TV. But there was Nino's. And the only way this restaurant can continue is if the family put the past behind them. I'm not sure if they can, but I'm really hoping they can do so. Wow. Nino, he can clean and take photographs as well. In the weeks that followed, although Michael distanced himself from the restaurant, the rest of the family has stepped up. Fire up nine yeah. and seven and the fireplace. Nino is working harder and is taking on more responsibilities. But the task of running the business on a day-to-day -day basis still falls on Inga's shoulders. You enjoyed the pizza? Yes. Oh, great. And despite her full-time job. I do want us to just all work together. Karina has increased her presence at Nino's in hopes that the 54-year-old family restaurant will live on as a legacy for generations to come. 60 miles from Cleveland is the rural farming community of Norwalk, Ohio. It's here where Joe Nagy, after losing his job in food sales, bought a livestock ranch and decided to open Mill Street Bistro. How you guys doing? I was trained and worked for many old school chefs that were Europeans. Just hit it with that wine right there. I always visualized having that place of my own. Mon cherry. The word fine dining is obnoxious. Get a doily on his plate, please, if you can't back it up. Guys, verbiage, OK? Bruschetta, Cristini's, you know what that is? Okay. But I know that I have what it takes to do it. This is their big moment at the bistro. Joe is in denial. This is not a fine dining restaurant. Who do you think you're talking to? This is the finest of the finest. What he tells us every day is he is the best fucking restaurant from New York to LA. I would put this restaurant up against anyone because the passion. Really, we are mediocre at best. What is that? It's kind of gross. I don't know. Isn't that wonderful? Food here is exceptional. We didn't get this elk from UPS. It comes from our ranch. It's fresh, sustainable, and local. We really are from farm to fork. That's why our food is the best by far. He's always playing up the quality of the food. We made that sauce from scratch. <laughs> and I know most of our stuff is frozen. There are corners that are cut. For example, the steaks come from a wholesale food club. Looks good, looks good. They turn brown, they start smelling. I'm like, mm, I would not eat that. <laughs> hey, Joe. I'm eating right now? I, I didn't know. Okay, you came out with it before. Me, excuse me. When I think about Joe, I think of an arrogant, selfish jerk. Quit asking all these arbitrary questions to these customers. Get the ice, cool it down. He talks down to people. Is there enough bread for dinner right now, or yeah. do you want me to do that part of the thinking, too? It's always somebody else's fault. It's your responsibility that the bread doesn't taste stale. He makes it very unbearable to even be here. The way you treat me is disrespectful, crude. Then you need to find another place to work. I come to win. I didn't come to fuck up. I don't think Joe can see past his ego. I know that Tommy and me are handsome guys. Don't come back here and stare at us. 
Joe doesn't realize his actions affect our livelihood. What is this? That one. The owner was very condescending. The owner was rude. Business is super slow, and the big reason people don't come in is because of Joe. I've never had a piece of meat come back in here in 10 years. He's the one who needs to change his way of thinking. Don't come around starting blah, 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 blah. Or we're not going to survive. Is the Mill Street Bistro a kitchen nightmare? By no means. We're not a kitchen nightmare when it comes to cleanliness, functionality. Are we a kitchen nightmare because we have no asses in the seats? Yes. Yes. Before Chef Ramsay visits Mill Street Bistro, Joe wants Gordon to check out his farm so he can show him firsthand the livestock that supplies the restaurant. Joe? Chef Ramsay, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. What a gorgeous place. Yeah, just a small little working ranch. Let me show you around. Please. How long have you had the farm? Eight years. How long have you had the restaurants? Five years. I want Chef Ramsay to critique my restaurant and say, you got something, Joe. That's what I'm looking for. Look at these beauties here. Gorgeous. You're going to try all these animals at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. This is all the things I've learned in Europe. And, New York and the places I've right. worked and as a table-side culinary chef. I see you work as a chef. I am self-taught by old-school Europeans, master chefs that had a liking to me because yeah. of my passion. Yeah. Um, I was in the food distribution business. As a um, salesman? A salesman brilliant. and a consultant for all okay. the large distributors. Well, things changed, so I opened up a restaurant. But and what type of restaurant is it? I like to say fine dining. Fine dining. And is the restaurant making money? No. Why? Because we have to get more asses yeah. in the seats, and we have to get sure. people to take us serious. I think some people are finding me pretentious. Really? They're finding me arrogant. Uh -huh. I'm not arrogant. I'm a passion-loving person. Huh. Let's just kind of swing over here. The buffalo, they should be, in the next uh, several weeks, having calves. Mm -hmm. This is my buddy here. Your buddy? Yeah. Oh, he goat. Is. Hey, come here, Skinny. What's his name? His name's Skinny? Skinny. Yeah, he's very affectionate. He, Look just, he just really wants to be loved, you know. Are we going to slaughter him? No. No. Oh. You know, I always tell Skinny, I said, you're the only one that's not going to get whacked around here. You right. know what I mean? Everybody else is up for <laughs> wow. debate. You, you know, but he's like my dog, and I take him for rides. He's not your things. pet, Skinny. Yeah. He just loves to be around me. He's he, close to you, isn't he? Yeah, he's an affectionate guy. You were about yeah. to kiss him then, weren't you? No, I don't kiss them. I can tell you guys are close. Yeah, we're close. Ah, maybe a little too close, eh? Hey. Hey. Hey, hey don't you dare. Yeah. Huh? Hey. <laughs> Fuck out. Hey, stop, stop. You can see, he's, uh, he's jealous. Uh, he's yeah. <laughs> me and you talking. I'll be two minutes, Skinny, OK? You grab a glass of wine, and you pull over here, and he comes over, and he's just licking your hand, and you're just sitting there going, it's nice. worth it. So you have a glass of wine with them as well? I think things get a little strange when you have this relationship yeah. with farm animals. Look at this place. You run this single-handedly? You and Skinny? Me and Skinny. When was the last time you had a day off? Never. Never? I don't Joe, know. Joe, come on. The things that I'm doing, it's pretty incredible, even to my standards. What excites me is when I see a man this motivated to put all this effort into food in your local bistro. Yeah. I'm dying to taste some of that passion. Let's do it. OK. I'll, I'll see, see you back at the restaurant. restaurant. Thanks Excellent. for coming out, Chef. Thank you. Tell Skinny we're just friends. <laughs> farm-to-table restaurants have a strong appeal with Chef Ramsay. After being impressed by Joe's farm, he's quite anxious to try the food. Hello. Good afternoon. What a gorgeous Welcome. place. Yes, thank you. Look at this. Ready to sit? Oh, it's stunning. Yeah, fair. Thank you. Follow me, please. Excellent. Oh, why is the fire on? 95 degrees. Um, that is just for aesthetics. It is actually oh, not putting out heat, but it oh. can. It, it oh. can if you need. So that's not really a fire. So turn it off. You could. Well, it's 95 degrees outside, oh. so I just thought, when it's that hot. Agreed. <laughs> when it's that hot outside, do you want to walk in and see a fire? Right. Where would you like me to sit? Right over here. Thank you, my darling. You are welcome. Um, just out of interest. Yes. What's the name tag for? We've always had this since we opened. But we're not a chain, are we? We are not. No. Could you take it off? Of course. Please. Yay! We are not little lost dogs. I'm fine without it. 
Um, what's wrong with this fine dining bistro? Um, the business is lacking. Why do you think that is? It would be Joe and the way he treats the guests. Treats the Out guests. on the floor, yes. Oh, really? If they have a complaint. So he goes and, what, victimizes the customer? Uh, it has happened, yes. I've seen it happen. Wow. And he's trained with some of the best chefs in Europe. I've heard that story, yes. Seriously? Wow. I mean, things are starting to unravel. Um, OK. Anyway, I'd like to see as much as I can okay. so I can get up to speed with this fine dining sure. bistro. Any specials? Um, the features we have this evening, we have house-made bruschetta for an Sorry, appetizer. Seven. Specials. Features. <laughs> we are told to use features as our descriptive word for what we have available that is not on the menu. I feel like I'm going to see a movie. What restaurant says features? Who does that? So do you have any features? Yes, our features this evening, elk medallion served over a grilled portobello mushroom cap. Let's go for the uh, elk feature. OK. All right. Uh, what else? The catch of the day, we are offering a trio of our Ohio-raised bluegill. We have perch and wow. largemouth bass. Let's go for that. Okay. Local. Love it. Um, scallops on crude. OK. For the vegetarian ravioli primavera. Onion soup, please. OK. Uh, oyster Rockefeller. Porcini scallops, I've got to go for. OK. Is that a quesadilla? It is a quesadilla. <laughs> It's not fine dining or bistro. Well, let's go a little bit Mexican, shall we? I've okay. Never had an elk quesadilla. Lots of elk, but not quesadilla. Is that a typo error? That is the price. New York Strip, 26. Mm -hmm. Philly Mignon, 29. Yes. They must be some of the most expensive prices locally, right? Correct, yes. Wow. Um, I think we're done, darling. Nice to meet you. You as well. The good news is, at least it's farm to table, so I've got something to cling on to. All right, he wants a French onion soup. Do his quesadilla, start getting that prep. We do things with passion, with integrity. I need 10 raviolis, please. The food here at the bistro is the freshest, hands down. How are you, sir? That is on the badge. Bill. Yes. I know your name now. You can take it off. Thank you. Excellent. Come on over. Uh, good to meet you. Hello, you as well. It's a pleasure. Likewise. What's the first thing wrong with this place? Uh, well, we make no effort whatsoever to market to the locals. Really? Um, apparently, um, wow. yes. I, I think Joe believes the restaurant's a little above the local area. Seriously? A, I think that's probably a problem. I thought it was pricey, but I mean, 16,000 locals on your doorstep. Why would you ignore them? Arrogance. Wow. So, how'd you rate it in terms of the food on a scale of 1 to 10? 5. Bill. You're scaring me. Can I meet all the staff with the badges? I want to get rid of those bloody things. Let's call a meeting with the badges. Say hello and give me your badge. Let's go. Yeah. Turn your badge in. You're a wanted man. Down. Right, thank Excellent. You. Thank you. you Next. Go. First name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Bex. Excellent. Madam. Wonderful. Come hear you. Hello. Name tag. Down. Fire's off. Badges are down. Excellent. Would this be my French onion? Yes, ma'am. I can hear him now. Is the onion soup supposed to be so goddamn bloody? <laughs> All right, so we have the French onion soup to start you off. Thank you, my darling. Uh, who made the soup? Joe makes the soup. Joe, wow. Thank you. The cheese is barely melted. Jeez. Normally should be a little more packed with onions. There's so much fat on top of it. Greasy. This is going to GR. Amy's up. Oh, what is that? Oysters Rockefeller. OK, great. Can I take um, that? Thanks, darling. Yeah, it was really greasy on top. OK, I'll greasy let them know. Greasy watery and um, short of cheese and onions. OK. Um, what happened here? That is a parsley infused oil. And he squirts that on top? Around the rim. Jesus. Right. I'll check on you in a moment. Thanks, darling. Wow. Joe, Chef Ramsey said that it was greasy, it had a lack of onions, and not enough cheese. Not enough cheese? Not enough cheese. Hmm. Let me go talk to this guy. <laughs> Chef, would you like us to prepare another French onion? Joe, it takes me about four hours to caramelize the onions. I'd like to move on. Want to move? Okay, and, sure. And I'd like sure. to continue tasting. Sure. And... Okay, let's do that then. Have yeah, you had an opportunity to taste uh, yeah, the oysters uh, Rockefeller? What, what's the, is that a bechamel on top? What is that on there? What have we put there? It's the hollandaise. Hollandaise, because it's all broken, but I had to spit that out because it's it's bitter. That normally comes when oysters are frozen. 
Mm -hmm. What's the oil around the outside that's like? We just put a, a little bit of our olive oil. Right. It was just more of a garnish that should so not have been. Can, can, you, can you see yeah, my rim? Yeah. But I don't see anything on the oysters. Right. Well, I got it in there, in there, in there. <laughs> well, we're not dousing the plate in oil. I'm not here to argue. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I can make you another one of these if you oh, want to no. just keep on moving. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's move. Let's keep Let's moving. moving. Let's keep moving. I got keep you. Moving. OK, we'll do, I'll take these away. Excellent. When it comes to Chef Ramsay, I'm not intimidated because I know a lot of chefs. I've cooked and been all around. Oyster Rockefellers with Tara. That's funny, man. Oh, we have a look. Please, put that down. That looks, oh, why is it on a rack? Oh, this is just so we can show our. Who makes the cake? They come from Cleveland. And this is like a procession of funeral <laughs> for the cake. Walk past the girl and throw some flowers at it as you walk past. Walk past. Okay. Ready? This is what you do when people are dead. Do you want me to sing yeah. too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop that long rest of the cake. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Bum, bum, ba -dum. <laughs> what you should be doing is look, you should have that. Turn around. You carry the front of the procession. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Cap, okay. <laughs> right, you, you got, you, you got it from here. In we go, in we go, in we go. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> what in the bloody hell of putting carrots on it? Uh, a puff pastry. Why would you do that? <laughs> this would be your scallop on croute. Thank you, Diane. Are these uh, the? Local carrots. Micro carrots. Oh, micro carrots. Yeah. From chefs. From the local farm. Do you not think you should let it grow a bit? Well, I don't think they're there to, 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 to be really eaten. They're more oh, for a garnish. A, oh. That's a garnish. Oh, so I'm, I'm, Just to add some color. OK. But I would like to explain what we're spending on micro carrots. Yeah. Can we go through this after? Whatever you no. want to do. You you are here right. as our guest. Can I give those back to you? Joe? I don't personally want them myself, but you can take them back to the kitchen. Oh, no, I personally didn't want them. Thank you, You're Amy. I have staff here that'll take care of that. You don't hand me raw food in my dining room. Man, that fucking pissed me off, man. We don't need them to bust our balls over if there's little petite carrots that go there. Those same carrots go to the White House. Those same carrots go to the Five Seasons. They go global, OK? Who would care if a fucking garnish, micro garnish carrot was on as a garnish? You're going to hand the owner the little petite carrots? Because he knows. He's in the wrong place. Now that Chef Ramsay is beginning to question the cuisine, can I give those back to you? Joe is beginning to show his true colors. I don't personally want them. Scallop and croutes. Uh, sorry, Amy. These things are, they're, they're like rubber bullets. I mean, it's so firm. And look at this, the pastry's raw. That is a common complaint. Gooey, slimy, gross. Let me take uh, this right out of will your you way. Show that to him. I sure will. Yeah, thank you, my darling. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow, I'm crude my ass. <laughs> <clears throat> Joseph, firm, chewy, rubber bullets. Disgusting. He, apparently, there's nothing that he likes. Okay, yeah, just set it down. We said we'd talk about it at the end. Okay. So, puff pastry. Is about as flaky as you can fucking get right here. Well, it still looks a little doughy to me. Wow. Maybe the elk quesadilla. Ah, uh, is that the, uh... The queso cheese. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. My god. It's, like, chewy, tough. And if there's one thing that should never go in a quesadilla, it's elk. I got one thing to say to this case of dear. Adios. Wow. The vegetarian ravioli. Oh, jeez. I spotted some more of that oil again. Yes. Oh, jeez. It is the dish I least like serving. Wow. Um, thanks, Danny. You're welcome. Thanks, Ash. Have a look at it. It's gross. 
Wow, I mean, that is a joke. I mean, it's ice cold. Let's get one thing right. Farm to table is not. Farm to garbage can is disgusting. Amy, will you show him that? It's ice cold. I certainly yeah. will. Thanks, Sally. So these are ice cold. They were hot when they went out. It took me 10 seconds to get from here to I there. I guess okay. we could cook them so they're totally piping hot. I think they should be. Not cold. Yeah, that's how we do it, man. Right on. Wow, catch of the day. Catch of the day. Oh, geez. We have the sea bass, mm -hmm. the perch, and the bluegill. Uh, one thing I did need to ask you, uh, temperature preference for your elk medallions. I'd like to go mid-rare, please. All right. Thank you, Madalia. You're welcome. The fish is dry, almost like it's been freezer burnt. And that one there, grease. Put your fork in there. It's just full of grease. Amy, rescue me. Just rubbery. And this one here, the perch, you go there, it's just full of grease. Very greasy. I don't know why you do a trio all the same with the same bread. I agree. I, just, I, I just, agree. But the biggest disappointment is nothing tastes fresh. A catch of the day means fresh. But to me, they it all tastes frozen. OK. Thanks, darling. OK. Tom, it all tastes frozen. It does not taste fresh at all. Hey, Amy, this, set that down right now. Take this out. OK. This food's got to get out. Right. What, what, what's wrong? <laughs> they said it all tastes frozen. And it should have been done in different breadcrumbs. This is how they fucking do it in Ohio. If you did it any other way, they wouldn't eat it in Ohio. Wow. Oh. Please. Oak medallions on a grilled portobello mushroom. Wow. And, oh, these are not for eating. Thank you, Madame. You're welcome. It's tough as old boots. This is incredible. Would you, would you mind? I would not. So, yeah, please. That is dreadful. I can't even chew it. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's not edible. Would you like to know how much we charge for that? This one? $35. $35? Yes, Chef. Wow. Will you ask him to taste that? OK. I'll be back. Thank you. Wow. He would like you to taste the elk. Very tough, chewy, the main item in the dish. He's dead wrong. That's aged elk. Elk is going to have a bite. It's going to have a chew. It's characteristic of it. It's never going to change. That is a tender piece of elk. Chef Ramsay does not know the bite of an elk, and I would like to go to his restaurant where he has elk. That fucking elk is tender. It's delicious. What I'm trying to accomplish is from farm to fork. This is how these items eat. I was surprised that he didn't get that. I'm going to challenge him. I'm going to say, you know what? At my expense, I'm going to go to your fucking restaurant. And you make me elk, and you show me how to make it. Joe said you are dead wrong. Dead wrong? Dead wrong. He had two pieces. He said, and I quote, that is a tender piece of elk. Wow. If you honestly thought that was tender, they can eat my running shoes, you know that. Uh, thanks for all your uh, insight. OK. Tell everyone to get ready for dinner. I'll okay. be back. OK. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, darling. And I'll talk to Joe after, yeah? OK. I'm going out for some fresh air. OK, In I'll fact, let I'm him going know. out. Uh, is it, where is Is there a local cafe nearby or? Uh, berries up. Berries. Yep. That's it. The dinky. I've heard of berries. See you. I saw that on Main Street. Thank you, darling. Correct. Wow. Chef Ramsay said he is going to get something to eat, get some air, and he will be back for dinner. I wonder where he's going to go get something to eat that's so great. <laughs> I'm going to go to a restaurant to get some food. You motherfucker. He's going to leave and go get something to eat? Good luck. Go find something better. Chef Ramsay has returned to Mill Street Bistro after a walk around town and a quick bite. Where's uh, Joe? He is ready to give his verdict on the food to Joe, and the staff couldn't be more excited to witness it. I just want to talk about lunch. Yeah. It's going to be entertaining. Your thoughts on my lunch? My thoughts on, yeah. your, on your lunch? Yeah, an insight, yeah. And I've never had anybody in my career critique my items 
that told me every one of them was a piece of shit, and he had to go down the street to eat. Wow. That was uncalled for. Oh, my God. Can I just give you an insight to my life? Sure, since you've asked me, now you can go ahead. That's very kind of you. I wasn't impressed with anything. I didn't take second or third mouth from any dish. Let's start off with the scallops on croute. The pastry was raw. Rubbery scallops, bland. OK. Next course, oyster Rockefeller. Yeah, oyster disaster. <laughs> OK. Catch the day. Out of those three fish, which one was fresh? He's not going to answer me. He'll just give me BS. How many of those catch the day? You. you think your fish is fresh? Does that fucking say fresh fish? On the board, it says fresh catch of the day. What does catch of the day mean? Fresh fish. Catch of the frozen freezer? We have fresh fish. No, we don't. No, we do not. <laughs> well, Lake Erie perch was fresh. They were all IQF frozen. IQF, Individually, sorry. quickly frozen. Right. When did that come off the boat? Four days ago. So you haven't got any in your freezer? Pardon? You haven't got any in your freezer? Fresh fish? Have you got it in your freezer? Yeah. Thank you. What does catch of the day mean, Joe? It means what is fresh local to the region at the time. Not frozen. You're trying to pull the wall over your customer's eyes. If it's not fresh, don't call it fresh. Catch of the day. Mm -hmm. Go to the next thing. We, we, we got said, it. You're not answering a straight question with a straight answer, and you're deflecting it. No, I'm not deflecting everything. I'm frozen telling you. Frozen fish, that's, that's frozen still... oysters. You're deflecting everything. You've Ravioli. made your point. Next course, elk quesadilla. Dry, rubbery, disgusting elk okay. that should go nowhere near a quesadilla. I'm OK with that. What were you thinking putting that in a quesadilla? What was I thinking? Yeah, just. Yeah, I got the right. balls to make what I feel that might work. My next course, elk medallions. There was nothing wrong with that elk. Chewy. Bland, raw in the middle. You wanted a medium rare. Oh, paying $35 for it, I thought I deserved that. Okay. Excuse me, so if I got the medium, would they have tasted better? They would have been more consistently cooked. Oh. I have been eating elk for 30 years. Do you have it on your menu? Seasonally. You explained to me what the game season sure. is. So it's when okay. game. Okay. Is that its absolute best? This is back the, the, in uh, the, back the, in Scotland. The, no, or, or no, this, no, no, this is where? Uh, New York. New York. Yeah, New York. Let me tell you something. You're not a chef. Stop pretending to be one. Did I tell you I was a chef? You told me you trained with the best chefs in Europe. I did fucking tell you that. I am self-taught by old school Europeans, master chefs that had a liking to me. Who is the chef here? It's my kitchen. I'm the chef. You just told me you're not. But now you are. I'm not a certified chef like No, I know yourself. that. But who cooks? I do. Right. So you're the head chef. You write the menus. You dictate the special features. Correct. Let me tell you something. You're not a fine dining bistro. You're a small man with a fake bistro. You're shooting way above your station. You've totally misjudged your market. Because all these pretentious ideas that you think are going to work are screwed. What are you referring well, to? Here we go. Okay, well, make it easy for you. Yeah, I, know I you're speak not English, too. OK. okay. Store-bought chocolate cake, garnished with fake flowers. You don't even cook. You just prance around behind the line, throwing raw bits of carrots on top of raw pastry. I've never come across a bistro anywhere in the world. In the world? Data. In the world. In the world? We'll Dude, research that. You are so fucking arrogant, you don't even listen to your customers, let alone your staff. You have a gifted young group of servers that told me more problems and issues in the first mm -hmm. 20 minutes of meeting them than you have done all fucking day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's funny. Yeah. From a fake fireplace to fake garnish, yeah, you want me to blow fucking smoke up your phony ass. I don't want you to blow smoke up my phony ass. Wow. It was petite micro carrots that well, was It's not just about the carrots. Carrots is just a fucking example of 20 things that have gone wrong. You're busting I'm... my balls. Because you're in fucking denial. You want me to come in and change your carrots and make some fresh fucking chocolate cake for you? Yeah. I'm lost for words. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. 
Do you know what we could do for me? Impress me with your dinner service. Show me how you function. Chef. You want to see what comes back? Our elk does not come back. I'm deeply sorry your feelings are hurt. My fucking feelings ain't hurt. Oh. You well, can't hurt my feelings. You're ignoring my advice. No, I'm not. And you're going up against me. No, I'm not yes, ignoring you are. your advice. I feel like Christmas has come early. Defensive, ignorant, and incomplete and guess denial. What? If I'm all that, you're my twin. What? Yeah, because I've been called you here many a times. So let's get over to bullshit. I can cook, Joe. When you have the arrogance to stand in front of me and charge your locals $35 fucking dollars for entrees that are inedible, have a look at yourself, man. People seem to enjoy it. Bullshit. Bullshit. That didn't go so well. After clashing with Chef Ramsay over the quality of his food, owner Joe is truly not understanding Gordon's point of view. I know more about fucking elk and buffalo and beef than he'll ever know. Gordon Ramsay didn't get it. He's saying that I'm shortchanging people and that that was fraud. Come on, let's cook our rotten fucking food that uh, that he wouldn't have if we was in the county jail. Give me a fucking break, Chef Ramsay. Well, he just slammed my restaurant like it's never been. He does not know what I know about lake fish. He does not know what I know about buffalo. And I'm supposed to take this, that my food is garbage and I'm a fraud? I don't give a shit what he says. How many times did you have elk come back since you've been here, Bex? Jen? Kaylee? Bill? Speak up. I think every one of it, yes, you need to get your shit together. That's what this is about. We got customers out here. So I, I appreciate what you're doing. I honestly appreciate each and every one of you what you're doing, OK? Well, let's get to dinner service. Right this way, folks. My apologies of how much you heard. This is some of the finest fucking elk you can get. Or Chef Ramsay called it garbage, the worst shit in the world. We're supposed to wait to serve it when the grass is a certain height back over in Scotland. My name's Bill. I'll be taking care of you tonight. I'll have the beef chops. All right. I'll have the New York strip medium. Medium? Huh, I'm gonna check uh, cream of asparagus. Is it pure vegetarian? Listen, leave the kitchen. Go over the other side. Joe gets mad if anybody's saying anybody anything to the kitchen. You know, he says, you need to be in there. You need to be quick. You need to respond to get the fuck out of the kitchen. We went over this in the beginning of the shift. So, it's that for quiet? You're not allowed to talk? Uh, now, what does a good quiet mean? Neighbors complaining? <laughs> no, it's supposed to be any unnecessary chatter in the kitchen. So no chatter? Right. So how do you communicate? <laughs> Who put that up there? I put that up. So we got a job to do. We're trying to focus, mediocre as we are. People just said, you know, they want to talk about something, just take it out there. You okay? Oh. Yeah, you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Jesus Christ, don't shout. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's talk. You okay? No, we can't talk, but you okay? Yeah, yeah thank you. Let me know. Give me a sign. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got a porcini scallop, a perch, a pork chop, and a strip. Oh, uh, well, that might be my chicken verdicchio, then. It's like you're guessing now. What table number is this? You don't have to ask how long? Yeah, he has not said what table it's coming up. No. OK, let's get these out. Boom, 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 and we should be OK after that. Even though there are very few words exchanged between the front of house and the kitchen, Stay to work. food is still being delivered at a reasonable pace. Porcini scallops. Unfortunately, the food is missing the mark with many of the customers. It's kind of gross. It just doesn't taste good. The sauce is potent. Let me get it out of your way. Is there something else we could get for you? No. Sorry about that. This was sent back. She said it doesn't taste good. OK. What's wrong with it? She did not like it. She said like it doesn't taste right. 
It's strong. Huh? It's strong, huh? It's very strong. Come and taste. But I think what she did is she got a bite of rosemary. Oh, God, Joe. Is she complaining she's got a branch of rosemary in her teeth? No, she's not. I think it's overpowering. The beer doesn't work and it's too strong. He didn't mention anything about rosemary. Come on. Man. Hey, we're past that. What well, then? Mean, cook. OK, cook then. Fuck me. Try to cook then. Passion. Passion fruit, mate. That's the closest you'll get to passion. You got a pebble in your ravioli. Like a rock. Yeah. An actual rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a rock. I will take this. What is that? This was in my lady's ravioli. What is it? Like a rock. Wow. Huh? Wow. Joe, ladies, water in ravioli. Like a rock in there. What table number, please, Amy? 31. It's like a stone. I've never seen it. My God. That doesn't happen here, but it happened now. Oh, man. All right, what, what else can we fuck up here? He is being so critical and so brutal. Tommy, we're going to make all the bad food that we make for everybody. Wow. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, hey. That's it. I can't do anymore. I could cook, let me tell you, but ain't gonna do this. It's dinner service at Mill Street Bistro. And in spite of multiple dishes being returned to the kitchen. Joe, ladies, bought in ravioli. Like a rock in there. All right, what, what else can we fuck up here? Joe remains in denial. Tommy, we're gonna make all the bad food that we make for everybody. Oh my God, that chef, my ass. I don't care. Hello? Ah, Teresa, how are you? As part of his research, Chef Ramsay had reached out to a former employee, and her return phone call could not have happened at a better time. Thanks so much for coming down. Do you good? It's nice to meet you. Likewise. Mwah. Good to see you too. I have just some things I wanted to share with you and tell you. Let's go stand over here. Wow, wow, wow. Um, take me from the start, will you, please? Give me some background. You quit recently. How long ago? A month ago. I was hired for Garmage and Prep. And then what happened? I ended up being garmage prep, dishes, cleaning. I did my own prep list. We have no head chef. So I'm in there busting my ass. He has to have someone always to put his frustrations onto, scapegoat. And so he had only me to do it. And I would come in every day, and it was just, this is wrong, that's wrong. And telling me how horrible you know, I was being, pretty much. And I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm doing much better now. I'm Good. not crying when I go home. I'm not stressing out before I go to work. The reason I quit. I have too much pride. You're right. No. It took some pictures. This is the stuff that was here. That's meat in a baggie. What's it doing in a bag? It's blood. It's to be served. To be served? That's the chef garden vegetables. Wow. That's the black girl pork chops. Oh my god, what is it with this guy? They preach his farm to table. All I've seen is frozen to table. The steaks he buys, he goes to a store and buys the tenderloins and stuff and he cuts them up. Why is he pretending? Why is he playing at it? Why is he kidding himself on, trying to pull the wool over the customer's eyes? He just, it's a cheapskate. He wants to make money. The locals in this area, he thinks he's... Calls them hillbillies. Seriously. Dreadful. He needs to know that what he's doing is wrong. He needs to get his stuff together in there. I don't see how you're going to do it. <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate you coming down. Yes, and it was nice to I meet you. Likewise. All right, thank you. On the heels of getting more disturbing information from an insider, Chef Ramsay knows he needs to do a deeper investigation, and it begins in the storage room. Ah, my God. Half frozen, blood stains, sat. Well, it's not even frozen, it's half soft, half frozen. Where's that from? No date. Wow, what a mess. My gosh, frozen food that's been frozen since 2009, three years ago, used by 2010. Frozen blue cheese. Why would you freeze blue cheese? Farm the table. It's not. What is that? It's like frozen astroturf. What is that? Ah, bingo. There they are, my little Rockefellers, full of water. Wow. Lesson number one, never ever freeze an oyster. The worst thing you can ever do to it. Wow. Frozen shrimp from farm to freezer to defrost. Shrimp of the day. 
He's showing off his farm to table, blowing smoke up my ass about how fresh everything is. And look, a freezer full of frozen oysters, mussels, to frozen cheeses. Why would you put blue cheese in a freezer? Why? Why, why, why? Why would you freeze any oyster? Wow. What a fake. I need two tips on. Gotcha, gotcha. Joe, I get upset when I see fakery from a frozen ravioli, a frozen perch, frozen oysters, and when you deny it, that makes me mad. We'll just talk you about that. Yeah, because you're, 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 you're making up stories. I'm, I'm not making up yes, stories. Yes, you are. That's how fucking no. deluded you are. No, I'm not deluded. We have fresh stuff, OK? I'm struggling here okay. to stay in this building right now. I swear to God. Gordon, I got to cook right now. Yeah, I was okay. in I wish you would. I'm standing here watching a dead man walking. Joe, I need a regular French onion soup. Onion soup. All right, the onion soup's ready. Are they raw onions in there? What's that? Did you put raw onions in there? I didn't know. Why are we doing this to each other? I don't. Is this a wind up? Look at me, putting raw onions in a soup. I don't know if you're just fucking around. I'm, I'm, I'm lost, Joe. Why are you doing this? Well, you, you said earlier that it needed more onions, OK? We responded by putting the onions in there so they had more of a bite to it. It's raw. What's the matter with you? We send that out there, it's going to come straight back. What do you want to hear? That I take it off, Joe. Take the menu off the menu. 86 it. Save whatever little reputation you got left. Man! Surely you got a bit more respect than that. I'm trying to reason with you, Joe. I get it. Fine. I get it. Fine. But I am not here to show an idiot you can't put fucking raw onions in an onion suit. I can't teach you that. That's called common sense. That in your tiny mind is not common. Pardon? Come here, you. Should we put raw onions in a caramelized onion soup? Tell him! No. Thank you. You've got talented staff to tell you that. Ask your chef. It's like you're doing it to me on purpose. His verbal bullshit is just a bunch of bullshit. But his physical stance in your way is ridiculous. So what he needs to do is get out of the kitchen. We can talk about it yeah, at some other now. time. We're busy. Joe, do you want me out of here? Tell me the truth. If you want me out of here, I'm going to leave. <clears throat> And now, the dramatic conclusion of Mill Street Bistro. I'm struggling here to stay in this building right now. I swear to God. Gordon, I got to cook right now. Yeah, I was okay. in I wish you would. Joe, I need a regular French onion soup. Onion soup. All right, the onion soup's ready. Are they raw onions in there? What's that? Did you put raw onions in there? I didn't know. Why are we doing this to each other? I don't Is this know. a wind up? Look at me. Putting raw onions in a soup. I don't know if you're just fucking around. I'm, I'm, I'm lost, Joe. Why are you doing this? You said earlier that it needed more onions. We responded by putting the onions in there so they had more of a bite to it. It's raw. What's the matter with you? We send that out there, it's going to come straight back. What do you want to hear? That I take it off, Joe. Take the menu off the menu. 86 it. Save whatever little reputation you got left. Man! Surely you got a bit more respect than that. I'm trying to reason with you, Joe. I get it. Fine. I get it. Fine. But I am not here to show an idiot you can't put raw onions in an onion soup. I can't teach you that. That's called common sense. That in your tiny mind is not common. Come here, you. Should we put raw onions in a caramelized onion soup? Tell him! No. Thank you. You've got talented staff to tell you that. Ask your chef. It's like you're doing it to me on purpose. Joe, do you want me out of here? Tell me the truth. If you want me out of here, I'm going to leave. I don't want you out of here. So why are you fucking around like this? I'm not fucking around like that. You want a battle? No, no, no. no. Okay. When I right. told you but the I constructive mean... criticism, you got incredibly upset, and you wanted a Band-Aid. You need surgery. Everything I said today, you went up against. Well, you said it in a way 
doubt anybody would challenge you. What? That's the way you said it. You're a dictator, that's, that's, Joe. That, that, Your staff can't talk to you. There's not one person in this building that you pay that will ever criticize you, because you'll cut them down big time. <laughs> You're awesome. Oh, Joe. Do you usually go to restaurants and, and rip them apart like that? That's what's pissing me off. Joe, it's not working. You've built up this level of fucking fine dining pretentiousness that is not biting with the locals. You are so far removed of what a bistro should be. OK, so you don't want to hear what our elk sales are and how many people come back for it and, and everything else. You, I, you know, No. See, see, there you go. No, yeah, but there you're you trying. Go. The elk, the elk was inedible. Inedible. But it's not just the elk, though, Joe. Do you understand? I've got bigger and more important things to focus on than elk. I've got to start off at the bottom. And right now, you won't listen. And that's what's making my life a fucking nightmare. But, but when you, you sit there and you, and, and you went off about every fucking thing in there, you're being defensive. Of everybody. Well, I wasn't defensive. I was respectful to you until you went off you on it. Not. I'm here to help you. Then fucking help me. Well, then stop being in fucking denial. You're Word. so tight and so bound up with the ambition, you're not seeing the reality or the heart of the problem. I agree. I agree with that statement. That statement I agree with, that I am so bound up, that I'm not seeing. I agree with that. But don't tell me that I'm not doing it because I'm fucking lazy. I want people to come in here and say, Man, Joe, you're really doing something. Good, but it's not working currently, Joe. Right, I agree. But you're not telling yourself enough of it because your staff are shit scared to tell you. I am telling myself it, but we're in this group. I got blinders on, but I do want to make it better. I want this restaurant to be a quality restaurant for everybody, not just Joe Nagy, for these people in here that stuck with me and did put up with my personality. That's what I'm asking you, man. Help me, I'm asking. That's the most sincere and the most honest I've heard since I've been here. Shit day. Tomorrow, we start a fresh day. I'm and willing to do that, Chef. We draw I'm a line in the sand. Let's draw a line in the sand. Good night. Good night. With Joe finally admitting to Chef Ramsay that he has lost sight of some of the problems. Take a seat. I want you to watch something. Chef Ramsay begins the day with a plan to show this owner some of the issues he doesn't even realize he has. Tough day yesterday. That was a, uh, a hard one. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to you guys without Joe around because I need to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, and I'm not talking about Skinny the Goat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who's going to start? There's no formalities here. This is wide open. You shouldn't be scared of Joe. Because <laughs> I've got your back. Help me. Amy. I think Joe is at fault for the lack of business. <laughs> because the way he berates the staff in front of the customers, uh, it turns people off and turns yeah. people away. He needs to control his temper. He was cussing at me right here in front of the door and then dragged me into the kitchen and started screaming at me even louder. So I might as well have been sitting right out here. And I mean, everybody witnessed it. And my table was so disgusted that they just wanted their check to leave. And they left me a note you know, telling me to keep my chin up and that I did a great job and everything I was supposed to do. And I had left that note to Joe, and he would tell me, don't let that get to your head when people tell you you're doing great, because there's always mistakes being made. It was to the point where I ended up having to go into the back because I started crying. And I didn't, you know, I just didn't want to be, like, I don't know. I mean, and we have Joe constantly saying, well, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. We all get flustered and, you know. And I. I let it get to me. Yeah. Kaylee, that's terrible. It is. 
moving forward. Why does he think his food is good? That's my main thing, because there's stuff that's been questionable, and he's like, oh, that's that's OK, you know, that's OK, we can serve that. And I just wanted to say, no, we can't serve that. But in his mind, it's OK. How do you rate the food out of 10? Two of being generous. He loves to hear the praise, but he will certainly go up against anybody that has anything negative to say. The guy that was sitting there across from you while you were having lunch, he said he would send it back, but he doesn't want to listen to Joe yell at him. If they see Joe's vehicle outside, they'll go somewhere else because they don't want to be bothered at their table. He'll talk and talk and talk to a table the entire time they're here about himself. Joe feels that this is his house, and these are his dining guests, and they want to hear all about him. Which is nothing worse when you're trying to eat and dinner. And then we're told to give him a minute. When it's our table, we're trying to service them and trying to do what we are, our job, and then we get yelled at and ridiculed in front of them. Wow. He yelled at me saying, when I am with the table, we are in a meeting. Seriously? Rebecca, what's he holding a meeting over? What's he talking about? Himself. <laughs> himself. Himself. How do you get through to Joe? How do you get the message across to him? We don't. We get told what to do. <laughs> we have meetings, meetings yeah. all the time. But it's usually him telling us what we've right. done Directing wrong us and... to what we should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. We've all been ridiculed. We've all been belittled. We've all been screamed at and cussed at, and we're doing everything wrong. It, it's hard. It's hard, because we want to see this restaurant sure. succeed. But there's mm -hmm. just times when you can't take it, the stress. I sure. mean. How many of you thought about quitting at any one time? All I ever want to tell Joe is just to back off, not to ridicule every single thing. We're a lot more productive if we don't have all the extra chaos. And stop blaming us for his inadequacies. You screwed up. I Quit yelling at me. Night. Joe doesn't want to take responsibility. He for would tell himself. me there's so always he's my dad to wanted to choke Joe out due to the not way fair. he was talking. Yeah, he needs to back yeah. off. It's not right. In order to get through to Joe, we've all been screamed at and cussed at. Wow. Chef Ramsay has asked the staff to talk about some of the problems at Mill Street Bistro. My dad wanted to choke Joe out. What? Due to the way he was talking to me. And most of them point the finger at the owner. He needs to back off. Oh, my God. Well, I do have a confession to make. Joe has been listening. I hope that he takes it well. I hope he understands the negativity he's brought on your shoulders. I'll be back in a second. Don't move. Here we go. Oh, God. I'm scared. Well, got to go find a new job. Follow me. Guys? I was sitting upstairs listening, and I got to say that what has happened here, ultimately, is my responsibility and my fault. I don't think that I'm a bad person in heart, but I'm tough, maybe a little bit too tough for this business. I need to soften up. We've got a lot of work. A lot of things need to change. And if that means that I need to change, and you need to change, and we all need to change, we're going to do it. Joe immediately went to, we need to change. He cannot take responsibility for his own actions. This is not going to work unless you are 100% behind changing. Because everything that this restaurant stands for today is you, yet it's been propped up by your team. Are you 100% committed to change? I'm 100% committed to change whatever needs to be changed to make this restaurant to find its potential. Then so am I, OK? Do I think that he took it all in? No. Do I think he's going to change? No. Do I think this is even going to help at all? No. One second. With Joe now seemingly ready to change, Chef Ramsay is ready to illustrate how Joe's overpriced menu is alienating the locals in this small town. One of the things I've heard over and over again is that your place is not inviting enough for your average local. Too pretentious and too expensive. It's way out of their comfort zone. If a young couple want to come in here to eat, they're going to walk out of here spending minimum $100. That is a lot of money, yeah? It is. Yes, a lot of money. They could spend $100 here and put it in that cash register, or they could go 
to a local grocery store and get this. Let's just have a look at mm, Delicious ribeye. Choice. Amazing corn. Wow. Fresh tomatoes, yeah? And some salads, some cheddar, pork chops, potatoes. Ooh, some ground. I mean, that's a lot of food, right? That all came to $89.73. Oh, sorry. Look, okay. bottle of wine as well. <laughs> That's why I spent my last $11 on. Just a little bottle of wine. What I'm trying to say is for $89.73, they've got minimum five good evenings in with some bloody good food. That's what you're going up against. Why would you come out? It's a very good question. Joe, people today want value. And when you pitch, that you're the most expensive restaurant. Nobody can touch you. You've already shot yourself in the foot. Agreed. We're expensive. We're too expensive. Chef's correct. It was a, a point well taken, and I'm always willing to learn more. Time to move forward, and I mean move forward in a big way. We're going to cook some specials. It's going to go on tonight's menu, and it's a small step in the right direction. OK? When was the last time you had a burger on the menu? We've never. Never. And as a bistro, yeah. Mm -hmm. why would you not have a burger on the regular menu? Chef, when I did talk to the staff, they didn't want a $10 burger. They don't want to sell it. Not the staff. Right, but, but that they were... Customers. Right. So the staff didn't want a $10 they burger. Right, they felt that, like, you know, Is this for you guys? No, no. Come with me. OK. You, cook my burgers. Gotcha. Uh, where's the team? Uh, right, I asked Joe, when was the last time we had a burger on the menu? He said, the staff don't want to sell a $10 burger. Is that right? No. 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 You're not anti-selling a burger? No. Every time I smell BS, I'm going to go for you. Let's go. Can I interject something? I'm busy. After that, toast the buns? Yeah? Yep. Nice. What's that? What's uh, that? Looks like walleye. It's exactly that. Congratulations. By the way, it's fresh. We, we serve fresh walleye. Uh-huh. So when you knew I was coming here, you gave me a trio of frozen fish of the day. Why wouldn't you get me the freshest local number one fish? Uh, you're, you're right, Jeff. This is local to the area. We should serve it more. Local to the area. It's the number one already available fish. I hate to say it, but Chef Ramsay is correct. With the walleye, I want to serve your little corn cake. Cheerful, right? Easy to do, yeah? Green beans, seasoned with some fresh chives. Give that little bit of freshness to it. If you're going to use herbs, then cook with the herbs. Don't garnish with the herbs. Don't garnish. No, cook with them. We're a bistro. Unintimidating, exciting right. food, served at cheap prices with some real good flavor, right? That's the secret of a bistro. The burgers. How to present a burger. We'll start off with a strong base, some lettuce to protect the bun. That's it. From there. Caramelized onions. So it's a rich mm -hmm. roasted onion with aged balsamic vinegar. How long for the burgers, please? Good. Down, please. Thank you. Nice. Protect. And protect. From there, touch more lettuce. And then I've got a sort of Thousand Island special sauce to give that sort of zesty, mm -hmm. yeah, hot. And that's to the cheese, yeah? Toasted bun. I can look at my burger and identify what I'm eating. See what I mean? Yes. Through there. A nice handful of fries on the burger. Two specials. Let's go. So, tonight's specials. Local, fresh, delicious walleye. And there we have a classic burger. Dig in. It looks awesome, chef. How appetizing do those burgers look? Delicious. I'm not big on burgers. But I'm going to give him his accolades. That was a very good example of how we need to recreate the bistro. Oh, my goodness. Is that not amazing? Chef Ramsay is using tonight's dinner service to test the new specials. He is hoping to confirm what he believes is the new direction for Mill Street Bistro. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to talk. <laughs> Can 
Good evening. How are we doing tonight? Good. I will take you to your table. I'd like to introduce tonight's specials. We have the burger, and we also have our walleye. I want to get the burger. Not the walleye. OK, here we go. All right, so we got a bistro burger beating well, and a catch, and another bistro medium. You got that? Got the onions, everything on there. What's that? Got the onions on the bottom. So this goes on top of that. Lettuce, onions, burger, lettuce, sauce. Pardon me? Lettuce, onions, burger. Lettuce, sauce, bun top. Big. Touch of sauce. Pardon? Lettuce, onions, burger, lettuce, sauce. Can you just reiterate how to yeah, build I'll, this with I'll, me? I'll build build again. Show me again yeah, one more time. Absolutely, definitely. Yeah, first, lettuce, that's it, on the bottom. White. Onion jam, remember? Touch onion jam on there. Burger on top. Okay. That's it, lettuce and sauce. What table number? Uh, this is going to be 24. Oh, get watch, 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 watch. Do you watch. Have them? With Chef Ramsay's guidance, the kitchen manages to get the burgers and other entrees ready for the customers. You both have the walleye? It's really good. I really like this. Go. Next after that, Joe, what is it? Go. What tick is that? Burger. Walleye, where was that going? That is table 50. 50, thank you. Who's 50, please? Wait, my appetizer haven't went out yet. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, come on, guys. My entrees were up before my appetizer was up because Joe stabbed the ticket without serving my appetizers. Joe, two seconds, please. Joe, Joe, what are we doing? Why do we sell that, then, if we haven't sent the appetizer? Look at Joe, please. Joe. Joe, I'm talking to you. Joe. No answer. Nobody's talking, no one's saying anything. I'm hoping one of these are mine for 53. What are we waiting on that table, Amy? Uh, this fish is not going with this. this. None of these fishes are going with this ticket. Guys, none of these fishes are going with the ticket you just sent. There is just absolutely no communication coming out of that kitchen. And Joe is just completely shutting down. Joe! What do you want me to do? You want me to stop? Over here, no, no, not we're, stop, we're, but what talk. Do do? I'd like you to step up and yeah, man up a little bit. Man up, we're this trying to get fish this here. What's it, it for? It is for this table. Tommy's doing the saute. Talk He's to the saute him there. right here. Talk Tommy, to your staff. Talk to me. You talk to me. Where's the ticket yeah. for this? You stick your fucking sign up there saying quiet. Don't say anything. Where's the ticket for Help this? Help your servers. I just gave the servers a ticket. So for this that here. table, correct. Can we complete this table, though? Yeah, he's on that side. Help him, there. man. I'm, I'm helping him. I got the other You know what? You're screwing him. All right. The kitchen is chaotic when Joe is in it. Tom can't work. Ugh. Nobody can work. It's just insane. This is carnage. It is. We haven't got our entrees yet. How long have those young guests been waiting for that burger? The order went in right around 6 o'clock. An hour and a half. Uh-huh. Burgers. You got one, two, three. Joe, can we try to save this? Four. Can we bounce back? Please, Joe. We're, we're just waiting on, what, what do you need over here? We need an elk quesadilla. That's really what I need. OK, why don't you finish what you were doing? I'm doing the, OK, uh, I'll uh, do the quesadilla. Hey, you want to see how we make this crap? I haven't got the appetite, Joe. I know, because you wouldn't come over here and say, you know, don't get it that crispy or don't do that with it. I mean, that's what, what we're looking for. What the fuck are you on? What the fuck are you on? Oh, yeah, you, you I won't come over there and say, get that a bit crispy. An elk quesadilla, you want confirmation that it's a fucking good dish? When are you going to pull your head out, you fucking asshole? For a man that stands there and boasts about his fucking farm and his goats. And you want me to talk about this? <laughs> Seriously? Wake up, Joe. You're joking, aren't you? Are we making these two, are these, you know what I'm saying? I know you don't like the dish. It's disgusting, Joe. So you wouldn't give me any input on it? Get rid of it. You want me to get rid of it right fucking now and not I that would. one? I would. Get rid of the fucking thing. We don't have it. Oh, here we go. No, we don't have it. Here we go. We don't have it. Here we fucking okay, go. go. Make yourself clear. Stop asking such okay. ridiculous questions. Come over here don't and tell me it's crispy. Are you that stupid? So don't fucking serve the thing, right? Whose restaurant is it? It's my restaurant. Then and I'm ask asking for fucking, fucking help. responsible. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up. You wake up. Idiot. Fucking come in here and help me instead of running your job. You 
its dinner service at Mill Street Bistro. You want me to get rid of it right fucking now and that's I was, one? I was. And Joe was once again picking a fight with Chef Ramsay. Get rid of the fucking thing, we don't have it. And a frustrated Chef Ramsay is ready to explode. Stop asking such okay. ridiculous questions. Are you that stupid? So don't fucking serve the thing, right? Whose restaurant is it? It's my restaurant then and I'm ask asking for fucking, fucking responsible. Help. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up. You wake up. Idiot. Fucking come in here and help me instead of running your jaw. You shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. You put it Let's finish together. it. Let's you finish it. it right. Fuck off then. You fuck off. Yeah, and take that shit with you. That's right, we're stopping an out quesadilla. Breaking news in That's Mexico. All I'm Get out. Now we got rid of the fucking problem. Unbelievable. Unfucking real. This is the, this is the worst, worst food in Ohio, I guess Sissy's telling us. This guy got his head up his ass. He's saying that I'm a fraud and that my anim my, my elk is terrible. Nobody likes it. And he knows everything about any food on the planet, but he doesn't have an elk farm, OK? There's a difference between passion and assholeism. And he's got a double dose of assholeism. With Joe out of the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and sous chef Tom complete the remaining dishes in a timely manner. Let's finish strong, shall we, yes? Yes. I just need to finish that off and I'm done. Chips ready? Literally one minute away. Next to that, what have we got? That should be it. Order up, please. Thanks, dear. Appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. We were face to face. I saw, I, I said, you ain't, you're not a fucking nurse, narcissistic fucking asshole. I said, you got 750 chefs that do your thinking. I said, you need them <laughs> because you're so full of yourself. I said, I'd love to see you, you know, fucking do what I do. Chef Ramsay doesn't have the balls, the power, or the authority to kick me out of my kitchen. You would have to roll your tape back because he didn't kick me out of my kitchen. Get out! I walked out. Sorry, you got two seconds, please. OK. <sighs> wow. Joe, you are making my life a misery. I've been in hundreds, and I mean hundreds of kitchens across this country. Chef, yeah, can I interject one thing? Tommy, he prepared a lot of those items. And I'm not blaming him, Joe. but I should have stopped them. Joe, stop, stop looking for a way out to justify. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking for a way out. Stop. I'm not going to argue, Joe. I am not going back there. Enough is enough. You are running the business into the ground. And I'm going to tell you something really important, and I want you to listen. You cannot be in that kitchen. It's done. Apron off. I don't want any chef jacket anywhere near your chest. Got it? Yes. OK. I was angry. But as it sunk in, I realized it's not about me. It's about taking the restaurant to its potential. I want to man up to this, and I want to correct it. I'm going to get help. OK. Sure. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Come in with a smile. I will. Good night. Refusing to give up on Joe and the restaurant, Chef Ramsay stays up late, designing a new menu for the Mill Street Bistro. Now he's ready to unveil it. Welcome. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh. Looks wow. so good. Joe, you already had a stunning restaurant. The big revamp was this, Bistro Cooking. It just looks wonderful. It looks right. This is impressive. Take a copy of the menu. Yay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, right, starting off with a crispy duck leg, comfy, light, fragrant, served with pear butter, frizzy bacon, uh, shallot vinaigrette. Next to that, a brick chicken, confit peewee potatoes, black cow, and a really nice fragrant thyme jus. Seasonal fish. You may get the perch, the whiting, walleye, the simple, delicious red wine vinaigrette. A local dish that is in demand. 
The Mill Street Burger, big hit last night. Substantial, full of flavor. Mm -hmm. And from a classic burger to elk sausage burger, slightly gamey, a little bit more lean. Next to that, Joe, especially for you, a beautifully cooked elk chili. Really delicious way of highlighting the flavor and that little touch of gaminess. It's different from what I was doing, but you'll sell more elk doing a chili and a burger than you would do all year serving loins, serving chops. Correct. I, I agree with that. It looks appetizing. It does not look pretentious that we had. I am speechless. I am so proud to have this and not even have served it yet. I'm in incredibly proud. Good. Something I need to tell you all. I came to the consensus with Joe. There's no way on earth from this day on that he can continue to be in that kitchen. I agree. It's the reality. I'm not a certified chef, and we need a true chef. I came up with one very talented young man that's going to make a huge impact in your kitchen and really help kickstart this business off. He's the partner and the executive chef at one of the best restaurants in Cleveland, the Greenhouse Tavern. Oh, my. Love it there. You love it there? I do. Say good morning to Brian Goodman. Chef. All oh, right. Nice. <laughs> the secret of success, if you can put it in a nutshell, uh, what would it be at the, the Greenhouse Tavern? The secret to success, truthfully, is local, fresh ingredients. And it's all about having that knowledge in your head. Like, be confident with what you're doing, because that's what we're going to be in the kitchen tonight, confident. Now, he's going to set up your kitchen. He's going to shortlist an interview to getting a chef here once he's gone. You have a real chef that knows what he's doing. There's no better. Brian, we're really going to look forward to your direction. Good. Good. All right. Anyone hungry? Yes. Yeah, we're going to dig in. Oh, wow. That is really good. It is great. That's a very good way to utilize grilled cheese. The food is amazing. Now it's not just Joe's food, but it's a food that everybody can relate with. I think that we are going to go above and beyond if Joe keeps his butt where it's at. That is really good. I'm impressed with the food that I just tasted. We have french fries. It's awesome. That is awesome. Who would have thought? Armed with a new targeted menu and a new consulting chef. Does it matter which way these go, Amy? Fat to the right. Fat to the right. Fat to the right. I like that. Joe and his staff prepare for relaunch. You ready to go? Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> Chef Ramsey is spending some time with the local community in Norwalk. He is there to support the Relay for Life walk. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Yeah. I'm in town working on Kitchen Nightmares at the local bistro. And on behalf of Joe Nagy, we're going to make a donation this morning to the American Cancer Society to support this Relay for Life. All of us here are connected in some way to this dreadful disease. And we need to continue to fight to eradicate cancer globally. Yeah. In addition, Chef Ramsay invites the participants to tonight's relaunch at Mill Street Bistro. Excellent. Do you have a little meeting with the team? Sure. Yeah, come over. Okay, big one tonight, let me tell you. We've got to nail this, absolutely 100%. Be vocal. Okay, Brian's going to be vocal. Talk to him, communicate. It's very important when you guys come back there, do not be afraid to tell me you know, what you're missing or what you need. It's communication, that's all. Our owner, he's there to support everybody and to do whatever they want. Whatever you need, ask him. If you need something, if you're in the weeds, verbalize it to me, and I will get it taken care of. Good luck. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Hi, how are you this evening? This way? What can I get for you? I'd like to French onion soup, please. All right. I'm going to do the seasonal fish, please. I will bring that right up. All right, you're welcome. Here we go. One fritter, one beet, one duck, and a poutine. Going in the milk. We're going on a sloppy joe and a chicken. Fired. Uh, food's looking amazing. Thank you, chef. Keep it going. So fritter, beet salad, two poutines. Two poutines. Beet salad. Brian's taking control. He calls out the orders, and we call the orders back. And it's totally different from what we were doing here, night and day. Where's this going? We are going to table 33 with all this, guys. With Chef Brian running the kitchen. Table 12 here. Thank you. Food makes its way out to the dining room quickly. Aha, we have some food. It's going. Very good. It's like perfect. 
And as the guests enjoy the brand new food. You need anything from me? Not at this moment in time. The servers are enjoying a brand new Joe. Let me take that, Phil. I'll go do the waters for you. I know what you need for water. It is very nice to see Joe doing something productive. If there's any wines that you can't do, especially the house sellers, let me do those. I'm not sure if it's because he doesn't want to get yelled at anymore, how he doesn't want to be told he's doing anything wrong. But right now, he is he's being great. Joe, how does it feel to hear a kitchen communicate like that? How does that make you feel? It makes me feel proud. So keep it going, yeah? OK. Come on, what do we got here in the window needs to go? Fish and a pot pie to 21, sir. I'll take these two out right now. And we're a little bit early with your food. Okay, enjoy. Do you have a 21 up there, Brian? 21? It already ran, I sent it with Joe. Wait, 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 wait. What's up? They don't have their food. 21. Okay. Joe, when yes. you took out that pot pie in the walleye, where'd you take it to? 21. No, you didn't. They don't have their food. Let's check. Let's check. 21's the one that was right by the fireplace. That's 21. For him to mess up was kind of entertaining. I think we have this back. <laughs> oh, you're taking it yep. away. Because, you know, he screams and yells at us for making these small little mistakes. Well, he took a wrong table, the wrong food. Whoa, uh, sir, where are you going with that? This went to the wrong place. OK. OK. For Did a it moment. actually sit on the table physically? For, for, yes. So the person saw, somebody saw this fish? No, 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 not the customer that is getting it. But did it sit in front of anyone? Yes. OK. We're going to need to drop a new fish for sure. Oh, my god. Who Ready? dropped at that table in the first place? I brought it there. The only time food comes back is when you serve food to the wrong table. It's the only mistake tonight. So, Chef, we're so, going to do a, a new fish. Thank you. It will be up in thank moments. You. That was a very good example of me getting in the way. And I have to be aware of that, because I am a hard worker, but just need to work a little bit smarter. Service, please. OK, Brian. All right, here we go. 21, this is the bass here. And then this is compliments for the mistake. Very good. Brought you a complimentary poutine. Thank you. Thank you. This is the bass and the pot pie. Thank you. OK. All right, what do we think so far? It's oh incredible. God. Phenomenal. I could just eat this up. <laughs> I think the Mustard Bistro finally has a chance to make it. Oh, this got nice taste. Mm -hmm. oh. I need a pot pie and a New York on my final ticket. But Joe needs to understand that he needs to change, or the restaurant's not going to run. Thanks again. Appreciate your business. Right, first off, Joe, if there was one night I didn't want you to send anything to the wrong table, it was tonight. However, <laughs> we recovered and we bounced back. What an amazing atmosphere in this restaurant tonight, yes? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's what a good neighborhood bistro should sound like. Seven nights a week. It was fun. Joe, you have a stunning restaurant, a stunning team. Let them do it. Yes, it's been a hard week for all of you because you have a very, very stubborn owner here, right? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and if this restaurant is going to succeed, each and every one of you are going to give me a promise that when Joe starts to step backwards into his old comfort zone, you need to stand up to him. Yeah? It was well taken and understood. I, I, I promise that I won't go into the kitchen, OK? Stay here one second. We'll show you something. Please take one, pass them along. This morning, I took part in the American Cancer Society Relay for Life Walk. Oh, yay. And on behalf of Mill Street Bistro, I made a donation to this fabulous charity. And unknown to you, those locals that were at that event this morning, supporters, survivors of cancer, those were your diners tonight. And I'm sorry for not telling you before service, I didn't want anyone to think that it was a doom and gloom. I wanted the vibrance. No one was looking for sympathy. They were looking for a great time. And you delivered brilliantly well. I'm really proud. Thank you, all of you, for a great evening. Would you mind if I just have 30 seconds with Joe, please? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> right. Ay, ay, ay. I really meant what I said to your staff. You start cutting corners, going back to your old ways. Honestly. It's going to fail. You delivered. Well, it was rough, 
It's over to you. Didn't have to be that rough, let me tell you, because you are okay. one stubborn man. Well, it didn't have to be, but you got to remember what we were talking about me, Joe Nagy. OK. I can't wait to come back. Good. And the last place I want to see you is in the kitchen. Understood. Good. Thanks, Chef. Man, your hard work. That's what you signed up for. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Say bye to Skinny for me. I will. I listened to Chef Ramsay hard as it was, and this is all wonderful, but the reality is we don't have a crystal ball. Who knows what the future holds at the Mill Street Bistro? <sighs> Joe Nagy has given me a nagging headache. This has to be one of the most frustrating kitchen nightmares ever. And we made a lot of improvements this week, but I still have my doubts about Joe. Can he really step up and embrace change, or is it just all talk? And oh boy, can that man talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. In the months that followed, good to see you again. Joe has kept the majority of Chef Ramsay's menu. I am actually going to do the Buffalo Sloppy Joe's. And business has been steady. Mm -hmm. I love it. There have been some staffing changes. Jen, Kaylee, Tommy, and Rebecca are gone. But Amy, Bill, and Mike remain at the restaurant. I'm going to turn this down a way bunch. There is one promise that has already been broken. These are done. Joe is back as head chef. That's, that's how we do it, man. And the future of Mill Street Bistro is questionable. And now, the dramatic conclusion of Mill Street Bistro. I'm struggling here to stay in this building right now. I swear to God. Gordon, I got to cook right now. Yeah, I was okay. gonna I wish you would. Joe, I need a regular French onion soup. Onion soup. All right, the onion soup's ready. Are they raw onions in there? What's that? Did you put raw onions in there? I didn't know. Why are we doing this to each other? Don't Is this know. a wind up? Look at me. Putting raw onions in a soup. I don't know if you're just fucking around. I, I'm, I'm lost, Joe. Why are you doing this? You said earlier that it needed more onions. We responded by putting the onions in there so they had more of a bite to it. It's raw. What's the matter with you? We sent that out there. It's going to come straight back. What do you want to hear? That I take it off, Joe. Take the menu off the menu. 86 cents. Save whatever little reputation you got left. Man! Surely you got a bit more respect than that. I'm trying to reason with you, Joe. I get it. Fine. I get it. Fine. But I am not here to show an idiot you can't put raw onions in an onion soup. I can't teach you that. That's called common sense. That in your tiny mind is not common. Come here, you. Should we put raw onions in a caramelized onion soup? Tell him! No. Thank you. You've got talented staff to tell you that. Ask your chef. Well, it's like you're doing it to me on purpose. Joe, do you want me out of here? Tell me the truth. If you want me out of here, I'm going to leave. I don't want you out of here. So why are you fucking around like this? I'm not fucking around like that. You want a battle? No, no, no. OK. When right. I told you but the I mean, constructive criticism, you got incredibly upset, and you wanted a Band-Aid. You need surgery. Everything I said today, you went up against. Well, you said it in a way that anybody would challenge you. What? The way you said it. You're a dictator, that's, that's, Joe. That, that's... Your staff can't talk to you. There's not one person in this building that you pay that will ever criticize you, because you'll cut them down big time. <laughs> You're awesome. Oh, Joe. Do you usually go to restaurants and, and rip them apart like that? That's what's pissing me off. Joe, it's not working. You've built up this level of fucking fine dining pretentiousness that is not biting with the locals. You are so far removed of what a bistro should be. OK, so you don't want to hear what our elk sales are and how many people come back for it and, and everything else. You I, can't, you know, no. See, see, there you go. No, yeah, but there you're you trying. The elk, the elk was inedible. Inedible. But it's not just the elk, though, Joe. 
Do you understand? I've got bigger and more important things to focus on than elk. I've got to start off at the bottom. And right now, you won't listen. And that's what's making my life a fucking nightmare. But, but when you sit there and you, and, and, and you went off about every fucking thing in there, you're being defensive. Everybody, well, I wasn't defensive. I was respectful to you until you went off she on it. Knows. I'm here to help you. And fucking help me. Well, then stop being in fucking denial. You're Word. so tight and so bound up with the ambition. You're not seeing the reality or the heart of the problem. I agree, I agree with that statement. That statement I agree with, that I am so bound up, that I'm not seeing, I agree with that. But don't tell me that I'm not doing it because I'm fucking lazy. I want people to come in here and say, man, Joe, you're really doing something. Good, but it's not working currently, Joe. Right, I agree. But you're not telling yourself enough of it because your staff are shit scared to tell you. I am telling myself it. But we're in this group. I got blinders on, but I do want to make it better. I want this restaurant to be a quality restaurant for everybody, not just Joe Nagy. For these people in here that stuck with me and did put up with my personality. That's what I'm asking you, man. Help me. I'm asking. That's the most sincere and the most honest I've heard since I've been here. Shit day. Tomorrow? We start a fresh day. I'm going to do that, chef. We draw I'm a line really... in the stand. Let's draw a line in the sand. Good night. Good night. With Joe finally admitting to Chef Ramsay that he has lost sight of some of the problems. Take a seat. I want you to watch something. Chef Ramsay begins the day with a plan to show this owner some of the issues he doesn't even realize he has. Tough day yesterday. That was a, uh, a hard one. Yep. And I wanted to talk to you guys without Joe around because I need to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, and I'm not talking about Skinny the Goat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's going to start? There's no formalities here. This is wide open. You shouldn't be scared of Joe. <laughs> because I've got your back. Help me. Amy. I think Joe is at fault for the lack of business <laughs> because of the way he berates the staff in front of the customers. Uh, it turns people off and turns yeah. people away. He needs to control his temper. He was cussing at me right here in front of the door and then dragged me into the kitchen and started screaming at me even louder. So I might as well have been sitting right out here. And I mean, everybody witnessed it. And my table was so disgusted, they just wanted their check to leave. And they left me a note, you know, telling me to keep my chin up and that I did a great job and everything I was supposed to do. And I had left that note to Joe. And he would tell me, don't let that get to your head when people tell you you're doing great, because there's always mistakes being made. It was to the point where I ended up having to go into the back because I started crying. And I didn't, you know, I just didn't want to be like, I don't know. I mean, and we have Joe constantly saying, well, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. We all get flustered and, you know. And I, I let it get to me. Yeah. Kaylee, that's terrible. It is. Moving forward. Why does he think his food is good? That's my main thing, because there's stuff that's been questionable, and he's like, oh, that's, that's OK. You know, that's OK. We can serve that. And I just wanted to say, no, we can't serve that. But in his mind, it's OK. How'd you rate the food out of 10? Two of being generous. He loves to hear the praise, but he will certainly go up against anybody that has anything negative to say. The guy that was sitting there across from you while you were having lunch, he said he would send it back, but he doesn't want to listen to Joe yell at him. If they see Joe's vehicle outside, they'll go somewhere else because they don't want to be bothered at their table. So he'll talk and talk and talk to the table the entire hours. time they're here about himself. Joe feels that this is his house, and these are his dining guests, and they want to hear all about him. Which is nothing worse when you're trying to eat And dinner. then we're told to give him a minute. When it's our table, we're trying to service them and trying to do what we are our job, and then we get yelled at and ridiculed in front of them. Wow. He yelled at me saying, when I am with the table, we are in a meeting. Seriously? Rebecca, what's he holding a meeting over? What's he talking about? Himself. 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 
How do you get through to Joe? How do you get the message across to him? We don't. We get told what to do. <laughs> we have meetings, meetings yeah. all the time. But it's usually him telling us what we've right. done Directing wrong us and to what we should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. We've all been ridiculed. We've all been belittled. We've all been screamed at and cussed at, and we're doing everything wrong. It, it's hard. It's hard because we want to see this restaurant sure. succeed. But there's mm -hmm. just times when you can't take it, the stress. I sure. mean. How many of you thought about quitting at any one time? All I ever want to tell Joe is just to back off, not to ridicule every single thing. We're a lot more productive if we don't have all the extra chaos. And stop blaming us for his inadequacies. You screwed up. Like, Quit yelling at me. Joe doesn't want to take responsibility. He would tell himself. me there's so always these My dad wanted to choke Joe out due to the not way fair. he was talking to Yeah, he needs to back off. It's not right. In order to get through to Joe, we've all been screamed at and cussed at. Wow. Chef Ramsay has asked the staff to talk about some of the problems at Mill Street Bistro. My dad wanted to choke Joe out. What? Due to the way he was talking to me. And most of them point the finger at the owner. He needs to back off. Oh my God. Well, I do have a confession to make. Joe has been listening. I hope that he takes it well. I hope he understands the negativity he's brought on your shoulders. I'll be back in a second. Don't move. Here we go. Oh, God. I'm scared. Well, got to go find a new job. Follow me. Guys? I was sitting upstairs listening, and I got to say that what has happened here, ultimately, is my responsibility and my fault. I don't think that I'm a bad person in heart, but I'm tough, maybe a little bit too tough for this business. I need to soften up. We've got a lot of work. A lot of things need to change. And if that means that I need to change, and you need to change, and we all need to change, we're going to do it. Joe immediately went to, we need to change. He cannot take responsibility for his own actions. This is not going to work unless you are 100% behind changing. Because everything that this restaurant stands for today is you, yet it's been propped up by your team. Are you 100% committed to change? I'm 100% committed to change whatever needs to be changed to make this restaurant to find its potential. Then so am I, OK? Do I think that he took it all in? No. Do I think he's going to change? No. Do I think this is even going to help at all? No. One second. With Joe now seemingly ready to change, Chef Ramsay is ready to illustrate how Joe's overpriced menu is alienating the locals in this small town. One of the things I've heard over and over again is that your place is not inviting enough for your average local. Too pretentious and too expensive. It's way out of their comfort zone. If a young couple want to come in here to eat, they're going to walk out of here spending minimum $100. That is a lot of money, yeah? It is. Yes, a lot of money. They could spend $100 here and put it in that cash register, or they could go to a local grocery store and get this. Let's just have a look at it. Mm, delicious ribeye. Choice. Amazing corn. Wow, fresh tomatoes, yeah? And some salads, some cheddar, pork chops, potatoes. Ooh, some ground. I mean, that's a lot of food, right? That all came to $89. 73 cents. Oh, sorry. Look, bottle of wine as well. <laughs> That's what I spent my last $11 on. Just a little bottle of wine. What I'm trying to say is for $89.73, they've got minimum five good evenings in with some bloody good food. That's what you're going up against. Why would you come out? It's a very good question. Joe. People today want value. And when you pitch that you're the most expensive restaurant, nobody can touch you, you've already shot yourself in the foot. Agreed.
We're expensive. We're too expensive. Chef's correct. It was a, a point well taken, and I'm always willing to learn more. Time to move forward, and I mean move forward in a big way. We're going to cook some specials. It's going to go on tonight's menu, and it's a small step in the right direction. OK? Um, when was the last time you had a burger on the menu? We've never. Never. And as a bistro, yeah. Mm -hmm. why would you not have a burger on the regular menu? Chef, when I did talk to the staff, they didn't want a $10 burger. They don't want to sell it. Not the staff. Right, but, but that they were... Customers. Right. So the staff didn't want a $10 they, burger. Right, they felt that, like, you know... Is this for you guys? No, no. Come with me. OK. You, cook my burgers. Gotcha. Uh, where's the team? Uh, right, I asked Joe, when was the last time we had a burger on the menu? He said, the staff don't want to sell a $10 burger. Is that right? No. 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 You're not anti-selling a burger? No. Every time I smell BS, I'm going to go for you. Let's go. Can I interject something? I'm busy. After that, toast the buns? Yeah? Yep. Nice. What's that? What's uh, that? It looks like walleye. It's exactly that. Congratulations. By the way, it's fresh. We, we serve fresh walleye. Uh-huh. So when you knew I was coming here, you gave me a trio of frozen fish of the day. Why wouldn't you get me the freshest local number one fish? Uh, you're, you're right, Chef. This is local to the area. We should serve it more. Local to the area. It's the number one already available fish. I hate to say it, but Chef Ramsay is correct. With the walleye, I want to serve your little corn cake. Cheerful, right? Easy to do, yeah? Green beans seasoned with some fresh chives. Get that little bit of freshness to it. If you're going to use herbs, then cook with the herbs. Don't garnish with the herbs. Don't garnish. No, cook with them. We're a bistro. Unintimidating, exciting right. food served at cheap prices with some real good flavor, right? That's the secret of a bistro. The burgers. How to present a burger. We'll start off the strong base, some lettuce to protect the bun. That's it. From there. Caramelized onions. So it's a rich mm -hmm. roasted onion with aged balsamic vinegar. How long for the burgers, please? Good. Down, please. Thank you. Nice. Protect. And protect. From there, touch more lettuce. And then I've got a sort of Thousand Island special sauce to give that sort of zesty, mm -hmm. yeah, hot. And that's to the cheese, yeah? Toasted bun. I can look at my burger and identify what I'm eating. See what I mean? Yes. Through there. A nice handful of fries on the burger. Two specials. Let's go. So, tonight's specials. Local, fresh, delicious walleye. And there we have a classic burger. Dig in. It looks awesome, chef. How appetizing do those burgers look? Delicious. I'm not big on burgers. But I'm going to give him his accolades. That was a very good example of how we need to recreate the bistro. Oh, my goodness. Is that not amazing? Chef Ramsay is using tonight's dinner service to test the new specials. He is hoping to confirm what he believes is the new direction for Mill Street Bistro. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to talk. <laughs> Good evening. How are we doing tonight? Good. I will take it to your table. I'd like to introduce tonight's specials. We have the burger, and we also have our walleye. I want to get the burger. I love the walleye. OK, here we go. All right, so we got a bistro burger beating well, and a catch, and another bistro medium. You got that? Got the onions, everything on there. What's that? Got the onions on the bottom. So this goes on top of that. Lettuce, onions, burger, lettuce, sauce. Pardon me? Lettuce, onions, burger. Lettuce, sauce, bun top. Big. Touch of sauce. Pardon? Lettuce, onions, burger, lettuce, sauce. Can you just reiterate how to yeah, build I'll, this with I'll, me? I'll, I'll build it again. Show me again yeah, one more time. Absolutely, definitely. Yeah, first, lettuce, that's it, on the bottom, white. Onion jam, remember? Touch onion jam on there. Burger on top. OK. That's it, lettuce and sauce. 
What type of number? Uh, this is going to be 24. Oh, watch, 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 watch. Right. Do you watch. Have With Chef Ramsay's guidance, the kitchen manages to get the burgers and other entrees ready for the customers. Do you both have the walleye? It's really good. I really like this. Go. Next after that, Joe, what is it? Go. What tick is that? Burger. Walleye, where was that going? That is table 50. 50, thank you. Who's 50, please? Wait, my appetizer haven't went out yet. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, come on, guys. My entrees were up before my appetizer was up because Joe stabbed the ticket without serving my appetizers. Joe, two seconds, please. Joe, Joe, what are we doing? Why do we sell that, then, if we haven't sent the appetizer? Look at Joe, please. Joe. Joe, I'm talking to you. Joe. No answer. Nobody's talking, no one's saying anything. I'm hoping one of these are mine for 53. What are we waiting on that tail, Amy? Uh, this fish is not going with this. this. None of these fishes are going with this ticket. Guys, none of these fishes are going with the ticket you just sent. There is just absolutely no communication coming out of that kitchen. And Joe is just completely shutting down. Joe! What do you, you want me to do? You want me to stop? Over here? No, no, not we're, stop, but talk. Want me I'd like you to step up and yeah, man up a little bit. Man up. We're this trying to get fish this here. Out. What's it, it for? It is for this table. Tommy's doing the saute. Talk He's to the saute him there. right here. Talk Tommy, to your stop. Talk to me. You talk to me. Where's the ticket yeah. for this? You stick your fucking sign up there saying quiet. Don't say anything. Where's the ticket for Help this? Help your servers. I just gave the servers a ticket. So for this that here. table, correct. Can we complete this table, though? Yeah, he's on that side. Help him, there. man. I'm, I'm helping him. I got the other You know what? You're screwing him. All right. The kitchen is chaotic when Joe is in it. Tom can't work. Ugh. Nobody can work. It's just insane. This is carnage. It is. We haven't Not got our entrees yet. How long have those young guests been waiting for that? Very good. The order went in right around 6 o'clock. An hour and a half. Uh-huh. Burgers. You got one, two, three. Joe, can we try to save this? Four. Can we bounce back? Please, Joe. We're, we're just waiting on... What, what do you need over here? We need an elk quesadilla. That's really what I need. Okay, why don't you finish what you were doing? I'm doing the... Okay, uh, I'll do uh, the quesadilla. Hey, what's up? We make this crap. I haven't got the appetite, Joe. I know, because you wouldn't come over here and say, you know, don't get it that crispy or don't do that with it. I mean, that's what, what we're looking for. What the fuck for. are you on? What the fuck are you on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't come over there and say, get that a bit crispy. An elk quesadilla, you want confirmation that it's a fucking good dish? When are you going to pull your head out, you fucking asshole? If a man that stands there and boasts about his fucking farm and his goats, and you want me to talk about this? <laughs> Seriously? Wake up, Joe. You're joking, aren't you? Are we making these two, are these, you know what I'm saying? I know you don't like the dish. It's disgusting, Joe. So you wouldn't give me any input on it? Get rid of it. You want me to get rid of it right fucking now and not I would. that one? I would. Get rid of that fucking thing. We don't have it. Oh, here we go. No, we don't have it. Here we go. We don't have it. Here we fucking here we go. go. Make yourself clear. Stop asking such okay. ridiculous questions. Come over here don't and tell it. me it's crispy. Are you that stupid? So don't fucking serve the thing, right? Whose restaurant is it? It's my restaurant then and I'm ask asking for fucking, fucking responsible. Help. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up. You wake up. Idiot. You fucking come in here and help me instead of running your job. It's dinner service at Mill Street Bistro. You want me to get rid of it right fucking now and that's I was. one? I was. And Joe was once again picking a fight with Chef Ramsay. Get rid of the fucking thing. We don't have it. And a frustrated Chef Ramsay is ready to explode. Stop asking such ridiculous okay. questions. Are you that stupid? So don't fucking serve the thing, right? Whose restaurant is it? It's my restaurant then and I'm ask asking for fucking, fucking responsible. Help. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up. You wake up! Idiots! Fucking come in here and help me instead of running your jaw! You shouldn't even be in the kitchen! Yes. Get out of here! Get out of here! You put it Let's all finish together. it! Let's you finish got it! it right. Fuck off then! You fuck off! Yeah, and take that shit with you! That's right, we're stopping an out case of deer! Breaking news in That's Mexico! All I'm asking. Get out! Now we got rid of the fucking problem. Unbelievable. Unfucking real. This, this is the worst, worst food in Ohio, I guess this is telling us. This guy got his head up his ass. 
He's saying that I'm a fraud and that my anim, my, my elk is terrible. Nobody likes it. And he knows everything about any food on the planet, but he doesn't have an elk farm, okay? There's a difference between passion and assholeism. And he's got a double dose of assholeism. With Joe out of the kitchen, Chef Ramsay and sous chef Tom complete the remaining dishes in a timely manner. Let's finish strong, shall we, yes? Yeah. I just need to finish that off and I'm done. Chips ready? Literally one minute away. Next to that, what have we got? That should be it. Order up, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank You're welcome. You. We were face to face. I saw. I, I said, "You're a, you're a fucking narc, narcissistic fucking asshole." I said, "You got 750 chefs that do your thinking." I said, "You need them <laughs> because you're so full of yourself." I said, "I'd love to see you, you know, fucking do what I do." Chef Ramsay doesn't have the balls, the power, or the authority to kick me out of my kitchen. You would have to roll your tape back because he didn't kick me out of my kitchen. Get out! I walked out. Sir, you got two seconds, please? OK. Wow. Joe, you are making my life a misery. I've been in hundreds, and I mean hundreds of kitchens across this country. Chef, can I interject one thing? Tommy, he prepared a lot of those items. And I'm not blaming him, Joe. but I should have stopped him. Joe. Stop oh. looking for a way out to justify. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not looking for a way out. Stop. I'm not going to argue, Joe. I am not going back there. Enough is enough. You are running the business into the ground. And I'm going to tell you something really important, and I want you to listen. You cannot be in that kitchen. It's done. Apron off. I don't want any chef jacket anywhere near your chest. Got it? Yes. OK. I was angry. But as it sunk in, I realized it's not about me. It's about taking the restaurant to its potential. I want to man up to this, and I want to correct it. I'm going to get help. OK. I'll see you in the morning. Thank you. Come in with a smile. I will. Good night. Refusing to give up on Joe and the restaurant, Chef Ramsay stays up late, designing a new menu for the Mill Street Bistro. Now he's ready to unveil it. Welcome. Come in, come in, come in, come in. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh. Looks wow. so good. Joe, you already had a stunning restaurant. The big revamp was this, bistro cooking. It just looks wonderful. It looks right. This is impressive. Take a copy of the menu. Yay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, right, starting off with a crispy duck leg, comfy, light, fragrant, served with pear butter, frizzy bacon, and uh, shallot vinaigrette. Next to that, a brick chicken, confit peewee potatoes, black cow, and a really nice fragrant thyme jus. Seasonal fish. You may get the perch, the whiting, walleye, the simple, delicious red wine vinaigrette. A local dish that is in demand. Mill Street Burger, big hit last night. Substantial, full of flavor. Mm -hmm. And from a classic burger to elk sausage burger, slightly gamey, a little bit more lean. Next to that, Joe, especially for you, a beautifully cooked Elk chili, really delicious way of highlighting the flavor and that little touch of gaminess. It's different from what I was doing. But you'll sell more elk doing a chili and a burger than you would do all year serving loins, serving chops. Correct. I, I agree with that. It looks appetizing. It does not look pretentious that we had. I am speechless. I am so proud to have this and not even have served it yet. I mean, Incredibly proud. Good. Something I need to tell you all. I came to the consensus with Joe. There's no way on earth from this day on that he can continue to be in that kitchen. I agree. It's the reality. I'm not a certified chef, and we need a true chef. I came up with one 
very talented young man that's gonna make a huge impact on your kitchen and really help kickstart this business off. He's the partner and the executive chef at one of the best restaurants in Cleveland, the Greenhouse Tavern. Oh my. Love it there. You love it there? I do. Say good morning to Brian Goodman. Chef. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> The secret of success, if you can put it in a nutshell, uh, what would it be at the, the Greenhouse Tavern? The secret Tavern? to success, truthfully, is local, fresh ingredients. And it's all about having that knowledge in your head, like, be confident with what you're doing, because that's what we're going to be in the kitchen tonight, confident. Now, he's going to set up your kitchen. He's going to shortlist an interview to getting a chef here once he's gone. You have a real chef that knows what he's doing. There's no better. <laughs> Brian, we're really going to look forward to your direction? Good. Good. All right. Anyone hungry? Yes. Yeah, we're going to dig in. Oh, wow. That is really good. It is great. That's a very good way to utilize goat cheese. The food is amazing. Now it's not just Joe's food, but it's a food that everybody can relate with. I think that we are going to go above and beyond if Joe keeps his butt where it's at. That is really good. I'm impressed with the food that I just tasted. We have french fries. It's awesome. That is awesome. Who would have thought? Armed with a new targeted menu and a new consulting chef. Does it matter which way these go, Amy? Fat to the right. Fat to the right. Fat to the right. I like that. Joe and his staff prepare for relaunch. You ready to go? Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> Chef Ramsay is spending some time with the local community in Norwalk. He is there to support the Relay for Life walk. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm in town working on a kitchen nightmares at the local bistro. And on behalf of Joe Nagy, we're going to make a donation this morning to the American Cancer Society to support this Relay for Life. All of us here are connected in some way to this dreadful disease. And we need to continue to fight to eradicate cancer globally. <laughs> In addition, Chef Ramsay invites the participants to tonight's relaunch at Mill Street Bistro. Excellent. Do you have a little meeting with the team? Sure. Yeah, come over. OK, big one tonight, let me tell you. We've got to nail this, absolutely 100%. Be vocal. OK, Brian's going to be vocal. Talk to him, communicate. That's um, very important. When you guys come back there, do not be afraid to tell me you know, what you're missing or what you need. It's communication. That's all. Our owner, he's there to support everybody and to do whatever they want. Whatever you need, ask him. If you need something, if you're in the weeds, verbalize it to me, and I will get it taken care of. Good luck. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. you. Let's go. Hi. How are you this evening? This way? What can I get for you? I'd like the French onion too, please. All right. I'm going to do the seasonal fish, please. I will bring that right up. All right. You're welcome. Here we go. One fritter, one beet, one duck, and a poutine. Going in the mouth. We're going on a floppy joe and a chicken. Fired. Uh, food's looking amazing. Thank you, chef. Keep it going. So fritter, beet salad, two poutines. Two poutines. Beet salad. Brian's taking control. He calls out the orders, and we call the orders back. And it's totally different from what we're doing here, night and day. Where's this going? We are going to table 33 with all this, guys. With Chef Brian running the kitchen. Table 12 here. Thank you. Food makes its way out to the dining room quickly. Aha, we have some food. It's going. Very good. It's like perfect. And as the guests enjoy the brand new food. You need anything from me? Not at this moment in time. The servers are enjoying a brand new Joe. Let me take that. I'll go do the waters for you. I know what you need with water. It is very nice to see Joe doing something productive. If there's any wines that you can't do, especially the house sellers, let me do those. I'm not sure if it's because he doesn't want to get yelled at anymore, how he doesn't want to be told he's doing anything wrong. But right now, he is he's being great. Joe, how does it feel to hear a kitchen communicate like that? How does that make you feel? It makes me feel proud. So keep it going, yeah? OK. Come on, what do we got here in the window needs to go? Fish and a pot pie to 21, sir. I'll take these two out right now. And we're a little bit early with your food. Mm, look at that. OK, enjoy. Do you have a 21 up there, Brian? 21? It already ran. I sent it with Joe. Wait, 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 wait. What's that? They don't have their food. 21. OK. Joe, when yes. you took out that pot pie in the walleye, where'd you take it to? 21. No, you didn't. 
They don't have their food. Let's check, let's check. 21's the one that was right by the fireplace. That's 21. For him to mess up was kind of entertaining. I think we have this back. <laughs> oh, you're taking it yep. away. Because, you know, he screams and yells at us for making these small little mistakes. Well, he took a wrong table, the wrong food. Whoa, uh, sir, where are you going with that? This went to the wrong place. OK. OK. For Did a it actually sit on the table physically? For, for, yes. So the person saw, somebody saw this fish? No, no, not the customer that is getting it. But did it sit in front of anyone? Yes. OK. We're going to need to drop a new fish for sure. Oh, my god. Who Ready? dropped it at that table in the first place? I brought it there. The only time food comes back is when you serve food to the wrong table. It's the only mistake tonight. So, Chef, we're so, going to do a, a new fish. Thank you. It will be up in thank moments. You. That was a very good example of me getting in the way. And I have to be aware of that, because I am a hard worker, but just need to work a little bit smarter. Service, please. OK, Brian. All right, here we go. 21, this is the bass here. And then this is compliments for the mistake. Very good. Brought you a complimentary poutine. Thank you. Thank you. This is the bass and the pot pie. Thank you. OK. All right, what do we think so far? It's oh incredible. God. Phenomenal. I could just eat this up. <laughs> I think the Mill Street Bistro finally has a chance to make it. Oh, this got a nice taste. Mm -hmm. oh. I need a pot pie and a New York on my final ticket. But Joe needs to understand that he needs to change, or the restaurant's not going to run. Thanks, Thanks again. Sure. Appreciate your business. Right, first off, Joe, if there was one night I didn't want you to send anything to the wrong table, it was tonight. However, <laughs> we recovered and we bounced back. What an amazing atmosphere in this restaurant tonight, yes? Yeah. Yes. yes. That's what a good neighborhood bistro should sound like. Seven nights a week. It was fun. Joe, you have a stunning restaurant, a stunning team. Let them do it. Yes, it's been a hard week for all of you because you have a very, very stubborn owner here, right? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> and if this restaurant is going to succeed, each and every one of you are going to give me a promise that when Joe starts to step backwards into his old comfort zone, you need to stand up to him, yeah? It was well taken and understood. I, I, I promise that I won't go into the kitchen, OK? Stay here one second. I'll show you something. Please take one, pass them along. This morning, I took part in the American Cancer Society Relay for Life Walk. Oh, yay. And on behalf of Mill Street Bistro, I made a donation to this fabulous charity. And unknown to you, those locals that were at that event this morning, supporters, survivors of cancer, those were your diners tonight. And I'm sorry for not telling you before service, I didn't want anyone to think that it was a doom and gloom. I wanted the vibrance. No one was looking for sympathy. They were looking for a great time. And you delivered brilliantly well. I'm really proud. Thank you, all of you, for a great evening. Would you mind if I just have 30 seconds with Joe, please? Thank you. Oh, <laughs> right. Ay, ay, ay. I really meant what I said to your staff. You start cutting corners, going back to your old ways. Honestly. It's going to fail. You delivered. Well, it was rough. It's over to you. Didn't have to be that rough, let me tell you, because you are okay. one stubborn man. Well, it didn't have to be, but you got to remember what we were talking about me, Joe Nagy. OK. I can't wait to come back. Good. And the last place I want to see you is in the kitchen. Understood. Good. Thanks, Chef. Man, you're hard work. That's what you signed up for. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Say bye to Skinny for me. <laughs> I will. I listened to Chef Ramsay, hard as it was, and this is all wonderful, but the reality is we don't have a crystal ball. Who knows what the future holds at the Mill Street Bistro? <sighs> Joe Nagy has given me a nagging headache. This has to be one of the most frustrating kitchen nightmares ever. And we made a lot of improvements this week, but I still have my doubts about Joe. Can he really step up and embrace change, or is it just all talk? And, oh boy, can that man talk and talk and talk 
and talk and talk and talk. In the months that followed, good to see you again. Joe has kept the majority of Chef Ramsay's menu. I am actually going to do the Buffalo Sloppy Joe's. And business has been steady. Mm -hmm. I love the there have been some staffing changes. Jen, Kaylee, Tommy, and Rebecca are gone. But Amy, Bill, and Mike remain at the restaurant. I'm going to turn this down a way bunch. There is one promise that has already been broken. These are done. Joe is back as head chef. That's, that's how we do it, man. And the future of Mill Street Bistro is questionable. Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Known for its great coffee and superior produce. Just north of the city lies the up-and-coming neighborhood of Finney Ridge, home to Yanni's Greek restaurant, run by Peter Augustillo and his family. My dad decided that we should open our own restaurant in 1984. And in 2007, my dad passed me the torch, gave me the keys to the restaurant. There we are. What do you need? I need another saganaki. No. When we first opened, business was a success. Opa! But now it seems like this neighborhood is changing. Are we open yet? And um, now people just don't seem to be coming to Yanni's anymore. I don't know, guys. I don't know. My husband was stuck in the past. The neighborhood's different. It's not a neighborhood that's different. It's the attitudes are different. And he doesn't listen to any of us. The melons on the dinner, hot potatoes. Written here, are potatoes. Don't fucking tell me that next time, OK? You, you just spoil shit. And the only thing he does is yell. Where's my plates? I need plates to check it before you serve it. My dad is an absolute control freak. Yo, yo, oh! And sometimes I can't take his derogatory tone. Elise, let's get going. What, you guys need guidelines? My daughter, Elise, is kind of like her dad. That's fucking ridiculous. She doesn't take criticism well. I don't think the man likes garlic. Well, tell him to get the fuck out of a Greek restaurant. And I think that that's why her and her dad have problems, because they have that same personality. Crying again. Taria, she can cry in an instant. <laughs> Stop crying. She's known for being very emotional. Ugh. What now? <laughs> there was too much cinnamon. There is nothing she won't cry about. Now what? Everything was too garlicky. <laughs> There's so many things wrong with this restaurant, but the main problem, Peter doesn't change. You know, a lot of our fixes seem to be really pretty simplistic. Excuse me. Cut the fucking crap. I don't have to change. They have to change their attitude. I see things more than you think. I just can't fix everything. Things have gotten so bad that we don't have medical insurance. We can't pay our bills on time. The mortgage is always late. We've hit rock bottom. Of course, it's raining in Seattle. Before Chef Ramsay heads to the restaurant, owner Peter has requested some time alone with him. Hello. How are you, sir? Chef Ramsay, how are you? Good to see you. At where else in Seattle but a coffee shop. Tell me how it started. Tell me back to the beginning. We opened 1984, and it was just me and my dad, and uh, it was uh, very good. It Making was... money? Making good money, yes. And then uh, 2007, my dad decided that you know, it's time for me to pull back. You took over? Yeah, you know, time. he gave me the torch, and uh, unfortunately, uh, our neighborhood have changed. A uh, new, young generation moved in. Yeah. And I think they're afraid to give us a try. Right. You know. Not good. How much money are you losing? Between uh, eight and 10,000. A month? Yeah. How are you surviving? I mean, do you have money put away? We cut down staff and everything else, you know, so my wife has to take over the dining room. Plus, my two daughters work in the restaurants. What and, do they do? Um, the one that works in the kitchen with me is Elise. Elise? And, and then the other one is uh, Sarah. Teria. Teria. How hands-on are you? Uh, full hands. They gave some responsibilities to my wife, but I still feel that I have to look over everybody. What's the problem? When it comes to business, I don't think they're focused. Right. You know, so the devotion is not there. Devotion? Yeah. Do they listen to you? Uh, 
No. No, no not really, but... What do you like as a boss? Really? I'm not uh, strong enough, I think. You're not strong enough? Yeah, I give in. Wow. It sounds like all the pressure are on your shoulders. I mean, that's... It is on my shoulders. So, what's right with the restaurants? Well, I think we have good product. So the food's good. How would you rate that out of 10? If not 10, 9. Oh, wow. That's good. 9 out of 10, that's amazing. I'm going to finish up my coffee. Thank you for being open and honest. Sorry. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you very much. Thank you, How are we? <laughs> Very well. Welcome to Yanni's. Thank you. Good I'm to see Karen. You. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet well. you. Is here. He's here? Yeah. No way. This is Taria, right. my eldest daughter. Uh, Hi. The... Nice to meet you. Taria. Wow, wow, wow. And this is little sis, yeah. right? Elise. Elise, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Please take a seat. I'm really excited to see Chef Ramsey and for him to tell my father you're not only taking your restaurant down, but you're bringing your family down with you. What I'd like to do is get your perspective, a little insight to Yanis. You know, there's no, no fun anymore. You know, there's no frills. Um, things are tight, very tight. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you upset? Taria, she's very emotional. Oh, really? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay? tough to see my parents struggle when they put so much effort and to know that we're struggling just to barely make ends meet. It's hard. I'm sure it's very hard. Well, how long has it been that bad? You know, a couple years, mm -hmm. a couple years. We're trying to figure out what, what we can do. It's definitely outdated. The food is outdated? The decor. The decor is definitely outdated. some of the outdated. food is outdated, though, too. Some of the food could definitely be presented differently. Why hasn't it changed? I think um, my husband's very stubborn. He's that stubborn? Yes, it's very, very. Why, though? He can't just do, do it. it. Have you mentioned to him? Have you? Yeah, I mean, all the time. Could... Fights, many fights. All the time. Many fights. It's, it's virtually impossible. But he told me he gives in and allows you to do what you want, and he's too easy on you guys. <laughs> too easy. You know, too lax. No. 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 Never. He's not laid back. No. no. Never. But he rates the food nine out of ten. Um, he thinks the family are not pulling their weight. He's concerned whether his daughters are in or out. It's hard to be in when you can't have the full support that you deserve. Or when he never listens to anything you have to say. He says the opposite in terms well, of he he's gives bullshit. it. <laughs> he is not. That's untrue. That's really? untrue. Yes. Absolutely. It doesn't make sense. I don't know who you met this morning. Yeah. Let me go and get Peter. My husband is in total denial of the real issues and why the restaurant is failing. I need to get to the bottom of this. I mean, you know, you're telling me one side, the fact that they don't do enough. They're telling me they're scared to step up and change because you won't allow change. I'm always the, the, the bad guy because I want things to get done right. You just said to me an hour ago, you're the relaxed guy. You're the one that well, gives in. But see, when I when I raise my voice, I'm a bad guy. But it's what comes out of your mouth. It's because you don't know how, how to speak to people correctly. Because they're not committed. They don't focus Is on the job. Is that the only problem you have with us? No, I want you to be a leader here. In this dining It's really hard to be a leader to... when no, I am a waitress. A I don't give a shit. I want things done in the dining room like they're supposed to be. And I don't think this gets done. They're not servers from the neighborhood. They're your daughters. They're here to do a job. This is a job. This is my income. Do you want them out? No, I want them to step up. I can't do everything anymore. We're right here. You know, I, I can't do everything every anymore. day. We've all said we want to be here. We're the ones asking for change. What's the change? Decor. Everything. The whole restaurant. Move forward. Throw away the menu. Start fresh. Simplify. That's the only Trust thing. People. I mean, I don't understand why it's such a hard step. You know, it's hard for me to just give up this place. We're it's not hard asking for... you to give up. No, we're just we're asking, asking to change. change. I can't. Within minutes of his arrival, Chef Ramsay was struck with the negativity within the family. Thank you. Now he's hoping that he can find something positive in the food. That's not all on the menu, surely, to help. It's a uh, Bible. It's an encyclopedia. Five, six pages of menu. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine specials. I have told my father to change the menu many, many times. How do you remember all these? Most of this hasn't changed. Wow. So. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. My father is very stubborn, and he needs an Englishman to give him a good kick in the ass. Um, am I seeing things? Pumpkin hummus. 
pumpkin hummus. Come on, stop. Yeah. I have been to thousands of restaurants. I have never, ever seen a pumpkin hummus. It's not even Halloween. I'm going to have to try it. OK. After that, how can I not take masaka if I'm in a Greek restaurant? OK. And the house gyro. OK. Thank you, Dane. Pumpkin hummus? This is his order. Pumpkin hummus, side house gyro, and a side moussaka. Whatever the chef wants. The decor is hideous. I mean, it does feel like you're back in the 80s. That ceiling, honestly, it's like a kid's bedroom. Wow. Pumpkin hummus. Hummus coming up. Here's your hummus. Don't make it too oily. Wow, look at this, baby. Then whose recipe is this? This is Peter's. Right. Would you join me? That does not make sense. I don't like the combination. And the garlic in there. Mm, well, Blood garlic is a lot. Oh, my God. Garlic's a lot. Our Jesus. hummus is really, really garlicky. Wow. You want me to take that back? Oh, yes. It was a great shame. Here. Thank you, man. Well, one thing for sure. Let's get that right. There will never be a problem with vampires here, let me tell you. I mean, that is hideous. Not a fan of the pumpkin hummus. And he says it was really too garlicky. I don't put much garlic. People complain there's not enough garlic. I put a little extra garlic, it's too much garlic. <laughs> like what? There's no win situation. Why are you crying? crying? I don't know. Keep your head up. Hold yourself together. <laughs> I'm giving him the moussaka. There are some things on the menu that I beg my dad to get off because I don't personally like them. But there's a lot of things on our menu that I think are the best, like the moussaka. I would say that's a 10 out of 10. Wow, look at this, okay. baby. Moussaka. Lovely. Look at that. And that's uh, freshly baked uh, in the oven? Yes. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. It's nice. Pretty weird, the... The meat is very sweet, and yet the eggplant is very bitter. The eggplant is undercooked. It's picking it apart. Greasy as anything at the bottom. A huge pool of grease. I love moussaka, but that is miles off. Moussaka, moussaka. Karen, um, just okay. that's, that's moussaka. It was just so greasy, so that is a big letdown. Yes, I'll let Elise know. She'll be disappointed. Not as disappointed as me. Any more bad news? OK. Oh, my god. Lisa cut too oily. Doesn't like it. I can't make a marinara without oil. Keep things. The moussaka is greasy. Come on. That's ridiculous. I think sometimes the sauce, though, the red sauce is a little greasy. I mean, you can see the oil. You want to go sit with him? You want to go sit with him and chit chat how to fucking criticize my food? Get out of my kitchen. Just please. Please, I don't need your criticism. Out of the kitchen. Nice, 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 nice. Right now, I'm just fucking pissed. <laughs> what now? Everything, you know, it's outdated, it's oily, it sucks. Stop crying. <laughs> I need a house hero a la carte. I got it. Out. I don't want to go out, over out, there. Out. OK. OK. So, the house hero. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Tria. Yes, Chef. You OK? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You sure? Mm-hmm. Come on. Oh, god. She's crying over there. I know it's tough, I'm sorry. Trust me, the only thing so far that's got a nine out of 10 is the pita bread. It was food's miles away. And as well as it may hurt, I am so sorry, but I'm only here for one reason, and that's to get this place fixed. I know, I appreciate it. Okay. 
I hope you enjoy this one. So do I. Thank you. What is in there? Come on, seriously? It looks like a plate full of puke. Look at it. What a mess. Karen, two seconds. Um, mm. All that sauce on there, mm -hmm. you know, that's not normal, is it? Oh, really? yes, yes. Really? Yeah. When was the last time you tasted this? Um, I've, I've had it. I don't really like it. You walk through the door and you see the decor dated. I didn't think the food would be beyond dated. All right, I'll take it back. Thank you. You're welcome. He says, our food is dated. The decor is dated. Our food is dated. What the hell does it mean, dated? Old school cooking, Peter. Dated. Fucking amazing. It's fucking amazing. He didn't like anything. Oh, my god. Oh, my shit. This doesn't like nothing. The pita was good. How about mashed potatoes? Does you like that? No, they'd be too salty. This is going to be the longest night of my life. Peter needs to hear these things because the restaurant needs to change. You asked him to come out? Sure. Please. Maybe Chef can get through to him, because we can. Listen, you told me when we first met that your food was 9 out of 10. I think so. Peter. Well, this is the authentic food. Authentic food. Let me tell you, that is not authentic Greek food. Pumpkin hummus. Hideous. There's some things that work with pumpkin. Hummus is not one of them. And the gyro. Whose idea was it to macerate everything with the sauce on there? What is that? It's something we've had for years. It's like a litre of sauce. I mean, you say it was bad. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, OK. Moussaka. I mean, it's so sweet, greasy. Eggplant, undercooked. So I had that bitter aftertaste of the eggplant at the bottom. Undercooked? When it's completely white in the centre, it's not cooked long enough. I disagree. If it's not white, and if you're talking to me, you want it black, you want it burnt? I'm not asking you to take it personally. I'm not. Take it professionally. You can give me attitude. Do whatever you want. I don't have an attitude. But if you want me to come in and blow smoke up your ass and tell you it's delicious, yeah, I'm not the one. Peter, have you not thought about changing stuff? These are foods I grew up with. What am I supposed to change? You've got to take your head out of the clouds and get into the 21st century. I mean, you don't even realize how much damage you're causing yourself and your family. It's got to stop. I need some fresh air. I, I'm, I'm going to be back for service. I want to see how this place functions. I don't think it can be as depressing as what I've just experienced. I can still taste that fucking garlic. That was embarrassing. I'm not going to crumble because one person says that our food is crap. Shut up. I'm not even talking to you. Stop crying. You're just afraid to get rid of the old menu. What do you do with the customers that drive all the way to come here and, and enjoy something that they've had for the last 30 years? Old ways are not working. If you're going to survive, you have to change. Can't let go of something. I mean, we've invested everything into this place. I'm not willing to throw it away because you can't change a menu. Maria's up! Corner! Move, move, move! It's dinner service at Johnny's. And while Chef Ramsay knows there are real issues with the food... Elise, you guys are supposed to call me the motherfucking... I haven't even looked bed. at the new tickets yet. I'm... This is a two-part. Tonight, his main focus will be on how the kitchen operates. Elise, this is going to burn. Then I'll kick your ass. They're not burning. Elise, why is this here? I want the first ticket out. I didn't make it. You did. Don't tell me that next time, OK? Whatever. Enough with this. I don't need to babysit anybody here. Time to grow up. How's that Tiro Spano? Elise, I want you to read the tickets, because these guys are missing food. Shut up. Right. Learn your job, damn it. My dad can bark orders, but you're not helping me by just, you know, bombarding me with everything I'm doing wrong. Wow. How's everything so far? This is all gristle. Gristle? This whole end is gristle. Oh, right. So unhappy with the pork. You just bit the pork. <laughs> all right, I will be right back. All right, dinner coming back. 
it's full of gristle, it bent the fork, and he says that the orzo's overcooked. Come on, you know, it's like the end of the brizola. What do you expect? Come on. He said it was. I just want. Leave my window now. OK. Don't yell at me when I'm pissed. Get the lamb out now. I don't make like this. this. Want me to take it back? Yes, please. <laughs> with customers having the same disappointing experience as he had at lunch. Damn, what happened? Everything was just bad. Oh, my God. Chef Ramsay decides to begin his inspection of the walk-in. What a mess. No dates, nothing labeled. It's sticky, it stinks, and it's disgusting. How old is this stuff? Ugh, disgusting. What is that? Raw meat next to cooked meat. Seriously? What the hell? What is in here? Are you kidding me? Uh, chicken. Oh my god. Poor bastard bird. Wow. Elise, put some food out. Who's this? Elise! Why are you guys leaving this? I want you guys right here. I am. You just told me to kick food out. Do you have something to kick out? No, because you're saying okay. go, 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 and the lamb's not even ready. Lamb is ready. What is that? Just smell that for me. Just smell it. No, no, no. No, no, but it's not food. It's not food. We're not serving it. It's got fucking mold on top. It's moldy. What is that? The it's lamb? boiled beef. Boiled beef? Yeah. But just smell that, Peter. Just smell it. Elise, just two seconds, please. Yeah. Just smell that. Uh-huh. What does that smell to you? Oh, um, it's bad. It's bad. What about the mold on top? I'm I'm not using that one. I'm using this fresh one. If you're not so using that, that then let's go away. The Fucking hell. What is that? This uh, chicken that we use for it. Oh, my God. Just touch that. I mean, how? The stickiness of that. Elise! Elise! What? What? I, I, I don't know what to say. Just touch that. Just touch it. Uh-huh. It's sticky. Elise. Yeah. Come it's on. Old. I'm not even using this. I don't know. It's old. That's the second thing you're telling me you're not even using it. What about the danger zone of it even just being in here? OK. It's garbage. Sharon, two seconds, please. This is in the fridge. Peter, how long has it been in here? Uh, probably four or five days. That doesn't go like that after four or five days. Come on. Four or five weeks. We don't even. A week. No way. Oh, we no. don't keep food longer than that. So, beef stew with mold on top. Have you touched that? Chicken? That was the fat of the beef. Don't you dare. Don't yeah, you I fucking think. dare. I've. That wasn't fat. This chicken is multicolored, sticky. And you're saying it's four days. I don't know how long it's been in there. You don't know. I need you, you, and you outside. What about? Let me just show you one more thing. Opa! The flaming cheese. What the fuck is this? It's just old, old chicken. Old chicken. Another old, but we're not using that, are we? No, but no. why is it here? We, there, it's 86. Do you know what really fucks me off? So no one's caring. There's so many things wrong. And yet everybody's in denial. Let me just show you something here. I don't want to do this anymore. This is so embarrassing. He's really going to blast us like that. OK, well, hello. Look at the refrigerator. I mean, shit, why do we keep stuff that needs to be thrown away? I don't know. It needs okay, to be thrown away, but I'm not the only responsible one. I've never seen this before. Every fucking fridge is full of fresh stuff and old stuff. Unfortunately, the old stuff's tainted the fresh stuff. So what you think is fresh is no longer fresh. And those poor fuckers out there are eating this. Okay. No, you can't. I'm not going to let you cook anymore. Yeah, that's right. You want to continue cooking? You think it's funny, do you? No. Elise, if anyone can walk past rotten food in a fridge and continue cooking fresh, you shouldn't be fucking anywhere near food. And then when I hear, oh, I've never seen that before, then open your fucking eyes. I don't believe this. You know what happened to check things? I don't know what happened. What the fuck is this? Do you guys like this shit to drink it? 
Don't leave that is in there for so long. Look, look in there. That's embarrassing. But we don't use it. I can't keep up with everything. I fucking babysit you like kids, and you still fuck me. I don't need to babysit. If I want to babysit, I go babysit my granddaughter. She's more fun than you guys. What is this? Chef Ramsay's inspection led to some shocking, disgusting discoveries. Every fridge is full of fresh stuff and old stuff. And Peter is pointing the finger at everyone else. Look! Look in there! I babysit you like kids, and you still fuck me. If I want to babysit, I go babysit my granddaughter. She's more fun than you guys. That's just like my father, you know, pushing the blame onto everybody else and not taking responsibility. It's frustrating. I'm sorry. I, I just want to know, are our tables getting our food? There's no food, Julia. Tell people I'm real sorry. Whatever they had, it's free. I'm real sorry. Just close the line down, man. I don't give a shit what you guys do. shut down the restaurant. Yeah. We need to shut down the restaurant. No one's getting food. Comp them for whatever else they've had. OK, just tell, we're done. tell them that we're done. So I'm sorry, but you guys aren't getting your food. We're having some problems in the kitchen. And you know, we hope that you'll come back again. Drinks are on the house. Thank you for trying us. And have a good night. This is not fair. I've never seen food like that. Oh my god. There's no explanation for all that in the refrigerator. I always tell these fucking guys to bring it. Okay, you know what, though? You know? How about a system? A system. I can't be on be... top of everybody. No, you just I need can't. to have them you know, have I, I, I a can't. system. You know, how many times do I have to fucking babysit? Really? You know what? Your problem is you want to be a babysitter. You I'm don't want to let them have fucking, fucking control of done. things. OK? Then fire them. Things should be labeled. Things should be dated. Things should, I mean, we, it's basic. Basic. Last night, Chef Ramsay was disgusted and disappointed in the mess he uncovered in the kitchen. Today, he is hoping that Peter and Elise are no longer in denial. Good morning. Come through, please. Come over. Let's sit down over here. Right, how are we feeling? A little shaky. A little shaky. Yes, sir. You know, with the events that happened last night, uh, I think we're all embarrassed. Uh, we're here to listen to you, to show us a new way to do things. But at the same time, I cannot let go of some of the things that happened last night. Like what? Give me an example. The refrigerator back there wasn't as bad as I made out. Yes, sir. What I saw last night was disgusting. Your refrigeration unit was one of the most disgusting fridges I've ever seen. You are the owner. And it's about time that you, sir, start taking responsibility for what you're running. We are about fresh food, and I'm not going to serve my customers any spoiled food if I know it's spoiled. Never. The food that we served last night, it was fresh. Yesterday morning, I made this food. So you cannot tell me that we're sitting in the goddamn refrigerator and collecting mold and all that shit. We don't leave things like that that long. So you clearly don't know about the spoiled food in the fridge. Then do you think I'm going to serve that? Why is it there? 
My employees are not as stupid to do that. Oh, really? And we get it, and I... She just sat there like nothing's wrong. I never said nothing is wrong. Stood I said there. I would never serve oh, that. No, but it's our fault that we make up all these excuses. Stop the excuses. Let's just go forward. It's... Yesterday was a disaster. Disaster. So can we put that in the past and just walk forward? But the food that I served to these people yesterday, last night, it was fresh to the day. So you can tell me that. Let's get real, shall we? Because if you're not going to listen and you're not going to take responsibility, I'm done. Oh, God. I'm out of here. With Peter refusing to really comprehend the problems of the restaurant. The food that I served to these people yesterday, last night, it was fresh to the day. Chef Ramsay is wondering why he should continue to stay. I'm done. Oh, God. Last night, I think that it was reality in our face. We have dropped the ball. This is not what we are. Not what we are, but it's our fault. It, we, we can't blame anyone. It's our fault. We let it happen. We need to step up and take back the restaurant. Are you willing to work with us, Chef Ramsay? I mean, do you think that we're savable? I'm trying to. But when you can't accept the real problems, there's no chance. I need help for improvement. Help us. Show us the way, please. We love this place. We live for this place. My life is this place. I haven't given up, but my focus has been gone. I need your help to pull me back to where I was before. I think we need to not go back to how we were when we were successful. We need to move forward and reinvent it. Yeah, you're right. Peter, we've got to let go of the past. You've got to change. Even though change is scary, you need to. Yes. You need to change. We have to change our ways. Yanis cannot succeed like that anymore. He cannot stay open like that. And this is my reality check. And Peter, here's another thing. What I saw last night wasn't pretty. Peter, you were so negative. And if Elise is determined to be in the kitchen, you have to nurture her and support her. Do you ever tell her she does a good job? Uh, never. No, it shows. I mean, I'm sorry if I yelled at you guys before, you know, maybe with no reason and stuff, but the pressure was on. And, well, I guess I didn't know how to relieve the pressure or you how to fix that, the pressure. You know, at the end of the night when it's all said and done, well, instead of calling the Chef Ramsay in here to make you say it, you can say it once in a while. Well, like I say, things are going to change. Good. It will change. You know, do you mean that? I do, 100%. I'm not a man that backs down. I'm not an egomaniac, Nothing but I have a pride. We're moving forward. Moving forward. I really hope that he's willing to change not only our relationship, but everything. It's long overdue. <laughs> Now that Peter appears to be open-minded, Chef Ramsay has an assignment for the family, modifying the major thing that Peter has been most stubborn about. Book for you, a novel for you, an encyclopedia for you, and you and I are gonna share. The menu. Look at each and every page together and throw out what's not selling. Get ready to cut out a lot. I'll be back in five minutes, okay? okay. Set on olives? No, that's must. Souvlaki's? No. Chicken scottas? Out. No, that's not out. Seriously, you come eat on. Chicken dishes? People come in here, they're used to this menu, and, and oh, it's well, like, oh, new I people don't are gonna come. I don't wanna lose this menu. New people so. are gonna come. No, we're changing. I mean, this is your time to change. It's like walk away from the menu. Just take it out. How many items is to begin with? Too many. Oh my God. <laughs> I did realize so many. I've had this menu for 28 years, but I think it's time for me to listen to others. 
Leave my ego out the door. 55 Iron Man, I never, I just, that's the only way for this restaurant to succeed. Okay, we have to. Saganaki and fasolia is out. Okay, chicken scottas? Off. 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 I can't believe that my dad actually let us take a Sharpie and cross off all these menu items. We don't need those saucy beef dishes out. This is the first time I've seen my dad actually listen to my mom and my sister and I and not have to take control of the situation. Wow. OK, good. That's our menu. Oh, wow. Well, just, just that on one page? 64 to 21. And wait a second, are you smiling? <laughs> Look at this. Huh? This is weird. <laughs> wow. Man, there's no tears on three or either. It's I know. <laughs> this is the new direction, and, I, and we're all committed now as a family to make this happen. Good. That's given me a lot to work with. I'll see you later. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday I wanted to kill him. Now I don't want to hug him. <laughs> with the family recommendations in mind, Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to work and perfect the new Yanni's menu, while his renovation team overhauls the dining room. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Morning. First of all, how is everybody feeling? Do you have a vomit bucket? Oh, Jesus. Three yeah. shot. <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. I want all of you to take your blindfolds off. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my god. Oh, my god. Welcome to new Yanni's. It is stunning. Whoa. That's it. Oh, man. How beautiful is this restaurant? Oh, my god, it's gorgeous. When I walked in here, it looked like you hadn't updated since 1984. Welcome oh to 2013. God. That is so nice. Oh, my god. Taria, it's nice to see tears of joy. <laughs> Let me tell you, gone is that depressing wall. <laughs> yes. We've replaced it with an amazing gradient paint job. Oh. You know, I love the blue. I love how it just fades out. The wine barrels have gone too. And look, we got rid of that hideous, dated, stained glass and opened up with wonderful wooden trim. And the restaurant looks twice as big now. Oh, gosh. Also, I've arranged for a complete delivery of brand new China, courtesy of Niagara, China. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you OK, bud? <laughs> Come here, bud. Oh, my god. <laughs> Come on. Up. Oh, man. How do you do my country? Let me give you the best. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> to see my father so happy, it's such a great feeling. His true emotion showed. Today marks the greatest day ever at Yanni's Greek restaurant. There's one more thing I need to show you. I think it's going to really help organize you in a way that you've never been organized. This is your new POS system. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> This is the POS Lava system from Zephyr Hardware. This is unique. Servers take orders on touch screens. Orders go directly into the kitchen. Wow. No more trying to figure out what is this thing. And this comes with a, an amazing new app that can be controlled from anywhere. Even from home, it will tell you what's going, what's not working. It will tell you what your top selling dish is. It will give you a detailed report instantly. Oh, my god. This is going to make this restaurant run seamlessly. Wow. <laughs> This is a new day at Yanis. Wow. Thank Chef Ramsey. Now that Yanni's decor has been revamped, uh -huh. Chef Ramsey has taken the family's pared down menu and created fresh, innovative, modern Greek dishes. We've kept your classics and we've modernized your approach to the Mediterranean cuisine. Dig in. All right. Uh, enjoy. Where should I start? I think I have blinders before, thinking my food was great. But now that Chef Ramsay showed us new dishes, I'm ready. With Peter fully embracing the new direction of the restaurant. Are you ready? Pumped up, baby. Pumped up, baby. Look Pumped up. up. Chef Ramsay spends time teaching Elise and Peter different techniques in the kitchen. Just touch that on top. Good. By doing that, it flattens the skin, OK, which then gives you a nice, solid base. Chef Ramsay is boosting my confidence so much by teaching me the science behind the dish, and it's amazing. Good. Your plate is exactly the same as my plate. This is the way you two should be working together in harmony. Good evening. Welcome to the new Yanni's. At the start of the relaunch service, Peter and Elise began to battle. I can call. I'll call them back. You call me then. Call me. Yeah. I'm, you just told me, wait a minute. Calm down. Elise is expediting. Listen to her. 
but Chef Ramsay's enforcement of a new system got them back in sync. At least that's just going to be up to you then to stay strong, making sure that we are staying united as a team. New ticket, rotisserie chicken with potatoes, gyro with potatoes. Work together, guys. Oh, yeah. Eggplant moussaka. Yes, I, I got it, it. Out. in there. Good. Out. Chef Ramsay is right. Instead of focusing on the negative and fighting constantly, pick each other up. As for the dining room, this may be one of the most successful relaunches ever. How's everything tasting so far? Really good. With customers raving about the food for the entire evening. Delicious. All of my customers, they're very happy. They're all coming back. Woohoo! Peter and Elise working in the kitchen and actually him being happy and proud of my daughter. I mean, it's priceless. Watching all of you work together is beautiful. Thank you for helping our entire family come together. I am energized for the new Yanis. There is no words to thank you enough. The future for Yanis restaurant it looks great right now. We won't let you down. I want to make him proud. I will serve him the best pumpkin hummus I've ever made. That was just a joke. <laughs> Look after each other. Oh, I'm going to miss this guy. Come back. <laughs> this went from one of the most depressing kitchen nightmares ever to one of the most uplifting. And in a matter of days, this restaurant leaped 30 years. And it's now an excellent Greek restaurant. And I can't ever remember rooting for family more than this one. Wow. Pumpkin hummus. What next? In the weeks that followed, Peter adapted to all the changes made by Chef Ramsay. Father and daughter continued to work well together in the kitchen. All right, our half chicken. The family is also happy to report that for the first time in a long time, Taria <laughs> is doing a lot more smiling than crying. It's a new bright day. I'm not crying. Everett, Washington, 25 miles north of Seattle, this blue-collar town is home to the Prohibition Grill, a southern restaurant opened in 2008 by professional belly dancer Rishi Brown. How are my lips? <laughs> They're fine. I had no restaurant experience at all, but I felt like if I could run a successful dance company all of these years, surely I could operate a restaurant business. Can I get anything for you, Molly? No. You good? Yeah. OK because I have no experience. I don't run my kitchen at all. Two tops, medium, medium, and rare. I hired someone who's had 30 years of restaurant experience. Good job, Rock. Not my first trip to the rodeo. <laughs> He's amazing at his job. He's a little bit lazy. Be right back, gentlemen. He likes to smoke. He likes to talk on his phone. Hello. You know, if I have an order, I have to text him that there's an order. How's it tasting over here? It's, it's really bland. bland. We have customers that complain all the time. It's mushy. Is it? OK. I've had dishes where I've smelled it, and I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Rocky, the ribs were disgusting. If we could fix it, we would. But Rocky keeps Rishi in the dark a little bit. What, what was the problem with the trout? There's no problem with the trout. All right. Oh, my god. Rishi is a little bit naive. She just sort of trusts Rocky. He has all the skills and all the knowledge. Yum. I don't know anything about what goes on back there. For Rishi to step in from belly dancing into running a restaurant, I don't want to use the word clueless, but she was, because she had no idea. <laughs> There's just some things that she does that I don't think a restaurant owner should do. <laughs> For instance, belly dancing. <laughs> It doesn't go with the theme of our restaurant. It makes no sense. Customers think it's weird. You know, I've been in the business 20 years. I know how a business is supposed to be run, and this is not the way. We got to get more people in here. <laughs> Unbelievable. If Prohibition Grill fails, I lose everything. I'm really discouraged. I really need help because I'm at a complete loss to understand what's happened. And I'm not stupid, but I really don't know what's going on.
Wow. Here he comes. Whoa. Wow, look at that. It's like something you get given in Vegas. You've learned to belly dance. What the hell has that got to do with the restaurants? Hi, welcome. Hello. I'm Rishi. Rishi, nice to yeah, see you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, that one's me. <laughs> 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 You're kidding me. Uh, am I coming for lunch or are we having a, 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 a belly dance? Do the owners know this goes on? Yeah, absolutely. I am the owner. Oh, you are the owner? Yes. How long have you been doing this? this 30 is... years. And then you bought a restaurant? Yes. And you still belly dance? Yes. It's really wow. fun. Yeah. Wow. It's about undulating and shimmying. Right. Rolling the body in motion with vibration. Oh, that's annulating. That's, that's just like annulating. rolling your tummy. That's right. Wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, whew, geez. <laughs> um, so, how do you go from belly dancing to becoming a restaurateur? Well, I decided over a cocktail one afternoon. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, were well. you inebriated at the time? Did it sort of make your <laughs> mind a little lightheaded? Yeah, I remember it and well. <laughs> But uh, then once it happened, the idea came in. There it was, it stayed. But had you ever worked in a restaurant before? Or? Um, I worked as a server for about six months one time when I was in college. Wow, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and style of food, what is that? Uh, we do a gourmet southern menu here. Gourmet. Uh -huh. wow. Fine wow. dining. We kind of have a steakhouse theme here going on, dinner house theme. Dinner house, steakhouse. Yeah. Fine dining. Yes, with a southern. little southern flair to it. Wow. Um, OK. In your mind, what's the biggest problem? In my mind, um, well, we don't have a grill here. So before, we don't have a grill here. It's called Prohibition Hence Grill. Prohibition Grill, right? Wow. A Prohibition Grill with no grill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK, let me take a seat. Sure. I have a special seat right back here for you. OK, great. Uh, nice boots, by the way. Oh, thank you. I really believe in what we've done here, and I'm sure that Chef Ramsay is going to love the food today. Um, have you just been to a party, or...? No, I no. just got all dressed up just for you today. Oh, so you just you, you don't dress like that normally? No, I do dress like this normally. Oh, you do dress like yeah. that normally? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I'm not special. Anyway, never mind. Um, Actually, I'm, you I'm, are, yeah, right. because this is a special occasion for sure. I got a little more dolled up, but right. this is my normal wow. get up. OK, great. Um, it's a big menu, huh? Yeah. Wow, Prohibition Grill, Southern Cuisine. Yes. Chef Rocky strives for originality and diversity, focusing on the quality of freshness. And without a grill, that's quite a statement. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Well, OK. Um, how do you rate the food? Uh, what do you give your food out of 10? I give our food a 10. A I ten. think it's, yeah, I think it's amazing. I love everything on the menu. OK, great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Chef Ramsay. Thanks for coming. You're and welcome. enjoy your lunch today, OK? Thank you. What a uh, bizarre dress sense from the owner. I mean, she looks like she's in a fancy dress Britney Spears concert party. Hello. Hello. I am Candace. How are you? How are you? Yeah, well. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Well, it's good to see you too. So, did Rishi get a chance to go over the menu at all with you? Uh, um, she did briefly. Um, let's order, shall we? Okay. Um, what's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so soup every two days. And last week? Uh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. Uh, let's yeah. have a soup of the week. <laughs> yes. OK, um, let's go for the filet. How would you like that prepared? Um, medium rare, please. Medium rare. Let's go for the collard greens as well, the sides. The balsamic brown sugar glazed salmon. And do you know what? Throw me in a portion of the pan-fried oysters. OK, we'll get that started for you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so here's my list. So we're going to do the like, oysters. So why don't I start with a cup of soup? Okay, dokie. Yeah? Okay. I was just seeing what you ordered. I thought those were really great choices. Our okay. oysters are wonderful here. And my chef always makes the best soups. Can I just let you into a little secret? Sure. Not in front of your customers. Can I whisper? Sure. Soup of the day is not soup of the day. It's the same soup that was on two weeks ago. What's happening? Soup of the day. Means a daily changing soup. Oh. 
I didn't even know what the soup of the day meant. I thought that just meant what soup we were serving that day. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was lame. Soup of the day. A new soup every day. OK, I'm going to talk to him about that. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize that soup of the day meant a fresh soup every day. Yeah. I thought soup of the day meant what is our soup for the day. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm not that stupid. It's just that's what I understood that meant. Candace, please. Chef Ramsey, here is our soup. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Wow. Soup of the week. Mm. That's just slop. Horrible, nasty loop with some sort of dusting around the outside of the plate. Did you have a chance to taste the soup? Yeah, I had a chance. Yeah. OK, and? Small, uh, yeah, just uh, not nice. Gnarly. Should I just get that out of here? Uh, yes, please. OK. Uh, when was the last time you tasted it? Um, I haven't tasted it. You didn't have this soup? I haven't had this soup. Wow. Rocky, we've had the same soup for seven days. Made it Saturday. But we wrapped it and stored it properly. OK, I'm going to tell you what. The oysters are going to be fresh and delicious, made right now for you. You mean opened? You don't make an oyster. You just open them. Huh? Oysters are opened. Oh, got it. No, he's not opening them daily. Oh, so he's opening the oysters and... No, he's buying them pre-opened. And were they bought? I think they came in today. We just checked? Yes. Thank you. Rocky? Yes? When were the oysters delivered? They were delivered here Friday. They were delivered Friday. Right. Yes. So the fresh oysters aren't exactly fresh, but they're from five days ago. Five days ago. But we don't get them here frozen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to know. Frozen oysters right. in Seattle. That would be bad. Right. So far, nothing is quite as it seems. OK. So these are the oysters. OK, great. Hand-fried oysters. Thank you. You're welcome. Normally, an oyster should taste of slightly salty, creamy, delicious. These are just tasteless. So he's managed to take a delicious tasting oyster and turn it into something that's cake and cornmeal and tastes of nothing. How are the oysters? Yeah, they're bland. They just taste of nothing. I mean, I just have a little, just have a little, just a small touch. I don't eat our oysters. Oh, you here. don't. Oh, oh, you don't eat them. I don't eat them oh, wow. here. They're not fresh, so. No. I only like fresh oysters. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm not gonna try those oysters. I think that they're gross. I know better. I'm not trying them. Um, he absolutely hated these. He thought they were gross. They're way too much cornmeal, bland. Had absolutely no flavor. Hmm. That's interesting. That makes no fucking sense. Chef Ramsay is in the middle of sampling Prohibition's menu. They're bland. They just taste of nothing. OK. And he has already discovered a lack of freshness, a lack of flavor, and a real lack of basic restaurant knowledge by the owner. Yeah, I wouldn't try the oysters because they're not fresh. Well, I thought fresh means that it's not frozen. Usually it means, like, fresh from the day, shell. Fresh from the shell. Right. Fresh, fresh from the, you know, all that sort of thing. So I'm like, like soup of the day. Stuff. Yeah. OK. Wow. Let's try this. OK, this is a filet mignon. This is filet mignon. This is the collard greens. Collard greens. And it's wrapped in bacon, right? Wrapped in bacon, yes. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Mm. I mean, it's dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. It's got a horrible taint to it. Well, how did we do on this? Yeah, this is yeah, not very good. Horrible grayness to it. I don't know what he's done. It's almost like the meat's been boiled. And those there, collard greens with just mush. Wow. May I take it out of Please. your way? And thank you, mate. <sighs> 10 out of 10 so far. I'm 0 out of 10, let me tell you. Uh, 
these are really mushy and tasteless and... Oh yeah, Richie's like, oh, I'll be the judge of that. That's ridiculous. Those are incredibly wonderful. <laughs> they are? They are a little mushy. They're, they're, little, mushy. they're a little mushy. That is the only problem, but the flavor profile is perfection. And the flavor? He thinks that it's been boiled. Boiled? boiled? I think it's good. Do yeah. you like it? I know it's perfect. I know it is. So here we actually have the salmon. Bloody hell. Yeah. That's the salmon. <laughs> That's the salmon. Wow. And why does the salmon go in a pinwheel? I don't I don't know. Thank you. I mean honestly, look at that plate. I mean, little balls of hush puppies, massive wedge of cornbread that looks like a door opener, and a pinwheel that fits perfectly, you know, on the side of my tomato. Wow. That is fucking disgusting. Pinwheel. Yeah, I feel like doing a cartwheel out of here. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, he's banging his hands on his head. That's really bad. Is he allergic to salt? No. There's no seasoning on there whatsoever. Aged balsam and vinegar, macerated with brown sugar on salmon, needs to be backed up with salt. Shall I take no? it away? Please, yeah, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Holy crap. OK. He did not like this. He thinks that the balsamic, the reduction, needs to be backed up with salt. Hmm. He wants to know the idea between the pinwheel of the salmon. He doesn't understand it. I think it's interesting. I like it. I think it's a, I think it's a cool presentation on the plate. I like it. OK. Way to stand up for your food, Reese. Way to stand up for your food. But I do. I like that. That's one of my favorite things on our menu, is that presentation of the salmon. What can you do? Oh, shit. Here he comes. Introduce me to the team. This is Jeff. Jeff. Hi. Dennis. Dennis. Yep. And this is Rocky. Right. I feel like I've just gone 12 rounds with you, let me tell you. Let me read you something. Prohibition Grill Southern Cuisine. Chef Rocky strives for quality and freshness. Correct. Freshness? The soup from last week that was called Soup of the Day. Gloopy, under-seasoned, it wasn't even hot. It was just hideous. Big fan of that soup. Big fan of the soup. What I've just eaten has been an embarrassment. Pan-fried oysters, just solid cornmeal with no seasoning. It needs some form of seasoning. I didn't know that. You don't even know what soup of the day is. Can I talk to you about the pinwheel of salmon? Can you go and get me a pinwheel? Yes. Hurry up, please. Chef Ramsey, I like the pinwheel. I'm not asking you like it. Oh. You give your food 10 out of 10, so right. me talking to you about food, it's like, yeah, I'm talking to a brick wall behind you. Right. I liked it. I thought it looked nice and kind of unique and different. Kind of unique and different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many strips do you get out of a salmon? 14. Like, until I just looked at it, I didn't even think this was so small. Right. And even the bloodlines on there as well. Nasty. Chef to chef. Have you any idea how bad that makes you look? On decisions about how food is prepared, I believe in what they do back there. That's their thing, especially Rocky. Come on. Color greens, overcooked, tasteless mush. I thought they tasted great. They I were overcooked, what? though. You knew they were overcooked. Have right. you any idea how fucking deluded you sound? What? How can something be fucking delicious and overcooked? There's no such thing! Man! Uh. Are customers that stupid? Are you? No. Are you? No. Are you? No. And you are! Yes, sir. Why did you ask me here if your food's 10? Well, I was hoping that you could come here and help me get this business to the next level because I can't seem to do that on my own right now. How bad is your business currently? How much money per week are you losing? At least $2,000. So that's $8,000 a month. That's 100 grand a year. Does that not sink in anyone's fucking mind? I don't know what to say. I like the food. I think the food is great here. 
After only a short time in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is shocked by how lazy Chef Rocky is and how clueless Rishi is. Can you get me some lipstick? Uh-huh. And before dinner service, there is one issue he wants to take care of right away. Prohibition grill. My ass. No more false advertising. He's putting tape over the grill. Excellent. I got a crab cake going out with a Caesar and a small salad. Where's Rishi, by the way? She's getting ready for belly dancing. Tonight? We're ready to go on the second check as well. Candace, you're up. Where was this? What? Cornbread. Huh? When was this cornbread made? That was made the other day, and we weren't even going to serve it. We just threw it back here because we weren't even going to serve it. You just we, threw we, it. We, we Ooh, made that. Dennis, 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 big deep breath. You just made it. Made it the, the other, other day. Yeah. Threw it back here because you weren't serving it. Because, yeah, it got, bur it got burnt, and Rocky told me just go throw it in the back room for right now. I just feel that. Oh, I know. It's terrible. I don't know. It's pretty bad. Music, 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 music. You are kidding me. Five, six, seven, and. Are you fucking serious? I'm not joking, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Close the doors, put me off my dinner. Can't move. She's just in her own world, and she thinks that everybody's loving it. And as you look around, you can tell that people are confused. <laughs> Some even mortified. Chef Ramsay locked himself in the freezer to get away from the Billy dancing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is weird. <laughs> yeah. Belly dance. That was a belly flop. Following the impromptu belly dance. Kitchen, please. So this is pretty much rare, and they wanted a medium steak. There's a steady stream of undercooked dishes coming back to the kitchen. Back in the oven, please. Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Colleen. This supposed to be medium? Oh, God. Oh, no, come on. God. What is this? Rocky, could you put these steaks on uh, just a tiny bit more? All right, guys, this is just in the last five minutes. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, can someone get a grip, please? Another medium refire. This is normal, all these complaints with temperatures on meat. Mm -hmm. Especially on the steaks. Is that acceptable to you? No. People hate our food. So far, so good this evening. And she turns a blind ear, which frustrates us all, you know? Why does Rishi walk around like everything's just perfect and a big smile on her face? That's what she believes oh, no. it all is. What's wrong, darling? What's wrong? The ravioli's cold. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, the kitchen needs help. Lots. Is everything tasting good? Yeah. <laughs> the gravy feels like I got the, the bottom of the pot. OK, thanks for your comments. Um, I just want to let you know at this table right here, they both think that the gravy tastes like it came out of the bottom of the pan. They're really unhappy about that. Should I just go ahead and take that Rishi, back to the kitchen then? Yeah, it's your restaurant. Which yeah. table? Where would it? This table right Let's here. Let's deal with it now. Come okay. on. Um, my apologies. Madam, if you're not happy with it, I'd rather you didn't eat it. The sauce tastes like liver. Brief fire a fresh chicken for the lady yeah. with no sauce. Sorry about that. We'll get that going for you. Can you taste the gravy? I'm going to taste Please. it, yeah. It tastes really gritty to me. Where is it? Now I see, Where? right here. Jeff, can you pass me that gravy? Everyone's complaining now about the gravy. I see why they think it tastes like liver, because it's really gritty. What was it made? Gravy was made last week and frozen. Last week and frozen. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> it's sour. All of you. Get any plate of gravy off the tables off now. Off the tables now. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Dry as anything. The meat's cooked and raw on the same shelf. Rocky, you got the ribs there. What's next to the ribs? Raw pork. Raw pork. 
Yeah, Rishi, please. Rishi. Rule number one. Cross-contamination. Ex explain to Rishi. Never saw a cooked product next to a raw product. So just look at that. What is that there? Raw product. Raw pork. What's that there? Cooked ribs. Cooked ribs. And this here, what is this, guys? Oh, my god. It's trout. What is New that? trout, old trout. Just feel how sticky that is on top. That's the old trout. And that there is the fresh one underneath, right? Now we pull today. Now you pull today. What is that? Bread pudding. Bread pudding. Bread what? Oh, my god. Rocky, come on. When was that cooked? Saturday. What day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. And what we didn't sell on Saturday, what do you think should happen? It's tossed it. Oh, my gosh. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry and I'm so disappointed, but whatever you're eating now, just stop. Stop. Dinner service at the Prohibition Grill has just gone from plain bad. What is that there? Raw product. What's that there? Cooked ribs. To downright dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're eating now, just stop. And Chef Ramsay has had enough. I am not going to stand here and watch this kitchen send you food that is A, cross-contaminated, B, reheated from frozen. It's an absolute embarrassment. Yeah, obviously not serving anything else. There won't be any more food coming to the table tonight. We're really sorry about this experience. We had a lot of really unsatisfied, unhappy guests tonight. And that hurts. Ridiculous. Let's go. I can't help you one minute longer. Do you know why? Why? Because you, madam, cannot help yourself. Lazy chef. OK, well, this is the deal. First of all, I've known about Rocky being lazy for a really long time. I've called him out on it a 1,000 times. And you know what I get? This is what you get for how much you pay me. I don't make enough. This is, you That's know. That's not entirely accurate. Well, what? it is accurate. Like, he and I go around once a year about this exact thing, because he doesn't make the money that he wants to make. I like him so much in so many ways and so many things that he does. But he's not held to the same standard that everybody else is held to here by me. Because what am I going to do? I don't know how to come in here. I don't know how to fucking train anybody else. I so, don't know how to butch the meats. So, I don't know how so to do anything. So you fear losing a chef yes. that doesn't yes. care? Yes. That's ruining your business. There's some things Rocky is doing good. And every single time. What do I do a word with you? Because I, I, I can't fucking sit here and take this shit any longer. Ugh. I am not going to listen to excuses. You keep on telling me that he's good and he's... Well, because he's been here with me all these four years, and, and my feeling is is that he has the, the skills to do it. Why are you convinced that he has the skills to do it? Because I don't know about that job, and he's been here since day one, and he has led me to believe. He he's led me to believe. He has. He has. And intuitively, I've known it. You allowed him to take you hostage. I have. So you deserve what you get then. Because you're not prepared to step up. No, I stepped up. I fired him two months ago. He was gone for a week in the kitchen. They didn't know how to do the order. They just didn't know. And then I brought him back again. I actually feel sorry for you. Do you know why? You're being used. Step up. Yeah. Get a grip. Yeah. Because time right now is not your friend. I'm done for tonight. Yeah. Chef Ramsay thinks he's unbelievably lazy has got me over a barrel, and the fact that I allow him to be the kind of chef that he is here is unacceptable. Well, and he's gotten away with it for so long. Like, how, how is he going to change his behavior after this long? After shutting down the restaurant, Hello. Hi, ladies. Let's have a little seat over here. Chef Ramsay is completely bewildered. He's looking for some explanation, and he begins the day with Rishi and her staff. Let's be honest, last night was a disaster. Everyone agreed? 
Yeah, yes. absolutely. And customers were absolutely at their wits' end. I mean, there was one table in the front there that had their dish refired three times. When was the last time that happened? I'd say it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Candice? Absolutely. What is the response from the chef? He usually takes it really personal mm -hmm. and thinks that they're wrong and the, food, right. and the food tastes just fine. What does that tell you? It's Rocky. He and I started here at the same time, yeah, and he was very sorry. passionate. Uh, in the last two years, 30% maybe. Wow. Uh, last time I worked, got 15 orders. He goes outside behind the building. 15 orders, and your head chef is outside. Sorry. Smoking. And I just don't feel like going outside to get him, so I text him. Do you think it's right that he should be outside and you have to text him to come in? Oh, God, no. No. And we have to supplement Rocky's income How by tipping. On average, a week, We tip about 3%. 3% of, of the food, food sales. sales. The head chef getting tips? He told me that that's what other people do in other restaurants, and that's fair. They put the food out to give the server the opportunity to what? earn the tip, so they should told deserve we, that. We've told her, though, that's not how it is in the industry. No, it's not. He's made me feel this way over time, that I owe him. Why do you owe him? Because I'm afraid that I can't make this happen without him, because... So you because think I not... just I feel like I don't have the experience to know what to do so, if I don't have someone who... So you think he's not replaceable? Right. So how many people feel that this restaurant would be better off without Rocky? Sorry. Why do you support Rocky the way you're doing? I'm just scared to take that chance. Rishi, this is crazy. I know. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm not like that in any other places this in my life. This is crazy, my darling. You should not be put in this awful, vulnerable situation and be beholden to a chef that's tearing you apart. Rishi is completely afraid of change. She doesn't like to change her hair. She doesn't like to change her house. She doesn't like to change anything. Do you mind if I just talk to Rishi alone, please? I'm just scared because I... Because <laughs> when, I, when I did this, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then last night when you just stood up and you told Rocky, just stop making excuses. This is wrong. You're lazy. I just have been so scared to do that. I appreciate your honesty. I can really feel, especially today, that you care. But when I first arrived, you were almost tiptoeing over the issues as opposed to tackling them head on. I know. But with Rocky, just even if he steps up right now, who's to say what's going to happen? I can't even tell you. But why let the misery go on? I don't want to. I'm just so scared. <laughs> Help me. I'm here. I'm here. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm so upset. Come on. I'm here, and we're going to get this thing sorted. Okay. I was too scared to make that decision with Rocky to not have any anyone there that could say, OK, well, let's right. do this. OK, <laughs> no, I need to find someone else. But I'm just afraid that there's not going to be somebody else's. That Because he has me believing that, like, I, know. I don't pay enough to have, I really Listen do. to me and listen very carefully. <laughs> I will do all I can to find you a chef. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is your decision, your business, your future, and your money. You need to take responsibility. I can't do that for you, OK? I your know point. it has to be done. Why would I want to go forward with someone who's sabotaging my business? Don't worry, OK? Thank you so much. I'll see you shortly. I'm getting on the phone. Okay. Stand strong, okay. OK? It's the right thing to do to let Rocky go.
After a heart-to-heart -heart with Chef Ramsay, Rishi now finally understands what is the main problem of the restaurant. Oh, Rish. Okay, so I'm gonna fire Rocky today because Chef Ramsay's gonna help me find someone. It became very clear to me that Rocky's not gonna change. Even if he says he's gonna step up and blah, 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 he's not gonna change. That's the right thing to do. It's your business, it's your livelihood. It's, it's your life. So now what? Oh, fuck. Hello. Hi. Hey. <sighs> What's going on? Just sit. We'll all get okay. going out the door. Okay, so um, I don't want to. I don't want to beat around the bush about it. Unfortunately, I'm letting you go. It just things haven't changed, even after our last reconciliation. Things still haven't changed. I'm sorry. Yeah, I. Uh, I understand. You know, I've gotten complacent, and uh, I realize that, and. Uh, Sorry I had to come to this. I'm sorry. I'm so relieved to know that I don't have to feel like I'm held hostage anymore. I have the courage now to make the changes necessary. <sighs> How'd it go with Rocky? You know, it went really well. Good. Um, Rocky took responsibility for what happened. He didn't try to make me feel like it was my fault or... Right or anything. Good. I felt like a boss. I Good. felt empowered. I felt like Good. I'm making the right decision and Good. I'm going to make it right now. Yeah. Let's get the rest of the staff. OK. And, uh, you and I are going to have a little fun. Right, team, I want all of you just to go in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's go. OK, do you have any trousers or uh, jeans or nope. no? That's oh. it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a naked chef. I know, right? <laughs> When was the last time you actually cooked a dish in here? Never. You've never cooked in here? Ever? Ever? No. Wow. You should never, ever be intimidated by the kitchen. Right. With Rocky, I never felt invited to come into my kitchen. I felt like that was his place, and my place was my job. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. To be really honest... Please. I love to cook. Seriously? Yeah. Seriously. That is good to know. You know that. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Right, first on, slow-cooked duck salad. A little touch of olive oil. Just a touch. We've got some fresh herbs, frisé salad. Now, your turn. Take your spoon and just baste over the duck legs, please. Tilt the pan and baste. Nice. There we are. Doesn't she look great in the kitchen, by the way? Yes, she does. Huh? Yes, she does. <laughs> Good. There you go. How's that now? Way better. Good. Hold the bone. Sit that. Nice. Perfect. Yeah! Wow. Thank you. You just cooked those dishes there with me, like a boss, like an owner. That's what you've got to do when you've taken the responsibility of opening a restaurant. It's about having a presence. Right. I want you all to get a knife and fork. We're going to sit down and have a bite to eat. It's amazing how just being in the kitchen with Chef Ramsay, I felt really empowered. Now, Not this is a 10. <laughs> I am not going to be afraid anymore. <laughs> I love it. After a great deal of research, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night to transform the restaurant from a southern style grill into a gastropub. Hey, good morning. How are we? Good. Now I have some very, very exciting changes to show you. Yeah. Right. Take off your blindfolds. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so awesome. Prohibition Grill is no longer a grill. Welcome to your new gastro pub. Yeah. We've brought out the texture of those amazing bricks. The chevrons give it that modern feel. Look at the bar. We've brightened up the whole room with that beautiful red lacquered bar. I love it. You love this? I love 
good. It's a good time for a change. I'm so excited right now here in Everett. Nobody has a building that looks like this. It's beautiful in here. I love it. Rishi, yesterday I made you a promise that I would find you a chef. <gasps> chef, really? This chef has cooked for over 20 years in the Northwest. Oh, God. I'm going to introduce <laughs> you to Tyler Pelegri. Chef! Ah! How are you, sir? Let me tell you something about this young man. He is opening up his very own cool, hip, amazing restaurant in downtown Seattle, Radiator. Yep. Now, until then, he's going to be here with you, Rishi. And after he's gone, he'll make sure there's a chef replacing him that is up to the standard of what both you and chef requires. Excited? Yes! <laughs> Good. Now I feel like I have a real chance for real success. I'm so You're grateful welcome. to have you here. In keeping with the new gastropub theme. Oh my god. Oh wow. Yum. Chef Ramsay has designed a menu that can be easily executed in Rishi's small kitchen. Oh my, oh my god. Oh, Chef Ramsay, I'm so excited. Good. I want you all to dig in, have a taste. Here you go, honey. Yeah. I'm gonna start oh over my here. Gosh. Oh my god. That was amazing. With the food and the decor now looked after, Chef Ramsay has one more makeover to reveal. And that is Rishi. Wow, you look amazing. Thanks. I oh. love it. How's my hair look? Obviously, it's about time. Rishi's attire, it was a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> With Chef Tyler now at the helm, new systems have been implemented. Yeah, and I'm right on top. Good. And that includes Rishi taking a lead role as expediter. When I fire entrees, I take and stick them here. Perfect. Fire left one, please. Left one heard. To spread the word about the new prohibition, Chef Ramsay invited influential bloggers. That bourbon glaze is fantastic. I'm absolutely amazed and so proud of Rishi for taking charge of her restaurant. Put your right hand up. <laughs> yes. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. I will no longer be hosting belly dancers. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> good night, my darling. Okay, good Take night, care. Chef Ramsey. Thank you. Thank you. The knowledge that he's given me to empower me to be a real restaurant owner, I've never had that. <sighs> this has to be one of the most unusual kitchen nightmares ever. Rishi had no idea that her loyalty towards Rocky was actually ruining her business. Thankfully, she saw the light, stepped up, and made a very, very brave decision. More importantly, she now understands the key ingredients to running a successful dining room. Belly dancing is not one of them. Soul food, belly dancing in the Northwest. Wow. In the weeks that followed, the one and only gastropub in Everett, Washington is a hit. Onion soup, crab cakes. And for the first time since she opened. All right, and the salmon for you, my dear. Rishi truly feels she is in control of her very own restaurant. I'm so excited that Everett has a, a restaurant like this. I know. Nashville, Tennessee, the epicenter of country music and home to Chappie's Restaurant, a Cajun eatery owned by John Chappie Chapman and his wife, Star. Look pretty. I started when I was about two and a half with my mother in the kitchen. I was the one that would put the crabs in the pot. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We opened our first Chappies in a little town called Long Beach, Mississippi in 1984. Bon appetit. And it was a huge overnight success. But in 2005, after Hurricane Katrina destroyed the restaurant, Chappie and Star were forced to relocate to Nashville. Chappie, my table doesn't like the crab cakes or the turtle soup. That's the Nashville folks we know and love. I think people in Nashville have a problem with New Orleans cuisine. They hate it all. <laughs> oh, well, these people don't know. Fun. I definitely don't think our issue is the people of Nashville. Food is in the bag. It's overcooked and tastes fishy. The issue is more Chappie. Don't argue. Move on. Chappie is extremely hard-headed. There's nothing wrong with my food. Yeah. Both came back. If Chappie would listen to feedback, the business would be doing much better. <laughs> it's a barrel Monday. 
That's what I need working. The menu, it's like a book. I do want to let you know about some appetizers that we're featuring tonight that are not listed. Not to mention the 15, 16 things we have to recite. We have crab cakes in here. Swordfish piccata. We also have our blackened shrimp. Two lobster tails that stacked on top of one another twice. I think that's it. That's a lot to remember. I said it's your fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see how he, he makes any money. We do not have the volume to be able to sell all that stuff. Chappies definitely needs an update. It's not 1984 anymore. They called, they want their wallpaper back. Chappie on 120, the lady did not like the salad dressing. What was the matter with it? She said that blue cheese dressing is too thin. Just get her out of here. Yes, Chappie. Everybody thinks they know better. So it's my job to make sure it stays the way it's supposed to be. What are y'all doing? I need to know. We're taking the prime rib off of his check because he didn't like it and he returned it. He didn't it. like the other one either. He sent them both back, the fish too. John, John, for Chappies to be saved, I think we need Chappie to change. Why waste my time? And it's not about your pride or your experience. It's about doing what you need to do to help your business evolve and go to the next level. I don't know what's happening. Ultimately, the success of Chappies relies on Chappie. Oh, jeez. Wow. What is that? Ghastly. Hello. Hi, welcome. Wow, what an entrance <laughs> that was. That mannequin's fucking scary. No, jeez. Oh, it spooked me. <laughs> First name is? I'm Nicole. Uh, nice to see you. Wow, this place is like a museum in here. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yes, got a lot of uh, New Orleans wow. paraphernalia everywhere. Chappie and Star, actually, his wife, had a restaurant on the Gulf Coast. Wow, wow, wow. Is that him there with a big chef's hat? That is, yeah. Wow. Where is the man? Uh, he is actually in the kitchen. I'd like to have a quick word with him. Sure. Let me go check. Thank you. I'll be right back. Oh, wow, what's that? It looks like a costume that Elton John would wear. Is that Chappie? Wow. Hey, Chappie. Uh, Hi, chef, honey. chef Ramsay just got here, and before he sits, he wants to know if you have a second to chat with him. It'll, it'll be just a few minutes. OK. He's going to be right out. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> yeah, he'll, he's going to be right out, he told me. Is he alone in the kitchen? Does he have any assistance? Mm -mm, no, he's, he's got some back there. He's, uh, I think there's three men back there with him. Um, wow. Let me go check and see uh, how yeah. he's doing, OK? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are we getting close, Chappie? Yeah. OK, he is right up in the front. I'm gonna get a glass of water, then I'll go meet Darth Vader. Wow. How are you? Gordon, nice to meet you. Those pants are uh, I'm a hot pepper, brother. Wow, wow, wow. Throw back to the 80s? It's just something I've always worn. Wow, look at that thing there. That's huh? when I was cute and young. Cute and young? How long you ago was that? You remember those days? I do. <laughs> well, just take me back to the beginning. How long have you been here? Since uh, June of 06. Right. After Katrina. Mm -hmm. What's the comparison between here and Mississippi? Mississippi was kind of a uh, never ending, it was like 23 years. So it was a long time in successful business and doing what I do. Amazing. And here, talk me through the first two years, business wise. Kind of a rough uh, beginning here in Nashville. Of course, we were the new guys in town, people are afraid of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do traditional Nashville food, no. our burgers and pulled pork and no. chicken wings. We don't do that. So no. we, we do the New Orleans food. So a lot of people were afraid. And that's what we're trying to deal with still to this day. <laughs> and here, you're taking a play on fine dining? Uh, it's it's it, more like I'm taking a play on casual fine dining. Yeah, but I mean, look at those napkins. Yeah. Um, waiters, bow ties. I mean, it doesn't strike me as somewhere casual. I mean, it's quite formal, huh? Uh, no. Right, OK. My god, I've been doing this a long time. I've eaten all over the world. I see what people do. I don't think I'm so far off. And how would you rate your food currently out of 10? What would you give it? I wouldn't put it out of it. I didn't think it was delicious. Just ask him. So I give him a 10 every time I do it, you know? OK, well, let me sit down, have a little look around the menu, and uh, get up to speed with your, uh, your style of cooking. OK. Thank you. I think they have a table over there for you. Yes. I think my food is the best New Orleans cuisine in Nashville, hands down. So I can't figure out why people haven't come and enjoy. All right. I was going to put my chappy hat on. <laughs> 
We actually get a lot of people to do that. Do you? <laughs> uh-huh. Little chappies. Okay, so this right. is our lunch selection right Thank here. You. Wow, it's a big lunch menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dinner menu is even larger. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. <clears throat> Hello. How are you? Fantastic. And yourself? I'm so happy to be here. Welcome to Chappie's. My name is TJ. TJ. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. We have like 10 different specials. What? As well as uh, five different appetizers. 15 specials? Yes. On top of this? Yeah. And they change every day? It's a lot to take in. No eggs, actually. They stayed exactly the same. Huh? They've been the same since I've been here. Wow. So you know this um, 8 95 crawfish? I saw it's on there twice. It's the same on the lunch menu as it is on the dinner menu, only yeah. the price changes. So for lunch menu, the crawfish to Tuve is 8 95 How much is it for dinner on the special? Uh, 29 95 So it jumps $20. And what changes? Nothing. TJ, come on. The price jumps three and a half times for the special and the dinner, and nothing changes. You don't even throw me an extra couple of tails in there. Shame on you, TJ. Well, not me. I, I... Is that just for the crawfish, or is that for all the specials? It's pretty much, it's pretty standard. Wow. So let's start off with, please, and the fried green tomatoes, please. Okay. The chicken and sausage gumbo as well, please. Okay. And I got to go for that steak and lobster rocket. Very good. Thank you. Wow. Fried green tomatoes. Thank you. Fried green. The rest of his order is going in now. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you, Star Chapman. Star, nice to see you. Please, take a seat. Well, welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. My first time in Nashville. Really? How hey, do you look. like it? Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. We're so, happy to have you. Are you involved in business daily? Always. I really? Um, yes, hands on. on. I work the front of the house. I work the office. Wow. I wear many hats. Uh -huh. Have and to. Your husband, of course, Chaffee. Um, how long have you been together? 29 years. 29 years. Yes, wow. sir. Does he listen to your input? Not always. Not always. Why? Because he's a hard-headed man. I think he's uh, set in his ways. But when it's not working, you to adapt. Exactly. Looking at our menu, I think it's mm -hmm. too big. I think it needs to be downsized. It's too much. You've got to be able to adapt and change. It seems like you've hit a wall. Absolutely. That's, and that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the, the key. I believe Chef Ramsay is the only person who could turn Chappie around. For me, it's like trying to blow air into a balloon with a hole in it. All right, the uh, fried green tomatoes appetizer. Mm -hmm. Is that parmesan on there? It is, and crawfish tails and hollandaise sauce. Thanks, TJ. You're welcome. I'm dying to taste these okay, uh, fried good. green tomatoes. Well, enjoy. What Thank, you very Thank you. Well, how would you rate the food, by the way? Excellent. Excellent. I mm -hmm. just think it needs to be modernized, revamped, and the menu. She says it's excellent, and yet it needs to be modernized and revamped. And that doesn't sound like excellent. Because surely if it was excellent, you wouldn't have to do any of those things. It's bland. All right, what do we think of the fried green tomatoes? Uh, yeah, bland. Uh, that hollandaise sauce is almost just like a sort of a melted butter. Yeah, it doesn't even taste of anything. Sorry about that. Not your fault. Right, next up would be the chicken and sausage gumbo. Gumbo. Thank you. You're very welcome. You said your hollandaise sauce was extremely bland. This tastes like a strong butter sauce. It's very good. When we bring a dish back to the kitchen, he acts like it's an insult, not that there's possibly something wrong with the actual dish. Gumbo. Wow. It looks like... Chappie took a crappie in my gumbo. It's like a puddle. It's just watery. Really watery. That is fucking disgusting. If this dish was done right, it could be a game changer, but right now, it's a game ender. TJ, is there a problem in the kitchen? It's not even hot. It's not hot. No? I mean, it's just like lukewarm and gloopy. See the skin? Yeah. Very watery. There's no flavor anywhere. Just bland. Gotcha. We'll get it fixed. We'll bring the next one. Thank you. OK. Wow. Shabby, first of all, this is cold. It's just absolutely filled with water. Filled with water? I thought I drained it pretty well. <gasps> Hi. Hey. Hates everything. Uh-oh. He hadn't liked anything I've done so far. 
Alright, garnish it up. Steak and lobster rocket. Steak and lobster rocket. Thank you. That's a very funny looking lobster. Seriously. How much is this dish? $36.95. Gee, come on, stop. And why is the fillet butterfly like that? And cut like that? He cuts it off and then pounds it thin. He beats the crap out of a fillet to tenderize it when it's the most stunning cut. Wow. I'll try it. No. Please. <laughs> Come on. That is chewy. The lobster I couldn't even eat. As I was trying to bite down on it, it was bouncing back. Steak and lobster rocket. Someone needs a fucking rock out of his ass to wake up. Oh, my god. Robert. Don't swallow that one. Do you need a napkin? <laughs> Maybe Chappie needs to get on a fucking rocket. A rocket back to New Orleans to see how it's properly done. Fast. He said the dish is just a mess. I don't want to throw it down his throat if he doesn't want it. Well, he couldn't even get through the steak. It was all gristle. It was gristle? Yeah. What do you mean gristle? Gristle and chewy. OK, well, it's like butter. Is it not? Chef Ramsay's a dumbass. You know, if there's something that I think is absolutely wrong, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I'm going to tell him. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. After enduring Chappie's flavorless Cajun cuisine, can you take me through the kitchen, please? I sure can. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen, looking for an explanation. I don't know where to start. I was so excited coming here, but I'm disappointed. Did you cook everything? Uh huh. The fried green tomatoes. What are you coating them in? Corn flour. Corn flour. A little seasoning. For me, there was no seasoning. There was bland. And the holiday sauce was just melted butter. Yeah. Steak and lobster, rocket. The lobster was like rubber. And when you have a $36 entree, you don't expect to see filet pounded. That's the last thing you ever do. I've never met a chef anywhere in the world that pounds out a filet. Why would you pound something that is tender? Just the technique of what we do, just shaping it. So it fits, stacks. It's not clay, it's meat. The chicken and sausage gumbo, bland. But you know what? Forget the seasoning. It wasn't even hot, it was lukewarm. Well, I sent it out as soon as I did it. So it was actually bubbling hot. Well, yeah, I'm not exaggerating, it wasn't bubbly hot. <laughs> I don't find it funny. Okay. Can I have a word on my own with the owners, please? You guys get back to whatever you'd be doing. I'm not going to say this in front of your staff. Okay. You're a joke. The food was disgusting. Everything was off? Everything. And that's without factoring in the prices. Going through each and every dish, there was a, a consistent pattern. It's like you've shut shop up and gone home. Chappie is not very happy. You're done. Are you done? Of what? Just cooking in general. No. That's you at your best. Pardon? That's you at your best. Kind of. Really? Uh, I've toned down some spices for Nashville. When we first opened, people complained. Too oh, salty, every too spicy. Too, too much heat. I'm not looking for excuses. Well, I, I, you know, what can I say? You asked me to help. But I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your asses and say food was amazing. I don't want you to blow uh, anything back. up my whatever. So let's not go here and go through yeah. this. You've said your piece. Let's move on. Yeah. You've given up. Given up what? OK, I'm going to get some fresh air. Me too. Do it. OK. Wow. Uh, Mark, how does the line work? Fry cook. Fry cook. Who's frying tonight? Real. Chef. Chef. Frying tonight. OK, great. Oysters. Wow. Uh, Chef, they stay out like that? We should be Kim. You are kidding morning. me, aren't you? No, no, no. I got my thermometer in the chicken. Wow. 
and check the gel. Uh, listen, I'm not that dumb now. Just put ice in there to check the temperature. Ah, I know. Just throw some ice and I'll check it. I want to look good. Right now, we got the first ticket. We got a grill grouper working. Chappie, you fry the grouper with the beef? We blacken everything in the same pan, yes. What happens if the customer was a pescatarian? A pescatarian? Yeah, they only eat fish. And they don't expect to eat their fish with meat juices. I've never heard of one, to tell you the truth. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, can't believe that's going out. Uh, Tom, turn me to that table. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting. Are you pescatarian? I am. Can I borrow you for two seconds? Would you mind? <laughs> Thank you. Chappie, have you got two seconds? It's one of your customers. Really? Yeah. Let me explain something really important, because I'm not fucking around now. This lady is a pescatarian. Strictly fish. What I'm trying to explain, because you're not listening, is that her fish was cooked in there along with the beef. It's not a general practice. It's just the things you never do. It's the golden rule, but it's totally oblivious. Do you get sick on meat? Oh, very. I'm sorry. I'll make sure that's in a pan of its own, as it should be, and cooked properly, OK? I appreciate My that. apologies. Thank you. Gets cooked in the same stuff that the meat's been cooked in. Oh, oh my and it's god. Disgusting back there. Why is oh why is mayonnaise that colour? I thought that was a jar of mustard. What's the date on this? So by 27th of February 2010. Expired three years ago. My god. That. How old is that? Raw beef and cooked beef. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. As I always say, everything you need to know about a chef is in his fridge. Shrimp. Just stuck there. Sat. Absolutely stinking. Oh my god. Look at that. What in the fuck is that? There's a shrimp hanging down there. That's all mold. Unbelievable. Bloody hell. It's dinner service at Chappie's, and Chef Ramsay has just made a shocking discovery. Oh, my god. That's all mold. Bloody hell. What may be the filthiest fridge he has ever seen. What a mess. Do you have a minute yes, urgently, sir. please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Chappie, can I have you for one minute, please? This fridge is an absolute mess. I have never seen that, ever. Then I want to know, what the hell are you doing? Something must have spilled. Something must have spilled. Can you stop bullshitting for once and just try to get real? When are these from? Just out of interest. Those are fresh potatoes. They are fresh today. No, they're not fresh today. Oh, my good gosh. Just touch that. What is that? Warm. Have you any idea what happens to sauce when it's covered and it's hot? Tomorrow morning it's what? Sour. Sour, thank you. And when is this from? This is a cake that we... This is a cake. We can't even answer me now. How old is that? I don't know. Oh, my good gosh. See the mold in these things? Yes. And this one here, look. See that there? Mm. Uh, you stop. You're not getting anything. 86 it. Come here, you. Come here. Now, have a look down there. What do you see? Mold. Mold. You want me to let you take something else out of here? No. Now, fuck off. Yes, sir. Have you any idea how long a shrimp needs to stay inside the fridge to get that much mold on there? No. Is it between the... Is it between the what? I don't know what it is, where it was. All night, you're just deflecting. How about some form of honesty? He needs some help, obviously. He needs some help? Are you serious? I'm very serious You're about... You're one foot away from that shit down there. Which he obviously didn't know was down there. What? Well, do you think he would have let it stay down there if he knew it was there? Oh, so he couldn't see it? Obviously not. You have raised the bar. In fact, you right now are a legend, because you have raised the bar so fucking high that you've taught every chef in the world how not to cook. Congratulations. I feel horrible. That's a mess. Seeing that fridge was beyond belief. I, I could not believe it. I had no idea. I just am speechless. Star, you and me for a second. What is going on? 
I have no idea. I don't go in the walk-in cool. I don't manage it. It's not my territory. I never even thought to look in it. I am mortified. I am embarrassed You've by got that. Every right to defend your husband, but I'm not here to sugarcoat. I understand. And you're Gordon, right to and be I mortified. Don't expect you to but I need it. some form of understanding. You cannot perform like that. You must see the problem, surely. I surely do. What's happened to him? I don't know what's happened to him. If I knew, I could help him work through it. I can't start to work with someone that's given up. And right now, he's shown me everything to confirm he's done just that. And honestly, hand on heart, I think I'm too late. Oh, jeez. It doesn't seem like he cares. No, he does care. How do you know? I don't know. Let me go talk to him. What changed? What changed him from being so passionate and energetic into almost apathetic? I love you. I love you, too. Have you given up? You still love to cook? Yeah. Then show him you want it. OK. I know I'm ready, and whatever it takes, Chappie's gonna have to come up and meet me, and let's do this together. Wow. Ah, oh, fucking hell. I'm totally mortified and embarrassed. I know. So, but show some life. Show that you care. Oh, we have done all of this for nothing. I think Chef Ramsay nailed it. And I feel a little let down. He's going through the motions, but he's not feeling the juice anymore. At last night's dinner service, Chef Ramsay was horrified at the bad practices. Sit down, please. This morning, he has gathered the staff to see if he can uncover any other major issues with the restaurant. Yeah, I came here to help, but my biggest concern right now is Chappie. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a more dangerous job when you've got an owner at the helm that doesn't care. Have you ever tried to talk to him? You even bothered to ask him a question, and you are pissing him off. The other day, our guest wanted to know what was in a sauce, so I asked him. He said, why the fuck do you want to know? The condescending and the rudeness and the yelling where the customers can hear. That's really, really bad. I feel like I always get yelled at a lot just for everything. He shuts you down, snaps at you. You're not even allowed to speak to him until he speaks to you. Is he always that condescending? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He always takes everybody's at He takes the waiters. All we care about is our money and nothing else. Everybody's stealing from him. Everybody's against him. Yeah. Everybody. What's it like dealing with complaints in the kitchen? He usually gets upset. Yeah, he gets angry. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this. He'll taste it. He blames everything on us or the guests. Give me an example. I've had a coconut cake that was returned to me. I brought it back to Chappie. He dug it out of the trash can. What? Went back and asked the guy what was wrong with it. From the trash. Not good. Is he different now that I'm here? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. In what way? He's calmer. He's calmer. He's calmer, yes. I appreciate everybody's honesty. This is about getting better, let me tell you. So as difficult as it may have been, I want you to say what you've said to me, to the man himself. No matter what happens, I've got your back. So be confident, be honest. For me to tell Chappie what I'm feeling and what's been going on, it's, it's definitely nerve wracking. Here they are. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to fire me or how he's going to accept it. Chappie is usually a person who flies off the handle. They have some things to say. Susan, kick it off, please. The main thing, Chappie, is just communicating. So we're on the same page. Russ. I want to preface what I have to say to both of you that I love you both. I love this restaurant. Russell, I love the love. Please Go tell ahead. me. Please tell me. Chappie, you're condescending, you're rude, and you're abusive. Everybody feels it. I don't think anybody wants to say it. And many times you lose your temper and customers can hear you. It's hard for us to work in that condition. It seems to me as though you don't give a shit about us as a team out here. 
that you think we're all against you, that we don't have your back. And I want you to know that we do have your back. We would love to have some support back from you. It's just hard that you don't trust anyone. If you don't trust your staff, then don't fucking hire them. Derek? When I first started working, I was selling the black and red fish to everybody, but I found out later that it was why. And ethically, as a server, you're asking me to go out and lie to these people every night. Is that true? It's true. You know, it's just not right. Why'd you do that? Why'd you swap that fish out and put He's them? He's trying to substitute. No, stop, stop, stop. Being dishonest with customers and putting them in the firing line. If he gets called out, it's your doing. I just wish you would, like, listen to us a little bit. Anytime I've brought up an idea or even try to ask you a question, I'm wasting your time. Whoa. I try to have you back. You're fantastic. I'm directing this more towards Chappie. A lot of things have to change. <clears throat> I appreciate everything you say. And you're right on target. Chappie, do you find this kind of feedback from your team helpful? I do. It does get tough. And if I was negative to you of, of a personal event, I apologize. It wasn't meant to hurt. Sometimes I get off the edge, too. I'm so blessed that this has happened because nothing was going to change unless we went all the way down there, put the light on it, looked at it, and said, whoa, let's fix this. We have slacked off for quite some time, but we'll get back to it. I hope Chappie can change. I know sometimes I say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I'm hoping that you can. Chef Ramsay still remains unconvinced that Chappie has seen the error of his ways. Sir, have you heard of the restaurant Chappies? No. So he has provided Chappie and Star with a fully equipped stakeout vehicle so they can monitor his interaction with the locals. Hello. How are you? Good nice to see you. You like Cajun? Oh, we yes. love Cajun. Have you heard of Chappies? Yes. You have heard of yes, Chappies? Have. Good. Have you been there? Yes, a couple been. times. A couple of times. Um, tell me the experience, please. Being on show, very wants to spend all his time and money in promoting himself. He had the A2K when we went, and probably one of the worst dishes you've yeah, had. It tastes a little burnt. A little bit burnt. Wow. Yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Absolutely. Thank you, my darling. Thank you so much. Have you heard of Chappies, the restaurant? I have not. You haven't heard it. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, have you heard of Chappies? I have. Good, have. good, good, good. Have you been to Chappies? I have been. I didn't feel as real authentic Cajun. Looking for etouffee and andouille, good oysters and shrimp. Fine Simple stuff. stuff. Spicy. They have that kind of food there. Did you try it? Uh, I, what I tried was not great. No. Yeah. I eat better Cajun food on the Cajun food truck that rolls around. The food quality is up for and For the price point, it's yes. just, I, I think it's ridiculous. I, I wouldn't mind to pay 30 to $40 for a good entree, but it wasn't good. It's, it's not authentic Cajun. Bad food, wow. bad atmosphere, really? bad hat. I'm here to help fix that restaurant. Will you bear with me? Yes. And give it one more shot? Yes. I appreciate it. Great. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye. OK. Were you listening? Absolutely. Yeah. Tough to watch. I agree. It is tough to watch. You what think you're doing something that they want? and then they don't. So it's a good eye awakening, an epiphany of what we need to do. Let's show more quality. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the nutshell. Time to move forward. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Well, when you hear people talking on the street and they don't see you listening, they'll say things that maybe they wouldn't say in front of you. It was an eye opener. Coming up. Chappy, listen to me. No. All eyes are on Chappie. I need you to step up to the plate or go home. Will he finally lead his team to a successful service? How long, Chappie? Almost ready. Or will his customers be disappointed again? Chappie, stop what you're doing. Stop! That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. That'll be one pain of my ass gone. After setting Chappie, hopefully on the path to change, Chef Ramsay and his team worked through the night on a major renovation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get ready for some big changes. Let's get on with it. <laughs> Please remove your blindfolds. Oh! Oh! 
Welcome to the new chappies. That's nice. Look at that. How awesome. incredibly cool. Gone are those tacky dating yellow walls. Now, it's comfortable, modern, much more warm and inviting. Yeah. We got rid of a lot of the chairs and replaced them with pews, so it gave that sort of intimate, sort of family feel. So much better. I love it. Take a look at this wall. Mm -hmm. We have reclaimed wood from a local barn and then added artistic photos. Uh -huh, the I'm sure you recognize the French oh, Quarter there. We got rid of all the clutter from Mardi Gras, including <laughs> Miss Cleo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the ambiance that Nashville wants. Yeah. And it still plays homage to the home of Cajun cuisine. Sam, how do you feel? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy, my darling? Absolutely. You like it? Yes. Perfect. It's it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. I love it. Everything's so fresh, so clean, so modern. It just oozes New Orleans charm. Do we have a happy chappy? It's very, very nice. <laughs> it's not my style. But I was just kind of kind of grin, bear it, move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as big as the decor change was, the menu change is even bigger. Let's go through the menu from top to bottom. Chef Ramsay has modernized and reduced the menu from 100 dishes to 22. First of all, that is the only page. Yes! <laughs> yes! Let's start off with the top. Shrimp and grits, done with Creole seasoning, onions and tomato. Delicious. Next to that, blackened yeah. redfish, served with citronelle and a herb salad. And what do we do when we run out of redfish, Chappie? It's 86. 86. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so don't even ask for it. Fried chicken served with apple butter. Delicious mm. apple butter. Absolutely delicious. Uh, Chappie, you've gone quiet. I'm thinking. How are we going to do it? <sighs> Let me tell you something. Your cooks have been here since early this morning. They have been under the guidance of a great chef that I brought here, Chris Fox. Chris. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. This young man has been cooking for over 15 years. He has the most amazing wealth of experience. Wonderful. I paid for Chris to be here to really implement these standards after I have gone. I think Chef Chris is such a blessing. Chappie's going to get a chance to work side by side with this gentleman. So there are no excuses, OK? There's something else I need to bring in. Uniform. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> The uniforms are great. Now it's casual, and this whole new image, it's, it's going to be fantastic. It feels appropriate. No white shirt, no bow tie, no black pants. And talking about pants, one more thing. <laughs> 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 when you're looking the parts. There goes the party hat and the clown pants. I love it. Uh, listen, what I'd like you all to do now is to dig in and taste the food. It's oh, my great. gosh. That pork chop is ridiculous. Oh, my god. There is no comparison between Chappie's old food and Chappie's mm. new food. The recipes are there, the flavor is there, but I'm not totally convinced that he's happy. I think he's still, like, got all these thoughts, like, pondering and wondering. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Mmm! Mm. Okay, that side down. Push nice and flat. After more training on the new menu with Chef Ramsay and Chef Chris. Get it really super charred, right? You'll have beautiful marks. Look great. Got it. All the tools are there for Chappie to have a successful relaunch. I think I'm going to do the grilled Angus steak, OK? Yeah, I actually want to try the, uh, the crab cake. It looks crab awesome. Cake. All right, thanks, guys. Fire 114. Two pork chops, two Angus steaks, one medium, one mid-rare. Uh, Chappie. Call back, please. All right, Chap Heard. Heard. Serious, please, yeah? I got you. Chappy, Chris is expediting. He's going to tell you what to do. Just do it. How long on these steaks? How long, Chappy? Almost ready. Fucking hell, Chris. Like, what does almost mean? Like, five seconds, two seconds, three seconds, one second? Give me a time, please. Chappie, I'm not asking for the fastest kitchen. I just want a little bit of callback. Yes, chef. No, chef. Uh, a little bit of liveliness in here a little bit. <laughs> Fucking hell. Here's your medium rare. I need a two pork chops. Where's the pork chop, please? I need those pork chops desperately. Chappie, you get in the game a little bit, please? They're in the oven. They should have been put in the oven a while ago, though. Yeah? 
They've been in. It's got to be quicker than that. Fuck me. We haven't said anything yet. It's almost like we've gone to sleep. As Chappie struggles with the new menu, the question is, is it because it's new, or is it because he's not thrilled about serving it? I have such a hard time serving a plate like that. Whatever the case may be, customers are starting to get impatient. Sorry, Neil. Let's go. I need those chops. We already look like jerks. I need 114. I need 129. I'm also ready for 110. Oh, my god. If Chappie would listen, it would be so much better. Chappie. Chappie, listen to me. Something you're not very good at doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop! I need 114. I need 129. It's relaunch night, and Chappie is not responding to Chef Chris. We haven't said anything yet. <laughs> and Chef Ramsay knows he has to do something to save the service. Chappie, listen to me. Something you're not very good at doing. Come here a minute. This is it now. I understand. No, no, but, but if you understand, I need to hear you. I do. I cannot deliver any more. I need you to step up to the plate and run your restaurant. Got it. Either do it or go home. Got it. Let's go. Let's go. He's not good at listing that one. Fire 110. Pork chops, shrimp, and grits. Chappie, don't ignore that ticket there. 110. Fuck. I need those pork chops. You want me to butterfly them? Do not butterfly them. How long are they? It's going to be a couple minutes. At least three minutes, four minutes. Butterflied it off, are you? You cannot do that. I don't want them all butterflied like that. Those days have gone. I am not coming this far now to start slopping food out. Uh, Chris, come around now, please. I don't want him pasteurizing the pork chop just to get it out there. Yes, sir. We need to get it in the oven, OK? Guys, you've got two angus steak. One medium, well, one medium. 127, 128. 127, 128. Excellent. Thank you. Make sure you're calling back. Thanks, guys. Letting him know. I wish that Chappie would be a little bit more open-minded to accept some of the changes. I really hope he does. Fucking hell. With Chef Chris switching from expediter to head chef. Let's go. Urgently, please. Food is now making its way out to the dining room. Here's your food, bon appetit. How hungry are you? Thank <laughs> goodness. We love you. All the flavors complement each other. It's very good. The mac and cheese is amazing. Everybody's been happy with the food. Thank God. All your dinners are out. I got the last table. <laughs> it's just wonderful. We have a great new menu that's fresh and delivered beautifully. We just have to stick with it, believe in it, and do everything we can to make it happen. How are you? I'm OK. Everybody seemed to love everything, but I just have a hard time with it. I still think my food's great. And that'll be one pain in my ass gone. OK, Chappie, after Chris's time is done here, you need to find and invest in a chef like Chris. There should be someone qualified in that kitchen on a daily basis. Absolutely. Because it's worth it. The only thing that's going to keep this place on the map is the food. Will do. Star, you must make me a very serious promise. You must not let Chappie go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Good. I'm only telling you this for your own good, because you are one stubborn man. Good luck to you both. Thank you so much. Yeah? Thank you. You well, heard my prayer. I don't know how you did it. Thank you so much. Come here, you. Huh? Good luck to you both. Thank okay. you. Take care. Thank you so Thank much. Good night. Good night. I've got one word to describe my time here at Chappies, and that is challenging. Mainly because Chappie led his restaurant slide in so many ways. But we made a major turnaround, and he even agreed to get rid of his ridiculous chef's hat. My only hope now is that he's got rid of all those bad habits, because if he hasn't, this restaurant has no chance. Wow. Not long after Chef Ramsay left, in spite of positive feedback about the changes, Chappie went back to his old ways. But he, you didn't do what I asked you. I should have come behind you and babysat you. You're right. The majority of his original dishes are back. Blackened pork chop, blackened swordfish on the fly. And so is the uncertainty of the future of this Nashville restaurant. <laughs> Scottsdale, Arizona, an upscale Phoenix suburb. It's also home to Amy's Baking Company. Opened in 2006 by husband and wife team, Sammy and Amy Buzaglo. 
It was at a very early age that I discovered I had a real, true passion and talent for anything having to do with the culinary arts. Just give me the per salad, darling, if you can. All right, all right. So in 2006, Sammy invested over a million dollars into this restaurant to make my dream come true. Can I open? Yalla! We are ready. Come okay. on, guys. But we're in the restaurant business. It's not all daisies and ponies and unicorns. I understand this whole substitution thing. Approximately two years ago, these reviewers and these bloggers decided to make up lies and say that they ate the food and it was disgusting. Son of a bitch. And we lost a tremendous amount of business because of it. They're just fucking haters. It's really just anything good. I'll take it. There's a lot of things that are wrong with the food that she just doesn't realize. Too garlicky, too buttery, too sweet, not cooked enough, too overdone. That doesn't work for me. <laughs> if someone has criticism, Sammy tells them, you don't know what the food is supposed to taste like. Even you don't know what is wrong with it. If anyone tell me that my wife's food is no good, I just tell them to leave the restaurant. I don't want them and don't come back. Is your first time? Last time. And last time, don't come back, madam. Not only do they lash out and swear at customers. I will go tell them to fuck off if my husband doesn't. But they take it one step further and retaliate against them. I hope he eats it. And I just made it really spicy for him. The customer is not always right. Choose another pizza or nothing. And I'm not here to take shit from anybody. I'm not going to have people make shit up that isn't true. I'm not doing it. Don't I'm, I'm, worry. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not making any more food. Amy's nuts. I am going to really hurt somebody if they send back my cake. One second, she's like a nice little care bear. Thank you so much. I love you. You're such a good girl. And the next second, she's like Corella DeVille. I'm stopping all the food. No, no, I'm not, wait, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not making anything else. No, why? It has to go to the freaking trash. Are you kidding me right now? And unfortunately, the majority of the people in Arizona think that if you come to our restaurant, that we're going to yell at you, scream at you, and throw you outside. And that is not who we are. Go on, Yala. Keep walking, mister. You just keep walking. Chef Ramsey is coming to tell the people how the food is good here. You can go, madam. Don't come back, madam. I'd be happy not to see you here. Thank you. I think Chef Ramsey is going to be wasting his time. He can't change Sammy and Amy. They're lost cause. Anything with 30, change it. We are ready. Come okay. On, guys. Good evening. Do you guys know what you want? Three cheese and tomato sauce. All right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Miranda may be the only server on staff. I can't do the computer, so he's the only one that has control over that. But she is not allowed to input orders, pour wine, or handle money. The ravioli, and then they want yeah, the pizza I after. I know what it is. The only one who can do that is Sammy. Okay, okay, just move, 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 I know. Sammy thinks that he's doing everything all by himself. For C. But Sammy doesn't realize he's actually messing everything up. I need another wine. I cannot work. I cannot. I can't. I can't. I can't. I cannot work. I can't. Sammy. Look all the orders I have. What do you want? Nothing. Go, go, go okay. to the kitchen. Oh, la, 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 la. He had like 30 tickets in his hand, I think. With Amy only cooking one ticket at a time. We're not making any of this until I get to that ticket. The diners are in for a long wait. I've never waited this long for one more pizza. But the one table that has received their food is unsatisfied. What is the problem with it? Like the Caesar, I don't know. Even you don't know what is wrong with it. The egg is. OK. If you came to eat to enjoy, then you should know what you like to eat, sir. Apparently, you don't know what you like to eat. I guess not. <laughs> OK, Amy. What? Can you make me per salad instead of that Caesar? Seriously? Don't worry. I told them to fuck off. He's like all in the back, like yelling. Maybe they don't understand it doesn't come from a can. Are you kidding me right now? It's a sloppy. Yeah. It's kind of doughy. What? They say it's not cooked enough. To be. To be? OK, Amy. What? Two pieces is not cooked enough. Put it again in the, in the, in the oven. Sure, I'll burn it okay, for them. Okay, this is not cooked enough. The food we're making is going straight to the trash, and there are starving people that could be eating it, but instead, these people decide that they're going to come fuck with my life. Uh, we waited like an hour and a half. We never I got know. pizza, we never got. You guys are full of shit. Yeah, I tell them not to do it. Never got our pizza, I never got this. My fucking ass. Stop the red pepper ravioli and stop the it's ready. epic. Sammy. Stop it, they're leaving. I don't care. I am not going to do this. Stop it. Fuck them, stop what? It's in the oven. We're waiting on one pizza. 
It's coming now, it's coming now, now. You keep saying that. You've been saying that for an hour. Look at him, he's like, where's my pizza? <laughs> really? Send him home! Yeah, you have a pizza, it's coming. You want to wait, you wait. You don't want to pay what did you have and you fuck off from here. Do you understand? Sammy? You Do you fuck understand? Off? You fuck yourself! Go out, you motherfucker! Are you fucking kidding me? No, 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 don't speak here. like this! Go out! Are you no. fucking kidding me? Yeah, I fucking call fuck you! Sammy, call the police! I shot my police! I'll fuck you! Tell you go! Stop! 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 Where's the pizza? Give me oven, he can suck it. You pay, you don't go. You, if you touch up, I fucking, you come from help, I told you. You go, fuck you, fuck you. No, I'm kidding, I'm fuck you, not kidding you, I fuck you. Call the police, I Pay the money, no, I want the money from him. I am calling the police, you guys are fucking No, he's just calling the police. I know, but hey, you're not touching him, get away. Motherfucker, you are. Fucking piece of shit. You piece of shit. You are a little pansy, get out of here, don't you ever come back here. You little weenie, keep walking. Fuck you. Give me a break. This is, you guys, I make excellent food. You motherfuckers, you all, think that you can come in here and say these things. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this before. With very little knowledge of the previous night's dinner service, Amy's baking company. Chef Ramsay arrives looking to find out why Amy's baking company needs his help. I love desserts. Hey, Hello. Chef. How are you? How are you doing? Nice to see you. First name is? Sammy. Sammy, good I'm to the see you. owner. You're Thank the owner. you. Yes. Wow. Oh, look at that. Come on. My wife, Amy, yeah. Uh, can I meet this lady? Yes, no. Please? Yeah. Amy? Yes? Gordon Ramsay wants to meet you. He wants to know who is the chef of who does all this beautiful love. Uh, come around, please. Hi. Come around, my darling. So nice to meet you. I'll give him a hug. Uh, <laughs> did you make them? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah. Incredible. It's nice, nice to meet you. you. Likewise. Uh, good to you. see you. I mean, they're extraordinary. Thank you. That's very nice. It um, means a lot coming from you. Any of that store bought? No. The restaurant is beautiful. Thank you. Thank and you I want you to see my kitchen after or before right. if you want, and then you tell me about our kitchen also. Right. Show me the kitchen. OK. Thank you, please. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Mean. Okay. Thank you. You got me excited. Sorry. Of course. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Okay. Please. Thank you. Oh, my God. OK. And who's the head chef? I am. I'm... Yo, hold on. Stop, stop. <laughs> Holy crap, you got lucky. <laughs> I'm the lucky one. He is my but soulmate, and we're in this business together. Fine, and we I'm stand I'm... strong together. We have to because there's a lot of online bullies and haters and bloggers. We stand up to them, and I think we're the only ones that ever have as restaurant owners. And they come, and they try to attack us and say horrible what? things that are not true. Because they're, they're used to eating processed wood chips uh, or used to getting things for free uh, and not from us. OK. Um... Let's catch up with the haters and that stuff. After you. Uh, can I have a quick look at the kitchen? Of course. Uh, normally, uh, owners don't like it when I inspect kitchens, but the floor's shiny. It's like oh. a basketball court. Come, it's come see. If you're oh not, my goodness, you man. want the jacket? No, you it's don't like need a, it. You don't need it. It's like a doctor's surgery in here. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank Bloody you. Thank hell. you for saying the truth. Oh, my goodness me. Is this a joke? I mean, look, dates, labels, yes, everything, sectioned yeah. off. Wow, what a pleasure. Hello. This is Miranda. This is Miranda. She's Miranda. going to Miranda. serve you. Nice to see you. And this nice is to meet you. I'm Katie. Katie. This is Christine. She's my Christine, wingman. Christine, darling. <laughs> Are you the sous chef? She is. Yes. Let's go through the dining room. Okay. The restaurant itself is very clean and nice, but it's Amy and Sammy that are the problem. Do not judge a book by its cover. So, take me back to the beginning. How long have we been married? Almost 10 years. Oh, yes, no, we right. got married five months after we met. Wow. Well, I prayed for him, and God sent him to me, and I wasn't going to waste any time. <laughs> she said, forget you, you Sammy Hafner, enough. <laughs> he was a playboy I, in she Vegas. Me, yeah. You were a playboy in Vegas. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. He was. Seriously. He was, even Hugh Hafner didn't have as beautiful of women as we did. All the playmates would come to our table. He was a player. But with me, it didn't work like that. I am individual or nothing at Once all. Once we got married, that's that was it. everything out. Wow. So, um, were you trained in the industry? No, not at no. all. I'm a so developer. Back. I build I build custom houses. Oh. But when the crisis started, I say, I still have money. What do you want me to do with it? She begged me. She said, my dream, it was to open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I just, throughout my life, had a passion and a God-given talent for it. And this is all I want to do. That's lovely. Thank you. And the ganache as well. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. Oh, oh God. I'm the only one that makes them. And if I'm not here working, we're not open. Say that again. If I, if, if I am not here, if we're my husband's not here, sick, we're not open. The the we don't run without each other here. You're kidding me. No. That's no way to run a business. We can't find qualified people to work. They want to come and get a paycheck and tried. not work. In Arizona? They're not good. They're not good. Tried. I tried a lot of that. This is we my know that. biggest worry. This is my biggest 
problem in my life, but I cannot find people I can count on them, I can trust them. They're dirty, they're lazy. How many people have you been through? A lot. A few hundred. A lot. <laughs> a few hundred? Yeah. yeah. So, other than an issue with staff, what's wrong with this bloody restaurant? I have issues with customers that are trying to be online bullies and say horrible things. Online bullies? They're online bullies and write things that are not true. They write that it's I have store-bought dough, they write that things are frozen. I understand that, but those things are not true. But when did this start? Two and a half years ago. This guy came in that started this entire online bullying. He ordered pizza yeah. margarita, and after I say, okay, how is your pizza? He say, it's a frozen pizza. The next day he went and gave us a review. Oh my God. My wife, she was... Well, retaliated. You wrote back to him? Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Why? She, I told him. I thought he was a loser. He was a moron. No, I didn't take you. him. Tell I understand. Me. He insulted yeah. me first, and I started. attacked back. I'm not going to let anybody bully me, bully my husband. That's a joke. You need thick skin in this business. Well, well they, call, they called me Crazy Amy B because I stood up to them, and like... I need people who respect you, who know that you have earned your stripes in the kitchen and in life. I need them to listen to you and not the online bullies and take your word that you're saying that our food is good. Amy, if all your food is as good you as it's deserved, food, trust yeah, me, good. there's something not quite right here. Thank you. Are we'll you a it. control freak? I am. Is we are Amy, Amy worse. What a combination. We have to clone us. Clone us. Is that possible? It is, some places <laughs> I've heard. Right. Do you have children? Well, we have three little boys, but they're trapped inside wow. cat bodies. Yeah. Yeah, they're cats. Our babies are cats. They're my whole life, besides my husband and my business. I speak feline. Meow, 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 meow. Meeting you two for the first time, you are both fucking nuts. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have a little sample of the menu. OK. Do your thing normally. I will. Hello. How are you, my darling? Good. Is it just you and Sammy in the front of the house? It's pretty much just me. And how long have you been here? A month and a half. Good tips? I don't make tips. Say that again? I make hourly. Serious? You must be the only server in this country... I know. ...that doesn't get tipped out. So where do the tips go? The owner. What? Yeah. I can't believe that. I know. I try to tell him. <laughs> Wow. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Sammy. You spoke earlier about the problem with staff. Yeah, I just found out something pretty major. Miranda, the young girl? Yeah. You don't give her her tips? No. Sammy, yeah. you cannot take server's tips. Then bring me the people who's going to do their job, and I don't have to interfere. They can take the whole tips for them. Did you see? I already took three orders by myself and sent them already to the... You're the owner. I'm doing the most of the job. Wow. I'm ready to order. OK, I'll take Thank your you. order. Do you know already what you like yes, to Yes, I do, yes. Yeah. The fig and pear prosciutto pizza, Excellent. please. Excellent. Yeah. And Good. then I'm going to go for a blue ribbon burger. Medium rare. Medium rare. Excellent. Please. And I'll take the salmon burger as well at the same time. And then I'll fancy some gnocchi. Get all the pastas homemade, right? He is, but uh, not the gnocchi today. It's oh. not homemade. We didn't oh. have time to make them. OK. Uh, I'll go straight to the ravioli. OK, which one do you like? The, the red pepper. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. The story is becoming a little clearer. OK, Amy. Yeah. This is the chef's order. Oh, God, OK. I believe that once Chef Ramsay tastes my food, as a chef, He'll be able to tell that this is what God wants me to do. What's that fucking doorbell? It keeps on going off every two minutes. Miranda, what is that doorbell on the side of the wall for? <laughs> Whenever we have dirty dishes, we ring it, and then the busser comes and grabs the dishes from there. Why would you walk around and just put the plates in the pot wash? The first time in my career, a pot washer has a doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong. The large or the small? Small. White three cheese pizza. Ah, the cheese pizza. Sammy. Yeah. Does, does Miranda use the POS system? No, she does not yet. Nobody's. I'm the only one who uses it. Yeah. But the quicker you teach her, the quicker you can take her back and no, seat. I, I will teach her when you come the time. I will teach her. Miranda, 
Have you ever worked on a POS system? Yes, at every job that I've worked at. Every job. And how many jobs have you had before you worked at ABC? A lot. A lot. She doesn't need training. She knows how to do it. Thank you. Oh, it's for Yes. Thank you. I'll get you a plate. Wow. The fig and pear and prosciutto pizza. Well, the crust is supposed to be good, but it's not that crusty. It's very, very sweet. And my dough's raw. After all this weight. Wow. That is so sweet. But that's not the issue. The issue is the dough is raw. It's just, I finished. It's raw. It's doughy. I don't know how it come out today like this, well, but normally they love that pizza. It's really, well, really lovely. I'm telling you what I'm getting, and it's raw, soggy, and wet, and too sweet in general. We stay that up. You take it back to Amy, please. Of course, yes. Thank you. Oh my God, I don't think he liked it. What's wrong? Nothing. I feel like. Sammy sugarcoats a lot of what happens in the restaurant. So Amy gets this feeling that like everything she's doing is correct, everything's right. Don't worry, don't worry, everything is okay. I'm not worried. I'm afraid he's going to say something isn't good. I know my wife, she doesn't take the criticism. She will be shaking and then she say, that's it, I'm leaving. Just I'll tell you all about it after. After, just relax and do like you do normally, just do it. Oh my God, I'm going to freak out. Jeff Ramsey has been sitting at the table for well over an hour. I feel it's raw. And so far, all that he has sampled is an undercooked pizza. I don't even tell her you did like the, uh, the pizza. You didn't even tell her the dough Not was... yet. I know my wife, she's, she'll get nervous. You're scared and of telling her the truth? Do you want to tell her? Come with me, you tell her. I just want her to know, so she checks okay, the next she one. she will know, yes, she will know. Uh, anyway, I am 75 minutes in, and so far, I've had an undercooked pizza. I know you've been waiting. I'm going to start eating my ticket. Oh, OK. I'm going to tell her you're starving. I'm oh. going to tell her you are starving. OK. She'll move, OK? She'll move. She, I hope oh. so. You know where that goes. Mm -hmm. Yes? OK. Thank you. Wow. Blue cheese, mushrooms, marinated, garlic aioli, white truffle oil, and crispy bacon bits, and a soggy bun that's just full of grease. Jesus, come on. I have a lot of nerve calling this a blue ribbon burger. Well, medium rare, it's not. Ooh. Overcomplicated, so unnecessary, and look, that is one shit burger. What was it's a wrong disaster. Thing? Yeah, the bun. What a mess. Okay, so, yeah, so I'll take um, this back. Uh, really disappointing. I am starving. I got it. Thank you. This is this for him? Yes, red pepper ravioli. Thank you. Red pepper ravioli. There you go. <laughs> How's the uh, salmon burger doing? I'll go check on that. Thank you. He wants to know how long in the salmon burger? It's on its way. Okay. We're in the, you don't need to keep reminding us. We know, OK? I was just saying. I know, yeah. but you don't need to come tell us. We know that it needs to go out. Oh, my god. It smells weird. Oh, here's my salmon burger. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Oh, god. Sweet, spicy. be one of the most confused ravioli dishes I've ever seen and tasted in my entire life. Wow. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, huh? Sweet and spicy. Yeah. Ravioli with bacon and sweet corn, topped with cilantro. Are these store-bought? Yes, the ravioli, yes. He told me that this yes. was store-bought, then I wouldn't ah. have ordered it. Ah, OK. I didn't tell you, no, no. I didn't tell you that. Thank you. Look at this thing here. This is what I've been waiting for. So it's like a salmon cake, crab cake, burger. It's overcooked. I mean, it's, it's not good. Although it may be good for those three boys, three cats at home. 
Do you want me to take that? Please, <laughs> because it is like eating dry cat food. Do you want to take a sample? No, I really um, don't. Come on. <laughs> come on. Meow, meow. <laughs> Is, um, is, is, is Amy there? Yeah. Do you want to go into the kitchen? Uh, you you know, come out, out. she can come out now. Okay. I tell Just a quick. Amy? Yes. That was a lot longer than I expected, and, you know, there were some big bumps in that meal. Um, what kind of bumps? What didn't you like? Let's go through it later. OK. OK? I'm going to go get changed. OK. And I want to see how this place functions. And then after service, cover all the points. You look disappointed. I am disappointed. OK. But let's go through this later. OK. Yeah? Of OK. Course, yeah. Sure. This is what you are here. Yes. OK. Thank you. Thank you. That's for you. Oh, thank you. You only. Thank you. Fuck me. OK. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not worried. Never, never mind. Jane. You do. And you do what you do. Do you understand? Just do what you but do. I'm concerned with his opinion. He loves I know. the desert. I understand. Please do me a favor. You can. They are good. Okay, listen. We're going to start to get ready, you guys. We're going to open. How does the line work? Who does what? Christine does mostly the salads, and I do the pizzas. I have people tell me it's the best pizza that they've ever had in wow. their life. My pizza today was undercooked, so it was raw, and I said, will you take that back? He said, I can't talk to her in service. Why is that? You're a husband and wife. Yeah. Yeah, it's not as if you're sort of manager and assistant manager. So why can't you go and tell your wife? Because Sweetheart, I, I know my pizza, wife. Pizza, fucking yeah. wake up, is undercooked. I don't think your pizza was undercooked. I checked it when I took it out of the oven, just like I do every other pizza. And to me, it was crispy on the bottom. When I cut it, right. it was crunchy. Okay. So to me, it wasn't okay. wrong. Okay, so that's your version, because you sure. didn't see it come back. However, the bun for the beef burger was soggy as anything. Blue cheese, marinated mushrooms, crispy bacon bits, white truffle oil. Who comes up with those ideas? I did. Because there's certain things that don't go together, and that's four of them. Chef Ramsay is standing there riding my ass about white truffle oil and garlic aioli. Oh, my God. Like, he's never heard of any flavor profile in the world as disgusting. I have never had a problem with that hamburger, ever. Because your husband doesn't tell you. And the, the salmon burger was like a salmon fish cake in between a dry bun. But it was a dry bun or it was a soggy bun? That oh. was dry. Dry pate, dry. It's good like that. We have people tell us all the time there that you it's go again. good. There's no point in me saying anything to you because you just say, well, it's good like that. Whatever. <sighs> the uh, raviolis, do you cook them from frozen? Yes, we do. Do you know you can make these better? What? Yes, I can make them from scratch. No, of take them I off. Can. Oh, yes, of course. Why don't I just well, delete everything from my the... menu? I'm just trying and to then close my doors. What do you want me to sell? These are store bought I crap them. frozen ravioli. They're not crap, and they're delicious. And I, the oh. first time I've ever. Oh okay. my God. Did you taste it? You didn't taste that one. I didn't because you didn't get the feedback. I said they were disgusting. People usually love it. I've never had a problem with People it, but. People usually love it. Yes, real customers, not haters. Oh, come on, Amy. Raviolis that are in the freezer. Oh my God, sacrilegious. Ladies and gentlemen, two seconds, please. The owner is trying to pull the wool over your eyes by offering you frozen raviolis that aren't even made within 500 miles of this front door. So would you mind, personally, if I 86 them to stop you from eating crab? So we'll 86 ravioli. OK. I have too much respect for your customers yes. yeah. to bullshit them. Now, will you tell your wife, or shall I? It's dinner service, and Amy continues to deflect everything. The owner is trying to pull the wool over your eyes by offering you frozen raviolis. So to make his point, Chef Ramsay decides to do a little research with the customers. Would you mind if I 86 them? That's right, no, that's right. Are you going to tell your wife or shall I? I will tell her. Thank you. OK, listen. Yeah. No more raviolis No more today. raviolis yeah. and no more hamburgers and no more salmon burgers. People yes. can only have cakes tonight. OK. OK, I'm good with that. <sighs> Complete bullshit. She can't take criticism. Why is um, that? Yeah. Ask her that question. Ask her? I have the same problem for that. Are we used to waiting on something? Is yeah. That, what is it she that you're waiting on? Pasta. It's yeah. Really spicy pasta. The pasta resica? Yes. Is that coming? Can you look on B4 and see what else they had? They should have uh, pasta resica. Is... No, I don't have it. You didn't give it to me. Sammy. Yeah. Sammy, I did write it down for you. Oh, it was here? It's right there. What is it? Pasta rustica. I see it did here. It's OK. 4B. No, no, 5B. Are you sure? 
You don't need to question me, Katie. You can go home right now. I'm sorry. Sammy. Yes, honey. I would appreciate it if you would send Katie home right no. now. No, I don't no, no, need an okay. attitude from her. She comes no, no, and she's okay. in our It's room. because there's the two others. Oh, my God. Okay. Am I sure? What a little shit. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you right now because I have to concentrate well, uh, on the line. Concentrate, then. I will. There's no point in talking to you. Thank you. Oh. You're welcome. And the pizza? Food is leaving the kitchen at a snail's pace. And it doesn't appear to be worth the wait. You can take this back, too. <laughs> you didn't like it? Not good. OK. When food's not eaten, do they tell you? No. Every single time a customer doesn't lick their plate, the waitress doesn't come to tell me that. Amy, no one's licking that. Just ignore him. I am ignoring everything that's happening. Stop. Thank you, Ryan. Excuse me. So. That just comes back from the table, and it goes straight into the pot wash. Then they didn't like it. So if they didn't like it, what are we going to do about it? Let's wait. We finish today. The I... kitchen needs to know. OK. Then I'm going to tell her. Thank you. OK. Amy, this is the summit. They didn't like it. For me, this is all bullshit, so I, I don't, I don't care. care. None of you known about this, because the young girl Maria grabbed the plate and was about to throw it away. That's a common thread in this restaurant. There's no point in me speaking, so wow. I'm just going to work. It's like one long nightmare. Wow, $10 tip. Yeah. That's nice for you. Of course, yeah. Why not? Do you think the girls deserve some tips tonight? No, they get hourly. And so do you think if I went and asked every customer, when they leave a tip, yeah. that it goes straight to the owner and not to the server, mm -hmm. do you think they'd be astounded? Let me ask that table there. Sir, the tip that you left, the young lady server, the owner takes the tips. That's no, 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 no. Okay. Don't no, no, fuck no. with me. Yeah, I will fuck with you. Yeah. Who the fuck you think you are? Oh, my God. Sammy's going to hurt him. I'm fed up. I'm getting sick and tired of your bullshit. Like well, then fucking the answer my question. Then Come fucking on. answer my question. Tell the customers they're going to get yeah. their tips. No, they don't. They should be told that you're taking them yeah. because this servers deserve yeah. them. You want to speak with me? Yeah, I want you to speak with you. You want to fuck with me? I will fuck I don't with you. I fuck with you. Then I will fuck I with you. Fuck. Oh, my God. What a joke. Has everybody got this food? Yeah, we're closed. We're closing the kitchen. I think, Katie, you can go. For sure. I'm talking to you, Katie. OK. Katie, listen to me when I'm speaking to you. Do not walk away from me. You don't work here anymore, OK? Don't start crying. Don't you want, why are you no, behaving please, like this? No, no, oh, my no, no, God. Please, come on. Come on. Since no, I'm no, talking, no, I, I wasn't doing anything. Okay, I, I wasn't doing anything. You've had an attitude with okay, me all no, night long, worry, Katie. Don't OK, worry, please. Okay. I quit. No, you're not. I quit. She is quitting. She has an attitude. She comes to the kitchen tonight. She's like, I set a table. She said, are you sure? Are you my boss? It's OK. It's OK. Please. Go on. No, 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 come on. She doesn't work here anymore. She's a poisonous little viper, and I don't allow people to have an attitude in my restaurant. What does she know? Who the hell is she? She is gone. That's who she is. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Tonight, Chef Ramsay witnessed how dysfunctional Amy and Sammy are at running their business. Katie, you do not work here anymore, OK? Including firing Katie for simply asking a question. Now, you've just fired the young girl. Mm -hmm. But just take a big, deep breath and see if we can get some form of resolution here. OK. Believe it or not, my intentions are good. You're shaking your head already. I'm listening. It's become evident that you can't take criticism. Why is that? Are you seriously asking me why it's I'm okay, so yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, I am. You don't have to cry here. I'm I don't want you to cry. Going... You don't have to cry. I'm not going to cry, Sammy. Okay, just cry. I'm trying to speak and it's take quiet. out my is it a conversation. Okay, no one lets me speak. Ever. Not nobody. Oh my god, you I know, just, it's I know that, but you're not listening to me. I know what you I listen to you. We listen to you. I'm what, trying to he asked me a exactly question. What I, know. what I do normally is good. I don't have people sending things back to me. You the, don't the know, training, Amy. You're saying that you training. don't know. Because food comes back, it goes straight to the dishwasher. That's what the whole issue is. You've been avoiding everything. Behind your back are the most amazing desserts. And in your freezer is store-bought shit raviolis that you're never going to convince me or a customer that they're good. The sauce is delicious. The raviolis, we think that they're very good. What I'm struggling with is that you convince yourselves that it's rice. It's not. Tomorrow, I want you open-minded, OK? You as well, Sammy. 
I don't make promises that I know I can't keep. I'm going to do everything within myself to try. All you're getting from me is the truth. Right now, that's what you need. Good night. Good night. Yeah. After one of the most difficult days he has ever had on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay has arrived with a plan to start turning around Amy's Baking Company. Oh, come on. But with Amy and Sammy not at the restaurant, he takes the time to meet with former staff members that have reached out to him. Morning. Morning. Hello. How are you both? Good. Good. Jessica, right? Yes, nice Good to, to see you. you. Henry. Henry, nice to see you. Uh, first of all, no. Jessica, what was your job? I was hired as a food runner. Sammy told me that he didn't like people who went to culinary school because he didn't think that we knew anything. And when I started, I was only allowed to pour water glasses and set them at the table. So I worked up front for a few months and basically wow. had to beg my way back into the kitchen. Unbelievable. And Henry? I was a buster <laughs> for the most part. How long ago were you there? A little over a month. And what kind of things did you see in the dining room? He was always in a bad mood, no matter what. Like, I've, I've never seen him in, like, a good mood. He can't take complaints in, like, a, a professional manner, which is the worst part. He made me wash his car one day. What? That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done for him. They were always yelling at each other. In the year and a half I was there, I saw at least 50 people come and go. 50? They were oh, in and out that. so yeah. fast. Wow. What happens when customers complain about their food? They get told that they're wrong, that, you know, no, we have the best food in the country. You're wrong. Like, there have been times people have gotten salmon that's raw, and they'll send it back saying, you know, can you cook this a little more? And they're like, you don't know how to eat food. You don't know oh what you're God. doing. This is perfect. You just, wow. you obviously don't know. Customer's always wrong there. That is insane. It's just that they don't really know how to manage a restaurant. I don't know what it is, but they both think that, like, the whole world is out to get them. Listen, I appreciate the feedback. Yeah, uh, no problem. You've been very helpful, and I appreciate the honest truth. Absolutely. Uh, wish me good luck. I need yeah, it. Yeah, good luck Absolutely. with Absolutely, good luck. <laughs> Hope you can help Thank them. You. Thank you. Wow. It gets worse. Morning. Good morning. Morning, Sammy. Today is a new day. Yeah, I hope so. You don't look very happy. Yeah. I'm exhausted, Can't. it's all, yeah. I've never had uh, this experience like this, it's a disaster. Okay. I've never had an experience like this either. We want to clarify a few things. Please, should we sit down? So there's no animosity, Let's of sit course. sit down. Yes. Let's clarify a few things. What would you like to clarify? What I have a problem with were the comments you were saying to me last night while I was trying to focus on the food. Let's look at one thing at a time and be sure. open and honest. Okay, that's okay. Fine. Because for me, this was about uncovering the truth. When I'm told that the ravioli's are freshly made. I didn't and tell you now, that. Can I finish? Sorry, when your husband told me that the ravioli's were fresh, I ordered them. And the ravioli's were disgusting and not fresh. And if you're gonna try and continue to pull wool over customers' eyes by sending them fake, fresh made raviolis, they need to know. I don't I that never say sends that my alarm bells go. Now you may want to sit there and argue. Mm -hmm. but you're not prepared to understand that I'm here to show you what's right, and you can't take that. I can. I'm ready for that. I have no problems with the food. I no. told you about the burger. You refused to listen. I did not. I Every asked time you I tell what you was wrong with it. You come back with an excuse. I kept after asking excuse, you what's wrong, and you excuse. couldn't give me I told you yes. the bun for the beef burger was soggy as anything. I have never had a problem with that hamburger, ever. You said the salmon burger was dry, but it was wet. Is it dry or is it wet? Which one is it? I'm one so at a time. No, you, you're confused. I'm not confused when we're talking about food. But the way you screamed at that young girl last night. Would you let anybody come into your restaurant, in your kitchen, and speak to you the way that that kid spoke to me last night? Would yeah. you? Do you think we're going to let someone hold a gun to our head and we're going to give them our ass and let them do anything they want from us? All she asked mm -hmm. is. No, she are did you it with sure? an attitude, a serious attitude. She's like, are you sure? For me. Are you sure? You don't need to question me, Katie. You can go home right now. No, she didn't. OK. Now okay. you're over-exaggerating again. All right. But you'll okay. blame her and you'll blame the customers. But customers were waiting for the food through your husband's mistake. But OK, we're going to forget this today. Right. We're going to start, if we continue the show, 
we're going to start from scratch. I want to you forget want the word me... show. This is not a show for me. No, I mean, I don't know what you this call it. This is a then. restaurant that is in crisis with a delusional owner that can't take criticism. So I'm going to tell you as it is. I met Jessica and Henry this morning, and I got told some awful things. Like what? The way you treat staff. They have to clean cars in the middle of service because the boss wants his car cleaned. And then witnessing over 50 staff being fired in that short period of time. Really? 50 staff? 50 staff. You're saying that I have fired 50 staff since Jessica Both of you. was here. You're saying that? I am. Can you prove that to me? Here we 50 go again. staff? Look at your eyes. Look oh, how, that's look because how, you're look saying lies. Look how bitter you are. Have you not had a turnover of more than 50 people? This she, is... she was wrong. 100 or even more than 100. Wow. Yeah, not only 50, so yeah, the 100. The stats are actually worse than yeah. she told me. Yes, it's worse, yes. Could you tell your wife that? Because I don't no, no, think yes, she it knows. Is. It is. I need a drink of water, excuse yeah, me. Water. You're going to run off water. again? On, Yesterday, I didn't even eat, drink, eat okay. or drink, and I have to drink water. Jesus Christ, are you going to attack me for wanting to fucking drink some water, too? My God. I don't even know why we came back here. I'm going home. This morning, Chef Ramsay arrived with a plan on how to turn around the restaurant. But the owners wanted to clear up a few matters. Now, you may want to sit there and argue, but you're not prepared to understand that I'm here to show you what's right. Unfortunately, they are still not prepared to listen to what Chef Ramsay has to say. Excuse me, I need water. water. Again? I, yesterday, water. I didn't even Come eat, on, drink, eat okay. or drink, and I have to drink water. Jesus Christ, are you going to attack me for wanting to fucking drink some water, too? My God, I don't even know why we came back here. I'm going home. Now you're going home? This is such bullshit. Nobody even fucking is listening to me. Fucking, they're going to go by Jessica? This. Unbelievable, these people are incredible. And I've had enough. I come here to be abused, my own restaurant. I want to go home. Just cool down, I mean, I All we've done, restaurant. all that's happened is we have been attacked. Attacked? Attacked. Why are you Gordon? behaving like because this? Because I'm insulted. You verbally insulted me yesterday, and I held my I tongue out truth. of class. I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't Why say nasty to... things to you. Really? OK, really, I didn't, really. When I no, told you about the burger, you refused to listen. You don't understand. You're judging me on you coming in here, disrupting the entire service. I've been doing this. Disrupting? You did disrupt us last night. How could I focus when you're on my food? What about my lunch? Food, when you're standing here what talking, about when you my husband. What about when I cooked for you? Who disrupted you then? Everybody. What are you talking about? Blaming everybody again. I do my best so our business doesn't close because we can't find qualified people. You go get Miranda and that little Katie and Jessica. Bring them here the and reason, let me see how they, they work. They won't come back Will you there. do that? Of course. They're, oh. Do you know what? They're scared of you. They're scared. And they're embarrassed. But unfortunately, you convince yourself in your little Amy's world that everything you cook, touch, send is perfect. I do not. What? I Are you, am I arguing? Garlic with you? as well with white truffle. Well, that let me delicious. show you some. Can I show you reviews? Hundreds of reviews oh, no. that are excellent that oh, no. you didn't write that Not are from real customers. On the again. No, good reviews, real customers that have supported us look, for look six years. You, look at the way you're attacking my business attacking. and my life. This is I'm all I do is live this life every day. You're not telling me the problems. You are saying I'm delusional, I'm this, <laughs> I'm this, I'm this. <laughs> Can we talk about what we came here to speak about, oh. please? Yeah, let them feed it. Yeah, I want them to You told me to be honest. Says. I am always about honest. the problems that you've had that you cannot talk to your wife and the issues that she can't take criticism before yeah, she knows that I met That's fine. I have no problem saying that. That's fine. Wow. I think you're too far gone. OK, then let's end the show. You think I'm too far gone. There's no hope. Yalla, yalla. It's Christmas. Let's go home. OK. I can't help people that can't help themselves and cannot ever take one ounce of criticism. And if you're not willing to change, I'm not going to butt heads, argue, scream, whatever you want to say. But this is not normal. And it's not normal for a restaurant to go through that many staff. It's not normal for a kitchen that small to have 65 items on the menu. And it's not normal for the level of animosity that you've built inside this restaurant and outside. You have the right to run the business the way you want to run your business. I have the right to do the right thing. And the right thing for me is to get out of here. Good luck. Wow. 
Yeah, that's what she says. What I wanted. Participate in this bullshit. Give me a break. Can they take this thing off me? We don't need his help. Maybe he knows that. It all has to come down. And now he's gone. He walked away. He'll go on with his life. Sammy and I will go on with our life. Well, it's finally happened. After almost 100 kitchen nightmares, I've met two owners who I could not help. And it wasn't because I didn't want to. It was because they are incapable of listening. And in a short period of time, they've managed to piss off the community and go through over 100 employees in one year. Sammy and Amy continue to blame everyone else, yet their biggest problem is themselves. And I know whatever changes I would have made, they were never going to stick to them. And that's why I've decided to do something I've never done before. It's such a shame.